your body make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discovered underneath last night's covered yeah everything came so easy it's electricity 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 you move your body electricity you move your body it's
wasting time Cause I'm already gone So long Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now Like you do now The way that you move your body You make it look like a hobby Every time that you touch me It's electricity Things we discovered Underneath last night's covers Everything came so easy It's electricity your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discover underneath last night's covers everything came so easy it's electricity 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 you move your body
You love it, you wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com. The ESL One Major is brought to you by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, and Monster Energy. back or maybe afternoon depends where you are i guess uh not for right me. now <laughs> no, not for you. yeah it's morning it's morning for me it's morning for purge trend purge everybody we're back uh and we're back with execration team master here but, but before we get into that purge mm. i want to talk about about yesterday i want us to go over everything that you feel like you learned in the world of the new dota mm. well you know the the results are not that weird if you like teleported us a month in the past and said like the patch never came you'd be like okay this looks about right like not not too unexpected i mean maybe the liquid result but um but with that said all the games themselves have been really really fun to watch uh we get to see the meta develop slowly we're seeing more pick outliers come out uh bed boom's doing great that's good for them yeah that's uh definitely a team that is looking to you know they're disappointed because pierre's not here but uh just this idea of trying to make the super team uh, work you know that's kind of been their whole plan and, and the true shocker though of course has got to be og being four and O, considering the the current stand in situation that they are in uh they're not sure exactly who's going to wind up getting here in time or if anybody's going to but currently they have uh, mind control playing position three and kit rack playing position five for the squad but they still managed to get two wins yesterday and a team that was already struggling even with their full roster uh <laughs> at dream league <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely really solid for them. Um, they played against Team SMG, who got third place in the, their C division. And mm. the other team they played against was Extreme Gaming, which was that one was the biggest surprise because Extreme Gaming, I believe, won their DPC division. That is uh, one of the uh, the best uh, Chinese teams right now that's been performing really well. They've got amazing players. Uh, Kaka's on yeah. that team, for example. Uh, and he pretty much makes, he's pretty much good on any team that, uh, that he plays on. So that was a big one. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's just the first day of groups. We still have a lot more days to go to really figure out who is the best team at the moment. We're going to have some eliminations eventually, but for now, we just get to see how good everybody is. Yeah, and uh, again, we'll be doing, I think, the same thing as yesterday. We'll, we'll just have the uh, Group A play out first here with Execration and Aster, and then uh, you guys come in later for the, uh, the Group B matches. So easy peasy stuff here. And uh, I don't know, in terms of heroes and stuff, I was taking a, a brief overview of, of what was going on there to see who's going to be able to, uh, like, what heroes do I need to pick to win this massive prize pool? It, it seems like if you want to get 500 DPC points and $200,000, uh, Rubik is the one that most teams were leaning on the last time I looked at the numbers. Now, that doesn't mean he's winning, but he's getting picked a hell of a lot. Yeah, that, that does make some sense based on what we saw. We saw a lot of, like, Rubik first two picks or a lot of first pick Rubik's just because he is safe. He generically is good against everything. Um, you can steal some spell. And even if you can't, like the extra cast range is still kind of nice no matter what you yeah. grab. So that makes sense to me that Rubik is just a really safe opener. But as time changes, as time goes on and we find like maybe a more specific hero that is like the de facto best support, 
we'll probably start seeing Rubik replaced for those heroes, and we'll see Rubik shift a little bit lower in priority, but probably he'll still be popular. Yeah, I mean, and, what? He's the most picked hero by a mile in terms of pro Dota. Like, I think he's got a several thousand picks lead on the next closest hero. He's just always been yeah. relevant, and, and you know he's fun, which also uh, makes a big difference. Chen did help. also end the day 7-1. and one. So that hero, Nerf it again. Might, he might be kind of good, but we'll have to oh, we'll no, find no. out, and we'll see if uh, if Chen will be here in our next matchup of uh, Execration uh, versus Asser. That will be the big question here, as you can see. Got uh, we're gonna have some lovely faces for you to look at here with the correct names today, Purge. Woo! Yeah, it looks a lot better. Uh, that is that is the players. We'll start with Execration first. There, there is the 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 squad. They've been doing pretty well um as a whole globally uh they've been underperforming a little bit at majors but they're always like kind of close within striking distance of making it out of their groups so mm -hmm. they definitely have a lot of potential i think and happy to see them keep getting uh, international competition opportunities um so they can eventually break through they had a rough day one of course they went zero and four which is not a great yeah. start but they had to play against really good teams they had to play against psg lgd and they had to play against uh eg and eg Kind of took them apart as well um eg looking a, a little bit better than normal i would say in that series yesterday so rough day one but they can definitely bounce back i think yeah they also i mean they managed some what 46 45 minute games versus lgd which mm -hmm. compared to some of the other series we saw you know it, it wasn't unusual for games to end in just 20 so they got something going i'm looking at their drafts which is interesting for execration and they were really like static they picked two games of doom two games of underlord two games of marana two games of templar assassin you know like Looks like they came into the day with a pretty clear concept of what they wanted to do and tried to stick around those heroes. And yeah. I wonder if maybe we'll see them kind of shift around a little bit more here. Yeah, that's um, a good point. As they, as they see their opponents Aster. Because as drafters, they they typically are a little bit more static, uh, relying on some like Visage combos and stuff. So could be a yeah. weakness for them. Uh, on the Aster side, if you guys are paying attention or haven't been paying attention, uh, Sumel is standing in for them. Their uh, mid player semi got replaced slash kicked because of underperformance and for this major at least Sumail is going to play with the squad and of the games yesterday he looked fantastic um they didn't win both of the matches that we spectated um they went one and one in there but i think that they win their other one they did and it was versus liquid they were the ones who handed liquid that uh -huh. loss yesterday and wouldn't you believe it it was with another Sumail storm spirit so <laughs> we'll that have makes to see sense. if that appears again here yeah so yeah very solid team I can't wait to see how they keep doing throughout the tournament based on their first day going one and one against Bet Boom and Liquid. Sure. Yeah. Keep it yeah. up. Um and, yeah. and and Aster was the uh was the only Chinese team that got to play in uh, Dream League recently. Um they did pretty good, but a little underperformed towards the end when things yeah. kind of fell apart. The morale on the team ended up uh, likely dropped based on the the rumors that XWY would be removed from the squad. So Kind of became like a weird situation at the end but genuinely i see a lot of talent in the squad and um once they get a, a mid replacement eventually they'll be i think a really formidable team um and for now sumail is a good stand-in so they'll be fine yeah we'll have to see uh how they continue to adapt as well one would think that even if not doing so hot at dream league just playing against all those teams and maybe taking the time in the region to do a lot of scrimming that they should be looking pretty good but obviously you know limited scrims considering Sumail hmm. probably wasn't uh fully available for that but uh, the the Storm Spirit was actually banned out first thing by Liquid in the very next game. They just did not want to mess with that. Mm -hmm. And they took that second match. Execration not taking the same approach. They instead just want to go with more standard bands of the aisle, the Underlord, and to <laughs> absolutely no one's surprise, they will grab that Storm right away. So Execration, I'm sure, was ready for this. Yep, and they do the alternate IO the Pugna pick, which worked fantastic uh, yesterday when they paired this together. Uh, Boboko, I believe, played it. I'm not mistaken. Was it him? Uh, I'm mixing up multiple teams. Oh, we, I'm had, uh, pure. we had to or play from. Uh, yeah, we had Bet Boom play. That yeah, was Pure. Uh, in their yeah. loss to Aster. Pure's uh, Pugna was was mega good. I thought uh, the other day, but um, the the Pugna Storm Spear combo, fantastic. You can amplify the healing done to Storm Spear now without costing Pugna as much HP, so it's easier to be combat ready. <laughs> but ultimately, it's about allowing Sumail to like use his innate top tier game sense. Toppest of top tier game sense to just get pickoffs on the map. So it, it should yeah. be good. And to correct that, that was in their win. Sorry. That was when Bet Boom beat Aster because each team won with Storm in that series. That's what happened. Mm. And it was the classic okay. save Pugna, right? Yeah. yeah. So. 
Storm did very well in that series yesterday. Don't believe the, uh, there's match data, because remember we had to do a re-pick, and that was an all-pick, and so you're going to see match data that says that the Storm Spirit lost, but that's not true, guys. we got to mm -hmm. edit the data. But anyway, um, speaking Add of all those data. games of yesterday, uh, Doom is still in, and there's no offlaners, so I'm kind of wondering if he's going to show up in this offlane pool of bands right now. Has Doom felt that good to you? I mean, teams are still picking him consistently. And the Octarine buildup is very easy now, so you can just go Midas Octarine after off of your Arcane Boots Vanguard, but... My thought it... is he's not that good, but he is... If the game doesn't end, he kind of feels insane in the late game. Yeah, because you get you get Mega Six slotted no matter what. Pretty much every game, which is a, a nice advantage. They're going to ban some Storm counters here. Nyx removed. Puck removed to make sure Storm can't get away. Those would be some decent solutions. And on the Execration side, they ban the Bloodseeker, a nice counter against Slark to prevent his healing when he gets low. And faces Void, Chronosphere, Lockdown kind of stuff. Time dilation can be really annoying for Slark to deal with. So Yeah, I mean, he looked great yesterday, too. Uh, there is he the other... He looked great once he could overwhelm the Crimson Guard. But before True. the Crimson Guard, he looked like... <laughs> you're like, dude, you have like 10k net worth and you're doing zero damage for those those eight seconds. Uh, that Maybe we have like a little agreement between the teams where we just won't won't buy Crimson Guard, you know? It could I mean, be an idea. The one thing that makes me feel good about it, it, they did mega reduce the duration, obviously. It's only eight seconds. So if the fight, if you use it at the wrong timing, then uh, there's a solution there. But you can obviously dispel it if you happen to build towards that. But there aren't the most sources of dispel at the moment. Aster gonna grab a, a hero that was used against them. This was what Betboom did. They had the Storm, the Pugna, which, you know, obviously that, that's pretty standard stuff, but bringing that Dawnbreaker, because Betboom looked great. They had the Dawn, the PL, and they had the additional mana source of the Crystal Maiden in that mm. uh, game versus Aster. So, could be looking pretty good. Obviously, global potential, lots of fights. Seems like a strong pick. Mm -hmm. uh, Execration, if you want to go a little bit crazy. Ah, never mind. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> okay, but I, either way, the Dawnbreaker extra heal on top of what Pugna can provide is just so useful because whatever person gets gone on on the Aster side, you should be able to save them in, in a multi-group of uh, mul multiple different ways. Uh, they do pick the Doom in the end. Dooming Storm, always good, unless they have a Pugna and a Dawnbreaker to back them up. And this is basically what <laughs> Betboom did as well, I believe. There was a case where a Storm got doomed, I think. Yeah. And he just slowly walked out while getting shitloads of heals dumped into him. And he was in a Ricky so a uh, shard smoke as well, and still nothing mm -hmm. could bring him down. So definitely the, the power of save here. Execration probably, I mean, they, if they want any particular mid, they probably want to grab it now because it's likely to get banned out here. Some like storm beating mid hero. There it is, Lich mid. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, all right, they're going to take Lich. their time instead. I think Lich is kind of interesting right now. Um, the hero's win rate is decent, I think. Uh, and it, it was like kind of good in the last patch, but kind of fell to the wayside over the strength of like your enchantress type heroes. Um, the one nice thing is he actually burns mana with his pull, and it's a percentage thing. So if he does catch Storm with it, it actually could really hurt their mana pool oh, yeah, in true. terms of team fights. Uh, but the the shield is good now that there's a Monkey King. Chain Frost also makes a lot of sense between when you think about like a Pugna healing out, healing somebody and trying to keep them alive. It should kind of like add overwhelming damage if they happen to stay in the area too long. But the downside is that Nether Ward is going to hurt for, for old Lichy here. Right. Old school combo as well. Doom Lich used to run together in the offlane quite a bit. So it looks like mm -hmm. that's probably what the setup's going to be here. I mean, I guess you can just do Lich yeah. Slark anyway. That's also completely fine. You can do Ench Doom. So really they have uh, some pretty solid options here. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they're flexible. Even if there's like a Marana or something, they can try to like lane swap and, and anticipate that. Because they are looking for another support here for Aster. Uh, of course, it could be Monkey King 4. We've been mm -hmm. seeing a decent amount of it in the last couple of days. I can't remember if it was Aster or a different team that played it in the previous uh, match. I think it was EG. Yeah, I don't think EG. it was Aster. Yeah. But it looks good. Um, You have a lot more... Yeah, it feels like you have more options in terms of... Uh, You've got neutral items that you can more easily get the right one for you that applies like a slow with your ulti. Um, Diffusal Blade is still good. You can go Mage Slayer build. You can go so many different things. Steal Wisdom runes, you know. That's true. They're all over the place. Mm-hmm. And they're banning out so, uh, the Ember, looking at potential mid heroes. Is there any way that they bother trying to do like Slark mid and go for like the Anti-Mage? Or is that just not worth 
Uh, probably not worthwhile because um, Slark is going to have trouble against Storm Spirit due to being a melee hero. I feel like Storm mm -hmm. would kind of just out regen him and bully him. Slark typically has survivability issues in the laning stage. He gets harassed a lot and he can't really dish it back outside of uh, Essence Shift trading. So if it's like a, if it's a hero like Storm that like trades better in melee than range, then it, I just feel like there's no way that Slark wins that one. In terms of the, in terms of the uh, over the period of like a six or seven minute, unless Storm like massively messes up, I feel like. Uh, yeah. There ain't no way. Who, who did we use to get the, the Slark versus? Just Bat, pretty much? Yeah, basically just Bat, I think, yeah. was the, think the couple it. times. Oh, and yeah, I want to say mid-Underlord when people tried that. That was kind of fun. Sure. Yeah, the some radius heroes, Underlord. <laughs> yeah, if somebody plays some like offlane heroes mid, Slark would be fine against them, most likely. Yeah, Star, Star's so interesting, I think, to lane against, too. Like, he's just so much damage. Like, he's kind of fragile, but if you miss that, like, mm -hmm. one opportunity and he gets that, like, tiny little bit of boost heal, you just get blown up. As we saw a couple times mm -hmm. yesterday, you know? Sumail yeah. had, like, some IO tethers in, and you're just like, oh, this was a huge mistake. Yep. Then he gets the remnant and the right click and the pull and the right click and the second remnant. And, and two right tower click, and shots. Like, and <laughs> yeah, it's you're like, dead. oh, I just took, like, <laughs> 600 damage. Yeah. It, it can be kind of crazy, for sure. They're going to ban out a Viper to protect their Storm a little bit. That would have been a decent option. Uh, the break as well against Monkey King would have been kind of nice. True. Depending on what Monkey role it is. But they're still very flexible on the Team Master side. Excellent draft so far. Monkey is really a, a very strong position for in that way. I feel like there aren't a lot of fours that flex between four and a one position. Like that's just atypical. So it really is a valuable yeah. um, hero to wield in your draft in that way. And the, the fact that it also, it's not just a one, it's like a lane dominating one is like a a plus three advantage in some ways. But they pick Batrider, uh, like we talked about yesterday, one of the best matchups against Monkey King. You can spot him in the trees, you can kill the trees. That should dissuade them from uh, playing, at, playing it as a one because Batrider can counter it as a mid hero. It is notoriously a pretty bad matchup versus the Storm. Well, maybe not a bad matchup versus Storm, but everyone just goes Storm versus Bat because Storm has an, a good enough time that it's like, oh, I get a Storm game, I guess is the better way to put it. It's not necessarily like, oh, Bat's just done. So maybe it doesn't matter that much. Mm. Uh, and well, then the it's either support here, yeah. or carry. Um, Execration was anticipating support with their bands, the band, the CM and the Disruptor. Disruptor pretty good against Slark. CM good to combo with Storm and Pugna, of course. Yeah, some like heavy AOE slows and controls, trying to help over like the Wukong's command as well. Plus just like super solid mm -hmm. heroes right now, obviously. Both really good versus Ench. I love glimpsing back Ench when she's trying to be really annoying in your jungle. Like poke and prod mm -hmm. and like scout, you can actually punish her. Yeah, that that is really helpful. Give your give your teammates time to show up with like two two extra heroes to guarantee her kill instead of her just getting away. There is Shadow Demon? With like the purge, that could be kind of cool, and like a semi save versus lasso. It's okay. I think they need more damage personally. Morana would work fine. Like between like Pugna and it is a it is a monkey one, of course. So I guess that gives them good damage. Maybe they had enough damage. It could have worked. But it feels like they wouldn't have good burst outside of like everyone using skills yeah. that are expensive. Like Sumail would have to commit on storm. Or Don would have to use all of his combos, or Mane would have to stun that guy. I feel like you, they needed more setup. Did you see someone made a Reddit post about uh, some of the interactions of like certain spells with BKBs and yeah. uh, Shadow Demon? You can disrupt a BKB target, and like the target won't get disrupted, but at the end of what would have been the disruption, the illusions just appear. Okay. So you can That's still interesting. Isn't that crazy? You can just like make illusions of an enemy BKB target, but if it's an ally, they'll still get stuck. Mm -hmm. Like they'll still get absorbed inside. So now you can target an ally. They'll get disrupted during their BKB and pop out with illusions. Okay, so more grief potential. Yes. But <laughs> yeah. you could, but but also you could like disrupt a guy that gets roared through BKB or something and just True. protect them. Yeah. And in some rare cases, but yeah, it's kind of hard to adjust to those things. The fact that you can use things. That you can waste spells on BKB heroes. Like, have you used Yules against a guy that has BKB before? Yeah, there's like a little work. twirly you, twirl. You see yeah. the tor you see the tornado go up, and you're like, oh, I just completely wasted my Yules. Whereas before, it's like if you'd make that mistake clicking on him, it just wouldn't work, and you'd be yeah. like, oh, or you could just it didn't mash work. too, because it's like gonna be yeah. ending, and you're just like mash, 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 mash on a TP. Yeah. But now oh, you have to like actually not waste your spells. Like I've I've seen it a couple times. Um, so in some ways, BKB there's a couple cases where BKB is better. For, for annoying stuff like that. People can accidentally waste their, their abilities. Disrupt would be another example. Yeah. Waiting for BKBN to disrupt him to defend yourself. Now you press it too early and it just doesn't fucking do anything. 
yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, Marana against Enchantress makes a lot of sense. Go lane the Marana against Enchant, try to limit the uh, the abuse potential of the Enchant creep. And then Monkey is going to lane against Doom, which is a nice matchup there. And then late game, it'll be what, Monkey versus Slark? I don't know what the matchup is like for there. It's probably fine, though. Yeah, probably just a little bit of like, you know, every one versus Monkey King of like, just don't fight in Wukongs. Yay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like yeah, a plan. Death Shroud will be pretty nice this game, too. Like Storm zipping in and stuff. Might be able to help yeah, somebody out. Yeah, I agree. Protect that guy. Uh, All right. The goal here. Um, and they're going to start off running off to their lanes in the game. That's what they do. Uh, Blood Grenade count here. Oh, wait. First off, this Doom has just... Look at this build. That's a build, ladies and gentlemen. Branch, Quelling Blade, save for Ring of Health. That's a gamer right there. Tino on this Doom here. We, we love to see that. Uh, this is a classic. This is a Dota 1 strat right here. That's right. <laughs> um, he's got too many items truly for that strat. But yeah, the Ring of Health rush was a classic. And good point. It's a lot cheaper now. It's only 700 gold. It is not unreasonable to rush for this. Because what's going to happen? He's going to get two bounty runes probably. That's going to put his gold at like 550. He's only like three and a half last hits from getting a ring of health at that point. So that's kind of gross. All right. Tino's on that next level. I'm checking it out. Uh, let's see. But Blood grenades. We got one on the Pugna on the dire side, and we got one on Ench. And I saw another one, one on the Lich. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. Bat Rider, unsurprisingly, did lose the ability to use Sticky Napalm with Blood Grenades. <laughs> Who could have expected this to be changed? It's almost like every time a neutral item gets added in and it works with Sticky Napalm, it doesn't the next day. Yeah. And I mean, I guess they gave those players like a good day one or something, but like, come on. How is that in any way like an unexpected outcome? <laughs> well,. Shanks is trying to find the pathway here. Gonna go up with Tino as they head towards the rune. It's the battle of the clicks, and he knows I'm gonna lose this because there's a stun on that Monkey King. So gives it up. And it will be a two for two in the end as they chuck some additional damage. Great impetus there on the Pichu. Shanks says, come on, come back again. Well, he wants a little more. Does he do it? Shanks, cool. not gonna go for the big chases. There is a body block in the mid lane here. We're gonna see who gets the better situation. Oh, Sumail, this guy's pretty Sumail, good. Sumail, who could expect? <laughs> He's pretty good. He's a good, good mid player. <laughs> Magic stick, lots of ironwood branches, normal stuff here for these two players. And meanwhile, Pichu up top just trying to make his way back to lane as Kylo and Shanks were anticipating the path he's to take. But you know what? It's a lot easier to get back when supports are trying to block you now. He just dips into the trees, finds a pathway in behind. I to do those big blockouts here, but it's going to be a, an early 3v2 up top yeah. here. And uh, Talos is paying a bit of a price here as he's getting blasted by Bobica, but he gets the wave under his tower. So it's not the worst situation, and uh, you're just kind of hoping to maybe pick up that instant kill from the side of the Radiant. Unfortunately, they don't, so Carlo will just take the Twin right. Gate back down bottom. What a patch. Yeah, they're just trying to help out the Doom a little bit, I think, to help him get his Ring of Health. Uh, that way he doesn't get bullied by Monkey, but Monkey did go stun level 1, which they knew of, so maybe a little bit unnecessary, but ultimately fine for Execration here in their lane. And yeah, he's got the Ring of Health now, so he's going to better be able to stay alive alive against the monkey king and the only person that really gets hurt much is slur Man. it's only a couple last hits not that big of a deal that's wild though you know this guy just has five armor now doom used to be just like so squishy now he's got five armor and eight hp regen right away with this ring hell health rush that's a great strategy from tino yeah it's only gonna go up when he when he gets devour as well here i mean he does we saw that doom yesterday go infernal blade level two that's he does scorched earth level three but he's snacking bro bro <laughs> yeah, he's, centaur, he's munching. He's, he's making his way to that camp. He's like, I don't want that one. And he's no. going to see this hill troll priest, and he's like, yes. Oh, the heal. Heal amplification. That's that gives beautiful. him probably, like, another one HP regen per second or something. Combo. You know, we will pick up some nature's attendance. <laughs> okay, not not really, though. But, you know, big combos, guys. I run the swing that used to give uh, mana regen aura as well. Dude, that, that thing was so busted. At least that, that heal, guy's still around now. Good. But Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the aura is so on the, uh, the zapper creep now. But yeah. Didn't he heal like 10 like, health? Yeah, it was like really bad animation wise. You have to spend a lot of time shaking that damage out here. Boboka will die. Pugna's going to get there. Sorry, though. Little, little trade. Little trade out, but... Made some little trades. They were all just kind of chucking spells at each other down bottom. There was, there was no regen left on the Slark. That's pretty much the point they were at. Everyone threw their spells at once and three people died. That's pretty much how, how it went down. There was 850 damage chucked out there uh, from that early. Bobica Pugno, so that is kind of nasty. Yeah, he must have gotten Blood Grenade on like two heroes plus plus some blasts, so 
makes sense they went for it. And they actually didn't have, they actually don't have Dark Pact yet on Sark. He went Pounce level 1 to help stay alive. Normally you'd have uh, Essence Shift, but in that 2v1, mm. you kind of needed the escape, which means now he just doesn't have Dark Pact, and they're going to start trading again. On yeah, bottom. they're trying to make use of this Frost Shield early. It's on two heroes. That feels really nice, but not enough damage to convince them. And XXS immediately grabs the Lotus. No time for them to try and push back. That, that was a great defensive play from Bobka. Oh, that's so interesting. You never really like trying to control areas on the side lanes as much before, but now you have something like a nether ward that you can just like plant down. Like this is ours. You don't mm -hmm. want to fight us here, and we're gonna get these lotus. Yeah, because he's like, if we win this fight, I get 125 health and mana. It's like fighting for the bounty rune or the the water rune, really. And that, that kind of felt bad for the first Slark at the end because he disengaged and he gets his tango delivered, but it's like, bro, you just lost 80 percent of your HP. <laughs> and I guess Dawnbreaker is kind of similar, so maybe it's not the worst situation to be in, but. Still stuff for Pelos. Another, uh, and they did a pull right before this as well. Christinely, so they'll get a little waddling ripper over here to kill. Yeah. Kill, disconnected. That, no. that is rough, too, because since they did the pull on Aster, they kind of gave up that territory in a sense. So, like, they had to commit to get the Lotus there now, or else they're not going to get it, because, like, the wave's pushing up. That was really well timed by Aster. Yeah. And so, in some ways, their fault for doing the pull first, but. Um, it, by the way, Black Barrett in the mid lane is smoked, running back to mid. That means Storm or Sumail did something fantastic, <laughs> like out harassed him, got him out of the lane. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, he got bodied pretty hard in terms of uh, just just damage. I was kind of keeping an eye on uh, my second uh, side here. Thanks for our program monitor. Two Thank eyes. You. Oh my god. Yeah, <laughs> I have two beautiful screens here. Thanks to the lovely Pablo Obsing for us here. And uh, yeah, he was just getting clicked and clicked and clicked. See. Damn, X Creation really loves that uh, Killer Pigeon line, huh? He does. It is uh, quite annoying. It's That's the power of that line for sure. It's just one of those that you don't want to hear and frustrates you. Well well done, KP. Nicely done. It's like the, it's like the annoying version of the FE line, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Very powerful stuff. But yeah, Sumail's skill build a little interesting. He went for more overload rather than uh, over the fight bottom. Stark <sighs> does get the kill. Just happens again. Just... Dealing and dealing. And uh, that'll be his first permanent agi here as he sits at 1 1 and 1. He's doing much better now. I mean, his, his armor is decent with this Wraith Band, and he's got an 8 stick, so if he does get gone on, he can survive. But... Man, it's just so much harassment. Like, Bobo's going to come back here. Access has the Arcane Boots. Palos just getting disrespected here. It has 10 charges on the stick, but you can see up top. Uh, 26 CS here for Monet. I mean, not too surprising, I guess. Like, it is a Monkey King in a situation where he's not really in a lot of danger. They haven't been able to just, like, shove creeps in at him. He's got the protection of this Marana. He's mostly just been chilling under his tower. Should start off pretty hot in this game. A lot of last hits. Big advantage over his opponent. And he got trialing it for the first couple of minutes, so it's even more impressive. Um, Carlo does rotate to the top lane. He gets spotted by the Observer Ward. They're going to play probably a little safe for a moment here. There is a chance that Monet could die, but it's probably not super likely. I mean, they would have to take oh, yeah. a lot of heat here. I wonder if... It looked like Carlo kind of knew PG was on the hunt for him there. Oh, they have this obs, I see. Looking under the tower. Gotcha. Yep. So they're, they're fully aware of everything. Uh, yeah, definitely going to start bringing some sentries, I think, as a five. I'm just going to, like, keep centering the twin gigs. I feel like I'm just going to... I'm going to gain gold just by doing that, you know? Probably true, yeah. The downside is that uh, a lot of players forget to use the twin gates, like OD Pixel and myself. So mm, true. Uh, the ward is just a useless thing in a lot of cases too. All the best players never using the twin gate. My my strategy of only going to my lane and almost nothing else is uh is really being punished these days. Yeah, you know, you know, it worked for a solid like thirteen years and or years. something. Yeah, so you know, time. it's you did great. Long time. Sumail uh, off to the jungle right now as he's very close to picking up that level 6. As the wave starts to push back in, Bobka's going to drag it on over. And uh, and then we might see a little bit of action here with the 6-minute rune coming up. Obviously, Storm Spirit would love to grab that. Part of the reason why Bobka's here and Pichu's coming mid. We're all looking for the runes. Pichu's going to try and hit this arrow. Oh, swing and a miss up top there. He tried to arrow the Hellbear Smasher. Did not connect. The Marana counter. Not much of a counter as Shanks will take the haste rune away. And hesitate. I would have loved to have that rune. Oh, these impetuses feel so good. Oh, lasso. Yeah, we got a lasso going on one spot here. As Bobica's in a little bit of trouble down in the river. Unfortunately, the river does not put out fire. 
And the D-Crab not enough to save him. Shanks with that haste did chase Pichu pretty deep under the tower. But was not able to grab him uh, with a couple of impetuses there. Does secure himself the bounty rune, though. So Overall, great play there from the Radiant supports. They rotate in. They get the kill with Lasso. They bully them back. Unfortunately, just not able to grab Sumail. Really nicely done with the, the Lasso there. The noticing, like, oh, I can just pull him low ground and then he's mega out of position. It was a good read there the situation they are going to actually smoke though sumail has his falcon blade finish with his boots in his bottle he's going to bottle a little bit and try to get a kill oh, somewhere th this is half mana they're coming towards the seven mana wizard room they're going to be a little bit too late though uh, i think this is going to be the classic play you come right before seven you stack the ancients you grab it but they you know they don't grab the wisdom rune but they will pick up a free kill because you know support's going to be here so it's a good point really actually news. yeah not not a bad kill then Spends a little time in. Oh, watch out. This Doom's level four, guys. Oh, what? He's got a Vanguard. He's going to run you down. He looks Bob scary, up, but he's just a little bit tanky here. So they're going to start bringing in the Dawnbreaker oh, so right good. onto Bob. There's the grab. Lich not able to get the save. And now he's going to get pulled here under the tower. It's trying to help him, but those towers, they're just tickling a little bit here on this storm. Sumail did that go. so freaking well. Like, he didn't have Vortex. It was still on cooldown from when he used it on the Enchantress. So he disabled. He jumps on Batrider to set up the Dawn ulti. This takes coordination, by the way. And then That's he right. did it with slows. Just like ball slows to keep him in the AoE long enough for the Dawn stun to land. Like, when they started, I was like, "There's surely this isn't going to work. Like, cool idea, but the stun won't hit. And then the stun hit, it like blew my mind, dude. The other part Mail was that really doing it. when they started walking over there, he had like 300 mana. Like, like he was like yeah. less than this when they started going over to gank that inch in the first place, you know? And that, that's all from missing that first rune. But now... He's going to ball up. I guess this is kind of a nerf to Storm, huh? That they added shield rune. I feel like this nerf, this rune isn't particularly great for Storm compared to how much he's able to abuse the others. So now there's a lower chance that he's going to get a yeah. rune that's good for him. I see what you mean, but he can also really pick and choose when he uses the, the shield rune. And in the early game, it's not like he's less reliant on just like needing mana or he dies no matter what, I feel like. That's true. Because, because he doesn't, it doesn't cost him that much mana to output damage, so... Something like a shield rune will, will go a long ways. And he's got decent raw HP too, so it being useful. But I see what you mean for sure. Oh, zip in here. Trying to use a bit of this vision that was left on the pillar. I'm going to grab. Not even look like the arrow though, as the lasso is there from Bob. Now pulling Sumail. Well, he pulls him one way, and Sumail just keeps going the same direction. He's out of mana now, but the shield rune helps tank. A couple hits in that tower. Hino comes in. Do they have the damage? Ooh, the deep crap just to rune. ensure. The shield the rune shield saves rune. him. <laughs> Clearly. The only way he could live, as Bobuga did stick around a little bit too long to ensure the decrap there for the save, and he will have to trade his life, give Sumail uh, the safe return home. Tough, tough there. Burned a lot of mana doing his initial jump. Um, I guess they didn't want to hesitate at all. Maybe they could have like followed where the bat was running because it kind of looked like he was going to try camp area, but the fact that Sumail didn't die at least is a nice advantage for the squad. Um, and either way, Sumail is still picking up more items. His info Carlo. is a little higher. Jeez. He just got so macked down. Boundless strike into arrow into a lot of right clicks from Monet. Bad for them. Is Doom caught up yet? Yeah, he is level six finally here. And Doom's like fine. Arcane Vanguard. He's got the faded brooch as well, so he will be quite happy. He's trying to figure out what to do right now. He thought about hopping into the twin gate, didn't end up doing it. Grabs the watcher. Now he's gonna TP mid. Okay, so they're gonna try and make oh, this no. double play here. Oh, they're good bait. It. It's working out pretty well. As they come bringing the Ooh. Dawnbreak. Oh, that just barely connects onto poor Bob. Almost managed to make a little play here with the bait onto Sumail. The Doom is still there. XXS, I'm sure, going to look for this deny. Oh, oh wait, maybe we not. Never mind. He's going to mech instead, but no, it's not enough. Tino will take that 4x streak. As XXS continues to chase, Tino grabs the DD rune here. Gets away right. from the stun. Carlo does fall, though. The damage from Pichu. And now they're going to chase after Tino. Nice, nice cut, cut on the tree, though. See you later, he says. Four second stun. That didn't get reduced in the global reduction. And they're going to get out. So that could have been a lot better for Excavation. Very disappointing, considering they, they tried to bait in Sumail in the first place. They still lose Bob and Carlo. And it's not over quite yet. Tino, that hurts. You barely get out. But the greed. He's so close to that Midas gold. Oh, is that why, is that why he stayed? I yeah, see. yeah. I was wondering. I was like, it seems a little bit excessive to uh, stick around just for that. Did I? But um, yeah, Sumail gets punished. I thought he was going to ball dodge the uh, the animation from Doom, but he kind of just ate it to secure the bat kill. See, so it kind of sucked that they lost two heroes in the end. But at least they killed Sumail. Stopped his streak. Who got the who got the gold, by the way? It was Tino. Uh, Tino did get it, yeah. 
So, I mean, that's going to help get that Midas online a little bit earlier here as he already has Arcanes and Vanguard. And the Arcanes and Mech, of course, that we just saw from XXS being put to good use here as they all just group up down bottom. And classic Dawnbreaker Monkey King accidentally cuts one A's tree. These heroes a little bit tough, you know. Lyrical had a little bit of a, uh, a Dawnbreaker spree at one point. I was playing a lot of Hoodwink. Very annoying, not going to lie. Chopping all my trees down. And they're gonna pop in the twin gates though. Take one tower, defend the other. That is the plan. Looks like they'll be all right. So you done? Smell getting closer to his Witchblade here. Help give him a little bit more damage when he does go for these ganks. Help set up the Donald these even better too. I gotta say we ha we haven't seen as much like Pugnac healing the storm just yet, but. The different phases of this draft uh, will be pretty useful here. They're going to yeah. break smoke on a guy in yeah. hiding trees. Oh, they layers. have Okay. Like onions. They do not need all the layers of their damage, though. That arrow just sails on through the dead corpse of Ench. Didn't even need it. How did they know he was there? I guess because of the way their they... smoke popped, it looked like. They must have had vision or something, because his stun was so instant. It was like smoke pop and they stun him. Yeah, it must have been something lingering in behind. Or just like some weird angle through the trees. Yeah, it was probably like an angle through the trees that they spotted him is my, my hunch. Bobka going to juice back up some mail though. And everyone's lurking nearby. Bob stunned into the leap here, chasing after him. The Moonlight oh, the Shadow fear. is up. And oh man, that's a combo. That Chain Frost is bouncing, but it's not enough damage. Bob gets the last one in time though. Guy's making his way towards the cliff. Can't quite survive though. The Wukong is holding dead. everyone back. He's going to die in the Firefly. So Bob does get his revenge from the grave, and considering the efforts, it's nice that it's only a 1-1 trade in terms of execration, but if they grab this tower, continue this pressure after, that's going to be the bad news. It is a Pugna. We can just keep the pressure going. Pichu also, oh my goodness, dying to Shanks over here. One more impetus. Oh, we can't quite get it. Close. I guess there was a decrap anyway, so good choice not to chase. It's cool to see them defend their, their tower. Oh, they're going to try to get Monet, but... Let's we'll see them defend the tower with his Observer Ward set to the left of that of that tier one. Uh, definitely helped a little bit against the storm to not have to worry about exactly where he was. Yeah. Um, and it would have gone even worse there for Aster if not for that mech coming out of the Dawnbreaker. That heal definitely made a big difference. Got them the kill at least. But they're going about even here despite the KD, the, the kills and deaths looking not even. Um, Secretion just getting way more farm. Yeah, and everyone's got the timers Velocity. going though. At 14 minutes, we get a stack here from Carlo. And we'll see if he immediately goes for the Wisdom Room or who they want to hand it to. He is the closest for one. Someone. Oh, what's it? Maybe they just forgot or they intentionally want to give it to someone else. Either way, Bob not able to grab that Invis Rune in the middle uh, of the river. Monet just going to grab it first. And they're starting to approach this mid tower. The, the breaks are not available here for Aster. They just go, go, go. And Carlo, a bad time to come and ward. Instant pull into arrow. Great setups here. Looking like the Ember and uh, Marana combos here with these easy setup for arrows. And he's got the Witchblade finish as well. So as soon as he gets hit one time, his HP is going to be at half after that. So let's pick up Scan. It's going to notice the rotation. Sumail is going to destroy these little Watchers here. Realizing someone was nearby, but we'll clean that up. I mean, we talked yesterday about how these games are just like so fast paced, but like, I mean, look at Execration. What do you think uh, they need to do to try and like turn this around in terms of like Palos' timings or, or maybe where Tino's going to get to? Because it, it feels like they're close to something here. Yeah, I think they just need a little bit more time for Sark, probably. Um, give him time to uh, finish his axe. That way he can be more in and out of the fight. Um, with his Diffusal and Echo, he can obviously get some kills. Like if he finds a support by themselves, Pugna or Marana, probably more Marana, he can definitely get a kill right now. But gonna take a little time for him to feel super safe yeah i guess we'll have to see like the four staff timings compared to uh to his eggs because uh, is that wait is the one done for bobica right now is that his four staff oh wow okay his four staff is actually done that's annoying yeah it's gonna Maron be a lot going to one next too but definitely a good game for four staffs get away from batrider get away from doom See if Shanks can get away from Aster right now, because they are just swarming across this map. It's probably why the net worth is relatively even. My part of it is that there's a Doom, but the other part is that we've seen a lot of just like clumping from Aster as they move across the map together. That's true. Palace is also farming insanely fast on the Slark, though. Yeah, true. His net worth is just high. His his raw last hits is uh, 157. The next closest is Sumail at 123. And I'm pretty sure he just remnanted some skeletons or something. I oh, know they were my golems. Oh. 
Man, are we just less punished for clumping now because there's so many more camps? Like, can you just... Are there smart ways to move where you can, like, all farm a camp while mobilizing right now? It's so interesting. Because, like, I don't know, like, I feel like camp spawning every minute is, like, too fast almost with how many camps are on the map right now. Not that I want to see it slowed down, like, back when we had the two-minute spawns. But it it feels like there's just so much gold. <laughs> kind of does, yeah. Uh, it could be that, for sure. But, man, this wisdom room is actually still here. Slark saw it, I think. Sess will grab it. That'll give him his level 12. He'll be happy to have that. Great. Um, uh, yeah, maybe it's something like that, perhaps. That it, but I think it's, it's mostly just that they are cutting their losses. Like, they're not getting killed that often in these movements from Aster. So, like, mm. yeah, it's not necessarily, I don't think, a problem of not enough gold on the map. And Chan gets jumped mid. Not gonna commit. It's not so much. I don't think that there's too much farm in the map. It's just that execration is doing a good job avoiding these like three and four man ganks, and the the losses are never more than like one, one hero or something like that. So I think yeah, it's more true. just execration is playing well. Or like when they traded out like four Sumail for the bat and stuff. It hasn't been these like, you know, exactly big issues. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so oh. I mean Sumail seven two and zero KDA right now. Like that, he's getting good kills, but they are limiting him from having like the freest of free games, which is really important. All right, I did not realize that that's what uh, the Lincoln's build was now. My bad. Cornucopia, okay. I mm. definitely thought there was a ring of health still in Lincoln's. Sort of. <laughs> There's a red ring on the right. There's a cornucopia. fake ring of health. Yeah, okay. Good. All these uh, decent trades, they, they haven't lost any tier twos yet. But it feels like ass are getting a little bit close to that. And of course, at 18 minutes with the Storm Spirit, we start thinking about things like, do they want to do the Roche and, and give this Storm uh, the big power for the, for the major jumping, especially versus the Doom? If you can get the right jump, it's going to feel real good. But for now, just a lot of AFK farming once again. Slark is... This is eggs. Is okay. Dissemble Echo Saber into the eggs. Typical build, and he'll rebuild the Echo. I, I, he's going to definitely get aggressive now. Urge, I think this is the longest we've had like some breathing room in any of the games we've cast this event. Yeah, I would agree with that, actually. Like, it, people it are actually down. playing the map right now, it feels like. Hmm. I think it's just a, a natural case of uh, things are more chaotic, but now they're getting uh, getting uh, comfortable levels of things, so it's easier for them to read ganks and things like that. It's probably what's happening. The uh, the vision as well, not great still as we're trying to figure things out. A lot of wards down for Aster on the top side of the map. They got the Twin Gate down. They got the Lotus Pool warded. They got the uh, the Ancient Area warded. Not a whole lot in the bottom half. That's why they're all making their way down here together. And they are getting close to Palos. XSS and Palos going to spot each other. Of course, I say that. It's more like Palos spotting him because of Night Vision. Pichu jumps in. Gives the vision. But Palos will just continue. He's even going to farm the camp in the hot tub. Crazy Slark this guy is. They keep moving away. One place Slark can't see ultra far. Right. The He's danger. actually gonna go uh, school Mage Slayer after with his um his Oblivion staff on the Slark. So Ooh, well, oh, they're going. They're going around the Bob, and yeah, they make it look pretty easy. Unfortunately, he does have BKB now. That's a little bit too late to be helpful in this one. I see. It was in the base, and there's a regen for two mail, so he loses nothing in that fight. Oh, yeah, cool build. Cool build on the Slark though. Go disassemble Ags and then transition to Mage Slayer. It'll be nice. The magic resistance will be fantastic against the storm. Well, maybe. Sumail being greedy with his regen rune. Perhaps that could cost him. They don't see him perfectly. Now they see him. Well, if only it was nighttime. They missed the pounce, though, but nice fear grab there from Carlo. And the Ags helping out. The second charge guarantees the grab. And that is such a needed kill here for Execration. It feels like their patience has finally paid off. Yeah, they just wanted to get the eggs on the Slark first to make him feel really comfortable. Oh, that Bob. Way he can better punish. Goes for the Glyph on the wave to try and chase down on the money. There are a lot of dire heroes here. But of course, his own rotations are coming through. They're kind of far away, though, but Aster don't know that. They're a little bit scared. They could just literally turn and force Bob's BKB out here and probably all survive, but knowledge is power, and they currently success. don't have it. They're, everyone's just trying to escape right now. Pichu's grabbed. And he'll probably be the one to pay. The question is, do they get someone a little bit more valuable here? Very tanky. The hub out there. Monet goes for the turn, though. There is no Doom right now, so they're going to try and focus down on Tino. Still holding the pipe buff as well here from XXS. There's a lot of uh, shielding they can do themselves here. It's, of course, the pipe has already been popped by Tino. Now turning back in. Palos jumps in. Sumail back in the fight. Though goes right for the back line onto that Lich. Trying to stop Carlos from getting off the Frost Blast, but he does instead. 
We got a little Frost Nova bouncing around here, and they are going to get the grab on XXS. So great lasso here. And Palos continue the chase. Grabs on the bottom. Gun. Turns. Ulti. Oh, that's a big loss here. Almost surely going to be able to grab that one. Monet. Oh, he fell off the tree for a second there. They turn on Sumail. It's a lot of AoE damage you can pump out. The Palos just gets out. Going to lose Tino. Pichu. Pichu hits these. Pichu, come on. Show me that arrow. Wow. Coward. He's going to hold it. He's Coward, hold it. Pichu. No we'll fight. Uh when all is said and done, it's actually very even. Only a 500 gold advantage going to the Radiant Squad. So, very, very close fight. I love watching the Doom. Yeah, the experience was definitely a big deal. Uh, I liked watching Doom run in, pop pipe, and I was like, oh, he's only got magic resistance. This is not going to work here. And then he gets Ice Armor, and you're like, okay, this guy actually can't die. Which really justifies his uh, his delayed like BKB build here, basically. Between the Ice, the Frost Armor, and the pipe, their survivability is just mega high in these engagements. Um, they will take the Shard. They did not win the fight hard enough, unfortunately, for them to uh, take the enemy tormentor. True. But who got the shard lich? That's a good one. Oh, I, I think this is, is fantastic. great. Yeah, it's one of those ones too that I mean, we kind of talked about this before, but like there's some supports that couldn't really buy it because like other items like glimmers and force staffs you often want on a lich. So just getting it for free feels pretty amazing. Uh, it makes yeah, I would, it. I would agree. Like, makes this the chain is, so much better. It's definitely one of those heroes where it feels like a really big advantage. Um, because it, it just allows you to get like solo kills, basically. Where you're like, oh, I'm going to Chain Frost bounce this on one guy like five times while Ooh. I use Sinister Gaze. Sumail uses the second zip there. What's sure he's going to go for? And they do commit the uh, the Solar Guardian as well. But not going to be enough for the kill. But at least they force out a BKB. But yeah, I never noticed before until I started seeing more of it because of like Lich is being a little bit more in like top tier pubs and also getting the shard now. But the 15 second uptime with a 25 second cooldown is, is kind of cool. You can just like drop it around places. I suppose that's true. Vision or uh, just slowing people in an AOE as the team fight's happening. It's a it's a really really good chart. I agree. And we learned about on the panel at least at Dream League that it does something when you kill it. It gets, makes a frost blast. Frost. Yep. Didn't know that. I think it's is it a frost blast AOE around the spire or is it on the guy that kills it? I'm not sure which. Uh, I forget which one. Let's look. It is. It will create a frost blast around it. I think it is just around the spire. Gotcha. Arrow comes in. See. Easy. You could use it to kill creep waste, for example, if you really want it. He hasn't opted to get lots of levels of Sinister Gaze this game, which is a bit interesting. Usually, Liches will prioritize that instead, but I do personally like Frost Blast leveling, because it does give you a lot more kill power. So maybe it's just he recognizes that they have an Enchantress and they need some more damage here. They are smoked and looking for a fight, though. Slark is super down for Whoa. this, but they spot. Sumail, yeah, he just zips right in. I mean, there's still no BKB on Bob, so he's hesitating right now. I don't know if he wants to go to full old brouhaha between the both teams. Sumail, running low on mana, still has that Aegis. So they don't really want to target him down right now. They're going to start on to Tino with the Wukongs. They're committing a lot on here. They try Depth the Depth Shroud Shade. Shade. Yeah, Depth Dep Shroud save? That's English. Found it. He did it. And he actually lived. And he didn't have to pop BKB. Like, I thought he was super dead with those chain stuns. He must have gotten hit by the arrow follow up or something like that because he was stunned for freaking forever. But nice. stays alive. Oh, is going to regen back up. Oh, pipe hello, XXS. He's feeling very confident walking up to this high ground here. But yeah, it's, you know, Samil's just back up to full mana. So, what, what an ability alive. here. That is a big pound. This is the max range of leash. Four staff out, though, on Samil. He's still stunned up, though. That's a big stun. And he's Ice actually fire. able to zip out. He's so low. He's getting so much value out of this Aegis right now. Is he actually going to survive as well? I mean, they have lost X success, but Sumail wants to burn the oh. Aegis in this fight. He's trying to die right now. They don't even want to kill him at the moment, but they're going to in the end. So he's going to respawn back up here. Can they get a chain stun on top? Bobika's nearby, looking for the safe and the help onto Sumail. Ling is just popped. Doom is used. He's going to juice him up, though. Bobika might even just sacrifice himself right now. Shanks trying to get the final kill onto Sumail. Doesn't want him to get away from this, but it looks like he will. Meanwhile, Palso in the back line trying to catch him onto Bobika. Oh, Jukes, ring around. The Rosie, the tree. Ooh, not able to do it. No calling blade to help out there from Palace, so it takes a little bit longer, but he gets the kill in the end. Sumail zips back Round onto three. Shanks. Oh, yeah, he tried it again. It worked once, but not twice. Palace, you're low on mana. He jumps on Monet, pops the BKB. Carlo coming back in as well. Sumail immediately focuses on him. Where did My that God. Lich go? My goodness. He is just out of there. And now Palos, after seeing the power of this Monkey King, just cowers in fear as he dies to the double kill of Monet. What just happened to that poor Lich? Dude, Sumail is so good. Like the impact that he got out of Storm in that fight was crazy. Like he, it was like he, he was like hard carry value. It's like, oh, if he just stays alive, he's gonna like continue shredding you and continue shredding you. And that's that's what I felt like in that fight. That was 
bonkers uh, how was, much value he got out of his hero. Actually incredible. And like so many ways that he used that hero that like maybe other people wouldn't if they weren't as experienced. Like going the high ground, the low ground, sticking in those fights, killing himself as well to get the Aegis buff. He tanks the Doom, but still has enough backup to try and help him back out. Might be our game defining fight here. Or Aster is a... Uh... Oh, wait, did he not have the Deso? Oh, he didn't get the charge. Is that what it is? Uh, he, I think he just finished it, actually. It's a Man, fresh Deso. I, I thought for sure he had Deso by how that Lich died. That's crazy. He didn't have the Deso at that point. Well, either way, the Solar Guardian comes in. Gichu does need to take some uh, some calibration uh, of his uh, arrow throwing here, I think. A couple sailing by here into the darkness. Mm. Missed that one. Like him. You know, I had this thought the other day. Am I crazy or does she throw the arrow? Yeah, she she kind of does, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't like, shoot it. she doesn't shoot it. So it's not an She's, arrow, yeah. it's a spear, like a javelin, right? Kind of, yeah. It kind of looks like a... But it's called Sacred Arrow. It's just uh, like a Dota yeah. 1 thing. Yeah, it's exactly. The same. She would like, move her arm forward and it would yeah. just come out. She just throws Actually, it. no, maybe she did shoot it in Dota 1. I can't remember. Well, I remember what it looked like. It was this big, weird-looking arrow. This game... It was like they took... They took one of the arrow models and they just made it bigger and she shot it. That's kind of what it looked like. So just kind of still what it looks like, to be honest. Hey, this one's stylized. Don't talk shit about the sacred arrow. Sorry, sorry. My bad, my bad. Uh, and this time, like Pichu spear, does though. hit. So, you know. Gets the kill. It'd be weird to give a sacred spear to some, like, bow woman. Well, maybe maybe we should, uh, you know, make her shoot it with the, the bow, though. Maybe she should have a, another bow. Like, a really big one that she pulls out just for the sacred arrow. The sacred bow. Hmm. You know? Cosmetic idea, that, guys. That right there. Oh, they are surrounding Palos here. He's feeling pretty confident. It's a Slark. A uh, Ags and a Shard. Being very slippery and sneaky. He's going to pop that tier 3 and find a Titan Sliver. And dude, Astra knows what 7 times 4 is. I do not. So they get they get the Wisdom Rune right on time. Well done. Those, those timetables, you know? It's, uh, it's hard. Should have tried harder in school. Maybe they'll go back and uh, take their Tormentor. At some point here to grab the other one. There is a moving tree here. The execration have pinged out. And you know what, Monet? That doesn't actually work that well. He does still get lassoed. They could tell that was you. I say that. He is still living for quite a while. He finally gets the damage. And the Chain Frost doing a lot of work with the Ice Fire in the middle. Sumail is down. XXS can't turn and do anything. Thanks to that Depth Shroud here from the Slark. Bro. That is four kills. That Chain Frost ran out of fucking bounces, Trent. <laughs> it was like, I'm at my limit. I did too much damage. I didn't even see it bounce to an Ice Spire. It was so fucking powerful. What an engagement. I mean, that was the, probably the right person to Doom. Dooming the Storm feels a little bit less effective to me, but Dooming the, the Monkey King just like makes his life shit. He didn't get to PKB. He didn't get to ulti. The fight just becomes a lot more straightforward, and Pipe kind of covers a lot of the damage that Storm is doing in that initial burst, as does the BKB. So, man, layering that disable and then just stunning Storm and making him deal with that, that, that really paid off big time. Oh, and yeah. now they're going to steal the Tormentor, too. Oh, that's some nice stuff here. At least Peachy was able to grab the Wisdom Rune first here, but that Tormentor is gone, and that's going to be a shard for Batrider as the TP from Monet is coming in very confidently, might I add. Everyone is respawning, though, and they're going to take this time to, to retreat. He pops the drums because he just got the Boots of Bearing, so double value here from Carlo. Nicely done. That was a little Fight. free use. That was their first uh, Tormentor, wasn't it, on the Dire side? Uh, yes. Yep. Oh, they, they actually want to fight this. Yeah, they're going to try and stand on the Palace. He's a hard target, though. He's very slippery, and everything's back up for him. He's now out of pounces, though, but he does still have the Death Shroud in case someone gets gone on. Nice turn. It'd be suicide to go farther right now. His mana's too low. Wait, it's back full again. Oh, but wait. There it is. Amazing. And the Tranquil Boot's going to slowly fill up Obika's health here, as uh, that is the power of the combo and why teams have been picking it. They have great vision up ahead here, too, on that Spire as they watch the entirety of Execration run past. So certainly some opportunities to chase if they wanted to, but they're just going to relax. And maybe they'll go through the Twin Gates. That is so weird that you can just, like, force them out. I'll go through the Twin Gate and, like, catch them on the other side of the map now. That is a good point, yeah. That's normally normally what you do, right? The enemy team is down bottom. You don't want to play there anymore. You go to the opposite side of the map. You walk there, and they just yeah they just teleport. And they're like, surprise, I'm in front of you. Well, not going to be the, the path they vein. take this time. If there is a ward there, though, and they have moved efficiently to that side of the map, you could just take a bad fight. Yeah. It's a little spooky, but I guess if you do it quick enough, it's good. Oh, they're going to hang out in the uh, the Well Wishes area here, getting 1.5 mana regen per second on Monet, you know. And, we, we, uh, don't, we, we don't see this that often, but there's actually a Basher on Slark. Usually he goes for, like, less hard disable, 
But against the storm, it makes perfect sense. Like the more lockdown is going to be helpful. It's good against monkey as well, frankly. Definitely to stop a hard... them from using their annoying stuff. Definitely a hard call though in terms of like the Scotty too, because it does look like a nice Scotty game. Yeah, there's a lot of heal. But he I, wants I don't... The, the full lockdown. He's got the abyssal now too. Yeah, I I, figured, I assumed he was gonna go for this in the end. Uh, very good against the the storm here. He does have a Lincoln, so breaking that part is gonna be hard. But Palos is gonna lead the charge here. There is an ob sentry combo on this hill though. They're gonna see Palos. He's a little bit scared, popping the early dark pact here. Does not want to get chained down. Such a frightening thing to do right now. They're going to try and get their own vision down. Chanel jumps in. They're going to start on the bomb. Well, that the Force Guardian in. They're trying to get it out. They can't quite, though. The Doom is now dropped. It's on top of the Monkey King once again. Big heals now. They're all juiced way back up on Execration. Bob tries to get control without dying, but he will fall. Will it be worth the cost? He does actually help get the kill on Monet, but they've also lost Carlo Heal on that Lich. Devchow trying to save him once more. Big damage coming from Shanks, but he can't get the finish. In the end, there's a save from the Moonlight Shadow. They don't have the detection to keep the damage going. Kino pops back in. Bobka basically kills himself, trying to keep Samael alive. He's now out of mana. Can they continue to chase Palace? Waiting for some charges here. He's not going to go for the jump, though. There's a buyback from Bobka. They want to control this space. And the timing on Roche is not going to favor them. It could have spawned by now, but it's going to be a late one. Another minute and 15 away. Rochon just isn't always on the map now. <laughs> so, so unpredictable where he can be. Uh, the buyback from the Monkey King very valuable, though. The biggest deal was the four staff at first. Oh, wait now. Off. They're trying to keep oh. this going. I don't know if that's the angle Palace wanted here, but it ends up being an arrow to Shanks' head, catching some strays here. And I don't even so, think we're determined for him. It was, it was the force, basically. They used it to save Bat earlier. It, it stopped the, the pull into arrow that would have guaranteed Bat's death early. But the force staff dodges the arrow, back gets BKB off, and they were able to take a pretty normal fight. Now the buyback from Shanks. They don't want to give up this territory of the map. They know that, that Roche is coming. And everyone's just mangling up. Shanks comes, Shanks comes back with the fruit stand here. Give everyone a little bit more resource here in this fight. It's another nice. Wukong. They're going to lose Tino. Ooh, that turning force here. staff was bad. Yeah, not so great this time. Shanks trying to help this damage with Palos, though, as he's on the other side of the Solar Guardian. So that's another Venn diagram used right now. They're going to jump onto Kylo. Does throw the Chain Frost, but not going to do a whole lot this time. This helps break up the backline of the support. So the chase is a little bit slower from Aster, but they just have so much catch right now between the Storm and Monkey King. And they're going to keep using it. Now on to Bob. He is going to fall here, too. And all of those buybacks and all that time he used to get back into this area results in four deaths for Execration and a big comeback right now from Aster. The fight they had initially was the perfect one. The the horse that pushed him to the side, he dodged the air. This time, it just pushed him forward into more into his team, and they wasted Depth Shroud at the same time. So he tries to Depth Shroud the the the, 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 the Doom. He was protected, and then his own ally forced him out of the Depth Shroud. That's Suddenly, not good. just lost all these resources, and allowed that allowed them to kill the Doom without Doom popping BKB or pipe or anything, and they just got crushed as a result. So um, Aegis and Cheese now going to Aster, and it's a great cheese game. Slap that baby on Storm, he's going to be really happy. Yeah, no one else uses it quite like this guy. Probably the only person that was a little bit upset with the changes in the past when you started getting shards instead. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I assume Sanjin, and y I assume Kaya actually amplifies the, the mana that you get from cheese too. Because it probably yeah. counts like a, an amplifier, right? So it's going to fill his mana to full every single time. You know when Carlo... A little spicy on the position here. I, I don't. I would be very surprised if they try to defend this tower. They're gonna use the glyph, obviously, but it is their first tier two, so they have a chance at that. There's Moonlight Shadow out though from Aster right now. They're very well positioned. They're gonna smoke up. They are holding. Even thinking about oh, it's it's just smoke into smoke action here. Second hand smoke, first hand smoke. Everyone's just everywhere. The male loses Lincoln's right away. Now gonna pop the ulti. So still has the death trap. Try and help somebody else. There is a lasso, but it's Lotus. Nicely done. They get the return kill onto Bob, losing a lot of their initial control here. Samael wants to keep the fight going right now. Has that cheese. If he feels like this fight's worth it, instead just gets the man right now from Bob. Come on. A jumps in, jumps back out. Solar Guardian use. They're not sure what they want to do. Samael goes in. Still holding cheese right now. This is just the mana from Bob. Great chain frost. He bounced quite a bit. They lost the tree. I believe XSS cut it down here from Monet once more. He's still holding that Aegis though, and they go a little bit, a little bit further. Yeah. One support, two support. Seeing if Shanks is going to go down as well. Arrow follow up there as well. Pichu definitely well calibrated now in the second half of this game with the arrows. Yeah, everything's working out perfectly for Aster. And the supports uh, duo at this point on the execration side are kind of just dying easily. Storm can kind of do whatever he wants against the Lich and the Enchantress. Lich only has one point in Sinister Gaze at this point in the game. So 
even if he is able to catch the storm with it, the follow-up just isn't quite there. But ultimately, Execration's fight just felt kind of goofy to them. Um, Slark kind of just like didn't know who to go on there because the targets he wanted weren't exactly available. He kind of popped his ulti, and then Doom was like trying to figure out who to Doom, and it wasn't really going well because Monet popped BKB and has Aegis, so they just kind of started running. Oh, he's still trying, trying to figure it out. He does dump in, uh, jump in now, and he does throw that Doom, so it did get Lotus again. Very fast on the Lotuses this time. Always reflecting these as Bob's gonna hop in one more time. All right, they are gonna grab Bobica. Goes down fairly fast. Solar Guardians in there. The question is, can they get Palace out with his DD runes? Dumail jumps Releases in. Him. Oh, he gets caught. Dumail, maybe a chance here. Can they get this big kill? Do they really need Shanks? Chucks out the big damage to the Hurricane Pike, but it's not there. Not gonna fully connect as Monet does grab himself another kill. Now the Bob, great blink out there from Tino. Almost gets caught from Monet, but Palos grabbed, stunned up here. He's outside the Wukong's command. That's still not gonna be enough to save him, though. As that's a triple kill from Monet, who's still holding two minutes of Aegis. Then Shanks ruined it again with his Force Staff. I hate to point it out, but when he got pounced by Slark in that long distance one, that push on Storm was from Shanks. He used Hurricane Pike on him. It pushed him out of the pounce yeah. while Storm was a low mana. That could have been a chance there to actually kill Sumail in that team fight. Yeah, he did get him again. I did notice that as well. And then he didn't even connect with the... Uh... The Hurricane Pike shots after either because he just zipped. Like, all four of them were in the air. Well, ultimately, the, the fight got hard. The, the initiation by Doom was great. He doomed the Storm, broke the Lincolns. Excellent work. But uh, once Storm got a little separation to the right of the fight, he got decrept by the Pugna. He got four staffed by the Pugna. Really protected well by his allies. And then it turned into Storm Twin and Miz because of the Moonlight Shadow. And frankly, Doom ended a lot earlier than I expected it to. That's the power of the, the Sanj. That's right. And all those other timings that he... Uh, that he, that he bought with him. I gotta say, XXS has just been on point as well with these uh, Lotus Orbs. He's just every time there's a Doom, these Lassos, he keeps reflecting them back. I actually thought they had multiple because of how many spells they're managing to uh, to redirect back. Cool. Yeah, he's uh, had a great game, 1-3 and 27. He's a little vulnerable to pure damage, but uh, so far, yeah, he's really done his job. Nice. Sumail, 19, 4, and 11. Oh my god. I think it's a good storm player. I think it's time, guys. I think you just ban it first. Like clearly, it's the what, what he's most comfortable in in a stand-in situation. It seems like a team specific thing. You don't got to ban storm versus every team, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe chuck one out for these guys. That that being said, you know, Excretion is certainly not out of this game yet, and also have been in this game for a very long time. They've been doing quite well. Let's see if they can turn around one more time. They try and get Bubba got first off with the last. They're trying to get that still back alive. Pugna. He's still living. He doesn't care. The protection for the Wukong's command is in. He's just sitting in there with all the monkeys. But amongst the monkeys, there is a Chain Frost. It's quite a few bounces out. Does get the kill onto Bubba. They're going to check out a couple big old lances. Some impetuses here. Can't get the damage. So the Glyph after the Tier 3 falls will help protect the racks. But they, uh, they've already lost one lane. And now they're out of here again. Slurk is uh, regretting going to Bissell over... The nullifier now. Because the yeah. Abyssal helps him lock down the storm, but if Pugna just presses Decrep, he's like, well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> the stun is wasted now. Yeah, there is a lot of value there. That is for sure. Yeah, especially the Force Staffs, because it really has been both, right? Like, if he goes nullifier, it feels like it counters everything that he needed, except for the fact that Storm could use Ball Lightning, I suppose. But it would stop them from Force Staffing and Decrepting the guy that he's trying to kill. Yeah. So maybe he, maybe he should. I think the Basher was fine actually, but maybe he should have gone just like Basher Nullifier instead of Basher into Abyssal. That might have been superior actually. I think the other thing that they're they're looking for too is Tino's eggs. That would be huge, like to dodge the Lotus, just ensure that you can get like multiple targets, continue this lockdown, and then like in combination with Depth Shroud too, they can really just like plant onto a target and be invulnerable while also just like trying to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it's not going to matter like you're saying if they don't have Nullifier because if you have this AOE Doom, people are just going to get four staffed away from this Doom. Yeah, four staffs have been so big this game. Like, actually so impactful. Are they going to do the Tormentor? It kind of looks like it. It's going give to give them a little friends for Enchantress. Oh, she's the only one left, eh? Yeah, she's the only one left. It's not the most value, but it's fine. Oh, my Tino, God. That Tino, works. Tino. Oh, my God. Wow, he actually did almost die. Yeah. That was he, really value, though. He actually. had to blink out. So there's a couple heroes that can do this, right? Sli Sniper can do it where he can get outside of the reflection range, and Ench can as mm -hmm. well. But, uh, yeah, that was kind of dangerous. It looked good. Yeah, he used Hurricane Pike to get the uh, Dragon's Reach or whatever. The yeah. No, he, sorry. He Hurricane Thrusted the Tormentor. <laughs> Is that then the, he, I uh, did not know that's what the active was called. Thank you. I love learning all the actives. 
Um, but yeah, and then he just did insane impetus bombs from very far away. Yeah, those. It was he chunked that shit by himself. There's right. a hero that can kill it. I'll try and work that one in now that I'm getting my play-by-play -play chops in here right now. So, uh, he hurricane, hurricane thrust. Thrusting. The hurricane thrust. He thrusts him. He's thrusting the impetus thrust. into him. Okay, good. Pugna shard. Okay. I don't know if he's going to use it that much, but it's not that bad. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, it increased the More cast range of Netherwood by 350. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Part's <laughs> there okay. you go. It's, it's like an offensive shard, basically. You want to usually you put it down to like spread your. It's good against illusions. Yeah, that's the big one. Then you get an one. AOE life drain. Um, yeah, I, I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's okay. It's free, no problem. They got experience for it, I believe. So, aim a bit reset though. 5k gold advantage for Aster. 41 minutes in, still gold this or kill disadvantage, but it's been a very close game. Fun one to watch. Yeah, it feels like the, the, the fights can definitely be determined by... It kind of feels like Doom has to do so much work right now because the lasso is, is really hard to activate. I guess if Bob just gets like the perfect pull, it's still fine. But it certainly feels like they have to center their whole fight around Tino. Yeah, they, they, they really just need to kill the Pugna every single time, but Boko is able to keep everyone alive. And he's got a telescope now. It did, did get buffed, by the way. There's 125 cast range and attack nice. range. Because it's probably one of those tier 4s that you just don't enjoy that much um i'll see like nobody really wants to grab the telescope it's more like the telescopes they're fine i'll hold it somebody has yeah. to hold it you know yeah. but he's opting for it it's a it's a good game for it though storm attack range cast rage on pugna is really good it's kind of a weird item though but this is my only problem with the item is that like if you're in a fight you like let's say you're sumail you can't count on that extra bit of reach on the vortex mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you're not going to factor in the fact that there's a pugna next to me with telescope you know, I feel like it's kind of pointless to hold them all the time. I, I definitely the attack range is more important because that, that's going to like, you know, you're just going to use that accidentally while you're like attacking and stuff. But yeah. I don't know. It is interesting. I feel like it's only relevant for the person who's holding it because they can actually calibrate around it. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably true. It, it just it, it's probably one of those things you just don't notice. So you try to cast a spell on a guy and your spell just works when it's true. Wouldn't, you know? All right. Smoked up Carlo here trying to get some vision to start a fight, but he's immediately gone. And that's a godlike Sumail. He dies very quickly to physical damage. Sumail did pick up a Stormcrafter, by the way, very lore accurate. But it's it's becoming an even better Storm item, frankly. I mean, 30 movement speed is nice. Four mana regen. It zaps two people. Yeah, he just zaps himself right on the Palos there. It's, he's also sitting with the Revenant's brooch now as well. Big item after that upgraded Witchblade. Heard good things about this late game storm uh, Revenant's Brooch, with Shard especially. Yeah, the Shard. That, that's definitely the big thing. Man, they were sitting on that high ground. They were ready for him to walk up. They were stone cold sitting there. They know they're around here in Viz. They jump right on a Tino. This is the one they have to save. There's the Death Trap, but the Force Staff again. He's pushed out. they got to get some coordination issues going on here. He's actually up on the high ground. He comes back down with the AoE Doom. It's on a Piju, but they want Bobica. Purge knows. It's him who they want. They actually get him. Now turning towards Sumail as well. The big Dooms are popping up on everyone, but they're just pumping up around this Doom and bringing him down. They jump over towards Palos, but this fight has now broken down for Execration. Janks, miraculous angle there on the Force Staff, but not going to matter as Bobica rejoins on the buyback. Buta travels to the wave and comes back to be the backbone of this fight. I don't know, Trent just feels like uh, they're having damage problems here. They, they they can find the support and kill him, but by the time he's dead, it's like Storm and Monkey have been able to do whatever they wanted to for like eight seconds, and that just feels too problematic. They're, the team fight on the Execration side just is a bit in that way. Maybe yeah. they need to kill here. they got to build it up. Maybe two fights in a row. Maybe the stacks will get there from Palos. They're trying to find something. Sumail dropped Kinda a little low. bit low, but he zips right back out. Stun onto everybody in that fight, though. And Palos is just sluggishly moving around, trying to find some way. He's going to go back in right now, trying to build up those stacks. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Please, give me more stats. I need He's something here. Oh, <gasps> that explains it. Because he was just kind of walking. Oh, my gosh. No. Yeah, that I, you know, I wondered. Because there's an unused Guardian Grease from XXS. And there's, like, Lincolns and stuff. And he, he wasn't even really walking very fast. He was just no. kind of like, I was like, oh, he's it's working. He's getting a lot yeah, of attacks. Yeah, he's dying. In. Okay, a bit of a gift here, perhaps. XDD <laughs> from Palos, yep. Oh my gosh. That was a, a tough one. They're all reconnecting now and seeing the state of the game. I, do you ever have that happen in a pub game where you like kill a guy and then he disconnects and you're like, yep. oh, I feel bad. Yep. But in a pro match, oof. It's okay. Uh, I think Aster's still going to be fine. So like, 
Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, Ultimately, you know, this may just be a blip, but if they do win, everyone's gonna be like, "Remember that time that almost everybody disconnected?" But not everybody. There's a you know famous saying in in all of the you know Smash community. We we take those. You know, if someone accidentally messes up, doing some tech seal, flies off the stage and dies. We take those. You know, it's that's not on you. We, we take those. So that's true. That's what they're gonna say about this kill right now. Oh my goodness! I see the uh, what is this called? The disperser. The the disperser. Mm. He worked on here. Well, for now they want to try to grab another kill. The palace. Whoopsie! With that uh, <laughs> DC, forgot that Sumail existed. <laughs> he is in fact still in the game. Believe it or not. <sighs> they, just, they just fucking killed everybody. All right, we <laughs> take those. Uh, says Aster. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Dude, this Ench versus Pugna matchup is so miserable. We've seen it several yeah. times now, and I just get this hero out of my game if I'm playing Ench. It's such a good response because it gives them what they want and it gives them a nice counter too. It's really cool. Wow, did you see how far away he casted that nether ward just now? Oh my goodness, that telekinesis and that shard. Or sorry, not telekinesis, that telescope and that shard. Just too strong. Meanwhile, there's that moonlit Pugna on the back line. If they do jump in, Tino comes in with a defending doom. Shanks now back trying to chuck some damage out. The Lotus is there. I, uh, who is lassoing who? What is happening? Is that an eggs? What? Either there's way. A lotus. Uh, that, that was some wild stuff happening right there as all right like the constant doom noises was that a lotus lincoln's combo and so he just um, lotus it looked like am i crazy that they were lotusing or that bat had lotus the uh, doom uh, okay i don't even know what's going on yeah bat bat yeah bat lotus uh, Lasso sorry, doom. La he lassoed storm storm had a lotus on him which reflected the lasso back which landed on doom so <laughs> which bat was doom, yeah, yeah. attached to both or something. <laughs> there was definitely two lassos. It was, so it was something again, was happening the there. Lotus. Yeah, <laughs> it was very well done. Um, that really helped. If not for that lotus, the bat rider just pulls Storm deeper towards the base, and they probably kill him. They've done a great job keeping uh, Sumail alive. Sumail, by the way, KDA master, twenty-two four and sixteen right now, completely dominating. Jeez, those are some. Those are truly some Sumail numbers right there. Yeah, they really are. Good stand in. Yeah, there's not many better you can get. Sumail, all right. You know, don't feed now, Sumail. We're gassing you up, okay? Relax. Wants to jump in there as he sees them getting de warded. He's just happening. And Palos can do some calculations here and calculates that he can, in fact, zip that far away and not be punished. So, uh, Roche is currently residing in the top half of the map right now as they're going to take a look at him. Someone thought about going to the Twin Gate. A dangerous one. The supports, they're considering it. Oh, they're going to go through first. They're going to immediately D ward. Dino jumps in. I, that was a risky jump. I'm not sure he wanted to find anyone in there. I guess Palos was coming close, but right now there is a Monkey King, not actually a tree, as the moon gives it away. Pichu has now, some obs. Great ward drop down here. Give that vision onto Pichu, but he is out. The four staff, the Lincoln's gone. Okay. This uh that's a glimmer cape on Pugno is really cool actually. He used it to give himself a shield barrier and then when he's life draining, it removes his barrier, not his health. Oh, clever. It's very good. It's like much easier to play Pugna support now actually. You get so much more HP. Well, Aster, they have the control of this area thanks to the outpost. They're gonna TP in right now from XXS. He's done so much in these fights for them. They're trying to use the AoE Doom to get the final kill. They're not committing. They gotta finish him off. Oh, they just can't do he's it. Not he's dying. too tanky. Look how much health he just rejects back up. He's almost back up the full HP right now. Shanks trying to get out some damage. Big boundless strike on Tino and Palos right now. They, they just can't do anything. Palos, he needs to build up these stacks. Can he turn this fight? It's a buyback from Tino. They want to give it one more shot right now. Bob's in the back line, trying to find somebody, trying to get some damage up. But Bobo with the big old grabs, not heals, but damage this time out of Palos. The, the counter abyssal coming up from Monet, but the leap is there from Palos. He rejoins with Bob. Carlo is getting down low. They're not going to try and save him for the high ground. They're just looking nearby. Tino, this is his buyback right now. Doesn't want to fall. No doom for 40 seconds. They need to retreat. They need to regroup. Palos coming in from behind, though. Spring in the midst of them all inside the invis, and Shanks will fall. Now disarm there onto Palos. Jumps out. One more leap, but he can't find it. He gets caught on somebody attempting to escape. And he's trying to see if he can survive here with the regen, but it's getting tough. They're all over him. The big <laughs> leap. Oh, wait. Nice angle. Oh, my God. Out. <laughs> Insane. Oh, my God. He lived. I can't believe it. That was wild, dude. I can't believe that fight was still even after that much time. What the heck? There was one buyback on the Doom, so it cost them a lot more gold, but still, I thought it was one-sided at some point there. It just felt like I was watching Aster chase and smash Execration Heroes repeatedly. 
but they uh, it eventually went even. Did it? Did x ration get any kills? Am I crazy? No, but it was all right. Even as even as next, uh, it was a lot closer than I thought it would be. So. They didn't lose the game. They didn't lose. How the about game. that? They did about half as much damage as Astro did. They lost four thousand net worth and the ability to contest Roche. But it was uh, a lot that, closer than I expected. That was the uh, the dire Roche. So uh, which one is that now? The refresher. The refresher. Is it? It is. Yep, it is it on, on the Monkey King. King. There we go. I was confused because I was trying to find it. Thought I was going crazy. Hey, double wisdom rune. All right, Palos. That's a, a solid. Uh, that's a lot of XP. That's 4,000 XP for a Slark. What the hell? Mm -hmm. He's level 26 and a half. Yeah, that ain't bad. You know, they really need that on his Doom. It's actually been a game where Doom struggled on experience gain. Truly has been tough for him. And they are trying to finish the game here. The last set of Rex. Let's see if they can defend. But so tough to start the fight. Harpoon's up on Monkey King as well. He can pull oh, somebody into the pain. talent, man. This talent, I feel like, is one of the hardest ones to play against in Dota. There's big Wukongs. You got to use your smokes to get in here, and then you're committing to a fight versus a very far Monkey Pick King who's ready to harpoon you back in if you try and leave again. But it is over now as the racks remain. This is their time to fight. If there ever was one, it's got to be now. Tino, so much pressure on him with this Doom. They've struggled to get the kills inside of it. He needs to find one of these healers in the back. Exercise and Bobacar right next to each other. Could be a good target, but they're not going to be able to find the stat right there. He goes for the AoE Doom. It's on to Sumail. Ooh, Help is him. not nearby. Sumail went a little bit too deep this time. Can't even use the cheese. Doom is still active right now. Exorcist jumps in. He's being held in place. Shanks, Carlo, doing their best to try and help out with his supports, try and get this damage. But Tino pushed away. Not able to keep the AoE Doom going. Trying to get back into this one. Shanks actually pumping out a decent amount of damage in this fight. Now sees Bobka in the back line. He's chasing him back. Trying to deal with this, this menacing Pugna. But everyone else has been dealt with right now. They have to retreat and regroup right now. They can't help Shanks. He does survive, though. But they are getting your racks. I can't wait to see how much damage he did. He did 7,500 damage on Enchantress in that fight. I was watching him the whole time. He was just throwing torpedoes, sproinking left and right. They killed Storm, but it wasn't enough. Let's see if they can defend. Now they're going to try one more time here. The Disarm again, forcing back the Slark. That means Tino can't hang out. Shanks just trying to throw his body, trying to do whatever. He's buyback in 50 seconds. I don't really think he cares if he dies. He is just sproinking away, trying to stop him from hitting his buildings. Palos wrapping around. The slippery little fish trying to get to the back line. Trying to get these annoying heroes like Exorcist and Boca who keep healing, reducing damage, and aiding everybody else in the engagement. But it's another Wukong's command. It's a big old circle. Everybody coming to the square dance. He's getting out. And they just go straight back for the buildings. Palace wants to leave. That's fine. We'll take your structures instead. Tino, hopping I'll back into this again. fight. He has the refresher. He doesn't want to use it, though, because he's got Doom back in five seconds. Oh, he, he wants one big last guess of double Dooms. But he's being stunned up in the corner by Exodus. The follow-up arrow is there from Pichu. They can't get the, fall the save. He's Trout. getting low. Maybe, maybe. He throws out the Doom. The Refresher. He's actually going to have a second Doom. He's surviving somehow. Dino, get out. Try and get back. The Boundless Strike is there. The Frost Shield keeping him alive just a little bit longer. Now the Harpoon pull. He says, get over here. And Mane, back damage from Shanks. They get the kill. But it's just an Aegis. Oh, so much just for an Aegis right now. Meanwhile, Sumail's back in the base. He can't rejoin the fight quite yet. They do grab on the Mane. He turns with the Boundless Strike, catches Tino at the end of that or something. That was a big hit. Jumps back. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's looking pretty good. Okay. I mean, if you can't do it, the creeps are going to do it anyway. So Execration will throw out the Gs. And we got a nice back and forth 52-minute game to start our day. No stomps here, Purge. Wow. That was such a fun game to watch. The fights were complex. They just kept saving each other. A lot of things going back and forth. But Aster wins it in the end. Storm ending 24-5-19. It's uh, Sumail Storm, of course. And I Good hope performance. Uh, I hope he's working on that visa right now. You know? <laughs> Yo, Aster, come on. <laughs> Bring me over. I, I am down. I am down to see more of Sumail with this squad. This does not look like a stand-in situation whatsoever. And all of that credit, of course, can go to just XSS and Bobica and uh, like the synergy those two have already. But just this idea of protecting the mid and enabling somebody. They look incredible. They made... His, they made, uh, like, he makes Lane Storm look so simple. Like, he had one bad jump, the last one, the top racks one, where he got, like, doomed right away and just died. Yeah. That was, like, the only bad jump he made in, like, a 50 minute game. It is wild how good he is at this hero. And the few mistakes that their team does make, Bobo, Boboka just covered for them so immaculately with his four staffs and his decrefts. And we just didn't feel quite the same impact from the execration side. But they didn't really have the same kind of heroes. Um, yeah. Astra had very supportive heroes between the Dawnbreaker and the Pugna, and they just did a lot of work. 
it's funny how it, it felt like the whole game it was execration lacking on damage and yet i mean that that is what the numbers say they were lacking on damage but then i look at aster and i see that they have or lincoln you know two four staffs they had every defensive item I, other than a crimson guard which no one had in this game the glimmers you know it's it's impressive how much damage they get out of this Monkey King and this Storm Spirit that it, it makes it feel like it doesn't really matter that the other three heroes aren't pumping out quite as much. Yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting uh, lineup for sure. But um, yeah, Execration ends up doubling. I'm sorry, um, Astrid ends up doubling the kills that Execration get in that match, which makes sense. I think they just had way better ways to keep their heroes alive. Um, made all the team fights very tough, and they had so many good utility spells, Lasso Doom. Um, even like Slark Pounce type stuff that they just got to keep them alive and that's how they, they pull out the win eventually. Just took some time. And Execration maybe just needed to push it, I guess, a little bit harder in that mid game. Missed it on a couple opportunities there. It's a bit tough with their lineup. Like they're not the best at taking structures to try and push things forward. To be fair, neither team really has like those big building killers, which uh, mm -hmm. we haven't seen a whole lot of any drafts right now. So it, it, maybe it's a bit tough to, uh, to push that momentum in the early game unless you like super stomp. So... Uh, in terms of game number two, well, we're going to bring that to you guys after a short break. So stick around and we will be back. You love it. You wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
we're back. It's game number two. Aster, Extration, Grant, Pur Purge? This way. Purge! No, you're always the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always. And in my brain, I was like, it's always the opposite that you expect when you're looking <laughs> on the screen because it's inverted or whatever. So Trent is over there. I should have practiced. Ah, so close. Almost had it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, guys, we had a great game one. That was awesome. Very pleased. Yeah. It was really good. Really back and forth. Tons of fighting. Intricate team fights. Map movements. It felt like both teams had a good uh, handhold on the game. They could have won it pretty much at any time, but the, they were just so good at uh, at fighting back and forth and protecting each other and healing each other. And we got to see Sumail Storm, which is right. always so fun to watch. That's going to be the last time we see it today, probably. But, you know, um, that's fine. That's fine. It's it is certainly day. feeling that way. There's no doubt about that. At, uh, you know, I was looking through some of the numbers. That hero just keeps on winning. It is not just Sumail right now. 11 games, 81% win rate at this point now for that Storm Spirit. So perhaps, I mean, not everyone's going to first pick it, but certainly a chance that you're going to be seeing a lot more of this hero. In terms of the dumpster, Muerta, nine games. She, she's currently sitting at a 22% win rate. So only two heroes, man, or two teams rather, managed to take a W with her out of those nine games right now. Hmm. She has more weaknesses, certainly, because there's like a long period in the game where she's just not mobile, very easy to kill, can't escape mm -hmm. when she gets gone on. Um, in the late game, she does do an incredible amount of DPS, more than any other hero in the game, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, uh, makes sense. Uh, Storm's in that position where like he starts the tournament doing well, and now every team's going to pick him, and then his win rate might decrease a little bit, but there's always those heroes that like a couple teams find are, are kind of busted. Yep. very strong and storm definitely seems like in a good position to to profit from that so. and we've certainly seen him very well enabled at least in the games that we've had pugnas crystal maidens i'm sure keeper the light might even pop up somewhere as well so it might storm be a case spirit. Of, yeah I, I, they just they didn't do it they do get two response picks though so they can basically guarantee that they pick some like anti-storm hero whether that's puck or who was the other hero they banned last game? It was Puck and somebody else. Uh, it, it was uh, Nyx, and they did buy a Silencer after that, too. Mm, okay. So they have to pick their, their some of their Storm solutions right now. Doom works against it, but it can be protected, clearly. Um, they could also potentially... Oh, Io's in the pool as well. So basically, no matter what happens, Aster will get one of their Storm pairings that they're comfortable with, either Pugna or the Io. Um, in my assumption with the AA ban and not banning the IO, they're comfortable to let that through. So my assumption is that Execration are not super comfortable playing Chen games. Like, okay. which, which is surprising because I would think that they would be because of like the way they use like the Visage and stuff. But I guess maybe their support duo just isn't that into it. Because looking back on their history, they haven't really picked the heroes even when it was like, okay. to like be picking Ench versus like Beastmaster and mm -hmm. stuff. They would rather like ban the hero. Or maybe they would take it just to block their own Beastmaster's game and a lot of their history. Because it seems like a big disadvantage to ban out Chen and Ench, which both seem really strong right now, when you know they're going to storm first. Because theoretically, you would think like, oh, they either have to storm or we get, you know, and then we get Chen plus one, which would have been great. Mm -hmm. But it feels like their draft is just not suited for this current Storm Spirit IO now combination that Aster are very clearly going with. That being said, yeah. they have Underlord and Disruptor, which we've already seen to be really good heroes in terms of like overall map movement and decent versus Storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the root is going to be very valuable against Storm because it's not super expensive to throw it down at times. It'll stay in the ground. Usually somebody will proc it later. So they'll have good disable there against the Storm. And Disruptor is the best support here that both is good against Storm and also counters the IO combo typically by being able to glimpse them, kinetic field them, static storm them, whatever. So, And now here's all the bans <laughs> to protect Storm. Ban Puck, ban Ember, ban Silencer, all banned. Yeah. Protect the Storm Spirit so he can do as, as well as he can. And already it's looking a little bit more spooky, but maybe Execration will find some other heroes that'll give them solutions against the Storm Spirit. Surely the 10th pick anti mage. I'm just going to keep saying that hero until it happens, right? <laughs> what we're just going to go uh, with. Yeah. yeah, Mana Burden is definitely good. And then um, Execration bans all the heroes that kind of beat Underlord in lane. He is a bit of an exploitable off laner. He doesn't have a stun kind of thing, so these rundown heroes are excellent against him. They ban those all out, and they're going to grab an Undying. All right. I mean, okay. double, double like potential fives again, I guess, right? We had like the Lich last game uh, in combination with the. Who was it again? <laughs> was it Marana? No, the Marana. Yeah, I guess she's a little. All right. No, that was for Ash. It was Lich and uh, Enchant. That's game. the one. Yeah. So kind of more like lane focused supports. And again, they go with mm -hmm. two 
not, I guess Disruptor, obviously, is just good in lane now. He's never really been a lane focused support. Now he's just you know, okay in lane, which is great. But Undying, the ultimate king. I'm trying to give you a good late game. And theoretically, should be quite a bit stronger now with the Twin Gate. But I, I feel like I haven't seen Undying's abusing it that much yet. Being able to go back and forth. I mean, yeah, it just feels like, you know, you kind of try and dodge the hero, get certain matchups. Yeah, I guess so, but he's not really that good at ganking, so like, yeah, lane setup-wise, you're right that you could maybe avoid him, but in terms of him going through Twin Gates to show up at a lane randomly and drop a Tombstone, it's not always the no. most effective, I feel like. Nah, that's definitely true. So, it's uh, positives and negatives. I mean, it helps him Roche very well, the ultimate is very good, the shard is different now, it allows you to hide inside of a Tombstone if you so wish. Uh, could work very well against a ruptured hero, that part looks good. The downside is that you generally have to place the Tomb a little bit more out of position and thus it's easier for your opponents to just kind of kill it that part can be a little mm -hmm. tough um but they opt for a blood seeker here kind of yeah. interesting should give them i guess it probably lanes decent against underlord right you don't really get out harass number one because you can heal from the creeps you kill i want you can kind of zone the underlord i want to say they say? played this uh, did, didn't they do this in their first game i don't have it open right now but i feel like this is what they did in game one when we saw the storm and they won that game is they used the blood seeker as well I'm um, um, bringing it up right now versus Aster. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did in game one. They they the Storm Io, Bloodseeker combo. Because I remember it was really good. Yeah, versus Bet Boom when they won that game. Oh, yeah. There's something I thought about that because remember he did buy Ags eventually, right? Yes, he had it the kind of makes it, which is cool because when you get the shard on Io, which is very possible, very likely, you know, it's a, at least fifty percent chance you get it from the the tormentor um then you get more spell amp and spell lifesteal so if you go ag's bloodseeker like further makes you this tanky he's like a better version of pudge carry i would argue yeah because you can be way more flexible with your item build and you can build the x when it's time whereas pudge just has some weaknesses he's like weak to like single target physical carries he's a little bit harder to get into the team fights whereas bloodseeker is kind of just good at all stages so in some ways just a superior version um, that combos well with Io, so gives them, yeah, multiple options, I think. Now they have four of the same five heroes, as the only hero that will be lacking from that draft will be the Underlord, uh, of which Execration has already okay. taken away from them. So Aster playing something they've already been pretty comfortable with before, and, well, double value, the Bloodseeker also probably makes you not want to pick any mate. Uh, doesn't like that hero very much. Now here's something. If you look at the, the raw numbers, I like using the raw stats, because they can always, you know, you can't take them at face value, but they can lead you to things. Currently, the disadvantage, the worst one in the game for Bloodseeker right now is Medusa at an 8.28% disadvantage, which is wow. a huge number. Like, usually it's like five max or like six, maybe. But because of the changes to her mana shield, apparently she's doing extremely well versus Bloodseeker right now. I mean, his passive oh, probably his passive. won't work. Yeah. So he won't get the pure damage bonus is one thing. So he's not getting as much as raw health there. Um, if you rupture really her, she doesn't really care because she can just ulti pretty much. <laughs> and then the rupture will end around the same time that the stone gaze does. Yeah, his shard just sucks. That's yeah. pretty so it's funny. Probably, it's probably those things, I would assume. And she kind of just stands there and she's attacking the whole time. So it kind of creates an area where like, even if a guy's ruptured, the rest of the enemy team won't feel super comfortable to run in, is my hunch. Well, we'll see if Execration are brave enough to pick that hero. Uh, I mean, the, it, I feel like this is where Medusa has to come out in these situations where it is the very last pick. I believe it was TSM that already tried that once this tournament, and they did lose. I don't know if anyone else dared to pick up the Medusa quite yet, as she is feeling very volatile right now in her current state. And obviously, you you know, you don't want to have to deal with the whole buying fluffy hats to handle an axe thing. We'll see. Uh, me mega buffs over the uh, that secondary patch, though. So I, I feel like someone mm -hmm. else is probably going to try her. Yeah, I, I haven't even had a chance to, to see her in a game yet, actually. Should watch some... I hope it pops up. I'm very excited to see how good it is now that it's been buffed. Yeah, um, let's see. Let's see if we can find this game here where he did try it out here. It was versus Hellraisers. They did lose. And it was okay. versus a, a Bloodseeker. They, they tried to use it as the last pick versus a 23-pick <laughs> Bloodseeker. So, hmm, maybe not. Okay. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. They ban out PL and Naga, worried about the illusion heroes, I guess. I think the Konka is going to be pretty cool this game, though. Between, like, Glimpse and X marks the spot, I relocates are less likely to be successful here. Yeah, that's true. A lot of uh, gonna make cool options. Punishing Storm so much harder. And they can basically do, like, if they take it to start a team fight, they drop Tomb, and then they just, like, force people to stay near it, basically, between X and Disruptor. Should be oh, nice. the three Bloodseeker this time. Okay. All right. 
I think it's fine. It's not really the preferred way to play it, but it definitely is viable. Um, it just hasn't been like the preferred way to play it for a while. Um, Terrorblade as a whole, there's some counters against it, I guess, that they have. Like Underlord is kind of good against it, but the other heroes aren't so great, I feel like. He can deal with the Tombstone easily. He can right click down Disruptor once he gets BKB. Doesn't care about the ulti very much. Uh, and then Kunkka combo is also not very threatening. The Tidebringer does like no damage. And the combo is a little annoying, but it feels like a pretty good carry uh, this game to just like fight in a zone. So I think that's yep. a solid pick for Aster. And we've been seeing like the Alchemist, you know, kind of similar situation where you just farm a lot of what's happening on the map right now. So that feels pretty good in a lot of situations. Uh, lanes are really hard to control right now, particularly the mid lane. So being able to just like send a couple of illusions there seems like it's pretty useful. And he doesn't have a lot of like immediate position one counter picks that aren't banned out. The PL and the Naga are gone. And then after that, it's usually the off laners we look to like the Darkseer. Mm. And pretty hard to shift that around right now uh, as Execration, obviously. Yeah, it does sound very spooky. They'd really lack a lot of things if they did something crazy like that. So they need some some anti-TB hard carry here. Like Sniper, I guess, is kind of a classic. In terms of just like, trying like to play the same Storm game. Yeah, that feels terrible. And Bloodseeker getting ruptured doesn't feel good either. Yeah, his carry matchups generally do really well outside of the Illusion ones. Muerta is kind of good, I guess. That is what we saw a lot of Muerta, yeah. yeah. Good call. That, that definitely seems like her new thing. A, obviously, we saw that a lot during the Dream League uh, finals days in the mm -hmm. playoffs. There was a lot of Muerta versus TB. That's definitely where she looked at her best. And uh, that, that was prior to some of the reductions in terms of her BKB piercing damage. So she's a little bit weaker in those situations, but BKBs, of course, aren't necessarily quite as relevant as they used to be anyway. So she can still pump out some big numbers. Yeah, and Paulus' Muerta was really good, if I remember correctly. So... He seemed very experienced on the hero. We'll see if that can be enough. I, I think it should be. It's still a fine pick. He has to worry about getting dove, I guess. If he gets, like, ruptured and storm jumps on him, he's going to have trouble. That's the biggest negative, I believe. But other than that, the matchups are really solid. So I, th I think it's a fine pick. I do like Aster's draft better, though, personally. I don't know about you, but uh... um, I just feel like they're going to be able to get away with things a bit more. They've got, like, I guess once TB is ready to fight, I feel like Aster has the advantage. Before TB gets into fights, extra creation looks stronger. I feel like. Yeah, I would say that my last viewings of Kunkka have not left me uh, very impressed. I feel like the hero. I, kind of I felt like that about Kunkka for like two years as well. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, they have Kunkka, I guess. Uh, I, it's I, all right. I feel like he relied a lot on early BKB and feeling like he could just set up for anybody you know he was like it's like you're playing volleyball he's just the setter he's just doing his little thing and then people come in with a big old spike yeah. but it's harder to set when you don't have like freedom with the bkb i don't know it kind of feels to me like his he for a long time he was kind of valuable because he did good damage like he could like oh you do an x combo on a guy and they pretty much always die that hasn't felt like the case to me in a very very long time yeah, where it felt like he had enough damage. I don't know if it's just the skill build or what that you feel like you have to max X seconds. Your torrent does no damage, or the fact that Tidebringer is physical damage instead of being a pure splash now. But he just or, doesn't uh, feel the strongest. Or the fact but. that when he used to do that, everyone had about like 400 less or 500 less HP because there just weren't neutral items yeah. everywhere. All You're over probably the map. right. It's it's probably neutral items and other things giving you like an extra 100 HP. He's probably uh, stuff like that. He's like the Dagon effect. It's like why Dagon feels so trash now because like everyone just has way more HP and yet the number never went up. It's still the same amount of damage for some reason. Yeah. You go back I mean, and you watch cool. VODs of games like four or five. Well, I guess it's even longer now. Yeah, about five years ago or whatever, like before some of those big changes, before neutral items, he went like, I don't even know. It was like 1,200 HP at like, you know, 15 minutes. Wouldn't even be that crazy. Yeah. Everyone's like 2K yeah, I, HP if I'm a core. I think I watched a really old game of, uh, I think when Black was on Vici J or something like that, or Vici Gaming or something. And he was like a late game terribly, like 30 minutes. And his HP was like 1,200 or yeah, something. Yeah, it's I, so it funny. It was just like wild how low your raw HP was. We didn't very, even very know. Different. Clearly, Dagon Treads was like fantastic because it increased your HP by like thirty percent or something. <laughs> uh, well, uh, no sneaky maneuvers to start this game off here. Aside from a, a bit of a ward placed down here from execration, sort of uh, on the watcher. They catch the watcher and place the obs down. Nice. And the rest of us are just hanging around mid. Can't that vision. Yeah, and this is a good spot. It spots them running down the uh, the ramp to the right. Ward actually. 
And this uh, and this is probably going to be a really popular ward spot, the one that um, Excursion are running around right now. I mean, that, that ward just gives you so much vision around this area. It helps Bounty Rune as we see XSS and Palos duking it out for Bounty Rune up top. Is Tino going to come back in and try and get the click battle? He does win. Obviously, Pichu uh, does not want to do the Telekinesis play. We've seen that a couple times. Not great. You really want your Fade Bolt, especially when you're trying to help protect a Terror Blade as a position 5. So not worth the risk. They're going to have three heroes to start here. We'll see how long they keep this going before someone just hops in the Twin Gate. Got to secure those range creeps. Oh, oh! Look at this. Pichu trying to deward a small camp. Will he find? Oh, yeah, the creeps found it in time. They they actually spot where that sentry is sitting. Okay, that's a really bad spot. It turns out. Good to know. <laughs> it was like in the bottom left corner, and the creeps were able to see it. Despite Pichu having well, a hard time finding it. it. But if he didn't ward there, then Pichu just would have found it and dewarded it anyways. You know, it was like almost a good place to put it. That that is true. But like, but the creeps see it. That's, that's kind of rough. This rough. We got to get a little bit further off, maybe. I don't know. Got to do some more science on these uh, these ward plays here. It's, uh, it immediately breaks down in terms of a uh, three lane hero group up here, and you know sometimes known as a tri lane. Uh, they're going to send him dying back up top as he's just duking it with both up there. Underlord going for f the five Ironwood branch into uh, Ring of Health strategy. Oh, much greedier. Oh, they're going for the killer actually on Tino. Bottom. Tino. Yeah, ah, that's easy. They get him. Not even a meta play, just a level one TB kill. A little unexpected. Well, not just that. There was a blood grenade. He got down to True. about half HP, and they did blood grenade, fade bolt, and reflection to, to right-click him a bunch. So definitely a kill that wouldn't happen without the blood grenade. The, co the coolest thing about the item, I think, is it's making it gives you kill potential on some heroes that you wouldn't expect it on normally, mm -hmm. which I think is just better for the game a little because it makes because laning is like so important to drafting in most cases, right? But now it's like okay, we don't have to be so limited. Like some non-typical heroes can have some kill potential if you want to spend the gold, and I think that's a good thing for the game. Oh, uh, Tino sacrificing his kill potential on creeps with the no quelling blade build this time compared to Tino uh, on the Doom. So he instead is going to have uh, ring health a little bit earlier. And this will hopefully prevent another death as he slices up that pizza with the taunt. And we look at the mid lane as Bob and Sumail having an okay time here. It'll be, oh, yeah, there we go. 14 to 12. Almost even there as he missed one previously. But so far, so good for Bob. Obviously, knowing that the matchup was going to be the Storm Spirit, he felt pretty comfortable going for this. Oh, no. Bob. Oh, Bob. Oh, my we don't, we're gonna pretend we didn't he see that range about this. Yeah. He was worried about this. Uh, he, he, if he went for that double hit there, he gets takes way more damage from Storm Spirit, I think, when he punishes that movement. Yeah, that's my hunch here. I Bottle, uh, no. Oh, I was gonna say, I think he thought he was gonna miss the Torrent and then he gets you know, hit, and yeah. Mm, Dangerous. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but uh, right off the bat, TB in a good place. Waves pushed up. That's gonna allow. Pichu to grab the, the Lotuses as mm -hmm. soon as he can. Another Blood Grenade here. They would love another kill. And they've got meta this time. This oh. is kind of cool to see them punish the, the, uh, the Underlord like this. Same time up top, too. Carla has forced to drop down the Tombstone. They're going to put the Revenants out there as well. They're just hitting that Tombstone, though. No way for him to try and save it. Carlo still very low. And Boba still holding that Lotus that they... Uh, the, this all started because Carlo tried to contest the Lotus, despite the waves not being necessarily a great spot. And it was 2v1. Sumail and Bob both very low right now. Certainly getting a bit spicy here if they can connect with their spells. And four minutes coming up here with the runes. And Pichu says, attack. I am coming. All right, this is how they're communicating, guys. You're figuring it out. He's bringing in the blood grenade. They're going to see if they have enough damage here with the pole starting off. Bob dropping low the blood grenade. It does not connect. Oh, he still gets the kill in the end. I don't think it did. And that's double... Water runes for Storm Spirit. What a perfect time to gank. Oh my god. Imagine like you're, you're playing against Sumail, one of the, the best players in the world, and then you get ganked like this. Just like completely unfair. It's like, bro, he did not need that gank to do well against me. Yeah. Now you just make it completely one side like that. Like that's just a complete refill for Sumail. And he even dodged the so blood good. grenade, you know? He bobbed it all he could, but there's just no help there. Uh, at the same time, Bobka also took a pretty good angle on the positioning of Carlo and ended up killing the Undying's Courier. Pretty solid start all around right now for the side of Aster. Bob just getting beat up in the mid lane here, missing a couple more last hits. 
he's still fine. Like, he's actually not that far behind where Sumail is, but it feels like pain so far with the double bracer in the mid lane. Bought him a little damage on Pichu here. Yeah, he's got his boots, so he'll be able to walk it away. Uh, he does get the big glimpse damage, though, up top at the same time. They managed to get the kill onto Palos' Muerta. And that is partially because there is no Carlo. He is down bottom getting the kill onto Pichu. Where, you know, musical lanes happening here. The no boots undying manages to come down here and help get the kill. But Muerta also will pay. Yeah, that's the downside, though. Let's see, if he keeps being survivable here, he should be able to contest. Oh, and look at Boba yeah, mid as well. Cool. Backstabbing here onto Bob. The setup is there. Comes on in with the spirits. A and forgotten the spell that actually still exists on Io. A little bit more. There we go. Kill goes right, to Sumail. If this is a pub, you flame your supports on Execration for not rotating to you. Yep. And uh, start getting tilted. And that makes the rest of the game harder. Because it does not look fun to play mid right now. It looks He's already terrible. playing a hero that's hard, but... And plus, the side lanes are still doing great for Aster. That's the even more painful part. Uh, Bob is just responding to six-minute rune spawns, and Palos just in trouble up top. Goes down. The spirit damage is there. The blood grenade tries to slow him down on the way out, but it will not be enough. So much burst damage. I'm really surprised how high Lotus? that was. <laughs> I actually can't believe he did so much damage. I thought he had level two spirits there because of how much that did, but... It's actually kind of a bonkers level in skill. Oh, oh is that no. another kill on oh, Bob? Oh, no. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, no. Bob, I, I'm so sorry. I feel so bad for you. Like, he just comes back to lane. Pichu's sitting here. There's a DD Storm Spirit. It's oh, Aster God. just, you know. If you're going to give them the first overall pick Storm, this can't happen mid. Like, you know this is all they're trying to do right now. <laughs> she killed the tower at six minutes. Yeah, what? Oh my god, this game is so good for Storm now. All right. So... Truly wild. The only way this turns around is basically Sumail doing a bad dive. Because I feel like they can punish. They have Disruptor, right? Disruptor gets to six, maybe. Underlord has the root. If Sumail makes a mistake, maybe they can try and pop this pinata of a Storm Spirit. But right now, his game looks very stable. Mm -hmm. They go even on the uh, Wisdom Runes as well. That should be fine. Sumail's now going to farm towards the top lane using his uh, force, basically, to make sure that that lane is now pressured. Palos is going to have to jungle in the meantime. Not necessarily ideal for him. He does get a, a duelist gloves, at least. Yeah, this lane is pushing. Oh, yeah, so what was the reason that Io's doing so much damage, actually, is Spirits do 150 damage at level 1. It's kind of wild how much damage that is on a support. But nobody skills it. But valuable for one point. So. Yeah. Not so bad. And they're going to try and use him one more time here onto Carlo. Does drop the Tombstone in time, but we got four heroes here. So that thing is not lasting love very these. long. I love these little rotations because it's easier for carries now to just sit in the safe lane longer. They don't do that like I'm leaving to go off lane to push. Mm -hmm. They stay there. They jungle. And then in between jungling, they just take the, uh, the twin gate. And then they just show up at these dive moments, which is more threatening, really. Because normally you like see the carry walking up or whatever. But if they like sneak out through the trees at these rotation moments just makes it that much more threatening and they hadn't seen Sumail in a while they saw him walk into the jungle they didn't really know exactly where he was so when he finally jumps out on the undying just a tough position to be in and this is a this is looking like it just might be a stomp trend. well you can it's see seven to one how it gets out of control too because like your mid lane falls apart so then there's some more focus there and then there's less focus in the top lane so you don't keep the wards on the twin gate at all then this tb just like backstabs and kills you like all these little things they just add up mm -hmm. so fast, and the, the mobility is so quick across the map. And speaking of mobility, now they're just all bottom. Like, Sumail was just farming mid, but XSS takes the Twin Gate back down to the bottom lane as TB swaps out uh, with him, essentially, to go up top. Uh, they do not have... I, I'm not sure. I mean, they watch them all go under this ward. So they know they're all in the Ancient Area right now, coming after their two supports. Can they at least punish this? Glimpse back, but the damage is way too fast. Maybe the Glimpse will help save Carlo, but XSS, he's, he's the bullet train. He throws out the rupture. He just does not care. Here two or not, we will go under for the kill. It's a double for Sumail. He manages to get both of those. As if this uh, Storm Spirit wasn't enough out of control already. Eh, let's see what he finds on the uh, the tier one. He's looking. Oh, no fairies. Has to go with the tumblers. They're running at Palace top here. Oh, a little bit more, huh? And relocate. Uh, maybe they can turn it. Is anyone going to come for this one? Teammates? The ulti? No, there's, there's just nothing. Palos just He's knows. He's done a good job. He uses spells well to try to limit them chasing him down, but 
That was basically just Rubik teleporting to the lane, and uh, Monet walked over outside of Vision, so just retreated a bit too late, and now that's like gank after gank after gank. When it happens this many times in a row, the game starts feeling really hard. Now they can just play around these relocates, and well, maybe that's something that uh, Execration could take some inspiration from. Maybe try and find something with a Twin Gate if they can get some decent vision. But they are going to be searching for some answers, and they got to find them fast because it's already a 7k lead at 10 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty wild how, how bad it is. Not looking so good. Uh, maybe when they get their Crimson Guard finished, they have about 800 gold to go for Tino to finish this. Kind of spreading the gold here. Bob has uh, phase boots oh, and an occult bracelet. That's the good things to talk about on him. That's true, but look at this play here from uh, Aster. XSS and Pichu, they smoke up in the bottom lane. They take the twin gate. They know that Muerta's back here farming. She's in the mines. She's got herself the Mighty Mines buff, regenerating 4 HP per second. Will it be enough to save her? Don't go in the mines. Should have crossed the mountain, you know? The dwarves were dead. Now Muerta's dead. Yeah, tough one there, but very smart. I mean, that's a, a likely place where they're going to be, right? Because invading the uh, the dire main jungle, it's not hard to do for the Radiant side when they've killed the Tier 1s. The tri-camp area is farmable or whatever, but yeah, it was very likely that the carry stays top All right. in those areas. So it's just smart to, to guess. He just has to die here, right? He like just takes the Twin Gate back. This is ridiculous. He gets the kill. He goes to the Twin Gate, comes back down bottom, and catches all this wave of XP and gets the last one on a catapult. I think that Dream play is a 5. Mm hmm And with Firestorm, too, one of the nicest counters. One of the best spells in the game you can get. Firestorm does a huge amount of damage, just percentage-based damage, and that uh, amplifies. Pichu. He's going to get punished. Yeah, he's it. trying to bait, because he's got Sumail, who also came down the tower at the same time. Maybe it'll just be a trade kill instead. Chance goes down. Pichu will be happy with the trade. Wolf fall. Vessel. Maybe even some more. Yeah, that's right. That early item here from XXS, looking for the damage. Bob will back away. They take down Tombstone. They want to take Tino as well. An additional bounty in their favor. Soul rips, decays. Nothing is dissuading Aster from their reign of blood right now. How about a blood right instead? On to Carlo. Bob just trying to check out some spells, seeing if he can stop them at all. But really, it's just time to turn your tail and run. Well, because even coming over here right now. Hopefully, for their own sake, they can get something. Oh, Shanks. Oh, the Tumblr's toy. Oh, Sumail doesn't care. He goes under the tier two. Maybe we're getting a little ridiculous here. But hey, pretty safe back there. How does he keep getting these kills when he gets sent back out like that? Doesn't really it seem doesn't fair. even seem, yeah, it doesn't even seem like a big deal, frankly, to uh, for him to get glimpsed because everyone's HP and his damage, the ratio is so good for him right now. Right. Well, maybe it was a bit far, but guy does go down. He sucks in the tree line there with the silence from Palos. Now turning, Sunder there from Monet. You know, with that Crimson Guard, they desperately need something here, but XXS, he's a bit too fast. He's going to get away, and Monet just walks it off. Now Peach, who coming from behind, wants to find a good steal if he can. Hoping for a dead shot, I'm sure, but instead he'll just have to take the Firestorm one more time. It's cool to see Monet pick up the uh, the Seeds of Serenity. I've seen a couple carries really like this neutral item, but the 150 HP. Oh, Sumail's not done, though. Oh, yeah, the Spirit Vessel is there on top of Bob one more time. Sumail gets a monster kill streak. Can they snap it? Can they break the streak? Can they give it He's to Palos? He's A-clicking. He's hitting some creeps right now. He needs the benefit of the passive. He needs both to hit the storm. He does finally grab it. 8x kill streak. Going to Palos. Maybe this is the turn. They're going to grab XXS as well. Palos trying to get out of this one. Pichu goes down too. A double kill for Tino. The big AoE damage of the Underlord coming in huge right now. And finally, Aster have gone a bit too far. Bovka tries to tether his way out there, but it was a TPing alley. And now the glimpse is there. Put one Dig. more in the bank for Palos. Oh my. From no, right. from 0 4 and 2 to 3 4 and 2, some massive kills and gaining a ton of gold. Yeah, they got. 2,300 gold advantage from that. They got 2,000 experience from that team fight win. They're still really far behind, but and Storm is still not dead. Done, by the way. Oh, no. Uh, well, Bob, he surely he, he can walk this one off. No, there's no way, right? There's no way. Please, Sumail, don't tell me you can get this kill. Just... Got him. Like, seriously? The Witchblade? The Witchblade? How did he know? How did he know he can kill a Kunkka like that? How, like, that guy had 1,900 HP. Yeah, that's pretty wild. And he had the occult bracelet, so like 10% less magic damage. But I, I mean, he, he just got to elongate the fight, the, the kill so long that he got two Witchblade procs, pretty much. It was pretty pretty crazy. Yeah. Tumblr toy as well, so a little bit extra movement. Just really believe. leveraging his overload to the max. I just can't believe he went for that. That was nuts. Well, right afterwards, he goes over he and picks limits. up a haste rune, too, so. Stupendous. That was Bob's fifth death on the Kunkka this game here. 
Yeah, there's a couple of leaks in that boat. Is the gank has just been so hard though. Like they, they just constantly play mid. He's laying against Sumail. He lost his tower ultra fast. Very, very tough for execration to play this game. Maybe a kill here. Uh, it's looking like one more here. Carlo, not much hope. He's trying to pick up a mech for the team. As Underlord is a bit busy with the uh, the Crimson and perhaps the pipe after. Obviously that item is looking amazing right now too. Doesn't really have time to go for the Greaves. Storm just feels like classic Storm in this patch. Like the, cause Storm kind of changed for a while in that he wasn't very good at getting solo kills. He was kind of more of like a, I'm here to initiate long distances when we're ready and no matter the circumstance. But this is like literally classic Storm, just getting solo kills all the time. Jumping, getting solo kills, moving somewhere else, getting solo kills, and just snowballing into a carry, basically. It's been cool to see. Yeah, vintage indeed. They're going to come down to the Twin Gate. PG thought about going back up. Aboka's going to join them as well. They're looking for one more hero. Shanks wraps around from the backside, puts down a sentry. Oh, Shanks. Oh, bud. This, this is not where you want to be. I'm so sorry. See you later. I killed this courier. Oh, no, he's not going to go check for it. They spotted Palos. Access is definitely going to... All right, yep, the relocate's coming in. Yeah, they want to try and get him. The ulti immediately, though. Oh, the silence. Oh, that's huge. Okay. Oh, there's also still no pull uh, on Sumail as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That makes more sense. Good attempt. Uh, they're just ganking this tier one tower, of course. Well, obviously. The rift is thrown out there. Uh, that was mostly defensively, but they're not going to try and use it. Neither is Sumail, thankfully. Now we're gone. And immediately TP's mid. Still not bad for them. And keep in mind that they're, uh, they've gained 3k net worth since they lost that team fight. So despite losing the fight that they lost, it just doesn't really seem to matter that much. They are still doing great. And he gets an arcane rune. So good luck next hero that he spots. Yeah. I mean, buff the storm is that there's less gameplay mid in a, like overall too. So like if you're winning, you take that tower early. It's so much easier to control the runes. It feels mm -hmm. like when you really want them on your hero. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. You don't get to really definitely, sit around as a support anymore. He's definitely the best rune abusing hero in the game. So many of them are like god tier. Arcane's god tier. Regen's god tier. DD's god tier. Haste is really good, too. Yep. Shield runes are really good. Oh, well. Sumail jumping in again here. Already popped that arcane rune. No way to get rid of it now. Pops that BKB as well. Kinsegaard is there. For the final blows there on Atino. The heals from Bobica, they can't even get the IO right now. That tombstone is still in there, and it's really hurting Bobica. He will drop thanks to the zombies. The silence is there on the Sumail. He's able to walk out of the revenants, though, and Tino does get the last hit on the Pichu. So grabbing a couple Ooh. kills. Halos right clicking towards Sumail, but I think he knows. Wait, maybe oh, I'm wrong? He, up. he jumped into oh, the no, root. He gets right back out. Not even concerned. Exorcist playing around a little bit here with the big movement speed bonuses he's got here. And the Spirit Vessel looking like it might bring down Palace all on its own. And it does in the combination of Monet's damage. Dropping that Muerta. Tino able to TP out of there. But Sumail playing like he had an Aegis in that fight. Gets out on 200 HP. It was a good attempt by Carlos with the TP. And he decayed the trees where Sumail was sitting previously. Trying to uh, get, him, get him locked down here. And they're just going to do a quick relocate to refill the bottle. Pump a bunch of heal into Sumail because naturally he can't have any downtime here. That would be ridiculous. So he needs to get shit done. Yep, do some back up, get a shield rune, and go back in. That looks to be the Ooh, plan. Well, There's no stacks on for 24 this. seconds either. I don't think he meant to bring him back for Sumail to waste a TP, but oh, it's okay. Oops. Not a big deal. All right, they're all grouped up here. Again, no static storm. That feels like the punish. They have to try again on Sumail if they even have the damage, but you might never know because I'm not sure when it's going to be back. Stolen glimpse right now. Sino tries to get away. Pichu pulls him right back in. No harpoon required. Lift him up. Send him back. Silences. Try and help protect him. The BKB is there from Smail. Now he hops right back on over the Palos. Pops the ulti. Turns with the burn of the damage. XSS dropping a little bit low here, but the Sack Storm is now out. They have the control. They have to bring down Smail. It's the only hope they have. The boat coming in. The heals for Bobica. There's no relocate this time, but it's not even close. This guy's still full HP. If anything, he's just running out of mana. Kill you a little bit more. The go call is there. The thanks from Bobica. And yeah, thank you indeed to Smail with his stand in, because. He, you know, pick Storm, and I'll, and I'll make it look easy. And that's certainly how it's going. Monet must be so bored this game, as he just shows up after killing Creeps, and the fights aren't even close. Yeah, Sumail's KD is truly freaking wild, dude. 11, 1, and 2. 12, sorry. He's doing whatever he wants. The Crimson Guard just doesn't work that great against Storm Storm, frankly. Yep. I mean, he does do a lot of physical damage, too, with his right clicks, but he's hitting for a lot of magic as well, between the remnant damage and the overload procs, so... Even 
with his it's really just about net worth advantage and sumail is just so good at getting it and being supported by his allies to get it i totally agree i, I can't help but think that storm has to be banned in the first phase it's over you know execration they're gonna they're gonna take one for the rest of the group here and just prove it for one last time uh, just please don't do it liquid you know they lost one game they banned it that's, that's why they're the second best team in the world right bridge uh that's exactly right yeah liquid right. is not the best team in the world no correct they lost one too many games just just one too many indeed and sumail well he is looking a little bit vintage right now as uh, Pichu hops through the gate alongside Roche down on the bottom side of the map, falls into the pit and says, Monet, come help, please. So I'm going to grab that Aegis, and I have a feeling I know who they're going to put it on. Then again, Smell already has a regen rune, so, you know, maybe maybe he'll be kind. Maybe he'll hand it over to somebody else. As, this is a nice comeback mechanic. You know they're Roaching, or maybe they don't know necessarily, but you feel safe enough. They do grab their Tormentor at the very least for execution. That's true. That, that's nice. Who got it? Oh, the Unfortunately, Disruptor. disruptor. Ooh, not, 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 not as good. I mean, to be fair, the other one was just Carlo with the jump in the tombstone, which might be worse. I don't think so in this game, actually. I think it's better. Like, because it's, uh, it's effectively storm. disruption. Like the 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 disruptor one is straight up not good. I, I, the cast range of Thunderstrike going up is cool. Sumail grabs the uh, the experience rune here, just trades out his uh, regen for it. Um, but it's just it's not that good. It's two more strikes. That's 70 damage right now. You can lay the trap, but that's kind of useless. I, I think this one is just not that good. It's kind of like one of those shards when you get it for free, you're like, oh, that sucks. It really doesn't do that much, personally. I wish it didn't lay for just five seconds. I feel like it should stay in the zone for, like, at least, I don't even know, 20, 25. Then it would be kind of cool for a scouting yeah, tool. I, I would agree with that. Like, force out a good glimpse, and, I mean, you can't even, you know, watch this form where to die. Yeah, I mean, force beat. They they'd use BKB to do it. He protect himself with the silence, but yeah, it's it's about getting kills. And he's got Grove Bow and Storm too, so his magic damage is amplified by another fifteen percent. Just just excellent. So so good. A lot of swords and weapons on the Storm Spirit. That's true. His hands are full right now. He's looking like uh like Link or something, you know? He's got, he's yeah. got all kinds of weaponry. You can pull out of his backpack. Bob just tries to hold the um, waves back. Yeah, and, and that's what Bob has to do. XXS is just here by himself, basically. Very difficult to kill. Really just about um, setting his team up for, for success with the pipe and the spirit vessel. Got that nice mix of survivability and damage and utility impact. He's got a lot of spell amp out of his uh, blood rage as well, making the spirit vessel even better. That's actually kind of a really cool combo, I gotta say. Yeah, that was nice. My level 4 Blood Rage is amplifying. It's a 38% damage increase on Spirit Vessel. That's so much damage. That is interesting. Because the last time we saw this be useful was like position 4 Blood Seeker. Where like Z Freak tried it a long time ago. They was like jungling Blood Seeker. And you could like boost it and zap people. And it was like haha funny meme. But the Spirit Vessel getting the free charges too. That's pretty cool. Tino does hop through the gate right now. It's going to get stolen from Pichu. As they try and stop him from retreating through after stealing their Wizard Room. The pull is there. They're timing their disables very well. And Talos will pause just so that they can really chastise Tino for this idea. He is Spirit Vessel with 26 HP. He will be dying here. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's got a pipe. He's got a pipe and a crimson he didn't pop. Pipe. Is he stunned right now? Just sounds. Just oh, sounds. he could definitely stop this. Press pipe and crimson. And to just maybe. Surely he still dies, right? Okay. Apparently one player left and is now sitting down again. So they're they're coming back. Had to fix a mouse That's issue a here. Mouse issue. All right, and he oh, oh. he didn't make it. It's surprising. Straight into the tormentor. And it is Io grabbing the shard this time here for Aster. So uh, increase the overcharge spell amp. Io gains spell life steal and can now share spell life steal with its tethered target. So if storm wasn't Bro, annoying enough already. And or they took. Fiend. Oh, they stole Fiend's gift. It's Fiend's yeah, gift. Yeah, That's yeah. what it was. Very good steal. And now they're just instantly pushing high ground. Oh my god, what a the swing. The waves even here. Like just Monet. Now the zip in from Sumail. No fear with two minutes left on this Aegis. Absolute zero cares. Sumail. It damage. Yep. Yeah. And he's not going to get a free shard this game. He's not going to last long enough. So he has his own queued up right now. He wants to get those boosted damage. Sumail. Sumail. Miss Relax. Simple. I mean, I know you have a regen rune, but chill. 
has the vision, but yeah, they can't even bother with the glimpse. They know that they can't really hold him in place. Now Tino hops in, already ruptured, and Spirit Vessel. There's a lot of damage on the Bobica, though. They do manage to pop that Io. Tino gonna have to trade his life for it very likely here, though. I say that, he, yo, yeah, no. All right, Tino, you almost had it. You're gonna have to go down here. Now Palo, in the middle of everything, just gets blown up. Ob's BKB. Maybe head back to the found with it. Certainly not what you want to use a BKB for, but it is the requirement right now as they reflect those heroes right back to the base. And they're just going to have to consider some new options here on the next set of racks because this one's going down. Yeah, this one's tough. Still has Aegis for another minute too, so they're not even getting close to winning these fights here. He is queuing up the Ags on Kunkka, which I'm excited about, but unfortunately we're probably not going to see this game. <laughs> Would have liked to see the the targeted torrent storm. Yeah. Like just looking like Astro's rolling them over. 15, 1, and 14 now in Sumail. Shanks is pulling out the desperation items here, grabbing the medallion, the drums, you know, those little items that maybe can help turn things around. They have to try and find some sort of a punish. Oh, they're zipping right back in from Sumail. Onto Carlo first. Silence up. The Revenants are there as well. Trying to get some silence on the Radiant team. Sumail dropping low. Still 39 seconds left on this Aegis, though, so he doesn't really care at the moment. Very unlikely you can just hold him in place for that long, so he's going to go down. They do not have a stack from the layer back over this or anything, really, as the BKB is still up and available. Jumps in. Three hero silence there, right there, so easy with the help of XXS, and they just chase up. Oh, they're just nothing. They're just dying. It's GG. Yeah. Allos knows. We, we have no tools left in the tank right now. The heals are not enough for us to go through this. And frankly, th this definitely was not game one. This was not a back and forth. This was a three lane throwdown all in favor of Aster. Yep. And it didn't slow down in the slightest because uh, they got uh, the, the mana fueled the storm. Um, but really what opened the game up. I mean, the side lanes were doing good anyways, but the support rotations to mid that both killed Kunkka like two times and secured multiple water runes and then allowed Storm to take the mid tower and then he shifted top. They did that cool like carry rotate through the teleport to, to collapse and take the mid the, the safe lane tier one. That was really cool too. And then from there it was just like Storm murdering people as much as he wanted to here. Yeah, the wanted was, poster was, was definitely out. And uh, th this was one moment we thought maybe they can do it. Maybe there's a chance. This glimpse back onto Sumail. Alos gets the kill streak. He gets a triple kill, I believe, by the end of this one as well. And, and perhaps there was a hope. But really, this was the last chance we saw uh, any chance of winning this game from Execration. They couldn't put another fight back together. And uh, definitely not getting a lot out of this Underlord. A, a hero that has looked pretty good in this patch. I guess maybe that's just the fact that, you know, he didn't have any other cores to play with. But they certainly could not abuse his auras at all. I wonder if he should have not gone Crimson right away, if he should have gone Pipe instead. Yeah. Because against the Storm, the Crimson felt okay. But I wonder if the if the pipe just would have been way better. He just did such a good mix of magic damage um, that it, it didn't really feel that impactful in, keep, in keeping him and his allies alive. Yeah, I would have protected would better against Spirit Vessel too. And I do think his itemization is hard because I think like trying to do like an Atos or something too is also very tempting because it's like oh it's the storm and he's zipping all over and this blood seeker. But I don't even know if they'd have the damage mm -hmm. to kill with an Atos either. So you know maybe it was just like ah I've got Vanguard already I'll just get my Crimson. But yeah I'm kind of down for the pipe. Might yeah, they didn't something. have Disable, really, either was the other problem. I mean, they basically needed to do, like, a Glimpse combo mm -hmm. or an X combo, and it just felt like that was never an option. It just always felt like Aster were the ones jumping. Execration was running for the hills. Playing Disruptor when you're losing doesn't feel good. No. Playing Kunko when you're losing doesn't feel very good either. So it kind of just felt like because they got behind... It, Even on Dying didn't feel good. It was a tough game for him. I mean, it feels like a pretty massive draft failure to have a Storm Spirit first overall pick and to have these as your disables. You know? Like, yeah. you had disables that were directly countered by Io, which got picked up right away as well. So, like, it, like let's say you get in the stack, Storm. There's still just a tether save. Like, there, there's so many options that you're just not going to be able to deal with uh, from the side of Execration. And I guess they were just really counting on a big snowball. Uh, they never came. Maybe it was global warming. I'm not sure. But either way, Aster, pick Storm, and win two games. Hopefully the last time we're going to see it. I know you all love watching some Ale Storm. Don't get me wrong. But come on, guys. I want to see some competitive matches here. Yeah, I'd be surprised if teams don't start banning it in the first phase. It just or, or they're gonna you're gonna need some like really practiced team that's gonna like make sure that they have good solutions mm -hmm. that allow them to deal with them because it just felt really hard. Um one small fun fact we didn't touch on. There was a Diffusal Blade on the Terrorblade that game. 
Oh yeah, true. That, that's kind of unusual. Yeah. Not something we ever really got to see before, but uh, we're, we're in a My whole hunch. new world. Kill the supports, I guess. Defusal them and then just right-click them down. That extra slow might have been nice or something. Yeah, and Not you sure. know, you're kind of stomping too, so I have a little bit, of, maybe a little bit of fun sure. with it on this one here. Sure. Eight zero and eleven. Very possible. Mm -hmm. We'll see if Monet uh, busts out another time. For now, uh, we are we are all finished up here. Aster take the two zero over Execration and uh, and Purge. Who do we have up next? Uh, we get to watch Execration again, uh, but this time they are going to play against. I love putting him on the spot like this. this uh, was, it, was it Team Liquid? I can't remember. Uh, oh, you were close. Uh, of yeah, course. That's right. Sorry, I was, you forgot my, the my other My brain was team. like, the best team in the world? And I was like, no. No. <laughs> the actual best team in the world is Game of Gladiators. My favorite team. That's right. Virgin's favorite team, Game of Gladiators. Uh, that'll be next. That'll be in about 20 minutes. We'll have that here for you guys. So uh, go ahead. Hit that squad mode, right? Enjoy all the lovely streams we have going. Love squad mode. Thank you very much, production, for putting that on. So we will be back in about 20 minutes. And until then... Enjoy all the Dota all over the ESL1 Berlin Major. See you then. You love it. You wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
not wasting time Cause I'm already gone So long Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now Like you do now The way that you move your body You make it look like a hobby Every time that you touch me It's electricity Things we discovered Underneath last night's covers Everything came so easy It's electricity on my mind it's finally sinking in your head i know you're feeling different when you're stressed out but even with no makeup you still stand out cause no one makes me feel the way you do now like you do You move your body, you make it look like a hobby. Every time that you touch me, it's electricity. Things we discovered underneath last night's covers. Everything came so easy. It's electricity. Electricity. It's electricity. You move your body. Electricity.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Street Earth, the ESL One Berlin Major. I'm Trent. He's Purge. I did it right. And uh, we got another series here, Purge. What do we got? We got Gaming Gladiators versus Execration. We want to watch a lot of Execration games. I mean, we might as well be the, the Execration stream mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, but they look good, but they have some weaknesses. Gaming Gladiators, on the other hand, uh, best team in the world, no weaknesses. You can't beat them. It's not possible, except for the teams that have. But uh, they're doing good so far. Uh, they are 4-2 and two right now. They've had one victory and two ties leading into this match. Uh, they defeated PSGLGD, and they tied with EG and Bedroom. So maybe a little underperforming on the Gladiator side, but it's going to be a tough match for Execration. Oh, and you know, wouldn't you believe it? They just played, I'm looking now, they played two games versus the old Pugna Storm Spirit. That's what Bet Boomed mm. opened with. So, okay. Game and they did lose game one, but they allowed them to have it again in game two, and then they did take the win. So, Game Glider is able to adapt here in that situation. But Interesting. Uh, there is Bet Boom right at the top of the table alongside them. So, because of that tie, they're able to uh, just stick it up there with GG. Again, we talked about this this morning, but Bet Boom definitely looking to try and do well in this group to try and redeem themselves from, from some previous issues. And I see uh, Liquid still sitting at that two and two right now. Yeah, not good for Liquid so far. Yeah, they one and one the nine pandas, the uh, formerly wow. Hellraisers, formerly X Hellraisers squad. Um, so good for nine pandas right now. Liquid, uh, yeah, underperforming a little bit, but. Yeah. With that said, Liquid is getting heaps of DPC points from getting first in their group, so they're not super worried right now. Um, no. But, uh, yeah, they definitely need to start doing better. I'm seeing that uh, Liquid, speaking of which, they won game two, and would you believe what combo they used, Purge? It was, was Storm, it Storm? Pugna. <laughs> okay, that seems to be the, the... I mean, they really did buff the Pugna heal. Maybe they're going to have to nerf that right away. Yeah. Well. It, was, it was a used aspect of the hero, but it wasn't like a first phase every game yeah aspect. or they could nerf storm i guess either works frankly but it's probably more nasty to abuse the the pugna aspect of it the mm -hmm. giving mana to storm thing is inherently the broken part right because yeah. that's storm's limitation being able to just be like hey here's 800 mana uh at least like force them to switch to like some coddle or something like get some variety guys come on yeah, well it should be playing a major role in this series it's coming up here as both teams have played against it or played as it so we're going to be uh, looking to see if they want to take advantage or just ignore it all together. But those are the beautiful faces there and execration. And they're back again and uh, looking to see how they want to how they want to build, how, how they want to play these games. They're, they're struggling a little bit, maybe to get the Bob out of the mid lane. I feel like could be something to work on because obviously he just got uh, handled and dumpstered. We got to rebuild his mentality here as they come up against the, the gladiators. And, and of course, the mid laner himself. Yeah. He thought Sumail was scary. There's Quinn. Yeah, Quinn also very scary. His storm is not as good, probably, but it's still excellent. Uh, this squad has just been playing so well. Um, even after the patch came out, they looked really strong. So I, I can't help but like think back to looking at Execration again and just say I feel bad for them right now because they are they're close to winning some games. Yeah. Like they're not they don't look bad, but they're zero and six right now. They've lost all six of their matches, and at some point that's going to start really hurting the morale. I gotta say so. Hopefully they can find something that works for them, and it might just be a matter of time um, until they feel comfortable with their like Luna plus, you know, visage type combos. Yeah, maybe it's time to bring it back, go back to what was working for them before. It's uh, like you you said as we started the day, they've done so well in the DPC. Surprising, like I definitely did not expect them to win the first season when they made their way to Lima, uh, and I was you know I wasn't really expecting them to make it to the next major either. I kind of felt like that C so competitive that like Blacklist or someone will be able to knock them out, but they make it here again and they just got to get over that hurdle that is the international competition here. So draft wise, uh, they're going to wind up with the eye on the Doom Bands and GG having the second pick. Despite Celery loving these two heroes, doesn't feel like he's going to be able to get them or at least doesn't want to use them in this game. So they're just going to take them right out of the pool. Yeah, they overbuffed the creeps, I guess, for once. Kind of interesting. Uh, they're going to open with a nondescript pick. I'm just glad it's not Storm Spirit. Look, I like Storm, guys, but every game, every game, they're going to pick Storm Spirit right now. I was going to say, you're you're really tempting a dangerous fate right now, my friend. Yeah, I mean, Bounty can work against it. You do have a stun, which is useful. What about Storm versus Bounty mid? Probably not as good as like that Ember matchup, I suppose, but they go Rubik. This is a good response. You have pretty high armor, so the Janata trades don't completely murder your day. Your base damage is good too, so you can trade back and then you can steal some wonderful abilities later on. 
uh, later on. Um, and they're going to go for Underlord. Underlord seems to be the safe offlaner opening right now. The the value between Crimson Guard and your aura is just too good. Just makes your team survive yeah. for uh, for many, many fights. Uh, stacking those uh, damage reductions. It's been working out. At least it looked really good, especially at Dream oh, League. Good point. Hasn't done quite as yep. well here. Uh, Rubik and Underlord both doing it, right? Yeah, it feels, so. feels good. You know, we'll just keep zapping in that lane. And uh, Excretion, I, I mean, we talked about the Underlord and the Doom. So I, is that all Tino has played? I'm trying to think. Not sure. I think that's all I he's have... played. He has only played Underlord and Doom. That is correct. In their... Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, no, that is true. In all of their games. So Tino's going to have to find something else this time. Okay. Well, I think uh, going to Batrider is a good option in this moment because right now their damage reduction is pretty high. Uh, going into some magic damage is very, very important. And Bob's bat was decent. Um, he had a little bit of a rough game earlier when he played it, um, but that was that really, really close game where yes. everything was tough. That was a Storm Spirit going crazy, which was every game that we watched. Uh, but the Batrider <laughs> had some value at times for sure, but um, it was a little bit hard to, to, to secure a ton of kills. They did a great job of, well. of playing the map too, like using that bat, moving all over the place, and like having the slag, dodging the the ganks of Aster in that match. So with the help of the bounty hunter, maybe they can get some vision advantage and try and get pick offs as well as just space. You know, I think of bat like playing the trees. Now the trees just have camps inside of them, which is kind of cool. So if they can continue to take advantage of that and keep the gold even, even when they're just being like hunted around the map like they did previously. That might be the answer, but uh, one of the issues that we saw in that game was like Tino couldn't quite get things off with the Doom. Uh, the Lotuses were bad. Then once he had the eggs, it was tough to just like not get people four staffed out of there. So I wonder if maybe he'll be something that's a little bit more on the damage front this time, or if he'll fall back into another control element here, like that Doom. Yeah, I I guess some disable could be good. I mean, if you can catch the right people before the fight starts fully, like delay pipes from being used, BKBs, things like that, it can definitely work. But it just makes your team fights a little bit harder. I guess, and, and especially because they also have a bounty hunter, some like jump disabler could also function too. Yeah. And you can, it's not like you can't buy auras on those heroes as well as like a half and half build. But yeah, the Underlord opening just seems a lot safer between the the strength of the auras right now and the mobility. It kind of just gives you a perfect mix. The only weakness in it is that the disable that you bring from Underlord can feel lacking, like we saw in the most recent game. Yeah. So it's true. And the other weakness. a little dangerous. Uh, is this is the ban? So we've seen this over and over, where you just go like Ursa ban, Slark ban, and uh, and Monkey King bans, mm -hmm. trying to give this guy a good lane. I'm sure that'll be the next ban out here from Gaming Gladiators. Uh, the only upside, I guess, is that they're removing one of the heroes themselves, so like you don't have to ban Slark necessarily as execration. Uh, oh, I guess hmm. maybe you do have to, because then they Cause could theoretically pick it first. Pick it first. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is a toughie. I guess and it's you a ban it as well. Yeah, I, I think you ban it. Like the fact that it removes track and bat, Ooh. or is this setting them up for a storm pick with the silencer ban? Are they gonna play storm? Yeah, or bat Tino offlane bat. or something. I mean, that sounds kind of okay if it's bounty four. Kind of interesting. The silencer ban is confusing to me. Right here, it's definitely Maybe setting they're... up for a good storm game for GG as well. Yeah, it seems more obvious to them for sure. They're going to ban Morita though. Uh, maybe more likely a TB pick then. The PL be already banned out, slightly protected. Morita is kind of an interesting ban here. Yeah. I guess the Execration is picking their next two heroes. So even though the lane wouldn't be that weird, maybe Morita does beat up on Underlord a lot. But yeah, they're <laughs> just worried about... They want to pick their carry as their fourth slot, I think. Yeah. And where to matches up well against it. So my assumption is they want to pick TB fourth, but they want the option to not have to worry about like picking TB into a into a Muerta. And they're trying to dissuade the Slark here as well. I mean, they know Palos just played it earlier. They're looking at Dota buff too. Sure. They picked the Disruptor, who's like the best numbers counter to the dis to the Slark. So let's say go ahead, pick your Slark into our Underlord. We do know that's a counter, but we feel pretty comfortable with their position four or five Disruptor. They're definitely capable mm -hmm. of flexing it around here between their two supports. Yeah reasonable here and then other support for execration is most likely what we're going to see to allow uh, less banning for their ultimate pick their offlane hero and they'll pick right. cm decent win rate right now mana to the squad it's going to help bounty hunter certainly to stay on the map more often it'd be and great for generic a, nukes and magic damage really good for an offlane bat too i think if you flex that i feel like he would really mm. take advantage of that 
yeah, the extra slows, the the chase down, it really just makes his game a lot easier. He doesn't have to necessarily like stand on top of them as easily. You can play more like slow, apply napalm and buy your time before you go in type things. They're a little squishier on the Execration side, but I think it's fine because Gladiators don't really have some like jump initiator type heroes at the moment. Yeah. So if everyone's kind of like five like heroes who sit on the outskirts of the fight, I think Execration will be fine. Do you, what they've got. Do you think it's worth forcing the bat into an offlane by trying to go Queen of Pain here as GG? Because like she's playing into the roots and like it's not necessarily a team I'd want to blink into and commit on, but I also worry about Tino's hero pool and the ability to flex this bat. That, that might be kind of sick. I normally would say that it's okay, I think. I don't know super well, but I feel like if you're playing offlane Batrider, you're more countered by Disruptor then. Because then BKB is more important. But if you're offlane Batrider, you usually need other items first, I feel like. So maybe it would be a little bit too disruptive. Nope, shit, I didn't mean to do that. To play against Disruptor as an offlane bat. But I, I could be wrong here. I watched Monkeys play it a couple times on a stream, but he plays that here all the time and it looked fine. Yeah. Um, no. That was when Blood Grenade was still in. He wasn't like mega abusing it, but he'd use it once in a while. All right, Tino has played one ever game of Bat Rider competitively, and it was seven months ago. It's not going to be him. That's a did, mid bat. He did great. He did. He did great. So okay. I don't know, that, that man, that could have been kind of hype though. But instead, they're not going to go for the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain has other problems because, like, sure, maybe you could bully the bat, give him a bad lane, but at the same time, then you're stuck as a Queen of Pain, and you get Frostbit once, and you're sad. So or or Slark pounced. Yeah. Both options don't feel very good. Yeah, it's not. It, I don't. I don't think like. Right now, since Execration isn't looking like the strongest team, I don't think you have to worry as much about like one guy popping off, you know, like your Sumail type problem. So I think it's more just pick a pick a draft that makes sense and they're gonna go for a Pango. The hero of the previous patch, Quinn is very practiced on it at this point. They will be very safe with that hero. Very good against Crystal Maiden, Bounty Hunter. It gives them some really nice lockdown that they were kind of lacking in their their previous three picks. Um, and very good against Slark too, just AoE damage that can apply to him. The mana burn against him is really good too. If you go some Diffusal Bro. into later Ag's build, like Slark can definitely run out of mana and that really limits his uh, his team play. And just so many options for their, their last pick here as well. Just like a very balanced lineup. Really the only thing they're not great at on Game Gliders is like taking objectives. I mean, Underlord kind of is because you just like push the tower and do okay. Uh, so even that isn't, uh, isn't the worst, so... Big damage, I guess, might be the, the last thing. A little bit of a mobile carry, I feel like, would look kind of good. Or or just TB, like you pointed out earlier. It looks kind of fine. I guess it just depends. Uh, they're, with the Naga and the Void Ban, I think they're going to take the... Oh, wait, no. I'm sorry, I'm confused. It's too early, my brain. <laughs> the 7.40 in the morning. They Oof. could preemptively Darkseer. Like Tino Darkseer pairs with the Bounty Hunter. Uh, and it's like harder to pick those like TB heroes. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, making an illusion of Underlord would be kind of nice, but it feels kind of goofy. I feel like they need more disable. Is one of the downsides of that, like uh, having some stunner. I, I just really feel like they need another initiator other than just Bat, Slark, or Bounty Hunter. Because the Bounty yeah. Hunter and the Slark are kind of like iffy initiators at times. Bat Rider can be good, but I just really would like them to have like one other option. Well, uh, the Visage is still in. They lost their last three games on it, where they kind of almost felt forced to go into it, it seemed. But obviously an Aura Builder, not looking that great versus a lot of these heroes, though. Definitely some some bad matchups. The Underlord, the Pango, I don't think you particularly like to see his Visage. Um, I feel like a Dragonite could maybe work, but... Something like that would be kind of cool. They, they stick with the Darkseer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be better if they pick a TB. And TB seems like the most likely pick based on everything else, but maybe TB is no longer the most likely pick. They've dissuaded them from going for it. Well, here's the thing. I said he only played one game of Bat. It's not much better the other way around. He's only played six games of Darkseer, and the last time he did it was uh, more than a year ago in March of okay. 2022. Darkseer definitely a hero that benefits from the spam. I feel like the Darkseer players, you know, the Darkseer players are a little bit of a different breed. They start to mm -hmm. really abuse the iron shells and like have the right timings for the doubles and everything, but uh, obviously, he's, a, he's pretty popular in the pubs right now, so maybe Tino's been spamming it up. I haven't checked his, uh, his Dota 2 Pro track or anything, but we're going to see how he's feeling on the hero as Game Gladiators pull out a hero that they are going to be playing a lot lately, and that is this Lone Druid, because they can flex it between Duraccio and Ace. Yeah, it's a, it was cool to see them playing it in the offlane uh, the other day, but um, 
It's a decent hero. It, you can dispel off the napalms once you get shard. It, it got nerfed a little bit, but it's still quite good. It's good against frostbite and CM. If you can dispel the Nova slow, it's very helpful. If you can't, it does hurt your DPS a decent amount. But I kind of like it against Slark as well, typically. It's not like perfect, but it does give you some root, which is nice. Yeah. So you can catch him. He's just an annoying hero to play against overall, too, right? Like, he's, he's got weird matchups because you don't see him that often, and he can get a little bit out of control. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing this hero. I feel like more teams need to uh, to work on it. Kind of feels like a Broodmother mm -hmm. situation where it, it seems like more teams probably should be playing that hero. Yeah, and it's it's a very, like, solo independent hero. Uh, pretty quick, you run around the map, kill creeps kind of a thing, and... Um... It gives them tower pushing that they did not have in the slightest before him. So they've got basically team fight between Underlord Pangolier and the Lone Druid's gonna be able to one to hit towers. So if Execration gets good grabs with Lasso, um, the fight could get a little weird for the Gladiators, but as a whole their their lineup just looks very safe. Yeah. It's also a big disruptor. It's actually the third worst matchup statistically for a Darkseer as well, the Lone Druid, which kind of makes mm -hmm. sense because like you don't really benefit um, from the wall very much versus this hero. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just a bear. You don't really have any advantages over him in the lane. And you always run the, especially with all the changes to root now. Like this matchup back in the day when it was like level five bear was a problem. Now it's just always, you know, you never really know what's going to happen. There's yeah. a glimpse. He's just always hitting you. Very annoying. And the bear has, the bear has so much raw HP that the iron shell damage is not a big deal. And it's got higher magic resistance because of, uh, is it demolish or spell, whatever the heck it is. Yeah. So very survivable basically to deal with that. So yeah, the, the Lone Druid Bear should be sitting pretty good. The Wall of Replica now looks kind of garbage, but I, I guess they just felt like, well, it's okay for our draft, and it is going to dissuade some ideal options for you on the Gladiator side. So we'll see how it works out. But uh, Gladiator's definitely going to be happy with their draft, I think. Yeah, coming in as the favorites without a doubt. So Execration, going to have to see if they can get that fire going, show what they did in the DPC, and bring it here to Berlin. Shanks starts by invading here into this dire territory. Finds Duraccio, Celery, and a bear. An owl bear, as it would seem here. Very frightening looking creature. Very powerful, yes. Uh, she ward down, but they're going to ditch from the area. Two wards kind of protecting for the roam, basically, uh, which makes sense if they're going to expect some iron shell bounty hunter to roam from his lane to go pressure other places. That's pretty dangerous to deal with. And the bear just doing some scouting here in the mid. Now they're going to get a quick, easy D ward there. <laughs> like Bob, help, Bob helped them just a little bit. That was nice. Good luck. Have fun, Bob. That's nice. Bob is just quite the name, I got to say. It really is like a great tag. Name. Bob going to hang out here. Is, uh, they're going to grab the river rune. Oh, looks like Bob's going to get it. And they're going to contest up there, Tino, in the face of the bear. But Duraccio gets it. Stole it. Such a clicker. Look at this guy go. Yeah. Oh. You know, you can do uh, some, some bear stuff too, where you can like send the bear to get the wisdom room, which is kind of cool. Now other heroes can, can do that. That works. Yeah. And the bear levels up. Is that how it works? I, th <laughs> I think Lone Druid gets like a Midas. But maybe, oh, yeah, okay. maybe just the bear goes up one skill. You just never have to skill Lone Druid in his bear. It's genius. Oh, you're going to Drachio. He might die. That or looks. Oh, the root. Easy. Okay. Very valuable blood grenade right there. Yeah, I was wondering what that bonus damage was. Yeah. It was uh, the blood grenade. He broke the invis. I mean, the bear was at, or Lone Druid himself was at like 75% HP as it started. But Nova also helped a lot. I mean, Nova's such a great level one ability. 130 damage. So, slow from Nova, blood grenade, and orb of enemy. He wasn't getting away. And he must have. I wonder if he hit him with the, the double stun there, too. Because it looked like he got like a couple in there. So, just like really well timed as well from Shanks. Mm -hmm. As, uh... Uh, you can't actually double stun. Oh, you can't do it on the fade time and then redo it? Correct. Yeah, I, I checked it right away. I was like, damn, this is really good. It's when it when the invis is broken. It's not when the buff is active. So they, they, they made it so you can't double stun. Oh, no, so but I mean, like, it was it. the end of the last one, though. Like, like your other one's ending. Like you're ending the invis, you hit. Is that how it works? Oh, uh, yeah, you could do that. If yeah, the other yeah. one is ending, then you could stun with them and then yeah, I think that's what press he did. it again and invis again. Okay, I missed that then. Or maybe I'm wrong. But that's that's definitely the ideal situation. Kind of like uh, Nyx when you get three points Vendetta, where it's got like 100% uptime. You catch them at the mm -hmm. end of one, pop it again. That sounds sick. The dubs. Actually, when you hit him with the Mind Flare after. Oh my god, that would like be kill so any much hero. damage. 
Thirty percent of a uh, thousand pure damage. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, we got some strats now. We also need the refresher versus the Medusa, right, for the fifty percent max mana. So Nyx is uh, he's pretty cool right now, but he's not in this game. Uh, currently, it is a bounty hunter running away from a lone druid bear. As uh, you, you always struggle a little bit in the early levels as a dark seer, you really want to hit that level three, two points iron shell, and then you just like double run at somebody. But while that's happening, there's a run down in the bottom lane. Palos getting the grab there. Well, but Crystal Main is on a cliff, sucker, and he doesn't have a TP. True. So that is who, not who great. really lost here. <laughs> You'll make a nice note. Yeah, all you can do is just throw out the voice lines. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, the bear here. That would be nice. Dangerous. Oh, hold on. Whoa, he went for the bat play. He did it. All right, that's a little bit. And yeah, almost getting the bear. The eye shell burned down. Shanks can't continue under the tower, though. It is chaos in all the lanes right now. And there's still a yeah. crystal maiden on a cliff. But yes, Bat Rider went for the, uh, the faded trade versus Quinn and did not win out on that one. Dies to Quinn. Get their first kill of the game. If we try to kill the cur, he does get he's gonna get it probably, but yeah, CM is gonna be able to teleport. Oh, he's got a ward now too. Uh, Rubik's is gonna keep him cliff, dude. Very wisely, CM already has a sentry down. Oh no, and he now. didn't, oh, he's he didn't get, get it. it. Oh he's stuck! He can't move now. Well, he doesn't have a ward just yet. That's gonna be the next tricky part. Oh, I thought he's trying yeah, to like yeah, yeah. if it's a ward and a sentry, then he knows when he's about to teleport. Is this worth it though? I mean you're it's 100%. a one v one. I guess it's working. Underwood yeah. is beaten on Slark by a lot actually by 15 damage I'm, so, I'm sorry guys I can't watch this while there's a CM stuck on a cliff you know Tofu is just this is... he's just staying in range but Bob does get his revenge obviously coming back to the lane with full health and full mana Quinn not able to reach it up quite as much as we were closer to the four minute runes he wasn't able to get maxed out there's a root up top as well on Atino he goes down back to Crystal Maiden check she is yeah, still stuck on the like, cliff <laughs> only one thing matters here Tofu oh this is so nasty he's getting another oh he's going for it he's oh, going for it he can't make it. it. <laughs> he ran a little bit too far into the creep wave. Yeah, he knew. He knew what was going on. finally over. How do you still have the same XP as Tofu? That doesn't seem fair. Um, yeah, I don't know, I guess. I guess Tofu oh, wasn't splitting much. He was a little bit too close to the cliff as well. He was kind of isolating himself uh, in the same vein. Are things going with uh, the Lone Druid Darks here? It's about the same, actually. So this, this lane looks a lot better. But Ace is... No surprise, dumpster in his lane, basically. So double the CS of Slark. Such a big advantage. Jumps back on Shanks here. Oh, See yeah. if he can survive. Doesn't look like the bear is going to get another hit, so he should be okay. But again, in the mid lane, Tofu tries to rotate in, but Bob gets the kill at level 5, almost 6. Nicely done. Taking done. advantage of this Pango before 6. Absolutely huge. Meanwhile, Shanks up top gets hit with a Thunderstrike, dropping low. Doesn't have anything left in the tank, but that is the end. There's no mana for a glimpse here from Celery, so he'll get out. Whew. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, pretty good so far. He's it feels like Duraccio's kind of like having a good time at this point. Yeah, he he's, looks He's great. still doing fine, but yeah, Duraccio's going to have a, a normal circumstance. Going to go for a Mask of Madness build, it looks like. For now, relying on the Ironwood branches for his hero. Them an abundance of stats. All you need. Tino also going uh, right into the vanguard here. Does get glimpsed back. There's a fear into the root. But having already used the glimpse, Tino feels uh, he can get a little bit aggressive here and try and get the bear. But there's the resum. I'm back at the full HP. In the mid lane, Quinn is still not level 6. Bob is out of mana, though. So not I able suppose. to keep this going. As Shanks goes down in the bottom lane, it's a trade. It's two heroes before they can finally bring down Ace. Carlo has spells up in a couple seconds. If anyone wants to TV down here, maybe they could turn. But Tova with these body blocks. Oh, nicely done. That's yep. a kill. When it wasn't looking like it was going to be for free, Bob glimpsed back into the river. Okay, Quinn okay. grabs that kill and now has the rolling thunder for when he comes back to the lane. Yeah, he needed that really bad because Bob was getting all these solo kills here. Ooh. Nicely stolen by Shanks for the haste Huge. there. Quinn will be sad about that one. But yeah, um, yeah. some nice catch ups there. But with Ace getting the double kill now. Oh, look at Man's this. He's got arcane roots and he's just murdering. Up top, they're trying to use this haste for an Andoraccio. Does get the phase boost delivered at a great time, but they're on the bear. Not the main hero here. And the bear trying to do his best to help him with the roar, but it is not enough damage. Down he goes did the double Duraccio. stun thing you were talking about, yeah. Perfect timing to start the fight. Stun, pop it again, stun a second time. Nasty. And now, and now that Lone Druid's the uh, universal here, this is why he's got six Ironwood branches, because it gives Whoa. him a decent amount of damage. Ooh. Celery. Getting, uh, 
Uh, I think he got spotted oh. by a courier there. He was almost able to get it. Grabs the Watcher. And now, of course, free stun here from Shanks. Guaranteed Wisdom oh, Rune. Easy. Now, that doesn't mean the TP's free right now. So Celery's going to go for it before someone rotates in and gets a kill. Uh, he does seem to get a pretty dangerous spot, though. Right between Tino and Carlo. They're, they're just like, going to run at him. Experience. And he is oh, dead. No. That was really free, I got to say. Yeah. He did get one creep of experience, though, which is important. True. But, uh, yeah, picks up the Null Talisman on the Dark Seer. Don't see this neutral item, or this, uh, stat item too often right now. It feels like there's much better mana options in the game for most heroes. But between the Fairy Trinket and the Null Talisman, Tino's mana is going to go a lot farther. This feels kind of nice. Yeah, that's great. And the CM. Meanwhile, Shanks here dancing with Tofu, following him around. It's almost like Tofu knows. I'm not, I'm not sure. Weird little jukes back and forth, but gets him with a hit, immediately invis again. This looks really annoying, gotta say. But Quinn is still sitting mid here with an ulti, so as Carlo comes in, it's still hard to get a kill. He's gonna pop that ulti now. He's gonna see Carlo CM. Now he turns back for Bob. Driver's Ed here, looking for some good moves, but Bob's got the turns and the twist. Glimpse back. They still can't really land on the Bob. That Rolling Thunder was just putting him in a cage right now, but now it's the Thunderdome that he's stuck inside up, Bob. Kind of tanky. Not quite enough, though. Can throw it a little bit of damage to the last right click there from Tova. We'll grab it. Quinn swashbuckles his way off to the side. It's a bit of damage reduction. There's no reach on this Shanks bounty since we're not going to have ourselves a shuriken at this point. It means Quinn's able to get out of this one, and it's Tofu who gets the double. Yeah, nice steal. Frostbite's a very good ability for Rubik to have more cast range, more damage. Pretty easy to impact. Carlo trying to play around not getting glimpse so he doesn't run for the hills just yet. No major pressure there. In the meantime, Duraccio's sitting top. Still trying to work on his uh, Mask of Manus, but not doing nearly as well now. Darkseer is way ahead in net worth. Yeah. 50% more net worth than him. Once he got that Vanguard, his lane became easy. So now he's getting this damage block against these two right-click sources. And maybe stats do lie here. I can't use the wall, but Vanguard being a bit of a better item these days. Feels pretty good to grab this early. No helm builds on this guy. As Bob drops down pretty low here in the mid, but there's no additional spells left. They're going to try and turn with the low HP left. Quinn Swashbuckle in one second here. The damage is there, and there... It's again, it's Tofu. He's 4-1-2 right now as he picks up that kill as well. Now a glimpse back onto Carlo. Tries to turn. Nice attempt there to grab that kill. But the wand is popped from Tofu to make sure about it. Shanks in behind at the ward. Get him, Shanks. Just one more. Oh, he can't. The no. frostbite. Now the rift is coming in too. The backup is arriving. No wand. Pops the dust. There's just no mana left on Tofu, but he wants to be here for the XP. Yeah. <laughs> Like, give me that fifth kill. Yeah. There's... Now, Shanks did it perfectly. Just ran away, ignored using invis. Didn't want to. Didn't want the dust to slow him down. Escapes. Sad he wasn't able to get the kill. Mm -hmm. But there's just so many nukes on Tofu. Oh. Having frostbite just makes it so easy and for him. He's Normally it's like a... yes. Sir. Oh, sorry. He was hunting a courier, but uh, Quinn wisely stopped it. Oh, okay. Very good, Quinn. Carlo looking in trouble. Yeah. Got the glimpse. I don't think he's got much hope on this one. The Verduis Dale. That's not gonna save you. Made that. Perhaps Bob could, but not quite. As, okay. Wow, they tried a static storm as well there, huh? Only Thunder in. I mean, I watched Jirachi at the same time. It looks like with the help of Tofu again, and that stolen frost by getting so much mileage out of that, a bit yep. ridiculous how much it's done. It's up so top good. here. They found Keep Shanks. Oh, God. Stun. <laughs> Dude, he, he roared him through that tier two. That was a lot of damage. <laughs> that was just tower damage. Oh, my God. Not bad. But, but yeah, I mean, it is ridiculous. Like, no roots got nerfed, and you have the little bit of arcane supremacy helping out. Mm. It's really good. It's a two-second stun, effectively, on an eight-second cooldown. So, like, every ten seconds, which is arcane boots, he's doing, like, uh, 500 magic damage. So just stay alive, and you're doing a lot. Thanks. Let's be careful here. Quinn does have some detection. And hide as he continues to, to follow along. Uh, there is a dire obs on the pillar here, so they see some heroes rotating through. Quinn will know something's up, but he's just going to back away. And uh, this game, what is going on? Ace has just been chilling down bottom. Palos comes mid, but gets glimpsed back, so they can't finish the kill on the token. Now they're just going to grab Shanks, who gets oh punished God. for the aggressions of Palos, and that's a defusal blade now for Quinn. Okay, and now the the, the Pangolier's alive and online. It's going to be tougher for him to play near to, to play near where he's pushing now. You're just going to get mana burn, not to mention the, the whole overwhelming damage if there's a little disable. It seems like Rubik can bring that, so a little disable plus Pengo. Slark is going to get zoned out of lane and have to go somewhere else, which is not going to feel nearly as good. Yeah, is dude, Ace still top net worth? Of course. 
Do they just like run at Ace now? Like as in like game gladiators, they just run with Ace? Seems pretty good. I mean, his survivability is very high. He opted for a mech rather than the uh, fast Crimson Guard since there's a lot of damage on the enemy team. Mech is perfect against magic nukes. It's not like necessarily as good as pipe, of course, but very good stuff. So, I, yeah, he's doing a mix of, like, pushing his lane and Tinky Dancings, it seems. Look at Tofu. He just stole some creeps off this double stack. with a, He's going back. He's like, guys, I got this dark pack. It's law damage. I got Fae Bolt in a second. I'm getting rich right now. I got four kills. You know, he's trying to make some investments right now. I'll do it, Tofu. He wants it so bad. He's going to keep his spells in case some enemies appear. Go mid, try and grab Tino. Starts with the swashbuckle. And the rift comes through. The glimpse is there. Dark's here. Hate plan versus... Disrupt. Yeah, that is tough. And Quinn is taking the, the teleport bottom as a Pangolier. <laughs> Bob? You ever seen a Rolling Thunder come out of a portal like that? Terrifying. I mean, dude, can it, it can probably go through the Twin Gate. Uh, Probably, yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. The world we live in now. Thanks. Uh, did not get rooted by the bear there because he's trying to sap some XP for level six right now still five and a half at 13 minutes the wisdom rune is coming up soon but he's still very angry that celery uh, tried to steal his first one because he's still struggling yeah game's a little tough for him right now um underlord gonna be going pipe next now too he's just mega survivable when these big team fights do actually happen he's definitely gonna bring the damage resistance here but they haven't really been as focused around towers as some of the other teams we've watched. But I think that's just because Gaming Gladiators feels a lot more comfortable just making smart moves and not forcing things. And they don't really have great heroes for forcing towers oh, either. Goodness. Like if the lone druid goes bottom, let's see if they can get this kill quick. Yeah, what, a, what an easy play. A stolen surge to send Salary in for the glimpse. Like Tofu is just yeah. having an immaculate game right now. Yeah, he's got a Perseverance as well. What do you build with that? Lotus Orb? I don't even know. Lotus, Meteor Hammer, or Octarine, guys. Probably Lotus. It's actually a sick Lotus game if you think about it. Yep. Great against Bat, right? You can remove track, and it has cast range from his Arcane Supremacy of 250. So it's like Boom. even easier to cast it on an ally. And he's so over farmed for what's normal at this position that you just. He's going to be able to cast it at the right time, basically. And going to grab himself a plate mail to go along with it, after, uh, of course, too. So that's going to feel great. Yeah, really good against the Slark and the Bounty. Be really, really good. Um, Palos' heat map is pretty much just the circle of the tier 1 tower bottom. He, like, he went to the river one time, but he's still really far for, like, just mm -hmm. planting on the lane. I'm surprised how much gold you get just doing this. They're gonna try and punish that now. The group up here, the surge initiation into the static storm, the damage from Quinn. There is no way out of this right now. They're gonna try and turn it, at least get some damage back thrown it. Back. They want to get Tofu. Get that. The wall is there. Quinn gets the Rolling Thunder off, though. Turns back. Bounces right through them. Can they find the kill with the help of this track? That's the question. The bounce is there, but it's such a low-level shuriken. It's just a little support bounty. Quinn comes right back in, tracked or not. Does not care. Roots there on a Tino. He's going to fall. It's a double kill for Ace. He wants to make it a triple. Mom, don't get the camera because Duraccio steals it. Now they're after Shanks. See if he can can get almost out. see him. The question have is, there vision. is a wisdom rune, though. Yes. Aha. He's here for a reason. Glorious steal, he says. He runs into Celery. Throws the track on him, but the question is, can he survive after this? Because Celery is holding a sentry, and there's no TP, so he's definitely dead. All right, so they'll steal some experience back from him in the end. Um, pretty good fight. The Shuriken Bounce was valuable. Did Oh, Drachu stayed with his team back for the kill. Team? Oh, my gosh. Team? All right, did not know that was happening. He just got lassoed and oh died. They keep pressing forward. They want to get Tofu. He just respawned. Only has the Shuriken right now. Not the best steal. Maybe it's their chance to actually find him, but now he's got the Frostbite. That's a much better steal. Bob goes down. Tofu just chucking out the control. And Tino has an Iron Shell, but it is not time to fight. He's just trying to run. Glimpse back into... Oh, right. You guessed it. It's Frostbite from Tofu again. And Ace grabs another double kill. This hero looks so good in Tofu's hands. Like, so freaking good. Seeds of Serenity on top of it, too. So his raw HP is just really high. And Perseverance is just, like, keeping him going constantly. Between all the arcane boots they've got and all of his mana regen, but great performance. Quinn got kind of low with the vacuum wall. That that response by the darks here was amazing, but they just weren't able to fight through it perfectly. Jeez, they've been lurking for so long with Palos and Shanks. I'm not sure. Maybe hoping that it would just be like an individual coming through or something, but kind of a dangerous position to be in. Now with the track still there onto Quinn, Duracio is moving right down here. They don't want to give up this territory right now. They're going to do it safely. They're going to move together. Bob up top has already been caught with a Thunderstrike. Now rooted as well. Tofu, hey, guess what? 
It's Frostbite. Double kill. Back to the portal. Man. You want to come back down bottom? Anybody? This reminds me of Bob's last back game. He did... In this case, he did great in the laning stage, but he's just made a lot of mistakes afterwards. His death number is just too high. They all pour out of the portal as Tofu runs up to the high ground, completely unafraid. Should he be afraid is the question. Well, now he's going to grab himself a Crystal Maiden, and you know what? It's not Frostbite. It's Freezing Field that he has now. Oh, accidentally pops it there. <laughs> Whoops. Or maybe... It Looking does. for vision. I, I don't know what the, the logic is on that one, but Rolling Thunder comes back in. Got him. They are able to grab the silence there. On to Palos, charging in, trying to get the final bit of damage. He is done. Monster kill streak now for Quinn. As he swashbuckles back up to the north side, Tofu still sitting on the fringes here as he throws out his own wall that he's stolen from Tino. And Shanks goes down. Everyone is tracked, and they don't care. Go ahead and watch us while we kill you, they say. That's just fine with us. It kind of feels like, to me, like one of those moments where Execration is like comfortable poking to see if it's a good time to fight, but Gaming Gladiators just knows they're stronger, so they force fight. So it's kind of like they're letting Gladiators take all these engagements that they just shouldn't get. So they're getting these extra freebies. And, like, Execration needs to learn to do things on the map that don't require them to, like, engage directly into Gaming Gladiators. So it kind of feels like it's just burning away any chance of them having a comeback because they keep getting picked off and picked off and picked off. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. Because they're, they're just looking like... It's like they're expecting Game Gladiators to split up for some reason. Like, I don't know if that's what's happening in their games in C or something where everyone gets greedy and goes away to farm. I mean, that is how they got Duraccio, to be fair, I guess. Which was the biggest yep. kill they got in a while. But right now, they are not giving them any space to breathe right now. Palos can't even leave his base without being swashbuckled on by Quinn. Mm -hmm. And they are just protecting yeah, with the... him with the sports. He's got dragon skill as well, so a little bit more harassed. They actually smoke while tracked, so they are they should know that this is happening. This just gets them towards the mid lane a little bit quicker. Yeah, the question is, do they care? More mana burnt here from Palos. Has his own defusal blade, but he's got no mana to work with, so the game is hard. Another static storm onto this poor Slark. He just can't do anything. At least he got the ulti off first, so it prevents some of the damage, but it's not enough for the save. Can't find a thing to do, and it's another Vanguard here from Tino to pair up with his pipe. But they just can't find actual team fights. People are just dying by themselves. Yeah, that's a tough one. Greaves Underlord, Pipe Underlord, Farming towards Crimson Guard. I mean, Tower's blocking a lot of damage right now. But once it runs out, these, these they're going to get shredded. Put the Deso up. And it goes. The smoke's out here. Bob trying to find a play with this last. So there's no blink. There's a BKB recipe being worked on, but it's still a ways away. They got four points Frostbite. It's going to take all of their power to kill maybe a bear. Oh, look at that long-range swashbuckle. Just shredding into Shanks. He goes down. Bob so trying to find an angle. After the wall, the vacuum, the grab. It's going to be the Underlord. He's tanky. There's a buyback from Shanks. He wants to get in here. They need all the trackable they can get. They want to turn this game around. It's a stolen lasso here from Tofu being available in this fight. He's still holding at the moment. There it is. He's going to throw it down onto Tino's Darkseer. Not taking too much damage right now, though. They've only cleaned up Bob after the buyback from Shanks. So The walls. Yeah, at least they don't lose anything else on the side of Execration, but they can't get those revenge kills that they're looking for. They don't see the... the oh my gone. goodness, this bear is just slapping with this Deso Mask of Madness. Tino, it would be a miracle if he managed to escape from this one, but that was Dream League. Miracle is not here right now, and Shank's going to get glimpsed. Oh no, sorry, not Shank. They actually managed to grab Halos. He gets back into his stacks room. This guy, he's like a storm chaser. He's he spending the whole time just in the most thunderous sights he can see. He's trying to research the power of this static storm and he's proven that it's very good versus slark yeah they've got greaves to heal them back up as well after all this so they, there isn't even like uh they're they're not even like low enough to burst at this point so i just think the game's over it feels it's, like they're dying too much here i mean this disruptor is just walking at your found that's not a good sign celery just complete confidence maybe he can be punished three seconds of the lasso, lasso. they preemptively lotus Bob just wants it. He wants it so bad, but he's forced to grab Quinn instead. They don't have the additional damage. Now Bob's just going to die, and yeah, I got to imagine the GG is coming out here soon. This, this is just looking sad. Frostbite on the bear. Oh, stolen again. It, a huge vacuum from Tino, but we're at the point where it doesn't really seem to matter. Ace is tanking tier 4 tower shots. The Crimson Guard is up right now. Like, Quinn is just slicing and dicing people here like it's Fruit Ninja. Trying to get back to the fountain. Yes, Jack survives. It's the best win they've got in five minutes. It's the bear. It's just gatekeeping. It's just standing at the fountain, daring them to come in. Will they get the kill on Tino before the GG ends the game? That's really the last question. Well, the answer is yes. Not too much of a surprise. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Slark was doing, with the damage reduction from the Underlord Aura, 
he was saving for 100 damage there in that last engagement. So if Crimson Guard is up, that's blocking everything. He's doing zero damage. He's attacking a Rubik. Rubik did have Lotus, so he actually had a decent amount of armor compared to normal. But like, if Slark can't do damage in these little windows where they initiate, the, the game is over. So uh, the smashing, like Gaming Gladiators takes him apart. It wasn't the biggest early net worth lead that we've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, for an early game, but it definitely felt like they were firmly in control for so much of that game. I, I think the hardest part about this game is definitely uh, seeing how Tino was so farmed and had such a great start on this Darkseer, and they couldn't really transition to anything. Like Maybe that's just an issue yeah. of like the team not playing with the Darkseer or Tino not playing the hero that much himself, but we didn't really see those combos come into play too much outside of like some early plays. He had some great vacuums and walls, right? Like any typical offlaner would do, but... It seems like he struggled to abuse like Darkseer specific things despite really dominating the lane, getting that early tower. They, they didn't really snowball into anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I partially agree with you. When you, when you said uh, that he didn't do, it didn't feel like he did enough. And then you mentioned his vacuum walls. His vacuum walls were like perfect. I, I think yeah. you've got to blame his teammates Yeah. personally because his net worth was high. He brought his team fight items. I don't know if he had the right one. What did he? What was the first defensive item he got? I don't know if the better. He got one the is vanguard, and then I think he got the pipe first, which is what we would want to see. I would say in this game. Yeah, that makes sense. So, and then he had that miraculous vacuum wall. Maybe you could argue he should have been there as the fight was happening bottom because his vacuum wall was kind of a response. But I, I just, I just don't think you can blame the guy. I, I feel like um, Bob had way too many deaths on the bat rider. It felt like he kind of just ran in and was mm -hmm. dying to normal engagements is his death number is just way too high and if that's one of the that was the first, one of the first heroes they picked if bob's not feeling strong on the hero then you got to find something else that'll work because it just kind of felt like he was running in and constantly behind and it felt like that the other game that he played batrider against aster as well it just felt like his bkb came kind of late it never felt like a good timing it felt like a defensive timing yeah and uh, that means nobody's dealing damage in these team fights Damage has definitely been an issue, I would say. I mean, having watched so many execration drafts, I feel like we, we never really have a lot of big nerfs or a big um, nukes going on, really. It feels like they, they're struggling in these fights, like get that one target finish off. At the same time, we also have just defensive auras everywhere, so it's mm -hmm. hard to gauge exactly um, where the fault lies or, or what the benefits are. But uh, right now, GG up one to zero versus execration. We're gonna have a like, 12, 13 minute break here, and then we'll be back for game number two. So hit the squad mode, check out all the games, and we'll see you after the break. love it you wear it what's your style get your merch at shop.esogaming.com
wasting time Cause I'm already gone So long Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now on my mind it's finally sinking in you're I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out but even with no makeup you still stand out cause no one makes me feel the way you do now your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discover underneath last night's covers yeah everything came so easy it's Thank you.
Ba -da -ba 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 -da. We're back. Game two. Execration. Versus. Game in Gladiators with Trent and Purge. How you doing, Purge? Mm -hmm. I'm good. Uh, hopefully we see a bit of a better performance from Execration in game number two. I'm sure their morale is not feeling so good. It's just one of those hard things where, like, if you aren't the best team at the tournament, and you start losing games, you just, you're just going to lose some confidence. And then you're going to start struggling and be like, okay, how do we pivot? And then you just keep losing confidence. You, you can tell that your, your opponent's game sense is better than yours. So then you stop doubt. You start doubting like your choices. And it's such a terrifying position to be in. Yes. It really impacts your, your decision making and your... Sometimes you don't go for kills. You should go because you're like, oh, God, are they in my... They're going to outplay me. Am I doing the wrong thing? You know, it, it gets very tough. So... And that's on top of drafting. Well, so it's it's tougher execration here. Most of the games I've ever played in Dota, I felt that way. So, you mm. know, it's, I, I really sympathize for execration here. It's always tough being on the back foot as, as they yes. move into these these first couple of picks and bands. We're already in there, folks. You know, you know that's what you're here for. And I don't know, maybe execration will, will be able to find their pathway in, in forward in this one. Their best success was was that game where they had the bat and the Slark previously up against Aster. They didn't win, but it was certainly the most competitive one that we've seen for them so far. I think I'd like to see Shanks on another, like, I don't know, maybe like an initiator. Like, does he play like some Earth Spirits or something? I kind of want to just see like some actual snowballing chaos come out in this game. I could see something like that. Yeah, the Bounty Hunter was fine as an opening pick, and they, it was really good the first like minute or two they got a kill, but... After that, it just feels inadequate compared to a hero like Rubik, I guess. I mean, I'm, it, it was it was good in conjunction with the bat. Maybe, maybe we're like putting too much blame on the draft when we just needed Bob to play better. For sure, That's definitely like, fair. It, like, there's good offensive things that bat or that uh, bounty hunter can do to set up for bat, but because bat had a bad game, those options are just weren't there, and then bounty hunter felt bad. Is probably what happened. So, uh, I guess it maybe comes down to like giving giving Bob some some lane rotations. Um, show up mid to get runes to punish the enemy mid because in all the games we've seen today it just feels like Bob keeps being against like three or four heroes so maybe it's a support problem that he's not being covered enough gets further behind and then plays worse um, so maybe that's the the step it's a, it's a play thing blame the supports back that's right always just blame the supports well, I like the general idea here as uh, X creation are going to start by blaming supports for this patch and uh, instantly banning out the chant and the enchantress just like Game of Gladiators did last time when they were second pick. And we, Game of Gladiators are going to start out with the Doom. So the Doom definitely not looking convincing across the board. He's one of the most contested, one of the most picked uh, heroes as well so far through this tournament and currently sitting at a sub 50% win rate. Not, not terrible, but not great. But if there's one team that has made it look good in the past, it has definitely been Game of Gladiators here. Uh, I, they did lose one of their games versus EG, though, with the Doom. So it, it's not a guaranteed win. They also lost the Bet Boom with that Doom. So, uh, But again, it's also just something they pick up really early because Ace is comfortable on it. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of faith in Ace playing this hero. Ace, I, I, I really feel like Ace is maybe one of the best. I mean, he's got to be one of the best offlaners, but maybe the best offlaner right now. He's very, he's very fucking good. It feels like it just feels like every game he's like blowing net worth leads up in a huge way. Watching his underlord performance last game, yeah, was was uh, impeccable. He just, he's so fucking good. So like, I don't care what hero he plays. I know he's gonna do it well. And Doom means he's gonna get even more net worth than normal. Yeah. So I think it should uh, not be difficult. Both of them probably a little. I mean, I guess it's hard to say that Whisper is still underrated at this point. But same thing, True. where it's just like That's he's hard. been dominant on the offlane for so long and. It's nice to see Ace coming back into the pro scene and just and looking so good on this team over the year. So, uh, X Creation gonna pick up something that they have seen a lot of today. They're finally gonna, gonna drink the Kool Aid here and pick up the Storm Spirit. Currently, 14 games, 78% win rate. Hero's been doing pretty well here at the tournament. Certainly, the, the most successful hero you could say so far, really, in terms of like games plus win rate, right alongside Chen. So, they're gonna be pretty pleased That's with this one. Yep, and they got the IO to play against Doom as well. This is something we saw at the end of the last patch as well. Let them open Doom, you get the IO response, so you got solutions against getting doomed. But frankly, just the heal alone has felt good enough, and the movement speed maybe too, to keep people alive in those circumstances. But Gladiators do get the Disruptor as well, which is a good IO solution. So we'll see if that can pair well enough. Um, currently protecting their Doom against those pesky melee carries. Monkey King. See if they ban Slurk as well, but they've got Disruptor, so they're kind of covered there. Maybe they don't need to. Ursa certainly is scary, right? Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of the bear. Felt like we'd uh, we'd see more of that hero after the success at Dream League, but obviously he's a little one-dimensional. But uh, man, when he gets rolling, he, he does feel pretty incredible in this patch. 
Bear will go back into hibernation as the ban is out. It's banned in the second phase a lot of the games that we've watched today, so yeah. not super surprised to see him get crossed out there. And Execration doing the typical Protect Storm Spirit at all costs. Puck bans, Ember Spirit bans, what's the last one that I'm missing? Silencer bans sometimes <laughs> yeah. to protect him. Trying to give Bob that good game. I want an anti mage nice and early too. I want to deal with okay. that. Is that very likely could have come out in the second phase? And Duracho, big fan of that hero. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, very effective. I could um, see Shanks taking Rubik out of this phase and feeling pretty happy about it. If Eamon don't ban it, feels like that would fit pretty nicely. It, it's not like a, a like hard commit like four hero, but I mean his edge looked pretty good with the spacing. Hero seems really strong. I feel like it pairs pretty nicely with Io and Storm. We'll see what Be they fine, do. fine, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. I think uh, someone's taking Rubik's second phase if it doesn't get banned. Ten seconds remaining. It's just too good. How can you pass it up? That's true. I, I mean, I would love to see Tovu play it again, but I would not love to see it if I was on the side of Execration because that was pretty brutal. And, uh, oh, yeah, we were kind of talking in the break a little bit. Got to give some credit to Celery on that Disruptor as well in that last game because I know we gassed up Tofu a lot, but Celery was also impeccably positioned and he actually ruined Palos's entire game with static storms he did yes his his ultis were really fantastic actually it made it look so simple it was just like oh you obviously you just picked disruptor against slark every game yeah because this just keeps happening you hit him with the ulti and even if he goes invis before it you just kill him after uh paired with like some nice stuns uh but it was it was really well executed definitely made look disruptor look like one of the best heroes in the patch for sure whereas other teams struggle with a bit they're gonna ban the bounty and they will pick the rubik themselves very good very good i like this start from execration this is this is feeling like they're adapting a little bit here uh to the patch we're trying to play more into what's being given to them versus what they've played in their history i like it better on the execration side the spells that you can steal from the gladiators is just straight up better on the gladiator side, IO spells are kind of iffy. Storm spells can sometimes be iffy as well. So just all, all across the board, better for Excavation here. And they're going to go for the Silencer to be able to guarantee some Storm kills pretty much. They've, they're they very heavy on the Silences right now on the gladiator side. I mean... And now they just need a stun, probably. Something to kill Storm once he gets silenced. Nice burst damage. A little root. It's going to be the Ember. It was not banned in the second phase. No. That is a solid hero. It looks good to me. Good, uh, very, get away very like storm. Yeah, hard to punish. And then slights as well. I was going to be there anyway, so you're just going to do a bunch of damage to him for free. Slight chains. They don't have a Murano to combo with it, which is slightly less good. But the root is a is a nice disable that they were kind of lacking on the gladiator side right now. But yeah, silencer should just add a lot, frankly. Just global silence into last word alone is going to basically take Storm out of a fight until he gets BKB. So that could really hurt his mid-game time a lot, as long as Silencer's not the guy that gets gone on, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So positioning very important for the pretty vulnerable game and supports. Both of these guys uh, will be uh, very vulnerable to death if they get gone on. Yeah, this has been a what well, we've seen a lot. I mean, we've watched a lot of Execration games. I thought it was mostly just kind of a them thing with like these double, almost like five-looking supports in a lot of their games. Uh, outside of like the Rubik, I guess. Something they've been picking quite a bit as well, but it's certainly a bit of a double-edged sword. You're vulnerable to Storm, but you also just own Storm. Kind of goes for both of these heroes. So if like Storm tries to jump Silencer, then he might get Stack Storm. If he tries to jump Disruptor, he might just get Global. So they kind of have like the uh, like the the nuclear, we you know what's it called? Mutual destruction. Except it's for each mutually, other. <laughs> mutually assured destruction. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, if, he, <laughs> if he jumps one support, the other's just going to ruin his day. But speaking of ruining your day, he is back, ladies and gentlemen. From the past, Phantom Lancer returns to being a super obnoxious hero to play against. He is pretty good this game. Um, they've got uh, Curse of the Sound that he can dispel, the Thunderstrike too. But there are some counters as well. Until he gets Manta, he's a little vulnerable. Uh, Manta very needed this game against uh, Embers, Searing Chains as well. Yes. And they've got some AoE options. You could just do some like Maelstrom build on Ember to transition into dealing with them. But right now, they're going to definitely need some more ideal carry. Could be some Sven-ish type hero for sure. Yep. That's uh, what number number two in the old anti-PL heroes. Ember is the third worst matchup statistically for, for PL. Not surprising. It, just, it makes sense. You're sliding, you're destroying, you're rooting. He needs Manta, like you said. Definitely a bad time, plus Manta versus just even the, the silencer in general. 
Shard going to be really important for the Rubik this game. Try and help out if in case he gets caught in the uh, the Static Storm. Well, do you, guess what the uh, the number one disadvantage for PL is right now in pubs. Oh, I saw that it was actually Beastmaster. Oh, wait, are you looking to... What, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's Beastmaster. I, why do you think that is? Oh, drums. It's the Ag spell. <laughs> the drums yeah, of the, the, the new that took the drums me a of second. Build where, <laughs> yeah. where if he attacks, it does AoE damage that also heals him. So there's just... It's like infinite AoE damage. Lush Rack is only fourth oh, on the list. That's so funny. Uh, Dude, Lush went way East down. Ember. So Ember still protects them pretty well, depending on what he builds. But he'll be able to slap them all, figure out which one's the real one, get out. But the new Ags build is pretty cool on PL. Um, you know, generic stats, it bounces multiple times. I saw one, I think I was watching a Div 2 game yesterday, where they had a PL and a, and a, uh, a um, what's it called? Um, Grimstroke. So they would oh. like, like leash them, and then you get two zaps, which is pretty cool. And sometimes you could probably lance twice in the duration of the ulti. So it was just a shitload of lances coming out, I, making a lot of high damage illusions. It's pretty cool. I actually forget that hero exists at times. He fell oh, off yeah. so hard. He's just like never picked anymore. I feel like that hero's got to be yeah. kind of cool right now. Surely he's got some sauce that we just haven't quite figured yeah. out yet. He's fun. I, I genuinely like playing him in pubs. I think I've played him like eight times in the last like couple months and I, I i've only lost like one game because people just like don't expect you to be like down to fucking fight on yeah. that hero and if you can use your q spell okay or good it's like he's actually a legitimately good fighting support in the early levels because you just get a find a moment to walk in with inkswell on and it's like oh shit i just did 350 magic damage and they don't expect that really um and then if you use that advantage to transition in the mid game, you're completely different support compared to like the five that's like, I'm gonna cast Ink Swell and run away, you know? <laughs> like very different. It can, it can definitely work, but probably not this game. Um, no, probably see though, not. they're looking for their carry right now. Best carry matchups against PL would be Anti-Mage, Sven. Sven's the best. Yeah. Uh, Anti-Mage. And they're both already Axe. gone. <laughs> Axe carry. Whoa, that's the Drachio okay. mag? Or is it Drachio? Very smart. No, I think it's a, it's a Quinn mag, I think gonna be ember safe lane Ooh, yeah. is my assumption it could also be drachio mag too that'd be a cool way to spin it but they, they've got an option either put ember safe and mag mid or vice versa they could also mag, mid mag off lane even too theoretically like they, they really have options everywhere i think like safe lane doom mm -hmm. but it's clear that the empower on ember spirit is going to be the play here yes um execration need 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 a crimson guard hero because it will block the cleave damage as well um that will really help protect the PL illusions. Otherwise, something as simple as just slight with Empower is going to do too much damage. And luckily, this also doesn't force the Ember to have to go down some like Battle Fury like build, which can kind of hurt your timings and your build in a disadvantageous way. Empower should cover things. They they should still be allowed to go Maelstrom, but I don't know. Maybe they will be a little bit crazy and go Battle Fury build, but they've got the Ooh. they've got the option. There's Centaur. a very high strength hero. Okay, that, um, that is good. He's going to have a great Crimson. No Dispel, but that's hard to really figure out in the last 10 seconds or whatever. They, they didn't have a lot of time here, so they're just going to have to deal with the fact that the Empower is there. No options to remove it, but certainly a hero that uh, has been talked about a lot. Never really considered very good versus Disruptor, but considered pretty good versus the, the Doom at the very least. Maybe you can bail someone out mm -hmm. from a bad Doom situation. Pretty balanced. Classic lane with the Rubik, too. Yeah, between the Searing Chains, they are going to do Ember Mid and Safe Lane Magnus. Um, I think the the carry Magnus against Centaur sounds fine to me. Very curious to see what build he goes, actually, because because this is carry Mag, Yes, Mag is now a universal hero. That means the items that he buys, very flexible. Your, your Mantas end up being like good damage items on universal heroes because it's giving you 46 stats, which ends up being probably like like 30 damage as a right click item so we might see some interesting builds coming from uh, Duracho here but i'm probably expecting like an echo saber into who the fuck knows something weird uh i can tell you that tino apparently played a game of the safe lane yesterday uh on the mag where he went mask and madness into echo into harpoon uh okay. it looks I like figured harpoon shiro also did that same build a couple safe laners trying it out ta2000 similar thing here okay okay we'll try i bet you could do lane. harpoon into Shockwave, into Skewer back. Yep. Against enemies. Oh, here we go. That probably positions him well. Duraccio played a couple games, actually. So he's been warming this up here two days ago. And both games, he went Mask of Madness, uh, Echo Saber, into Shadow Blade, Blink slash BKB Silver Edge in some various order, depending on how the game was going. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah, because at some point, it's about landing RPs and then killing people afterwards. So yeah, he's going to do some hybrid 
right click build the mask of menace helps make up for your lower agility gain but still outputting a lot of damage it's cool it, we'll see how it goes for gaming gladiators they got sick cosmetics though that's for sure Here's what I'll say. Duraccio lost one of those games with Nisha on his team. And Nisha, it was on Nisha Smurf. I mean, I guess all of Nisha's accounts that he plays pubs with are Smurfs. But, like, that means he probably wasn't even at his right MMR. So, like, mm. couldn't even win a game with Nisha on your team, Duraccio. What, what do you got here, bud? I mean, obviously, weird. this will weird. prove that Quinn is better once and for all if he can carry Duraccio's mag to a W. That does sound a little suspicious all right here. <laughs> uh, but that's the, the lineups there about to jump into the game. The Magnus, look at all these stats. Two circlets, two ironwood branches, plus six to all attributes. That's great. 18 attributes, that's nine. That's 10.8 damage Unit level one. Versal. Very good stats. You know, x -Creation might be losing games, but they definitely have some great uh, voice line meta. You know, they, they do a good mm. job on that one here. That is true. Yeah. Good luck, good luck. No matter luck. what, if they... They just take this experience and then go back to their DPC and continue to place. They have a chance of making TI. Yep. They just need to, like, maybe, like, one tournament they need to, like, place for extra points, I think. Keep doing and well be in the league. A lot better. That's an interesting ward they placed there, up and by the small camp. Uh, and, and to the side yeah. of that dire outpost. Just keeping an eye on, like, when you're one, farming. Exactly. I saw one on the other side of the map, actually, um, one time. Basically, the opposite side of the map. Same thing. Same idea. It's just a, it's nice for the camps, but also to help spot when people rotate in from the after the teleports. Yeah, good one. Well, they're gonna move past the ward place down from execration. They know they're swarming the river for this rune right now. Shanks, does he dare risk it? He no. He's gonna keep the fable, and he wins the click battle anyway. Quinn can't get there in time. And which one is remaining? That will be yeah, for Ooh. Apollo. So we got three execration for one. Execration currently winning. <laughs> GG. Good luck coming back from that if they can manage it here there's all right ace has some high aspirations this game already in his quick buy he currently has a vanguard radiance queued up he's ready to play Ooh. versus this phantom lancer it's also oh, really I'm good versus so storm excited, too though. yeah all this extra evasion I, I think you end up getting like 23 or 24 percent evasion when you when you add the two together so um it's a cool build i've never seen somebody do it before but it, it does give them a lot more chance to beat the PL basically like rather than saying I'm gonna go and Midas he's like oh I'm just gonna actually ruin PL's game here and right off the bat they're doing a great job PL's very low great harassment how on earth how did he get so low just from it was an in he glimpsed him the moment he walked up he ate an entire scorched earth which is 200 magic damage and tofu's just been wailing on his ass too Damn, that is crazy I would not have expected it to be that effective so quickly there's a lot of yeah. region they have to burn through right now it is yeah uh, prayers in chat for Bob right now. Spam this blob to help out Bob. That's the one you guys can go with. We gotta help Bob. All right, he needs the spirit bomb. He needs some energy here, but so Bob can have a good game and execution can feel okay. So C fans get to work. He's already pretty low here. Unfortunately, he does have his bottle coming though. So look, his courier even solved. looks like the blob emote, guys. Like just just spam the blob. It's gonna be great. Interesting choice to use bugs to represent your curry. You should be using this. Screw under tower. Oh, was... Luck shanks. Yeah, it's not looking too good here. A little bit of the old arcane curse. Dropping low. Oh, the... nice. Okay, he's going to be all right there. Up of the tango. Cannot get too, <laughs> too close there to draw chairs. He throws up the shock, but he does survive. Yeah, I was hoping to interrupt a, uh, a healing salve, it looks like. Yeah. Doesn't get it. Bob. Bob? Really thinking about fighting Quinn here. He's thinking about it. He's trying to get one more deny if possible, but yeah, Quinn will be fine here. Back on the top lane. They still don't know what Ace is doing, but they will learn. I really hope he commits to this, dude. I'm so jacked to see him go Radiance off lane. Oh, I think it's, it's like legit a pub build, but I love when this happens when there's like actually a good time to go a pub build and teams pull it out the perfect moment instead of just autopiloting every game. It makes for such cool games. Um, Ace has enjoyed being a bit of a greedier doom, so, you know, no Midas Octarine. We're just going to radiance it up. I am into it. I don't it. even think, is it fair to call it ra greed? I don't I no. don't even think he's that greedy. He's, like, just so fucking good that it looks like he's greeting because his net worth is always high. That's what it feels like to me with this player, genuinely. He just, him and Tofu, like, they just win their lanes, man. The grind. Uh, the constant pub grind. I'm not, I wonder if they've uh, patched that yet, if they can uh, queue together yet. 
which is the whole like immortal picking thing. You know, that, that's a Game of Gladiators oh. debuff right there. And well, there's a debuff right there as Quinn gets the first blood on the Bob. The Blob spam was not enough, everyone. Needed a little bit more here. He's back up top. Ace will get the final hit there. On to Palos. And things begin to fall apart in the third minute. Once more here for, for Execration. Yeah. That's a tough one, and he's almost got his vanguard as a result, which means that uh, the hopes of harassing Ace out of this lane is basically gone. I mean, he's got Ice Armor on top of that, too, so 22 attack speed slow if you try to hit the guy. And with vanguard on top of that, uh, good luck. Good luck. It's gonna take a while to get the Radiance finished, though, so that big opening could change things. Oh, look at this that, replay uh, here, too. Just so you can see it. Ooh, easy. But that range was actually hit a little him. close. Yeah. A slight dodge that tower hit, so there was a chance maybe that Quinn dies to that, but ends up surviving, and Bob's going to be sad. But Bob's last hits are still pretty high. He's got seven more denies than Quinn does, so I wouldn't be surprised if the network's kind of close. Yeah, it's not that far off. About 250 gold. It matters, but won't do everything. He's got to hold it together for uh, quite a bit longer, but there's going to be much help here. That is for sure. And before the IO is going to rotate over, you know, Palos is going to be needing a lot of space in this game as he is a Phantom Lancer. Oh, just getting some space here for the last hits. And to stay relevant as the Flame Guard comes out from Quinn. He is burning a lot of damage here on the Bob. Three points in that Flame Guard. Not easy for Bob to get through it. Yeah, definitely a less typical build here for Quinn, but I mean, it's. That's going to make him a lot more effective against the Storm Spirit, basically. He doesn't have to worry about uh, trading hits nearly as much. Jeez, speaking of trading hits, man, Ace does not care. That tower is hitting him, in case Dodge. you guys are confused. I know his health bar is not moving, and it's slowly whittling its way down here. He tanked about 25 shots or something there as the Ice Armor is reapplied. And the next wave moves under the tower, and so does Ace. <laughs> Getting three armor from Devour, four armor from Ice Armor, and then he's got a Vanguard on top of that. So, yeah, good luck killing this guy here. His only weakness right now is straight up just mana. By spamming Ice Armor, he's running out a bit more. Palos just getting beat on here. He's got to find something. He tries to go on the Tofu, see if they can turn that all. Oh, there's no rotations to help. He's going to fall. The Break Creeps, they and do the their best to try and help. Maybe it's going to hand a free kill to Bob as he rotates in. That is a little bit nice. Gets glimpsed back. That's going to help him get back to lane faster. So, at least some benefit for them. But it's a Phantom Lancer that they are depending on for this game. Currently, he is at the bottom of the cores. Yeah, that's a tough one. And the other issue is when he doppelgangs, you know which one's real because he's tethered to him. Mm, true. So it's almost better if Io untethers while he uses doppelganger to give him a chance to juke, maybe. But it wasn't going to make a difference in that case. No. But definitely something to maybe keep in mind in the future. Well, classic game gladiators. They bring two heroes to the room at six minutes, but it is still secured by Shanks. Unfortunately, it's going to cost him his life. The glimpse and his back. brains. And, and his brains. That's right. Minus two starts now as Bob gets a little bit of help here from a uh, tethering in Carlo. Unfortunately, he might have just sacrificed himself. There's a glimpse in five seconds. There's a tether in three, but there's a root right now. And Carlo... Sliced on down, a little fried up shish kebab here to the flame guard of the Ember Spirit. And Palos, cool well, he is hitting creeps at least. He is, yeah. 1k disadvantage right now, not the end of the world with the execration side. What's Tino doing bottom? He's got his vanguard. He's going to have his boots up. He's harassing Magnus a little bit, but um, yeah, they're both doing fine here. Uh, actually, Magnus has way more level experience. He's got about half a level over him, but yeah, net worth are dead even. So that part's going well for, for Execration. We'll see if they can turn Centaur into something. He's going for the Max Retaliate build. Watch the Major, the Lima Major, and he's like, stats over Retaliate? Hell no, it's got buff. Go time. Mid lane, it's also go time for Bob as he throws the pull it onto Quinn, but no real concerns there. Shanks is nearby, but not enough to do anything about it. As they will TP in Carlo for the refill. At the same time, Quinn going to do his own TP plays here as he is an Ember Spirit. Get a zip right back in that lane. Draccio. Just moving around the camps right now with three points in Empower. He's going to hell it on over to the well. Enjoy the benefits of the well wishes and 1.5 mana regen per second. Look at that mana fly back into his bar Just as there's a fight in the mana. mid lane. <laughs> and Tofu grabbed up here. Oh, nice. Able to grab the kill there from Execration, finding their second one of the match. But will it cost Bob his life? It's looking like it might. Shanks, the throwback under the tower. Quinn, he's got another... Slight in just one more second. Ooh, he might be able to turn something here. Has he used the roots early, though? And Bob, he's got seven he armor. Quinn dropping low. Surely this time they can get the kill. What just happened? Bob? <laughs> Bob? Bob? Oh, no. Not Bob. again. Bob. Bob. Dude, 
Look, it's only fair. Ooh. It's literally only fair. Uh, yeah, but he, I, at least Bob would have had the kill. He just stopped I moving. Thought he was, I thought he would go for the slight earlier, and he didn't. So I was like, oh, Quinn's just being smart. He's choosing to run away. And uh, yeah, that's it. That must have been it. Unlock. Unlock. <laughs> oh, look at Quinn. <laughs> look at him in the cab right now. I could have got away. I could have done it. <laughs> He might have. I mean, he wasn't going to have TP, though. It, it would have truly... He had no remnants. His mana was kind of low. He, he could have slight dodged something for sure, but... I think he might have been able to slight dodge and uh, get denied in the neutrals, though. Kind of annoying. Uh, he was I guess really he was low. pretty low, yeah. Yeah, he would have had to run to the, the large camp. Maybe suicide. It's all right. Get, Bob needs this. He does. Yeah, <laughs> rough, give Bob something a rough here, guys. Day. Yeah. Very unfortunate here. A couple, a couple DC as we try and sort things out. Look, the game's just too good right now, guys. Oh, well. Oh, no. What? The Doom just comes out the second we unpause up top. I'm not sure what was going on there. I'm sure Palace was not trying to be within Doom cast range. But Ace says, if you get my mid, I'm taking your carry for it as well. And he's going to go down. The Stampede cannot save him. And they also can't get the deny in time. Tofu actually grabs the last hit. Yeah. Glimpse helped a lot there. Faded Brooch, Arcane Boots now in Doom. So now he doesn't even have mana problems anymore. He no longer has Radiance queued up. What? But please, Ace, come back for it. I don't know. He, Ace? He shift queued. He probably shift queued his Arcane Boots and he removed the queue. But it's coming. He would not let us down like that. No, he would not. He most certainly would There's not. There's no way he would bait us. I'll be very Must upset. Bite. In their defense, though, a very fast Crimson Guard could mean that Peel does zero damage It would be minutes. really good this game. But hey, if he doesn't do any damage, he just makes more illusions, right? I mean, I'm just talking over Shanks dying because, I mean, it's not really a surprise at this point in the day. Ace continues his triumphant march towards these dire heroes. Carlo forced to hop over to the dire range creep to attempt an escape here. There is no more cancel, but he does TP out alongside Bob. So they're out of there, but that's the Storm Spirit escaping from a fight while he has an arcane rune, and that is not a good situation. Oof. Yeah, and he got Glimpse back there. I think he did pause a little bit after he TP'd in. Well, yeah, the glimpse just yeeted him all the way back. Big bummer there. <laughs> he might uh, get hit with another one here if he tries to jump onto Tofu, who just stole his bounty room, but I don't think he saw him in the nighttime. Just walk away. Here we go, Nice. In here. A lot of see armor. If they can finally deal with this, and it's just a global silence. Sick. Pretty great protection. Uh, the uh, hoof stomp was there, but not able to be used. So off he goes. Quinn picks up a couple of creeps down bottom. Rachio has just been moving around the map farming. Zero, zero, zero. Only 73 last hits. A little bit of a slow start for this mag. Uh, just because he's only last hitting a lot of jungling as well. So he doesn't have that much to show for it. It's funny to talk about him being like low net worth when he's like matching the highest net worth on the enemy team. It's just True. that Doom is like so far ahead yeah. that it looks very well. Okay, cue the Radiance up. We're on, baby. Ah, uh, there he is. Back on the menu. Here we go. A little team talk. And they're not going to see this shit coming, and you know, like, I, I want, do you think he's going to save all of this money, or do you think he's going to buy the relic? All right, they're diving uh, mid. Uh, That's more important. I think he just saves. Tofu does go down. All right. I mean, Quinn is the one who started this right now, and kind of baited his teammates in a little bit. Pig pull popped out here from the silencer. Of course, they know there's no global right now, so here's a chance to get aggressive here from Execration. Quinn, moving up towards the high ground, zips right back, and there's no catch on that side of the tower, so he can walk it away. And Bob's going to have to go home and get some mana, but at least it's a kill, and at least it went to Storm. Raggio goes for the RP play under the tower. A lot of damage, but there's no one TPing. I don't know, miscommunication or something, but that is definitely a tip yeah, if I am Tino. Yeah, that's big miscommunication for sure. Nothing else makes sense. Wait, did, did he? But what the, dude, oh my god, I thought Shanks had six. Oh, he just cast Shockwave now anyway. Still an RP feels good. Coming back in. There's the skewer down under that tower. The zip in from Bob trying to find the damage on Duraccio. Ace time. comes through. The doom is thrown down onto Bob. Now Duraccio also just walking it away. But Carlo, the heals, maybe has the save. Needs a couple more right click kills. Duraccio runs through the small camp. It's just the kobolds, though. He's going to be able to make his way through them. That's what the problem. But the fade bolt is found from Shanks. Quinn wants to grab a kill onto Tino. They're going to ditch him. Just let him go, they say. Try and get everybody else out of this situation. Shank's going to run into Tofu, so huh? Tofu going to have a glimpse back here, possibly. He does eventually die there. I had already given up for dead. Tofu still has glimpse. There it is, right back down towards the river. So Shank's going to get body blocked. Damn. Easy. It was close. He almost got juked. He had one slight chain, and he went for it, and it did latch. But uh, maybe felt confident. But yeah, didn't quite have vision there. I don't think. Yeah, this ward didn't spot him either, so it was close.
And, uh, Good attempt by the Dire Squad. The worst part of all that was that uh, the delay in that kill there on Shanks meant that Seller got there in time for his second steal of some int this game. Mm. Even dumber there as, uh, yeah, Observer pointing out there. We still have a Wisdom Rune on the Radiant side. Sometimes you're winning so hard, you can't even go back and get it. Not worth giving up the territory. Yep. And the Relic is up on the Doom here. Let's go. His opponents can see what he's got if they spot him here. Opting for Scorch Earth damage talent. He's here to farm, baby. 80 damage per second from Scorch Earth. The Radiance is going to do, what, 55 is it at now? Yep, 55 damage. I'm literally shaking. You know, if I see this Doom, I'm done. You should, they should be scared, dude. That's that's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of mischance, a lot of damage. Dealing with those PL illusions. Well, he's going to do his best to uh, to keep hitting and keep propagating right now on Palos. As he is found by Quinn and Tove. Well, There's a tough situation to get out of. You even get the ultimate jukes. He sends a couple left and right, but he stays in the middle. And that means Tofu just drops the stack storm on top of him. And it's just a repeat of the last game. Tofu, stack storming, hollows. They zip in here, but the global silence can help him escape. Quinn, not sure if he wants to escape. Tofu gets out in time under the cover of that silence. They can't cancel his TV. Dracho actually charges right through the zipping Bob. But now Quinn's coming back. He's low on mana, but if they sync everything up together, I don't think Bob gets out of this one. He tries to taunt to make it feel like it was better than it was. But he's going to follow his carry to the grave. Okay, nicely done. Fight works out solid. Uh, once again, Celery's ultis have been amazing so far. These globals, like the, the way they're playing around them have just been impeccable. It's like global gets cast and they TP right away. They just know what their limits are and how to use the skill. They're, they're basically using that as a like cut your losses ability, basically. It's like one less kill here, one less kill there. Over the course of six, eight minutes, you know, that's a lot of gold net worth. So they're just getting the pickoffs that they want and they're minimizing the... Uh, the kills that their opponents can get. So harder and harder for Storm to snowball. That's how Excavation want to get back into this one, though. They go for the smoke. They're grouping up. They found themselves, Quinn. The Flame Guard is stolen here. Trying to get any damage that they can. Can they stop this guy? No more remnants left in the tank here. Quinn, though, jumping his way out. Jumps back in there with the, the uh, little bit of slight, though. And they will finally grab that kill. Huge for them right now. Shank actually getting the bounty on that one. Bob zips forward. They're trying to get Topo here, too. Pig pulls away to the left. Bob getting low. There is a lot of silences on him. Duracho wants the final hit. Grabs it there. Arlo and Tino grouped up here. They're going to have to leave Shanks for dead. He just skewer a couple <laughs> heroes. Uh, it's going to be a double kill here for Duraccio as they just make their way back to this tower. Yeah. Tough one for Quinn there. Walking in, no smoke. His opponent smoked. His opponents knew that somebody was there ready to use spells. He was not able to react in time. And he was like inside trees when they jumped on him too. Which made it even harder. So nice kill getting that. Unfortunate for him, he didn't have a remnant down. But he's fine. His net worth is still solid. His team's dominating. I'm sure Radiance is up. It is. Oh. Ace is just ready to do the damage. He's going to go BOTs after. Now we're getting the greed, baby. Yeah. It's uh, definitely a good-looking game for him. And, well, Palos in a stack storm. But this time, it is only Tofu. So it feels pretty great. Unfortunately, the high mobility of Quinn brings him in here. They do have a ward on the high ground. So be able to use that to play around a bit here with Quinn. Carlo, thanks about heading over that banner. Thankfully, does not grab it. Heathers himself over to Palos instead. I'm going to keep control of these camps right now as Quinn also farms nearby, but they got to keep Palos farming. Got to get this guy absolutely huge because he's already up against it with this Ace Doom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be really hard. Between him having like Ice Armor and Vanguard, his survivability is just going to be fantastic. Let's see, go next. Boots of Travel's up. He's queuing up BKB, so just standard stuff. And he disassembled his Arcane Boots to put the Energy Booster in his backpack or in his inventory. I don't know if he'll turn that into anything soon. Maybe maybe something like an Octarine, but Octarine's a lot worse this game because he doesn't have Midas. Yeah. So I, I don't even think I want to see Octarine this game. His build is definitely going to be different. Maybe something like a Shivas would be cool. Just like more AoE. It solves some of his mana problems. Give him a little magic resistance. Just a little bit. A little bit of baby magic resistance. And attack speed slows are fantastic against both Storm and PL. So more. Well, the Global Silence is popped out here this time. They're using it offensively to get this kill onto Bob. They're going to secure it. Nice. No Global to save here from Tino. Tino actually going to use it offensively? Well, I didn't like that. Nope. Nope. Did not find whatever they were looking for. Not sure what the plan was, but the plan failed. And he's going to immediately come down to the bottom lane here. They have a relocate play here. They're going to jump onto Quinn. Sun is there. He's Children. got the barrier protection, as you can see. Keep him alive. And Quinn just wants to turn. I got a flame guard. I got a shield rune. I am pretty oh. tanky, he says. That was their carry. That was Palos getting zipped and zapped to his near death. They hop over onto Shanks. He has the stolen remnants, but he can't use them right now with that doom. Uh, Heather back there from Carlo trying to survive, but they're just burning to Ace. And meanwhile, there's a TP out. Ace grabs that kill. They will not be able to grab Tino. Palos is on the run. Can't even kill Celery. 
help of the ice armor there from Ace as they chase He's this so poor fast. Phantom Lancer. He's going to try his best to juke into the trees, but there is just nothing. It's inevitable. And back yeah. on the top half of the map, Bob is just getting smacked by Duraccio for so much damage. No chance at a kill, but that is frightening to see. Yeah, the Shadow Blade is... Oh, and he's actually gone lots of stats points, and I realize he's 1-4-1 with stats. Which, actually, I didn't even think about stats oh, with Universal Heroes. Nuts, actually. But it makes so much sense. You're doing 3 plus 0.3. So every stat point, you're getting 3.3 .3 damage instead of 2. So it's even better for these Universal Heroes than it was before. Very cool to see this. And yeah, with the Shadow Blade, he just gets on top of his opponents all the time. <laughs> and now he gets a Vambrace. That's another 20 attributes. So another 22 damage. That, oh, sorry, 12 damage. That's a pretty cool play, I gotta say. As uh, again, they're trying to escape here, but the glimpse is there, and he already used the doppelganger, so just gonna go down. Yeah, a lot of people trying out Magnus, not a lot of people doing this. I see T2000 and Gunner trying out the stats still, but Drachio there too, making it work. Now, this time, Quinn able to get out of Oak like sure, Dad. Now they've used so much on Quinn. There's not a lot left in the tank of extra strong. creation, but they're trying to they get the damage him. out, and yep, killing spree now for Quinn. Carlo dropping low. Quinn still so low as the Glimpse comes back on Atino, but the Glimpse it now kills these days, so Topo will get the bounty on that one. And Shanks is just running as fast as he can. He's fast as so. hell. Apparently, he's going to get out. Faded Brooch, Tranquils, Windlace, and a Drum. This dude is speedy. I wish the movement speed... Uh, it's also nighttime, so he had an extra 15 on top of that, but... Yeah, they cannot take it to the Doom here. Doom did uh, 3,200 damage in that fight. Ember did 1,700. And his only spells cast were Scorched Earth and War Stomp. That's it. <laughs> I just, just stood there and they, they just, just died. Walk at him. Yeah, he is, a, he is a beast, dude. The Radiance really makes him the actual carry of this game. So ridiculous right now. Got Silver Edge on Magnus looking for a kill. Went for the Skewer cooldown talent. Okay, cool. But not the skewer ability. I like the skewer cooldown with still having points available in the stats. I'm surprised he didn't take that first, to be honest. But uh, a steal here on the last word. They're going to glimpse back Eno. And Drachio just skewers back over to make sure he gets the kill. Oh, the telekinesis. Ah, uh, he's going to have to hand it over to Quinn this time. Off jumps in. Instantly global silence here. Drachio just holding the RP, waiting for the end of this one. Going to throw it down. Down goes Bob. He's been robbed in this game again. He's a sad man. And that is oh, three man. kills for Quinn and the crew of GG. Tough one here. And in the meantime, Doom is hitting creeps, of course. Right, yeah. That's one should. I like the Bull Whip. Bull Whip pickup was very good here. He needed that mana regen badly. All of this. And he's going to go with Shiva's build. And then finally into Octarine, which makes sense. Yeah, going Octarine nice. earlier would have been definitely inferior, but Shiva Octarine feels good. Uh, this Shiva's is just so good this game, too. And Durashio actually being hit right now. This is one thing Palace does have. If you are isolated, he can get that big damage with the help of his teammates. And he does not get the kill. Shanks with the steal. What is happening? Help this man. That was a massive bounty. Although he'll still get quite a bit just for being nearby. It's going to cost Tino his life. But they're finding something for this Phantom Lancer who is desperately trying to finish out a Manta and have some chance at surviving these engagements. Yeah, that's very needed. Whether it's Global Silence or Slight Chains or uh, other things. Glimpse back. Got to get uh, dodge that stuff. Very, very important for them. Uh, well, they're still... Super, super far ahead, though. I, I just can't stop looking at Doom. I'm like, I just want to see him hit creeps continuously here. Yeah, this and he is can the he dream. do this, like, AFK farm thing and then just teleport in. It's just Spectre. So he's... Yeah, very similar. That's good. I'm just running around I with the Radiance and though. showing up. Eh, there's no point. It's all about Ace, let's be honest. His build is the coolest. Not that it's complicated. Like, I feel like every player has done this build on Doom at least once. That's true. Just seems so obvious. You got, I got all this gold. What should I do with it? I'm looking forward to seeing the uh, harpoon here. Uh, it's only 284 gold away. Not a item we've got to see too much quite yet. We saw it picked up a couple times. I think I saw it used maybe like twice. It seems pretty good. It, it's definitely not a rush item. It's definitely bad there. But as like this like mid game gap close item is like a blink alternative or a blink addition. Yeah. I think it has a lot of good value there. It's cool with uh, like disruptor. It's like little plays where you're trying to uh, keep people involved and like little static storms or something. Yeah. It's not like a huge pull or anything, but it definitely seems like niche situations. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, it definitely really helps melee heroes become feel relevant over ranged heroes who just seem to have the better ability to like disengage and keep you far away from you lately. It wasn't always the case, certainly. It depends on items that are in the game and other variabilities, but yeah, Harpoon pretty solid right now.
Let's say they're going to try the Tormentor here on the dire side. No Radiant Heroes nearby, so they can do this. Now, uh, we discussed earlier the nerf that uh, the Illusions don't help share the damage anymore, but it is just the first Tormentor, so with everyone involved, pretty easy to grab. And it's going to be Io who gets the shard, so uh, totally fine. I feel like Rubik would have been better for them in this case to try and get yeah, Palos save. out of these Static Storms. Assuming he's not global silenced, of course. Yes, true. Rachio looking for a jump. And Tofu also just coming in here with the Glimmer Cape trying to find something nice. Palos going to have to see him now. make his big plays with this Manta. Does Manta. he go for it? Now he goes for the free one. Doppelganger. Makes it easy. Imagine if he did the Manta instead of the Doppelganger. That would actually be disgusting. But and then oh, he the could get the high ground because he used the Doppelganger instead of the Manta. He dies. He had to go for the high skill play. It was the only way to survive. Yes, he did. The harpoon into RP is very cool, I gotta say. Like, you basically just have this Echo Saber, and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna buy Diadem, which is fine, and a 1,000 gold recipe, and now we just don't Dude, need Blink. That's crazy. It's like a very cheap Blink, really. On a universal hero, Diadem, too. Mmm. Mm -hmm. This is good, guys. This is a good build. I mean, that's a lot of stats. 30, 46 stats from harpoon. So, that's quite a lot. It's like 23 plus 4.6, so like 27 damage plus it gives 15 damage so it's like a 40 damage item but really it's about the utility of using your skills without having to rely on blink you can be taking damage you can use this shit yep you can pull them to your allies you can they can be running away after you already engaged and you can gap close it it's it's a cool you know to buy cool solution. A, a statless item like blink feels great yeah smoked up wrapping around here they're gonna find two and quinn but it's the jump into the back line they jump onto celery global silence wasn't available here though so this is a bit of an expensive target to go on considering the lack of spells they're still going on Celery, trying to find this pick. I don't know if that RP missed. Uh, that was not an RP. I don't know what that noise was. Thought I heard an RP. That's all right. Oh, it was stolen RP. Thank you very much, Observer. <laughs> that explains it. I was like, man, I gotta swear I heard an RP. The Doom is now out. Still Doom. On to Tino. Nope. And Jirachi are going to help clean him up as they do manage to get a kill onto Tofu. But unfortunately, it has come at the cost of Palos. And Bob is going to go down to Quinn. Okay. At the same time. Almost looks so good. I mean, they, they jumped the fight on the silencer, but he lived so long before he finally went down. They did a great job chasing, but uh, and trying to escape, but they, they survived. And at that that fight actually felt a little bit mediocre for Doom, in my opinion. He just spent a lot of time running away. Like everyone's HP and heal is high enough now, where his AOE damage doesn't quite feel as important. Oh man, I thought he was gonna until get he out. does this. Yeah, until he teleports on his too. teammates. Like, please, team, initiate anywhere. I'm happy. What an item. How does he get bots too and Shiva's already? My goodness. He is massive. He's really massive. He has he has enough for almost Octarine now. Guys, <laughs> can he six slotted it like 30 minutes? What the wait so I mean 25 minutes? He's he, oh my god. Yeah, he's very farmed. It's gotta be like he doesn't a even have Midas. Somewhere. Like th this is crazy. Yeah, I, I would be curious to see like uh, net worth records for Doom without Midas, and this has gotta be one of them yeah this is just absurd Oof. i i definitely pity execration right now i love how ace is just on the radiant side of the map like this game is so easily closable right now and he is just trying uh -huh. to pump his numbers as quinn is chasing palos nice juke here it is working right now from palos he has tricked quinn as he goes after the wrong one all right palos well done well done unfortunately celery oh let's see Nice, Quinn comes up to back him up here. Celery came into a dangerous spot, I gotta say. Now Quinn, seeing if he can help battle out inside the Static Storm. Oh my god. They get the final bit of damage. Quinn does pay for it, but at least they got the Phantom Lancer. Still a win, of course, for Execration, considering the situation they're in. And uh, Tofu, that is not a Shield Rune. That is a Ghost Scepter, just so you're aware. As they're going to trade lives here. Rune for Disruptor, but now it's Ace, the big farmer. 21,000 net worth. Marches onto the high ground. He doesn't care about towers or norms of society. Oh, sick, dude. And he, he didn't even go the Doom cooldown because he knows this not as much about doing Doom. He's like, I'm going Scorch, scorch Earth cooldown. So now his Scorch Earth is up for 16 out of 23 seconds. So he's running around at max movement speed, like all the time, doing an extra 80 damage. And when he finishes his Octarine, the cooldown's going to be even better. All right. Maybe like close to perma uptime, dude. I'm calling it now. Really quick. Call now. They're going to change the shard to be a, uh, a Scorcher shard. And we're just going to be a Scorcher with Dooms everywhere. I, I mean, when he gets this Octarine, his uh, Scorcher cooldown is going to be 17.25 seconds, and the uptime is 16, Trent. This shit is actually going to be on the whole time. Just Hellfire. Everything, everywhere is Hell. 
everything pays off in the end. It's Arcane Boots turned into Energy Booster, eventually turned into Octarine, which now gives him Mana Regen and HP Regen. It's beautiful. And he's got Blink. There it is. That is pretty gross to look at, I gotta say. Do we got do we, does Quickening Charm still exist? It does, right? Nice. Okay, tier three. Oh, the Cloak of Flames, dude. Okay, all right, never mind. We're good. <laughs> all right, perfect. We just do some math really quick what here. The, 45 dude, this is disgusting. 55, that's, uh, that's 100 plus. He does 180 magic damage per second in a radius of, like, the whole screen, practically. Yeah, that's not true, but still, it's it's bonkers. All right, this is funny. And now he wants to just find by the overwhelming blink. Yeah, just, just by imposing his will upon them. Dracho gets a... Oh, my God. He didn't even have to RP. He tried to BKB and zip out of there, and he couldn't in time. Jesus. Wow. A lot of damage. That was a disgusting amount of damage right there. All right. And he's hitting for like 400, so. Up top, though, Palos? Yeah, he's going to be going down here. And now the TP and it's ace. Oh, Rubik just burns. 40 to 15, a 30k lead, and... They're going to go high ground. They've decided. It might be time with a 31k in 28 minutes. <laughs> oh, Ace is like, oh, there's a creep wave down here. Someone should really get this. Maybe I, I should take this. Guys, I have bots too. It's okay, guys. I can go. It's actually true. Uh, well, how about he joins them in the base instead as they hop onto Tino. Quinn gets the last hit there. Another minus two to Celery's 26 permanent stolen intelligence. He's got a big brain. I think, I'm just, I think they might close this one out. They might win, yeah. It's gonna be, I don't know, maybe PL this, what does he have? Uh, just Manta, Diffusal, almost Axe, but no Axe. Yeah, that's a tough one here. Who knows? They definitely covered their bases. Slight chance. Oh, Harpoon back in, no chance really for Bob. This guy, he's just waving his arms around, getting skewered, pinballed left, right, up, down, north, west, east, south. Talos, trying to get back. Who is well, hey, the relocate save. Oh, Jenks, oh, oh, that's not good. The perfect that is spell not good. Palos tries the big juke. He goes outside of the base. It actually works again. His jukes have been on point. I got to give him credit. Unfortunately, they're not enough to save him. Ace jumps forward. He's got the AoE damage onto everybody. You know, tries to help out here with the stomp as well as the double edge. They but call it. That is. Wow. Man's not even six slotted. Come on, Dace. Jeez. He's got that empty item slot here. Yeah, get a branch in there, man. What are you doing? Yeah, no kidding. Uh, 38k gold advantage at 29 minutes. The 8 0 and 21 doom. It's fun. I gotta say, Trent, it's fun to watch those once in a while. The uh, the mega stomps, and that once in a while is very often so far this week. Especially when it involves Game stomps. and Gladiators. Uh, of course, a team that uh, is looking like probably the best team in the world right now. So I gotta put some respect on their name as they're gonna take this second game. Execration, unfortunately, have failed to win a game so far here. Two days in the group stage. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, when you are 0, 0, and 8 on the scoreboard, uh, people that stick on the mainstream, maybe the Ember stream, they're like, hey, Execration, what's going on over there? They just lose all their games. And uh, the games today didn't look as good, I think. True. But the, the games the first two days, there was some hope there, for sure. But I'm feeling iffy form. I think Bob... Bob's performance is better today. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, they're just they're it's hard for them to compete against gaming gladiators. Gladiators are so good. They are in an absolutely terrifying spot as well right now because they've actually played uh, the most games out of the teams that are near the bottom right now. Um, TSM will be playing their games a little bit later today. They were also zero and two to start this day with uh, four straight losses in terms of games. So this means that X Creation okay. now three or sorry, four sets now that they have lost two oh. All right, we can make more excuses for them. The teams that they've played are pretty good. They've they've lost against PSG LGD. They lost against EG. Yep. Aster is a, is like a probably an expected mid tier team, but they've been playing better because Sumail's on the team. They still need okay. to lose to Liquid, which right. will probably happen. Uh, I can show you those standings. And... You'd like to see them. I'm looking for like they played the best teams in the group. Copium. And, there it is. Uh, That's it's your Copium. Slightly correct. They Slightly lost correct. to three of the four top teams, right? There you go. But that eight is a lot bigger than all those other numbers, Trent. I, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a thick number. It is that bad. One feels like a like a were in the red zone where you get eliminated territory. Yes, there are three teams getting eliminated here. 
uh, in this group. So it, it is bad. It is really bad. I don't even know. They might be able to force tiebreakers at this point to get out. I'm no math whiz, but judging by some of the teams that have already picked up a surprising number of wins based on their caliber, I would say that they are in a really bad spot. But all, you know, all they, they need to do is get three wins, and for all those other teams, the three wins to stop winning. That's how math works. That is indeed how it works. Uh, uh, did I did I hear wins. we have standings for Group B? Is that what I heard? Sorry. Oh, maybe I maybe I missed that. Yes. Okay. No. Sorry about that. It will be Group B starting uh, in about an hour. It sounds like before those teams will all be prepped and ready to go here. And that'll be uh, DK Truman and Astini here helping us out. And it's going to be the uh, the SMG stream this afternoon. I believe they have two series here, uh, which would be IG first and then Extreme Gaming after. So SMG versus two squads from the China region to see if they can get a couple of Ws. I believe they're also struggling over in that Group B. Uh, managing to pick up the 1-1 versus Beast Coast and the 0-2 versus OG. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, Beast Coast is not a not a bad team at all. They're yep. they're definitely really strong, like a mid mid to upper pack. They kind of flamed out of uh, Dream League after getting through the qualifiers a bit. Or the the first group stage they got through, group stage two they they, they kind of faltered a bit. But um, yeah, SMG can definitely get some wins today. Well, we'll see if they can do a little bit better. But uh, that's the end of it for us. So stick around. Make sure you check out the squad streams. You just have everything up and ready, so you know when all the games are happening and when you can come on back to Earth to join our lovely casters. But thank you very much, and we'll be back again tomorrow. So enjoy the rest of the ESL1 Berlin Major group stage for today, and we'll see you then. Bye! You love it, you wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com.
your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's
am I wasting time? Cause I'm already gone So long Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now Your body, you make it look like a hobby. Every time that you touch me, it's electricity. Things we discover underneath last night's covers. Everything came so easy. It's electricity. stand out cause no one makes me feel the way you do now like you do now uh. that you move your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discovered underneath last night's covers uh. everything came so easy it's electricity your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discover underneath last night's covers yeah the came so easy it's electricity electricity it's electricity you move your body
your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discover underneath last night's covers yeah the thing came so easy it's
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have ourselves some more Dota, two more best of threes to be played. My name is DK Truman, and I'm joined by the always lovely Estini as my analyst for the next two series. Of course, who else? But SMG, don't be Estini. Yeah, that's the SMG live stream. And today I'm hyped for SMG because they play against the two Chinese teams that are not showing such a good tournament so far. Invictus Gaming 04, then Extreme Gaming 02. Maybe today is the day that SMG starts the snowball with wings in the tournament. Yeah, they, they got a long road to go, especially considering Southeast Asia is not doing too fine. As you can see in Group A, Execration 0 oh, and 8. Ooh, that is not where you want to be considering uh, even making... I mean, you need to not be in the bottom three, so you can definitely make it. But that's a long road ahead for themselves uh, in Group A. Of course, we're going to be covering Group B. And the three bottom teams are going to be facing up against each other. So the plus is... One, I mean, at least two of those teams are going to get some points today, at the very least. So, they might just bump themselves out of the danger zone and join the rest of the teams. But, looking at these results, I mean, there are some that I find interesting. OG, 4 and O, oh, pretty nice. Uh, obviously, Gaming Gladiators is what everyone expects, considering they just won the Dream League tournament. But Team Liquid in the danger zone? Yeah, that's the biggest surprise. I'd say if you were to swap Liquid with Aster or Batboom, then it would be as expected in the tournament. So the biggest surprise would be Liquid. Probably they're still trying out ideas on the meta. They use the group stage a lot for this in tournaments, but now is the time to not... I mean, how can I say not try out things? It's just a new patch, right? But maybe go on what they are sure it works to make sure they go through upper bracket and then they keep uh, piloting strategies maybe on the best of threes they feel more comfortable with. Yeah, also use whatever the other teams have used in the first couple of days. Obviously, they had like 12 hours to prepare after the patch came out to figure out what's good, what's not. But of course, what these teams are playing for, indeed, a price pool of 500k and a bunch of DPC points as well to qualify for TI and I think I mean obviously the money is great but those points are just sublime because TI pays a lot of money if you even attend the tournament so a lot uh, for these teams to be playing for and um, yeah there, there are some interesting things I've seen some teams for instance uh, started to pick up uh, Medusa a couple of games um, which of course with how 7.33 was a was you wouldn't see anyone pick up Dusa, but now with the changes that came afterwards, you start to see some teams changing strategies after experimenting a little bit. And there are some really interesting results as well in terms of win rates on some heroes. Bloodseeker, for instance, six picks, 100% win rate. So, Estini... Told you about this hero. Yeah. I told it, about this hero. You, you, you did say Bloodseeker is a scary one, and indeed that does seem to stand true. Yeah, like my tier list is Bloodseeker, Alchemist, Chen, Mirana, maybe Takis, and yeah, those are the top five heroes. Then comes PL, maybe Storm, but those five specifically, they're so good. I feel like if you properly use Bloodseeker, you should be winning a lot of games. Yeah, but of course, we have a matchup today, IG versus SMG. IG on the left and SMG on the right side. There is also a little bit of an interesting story between the two teams because currently Paulson is on loan from IG. So uh, he's playing for uh, sort of both teams. Dust, Emo, very renowned, played in that lineup for a very long time as well. And uh, IG had a pretty rough beginning of the DPC. Now they've been looking a little bit better, but currently 0-4, so they'd really need to step up their game against SMG to advance forward. And of course, the other team, SMG, where the real core is the one right there in the middle. Mid one, looked really good yesterday on the Stimbersaw, as well on the Muerta, but had some struggles still um, because he just couldn't get them over the edge. and. They're up against a couple of really strong teams right now, but we're going to be uh, heading towards the next stage with these teams soon enough. Moon, I'm curious what other heroes he's going to be playing this batch. So far, he's played 
the Alashrak and the Kunka. And those were the only two heroes he's played so far. Yeah, and he didn't look so well on the Lash. I'd say on Kunka, yes. But maybe Storm, Void Spirit. The Spirit heroes are looking really, uh, really good in the meta. What I hope not to see is SMG, like, please don't first pick Muerta. And I've been saying the hero is strong, but I don't want them to waste the mid one hero oh. in the very first pick. Yeah, thanks IG for banning it. Now Mirana is in the pool. Mirana works really well for them with the Kanka. Maybe they can try a Mirana. A hey. first pick Pottle? Pottle. I know Afu used to play it a bunch. I'm curious to see what kind of role it's going to be. Storm Spirit IO. Oh, yeah, they most of the time banned out the IO yesterday as well on the side of Team SMG. But this time they went for a ban of the Pugna, which definitely speaks volumes that they want to play Kado because Pugna is really good against Kado in that regard. But Storm Spirit is a pretty nasty hero to deal with in nearly any situation. And it's also had a pretty high win rate at the tournament as well. Yeah, I've seen Ember against this IO Storm. So as a creation. Try the same strategy. Ember can go well with Kotto, but definitely Io Storm is so strong. Because Storm already looks good in the meta. You see some things first picking Storm. And when you have this pairing, Storm and Io, it's uh, like you can use all your mana twice, right? You use all your mana and then Io will just heal you. So you don't need maybe this early BKB to jump because Io can also save you. So you can go more greedy build. You can do crazy jumps you have this walking fountain with you and that's all storm needs it needs mana yeah the, it, it is definitely uh a nice one especially with the global presence with such a big map these days uh being able to help out your teammates on the side lanes uh, a bit sooner might also be a pretty useful tool this time around but the beastmaster another hero that has very high win rates and honestly i can see why the drums have been rather impactful from the games that i've seen it being played yeah and io doesn't have the best interaction against zoo so the beastmaster is a way uh, to have units against this draft that so far doesn't deal so much with units if you pair up with Kotto. I'd say the slow of the boar has been so nerfed that you can't really uh, set up for the blast. But still, having the extra mana to spend the access, I guess that's the new idea of the Beastmaster, right? So you're just gonna have access out of cooldown, you're gonna spend it, and probably the idea is that Io will get out of region in that situation. I actually quickly looked over stats and currently Io has a 36% win rate in 11 games, which is not great, not too terrible, but Muerta has an 18.18% win rate in 11 games. Muerta actually has pretty much the worst win rate out there if you have more than five games. That's uh, remarkable. Obviously, yeah. it didn't go too well three times for mid one, but nonetheless, that, that's a really low win rate. Yeah, this doesn't really tell me that the hero is bad. I'm, I'm trying to make a case for this hero because I strongly believe it can be strong if picked last phase. It's just not a first pick hero. If you're playing against five counters, the hero is going to have a bad game. So it's not the strongest hero in the meta, no way. But it's a useful hero, definitely. And I feel like what's happening is the weakest teams in the tournament are first picking the hero because they had the wrong read that the hero was just broken and they're losing with it because if you look at the teams that played tsm played execration extreme gaming smg invictus smg smg talon execration Southeast Asia you loves have, the hero <laughs> yeah you have like those nine losses in a row on the hero and then you look at the two wins were the first two games of gaming gladiators when they picked on the 17 and on the 23 so second phase and last phase pick by a team that's actually aware of the capabilities of the hero it seems strong it's not the most broken hero but it definitely can work there's the stats genius if you've ever seen any of the social media of nouns or neff for that matter you can see him always just staring at stats, trying to figure out what's good, what's not. Another hero that you don't get to see too often, especially in the previous patch, it is the Luna. 
we saw it yesterday it honestly i mean it won but that was mainly because mid one was going ham yeah i feel like the hero can be strong to early five men it's a hero that's really good with io in lane and in the game so you can pair with io during the lane and then io is gonna play with storm after the six minute rune let's say till 15 minutes then you get your items you farm the jungle the jungle will be stacked by io and then you connect with io again and you just snowball the enemy team it's a hero that maybe the agonies uh, can be strong now uh maybe the shard so you're gonna be hitting targets right so you're gonna get the extra damage of hitting targets because bkb will not turn them immune so they're being hit and they're getting the extra damage even against bkb so that can be an approach on the shard well it's uh definitely gonna be an interesting choice there was actually a, a clip i saw on uh reddit uh, yesterday and there was io so what was it you had um pulverize being used on the tormentor and then io relocated the tormentor into the enemy's fountain the tormentor got attacked by the fountain and then the fountain died have you seen that clip yeah that was... i've seen them getting the fountain yeah <laughs> that was so I, weird i just wonder how people get that creative like why would you test this interaction that you hold it with primal and then you reload to the enemy fountain like what the hell are the guys trying like oh i just read a patch maybe i can't kill the fountain how does the fountain Crazy. have hp how does it die like where actually oh, yeah. that Dota all starts <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, it's wonderful that you've got so many people just trying the weirdest stuff out to see if they can break the game. And I'll well, break it. Indeed, they can in every new patch. Nonetheless, what do we have here? TA, Vengeful Spirit coming in for the SMG side. Not really 100. I would assume it's a safe lane TA. The Coddle is still a bit of a question mark for me. It could be a Coddle plus Beastmaster lane where you play Pulse 4, Coddle, Beastmaster, off lane, and then you just keep spamming wild axes it's pretty much the old school beast master build yeah i think that's the idea and then you keep flexing the ta okay they need to decide do they want to play a ta venge against brew master that's the biggest question i think it's it should be fine and they pick a hmm. they pick a new mid against storm what options do they have they have the amber options still open they can go an SF type of hero and just go all in into winning lanes and running at the enemy team with the Vengeful Aura, really fast Roach with the... The thing is, you have then a TA and SF in your drafts, it can be super greedy, but the meta is new. You never know if the double greedy can work. You are nearby a lot of camps in the mid lane, so it makes sense to have this greedy mid laner. You can pair this greedy mid laner with TA, or you can have TA as your mid laner and pick a new safe laner against Brill Master could be the morphling type of hero okay they ban sf i like it they are on the same page it sounded like a really crazy idea but ig they might agree you can go on a safe lane morphling hero safe lane sven against the brill master so you have this kind of burst damage faceless void also works really well against brill five seconds remaining yeah a couple of interesting and choices coming honestly in. They believe it's a Luna 4 because they banned Troll. That would not so, be too surprising because China did yeah. love it back in the day. And I've seen it a couple of times at the start of the, this new patch. You would usually combo with a Visage, but a Visage does not fit on that lineup. So if they want to ban... Hmm. PL is still open, which in my opinion is weird. To have... Like, if you believe Luna is not a carry, you should be banning PL. Because TA doesn't interact that well against PL. Vengeful, also not. Auto is kind of decent because you have the miss when he jumps at you. Hmm. Yeah, but he can get rid of it with, you know, Manta style or his illusion jump or whatever. Uh, yeah. His later Diffusal Blade upgrade, which is also a dispel for some reason. He's basically banning good laners against Beastmaster. So, Monkey, you can keep killing the beast. You always have this innate uh, regen, troll, decent-ish against Beastmaster. I'd say the other hero is Bloodseeker, 
which I'm kind of overthinking the Bloodseeker hero on every draft. You love but it so I much. I just feel, yeah, I feel like Bloodseeker could be useful uh, with the IO also. Yeah, now it's a matter to see if they go this Amber idea on mid. Uh, let's see. Pick, the... Can they pick like a Sky 4 and have Point the bottom It's also still available. Because, yeah, I was thinking on a Silence hero. Void Spirit can be this hero. The silence against Brio and Storm is really strong. There's also... Yeah. Huck! Huck. Yeah. yeah, good catch. Make sure that it's you a can relocate. It's a silence, as you mentioned. It uh, is solid against Storm Spirit. Or it's decent. Until Storm gets his BKB, but he wants to delay that as much as possible. Yeah. And, and it can it rush with... the BKB, because he has IO giving the extra mana. Uh, it always comes nice with Avenge as well, where you Dream Coil, swap, snaps the coil, and then you just pounce. Yeah. Definitely does. It's you also can't somehow split the blocker. when you're least, I think, on Brewmaster. I think. I don't remember necessarily. Could you? You're least? I think you cannot. I'm almost sure you cannot. So what carries it remains if they want to pick a carry? Hmm. Seeker. Could always put the Luna carry, but... Uh... We'll see. It's going to be Skywrath. So it is a Luna safe lane, Skywrath Mage. Uh, that's a pretty hard lane to deal with. Brewmaster Skywrath is a ton of damage. And TA, honestly, I, that could be a very problematic lane for SMG, I think. Yeah, it definitely can. It's uh, Sky is a very strong laner. The hero is in a good situation in this patch because BKB has been nerfed. And BKB, historically, is the biggest counter to Sky. So the hero uh, is on a good positioning. You can get uh, the mana region from the Lotuses. The move speed of the hero is really good to control the power up uh, runes, also the XP rune. And if they get, I guess they just keep killing the Vengeful in this lane. They kind of ignore the TA, they keep killing Venge, and then denying the TA farm with the pools. So do we have a a Steeny Toaster prediction or not? It's hard because I... Both, te both teams are super new to the meta. They didn't prove themselves yet. So it's super random on what is there to happen. I would say SMG, they are on a timer. Because of this Beastmaster TA, you need to get the first Roche. If you don't get the first Roche, your game is just ruined. So at least I can see like... SMG is going for the snowball, they need the first Roche and maybe close the game in 25-30 minutes or they lose. If they don't snowball, this game is going too much on the way of Invictus Gaming. Uh, they won't be, be able to deal with uh, Storm IO, with a Brewmaster, with Splits. They really need fast Aegis with the TA. Well, uh, Tia, of course, even if you get to later portions of the game, can still be pretty scary. Same with the Puck, if you get to... I mean, the Puck is slightly different now, because I'm not really sure how it builds. It used to go at one point for, like, the Octarine, because he goes Aether, Octarine, but now that Octarine and Aether don't have any connections anymore, it's kind of a weird item. I'm not too 100% uh, sure on uh, what the Pucks these days build, but I'm curious to see what it's going to be. It looks like he marked up the Witchblade. That's not really surprising every puck out there does it so that they can solo kill supports and in this case i mean io is now a universal hero so i guess slightly easier to kill and the sky wrath mage that one should be an easy kill but the problem is he counters you as well with this side it's kind of who he sees the other first and in that case my friend you've got yourselves a beast master on your side so, I'm going SMG on game one. I just think Vision wins the game. You got traps. You, I think traps as well are one of the most underrated uh, aspects of TA. And especially this patch. They see everything on the map. Yeah, definitely. They are ahead on the Vision game. They have the Hulk. They have Quattro Shoving Waves. Definitely gives you a lot of Vision. The traps. So, you can have the deep uh, Vision. Vengeful is also a hero that... With the wave of terror, you can scout in the map. Yeah, definitely they they are good with the vision game, 
I'm just afraid there's a point that they don't kill any heroes anymore. Like, Skywrath is not that squishy hero anymore because you go the shard. I get and it for shard... free, possibly from Roche. Yeah, you're probably getting a free shard from the Tormentor, and just hit him with side blades. Give you armor. Who cares about armor when you get hit by side blades, which are pure damage? Yeah. You always have a way to kill your opponents. But then there's the next point I want to make. You can burst. You could burst low HP heroes with magical damage. But now, intelligence points give you base magic resistance. Yeah, that's so, a weird change. So your shard indirectly gives you also magic resistance, because it gives you intelligence. Auto uh, damage also went for level 1 blinding light to keep them off of Chidori. Uh, that's also not really a hero that enjoys playing against blood grenades, and uh, PRW has two of them currently on the Skywrath. So, uh... Yeah, Refraction's not having the best time this patch. It's a very clever approach to spend the blood grenades against the PA. You already skilled Refraction, which I'd say is not optimal, but he needs to play defensively in the lane. Well, as mentioned previously, Polison currently playing for SMG is still on loan from IG, so he's playing against his former employer, current employer, technically speaking. Uh, so we'll see uh, how that's gonna happen. Uh, the bounty runes are about to spawn. Any nice grabs? Uh, Puck tried to it's... sneak one in, but no There's way. There's one interesting to notice: both offlaners they're blocking, so they're not going for the bounty fight. They're both blocking. Probably it's a lot about keeping this creep equilibrium it's better than having the bounty. It's, at least that's the read of both teams. And usually if both teams are doing this on a major, it means it's the new meta. Well, let's see what's going to happen in that top lane. They're looking for an early gank. Polosun is nearby. They spot out the first PIW Skywrath Mage. They can throw out a blood grenade, slow him down. Do they have... A catch, actually, there is a blinding light, so if he walks up the high ground, he's gonna get pushed back. And POW knows it, that he's pretty much dead if he tries to go for the Twin Gate TP out. And first blood comes in for Polison. Probably gonna TP towards the uh, bottom lane and help out mid one, otherwise uh, mid one would have a pre... I don't think he's gonna have that bad of a lane, actually. Ayo does barely any damage. Yeah, I'd say it's something that they should be expecting. We see a lot of these uh, starting try lanes in the meta. But uh, yeah, good idea from SMG. You should always try it if some things will still fall. Ayo doesn't have that much initial damage, but since he's a universal hero with levels, he can do some harass. He's gonna get a lot. But he needs to be careful with the uh, access stacks. Yeah, and later you get Chakra Magic, so Polson can keep spamming it on mid one, and then you're gonna just you know, constantly get wild axes thrown at you. That lane, uh, ba even back in the day, like it's a very old lane of just spamming wild axes with the Chakra Magic and uh, harassing them completely out of the lane. And Yeah, but I'd say they're super fine, because they have seven stick chargers on both heroes. That means basically that Luna has 16 six charges if the Io has eight. Yeah, for him. but they could also kill the Io and then she only has eight. Yeah, uh, they're focusing the Io currently because uh, that's the clever thing to do. Yeah, forced his stick. He still has a lot of tangos. Has fairy fire. I love Coddle. It's weird to play with everything on different buttons now, because Blinding Light and uh, the... Um, what's the slow call? My god, I have a level 26, 27 Coddle and I forgot what the slow is called. Just one patch change and uh, my brain is already melted. Mm. I don't know, it's your W. <laughs> it's not your W anymore. Yeah, no, it's not his W, now it's his... Whatever you have it bound to, button. And then you get a lot more stuff like recall added in on top, and then you, eventually you have a lot of buttons to press on the, the hero. It is also pretty nice if you get the free shard from the Tormentor later, so that you have recall Pop. in such a game. Chidori yeah. dropping low, the burn is just very nasty. Chidori, can he get himself back? Yes, indeed. 
throw the grenade. Out the grenade, but it's not going to connect. So Chidori should stay alive, but look at how low they are. Pretty much can't leave this lane for a second, or either of the two sides will drop. Yeah, you need to trade your life here. Because you cannot buy that much regen. Really. The guy's just accepting he's gonna die on TA. Well, uh, he's trying to go for the kill. He does find it. Jidori's still not dead just yet. No refraction. That should be the last tick to finish him off. Doesn't match too much. Actually, the Venge might get himself POW here. Tries to juke through the trees. And he gets baited out. Afu gets uh, kited around by POW. Almost gets a full healing salve during all of that. That was a bit of an oopsie daisy. And a nice. Yeah, but that was really move. good for the TA. She had no resources and she traded her life. Getting the kill first. That's so important. She gets the kill. After she gets the kill, she wanna die. It's not, it's not bad that you die here. Well, uh, the mid matchup is an interesting one, of course. A lot of kill potential between the two, but it most, almost always comes down to the puck needs to make a mistake. Nearly every single time, it's the puck gets too aggressive, gets caught by Electric Vortex underneath the tower, and dies. Yeah, he's pressuring Emo under the tower. Which is dangerous with this guy on the Radiant team. Wasn't Emo playing carry? Um... E yes, but Dust and Emo are both mid slash safe lane players, so they swap roles all the time. Emo used to be a safe la uh, mid laner, then he went to safe yeah. lane, whereas Quite smart guy. Dust was Everyone a safe laner, remembers. and then he went to mid, and then he went to safe lane, and then he went to mid, and then he played pulse four, and then well, Dust has played everything <laughs> at this stage. But yeah, they do swap roles. It depends pretty much who who likes to play what hero most games. It's kind of like the old. No Matu miracle combo of he likes to play X hero, he picks it's it. It's miracle mid. Matu without the TI. Yeah, you know, that's still underway. <laughs> Next TI, yeah, why not? Top lane, Brumas already has his Vanguard, so he's one beefy boy. Really hard to take him down, uh, especially with the. Uh, Drunken brawler stances now that he has the slows that he can throw on his enemies Umas is a pretty strong hero going for the rune fight It is gonna be a haste bottled up by the puck throws out the dream coil Tried to snap it onto the io it does get snapped, but They're not gonna go for more because emo can just sip away moon is actually still hunting charges. QI QI uh, QI 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 Ancient Seal there, Moon would have uh, most likely been caught. Yeah, it was gonna happen what it told, that the Puck just got way too confident. While Emo has 16 sick charges. Healing Lotus is kinda BS for Io, As well. Like, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous how good that is for the hero. And still such a low win rate, uh, currently in the ESL Berlin tournament. Which is very surprising. I mean, it just started and again like some win rates they're super biased because some teams play the hero and then you think the hero is bad let's say if Gaimin and hmm, Shopify and EG and Liquid they all decide that IO is good then eventually IO is gonna have a good win rate well I think the they do team... do that but you know it gets banned in most of their games just like yeah. when uh, Gaming Gladiators are like, Chen is amazing! But, exactly, so you... Yeah. Mid lane, play. store, jumping to fuck. DP towards bottom as well, but mid is the fight. Moon dropping low. Can he get himself out of there? Zip forward. Emo with the mango shuts him down. A bottom lane, they're grouping up to go for a gank here onto Dust and QIQX. Polison is nearby, starting to get the Illuminate Blast off. From behind was a Venge already went back towards top, so no real uh, gank potential coming in. But yeah, the Puck losing they, his life there is pretty painful. They cannot kill the Luna. Probably Puck's gonna TP. Yeah. So Puck's TP mid. There's no way this Luna dies with IO connected. Oh, Emo out of mana currently. Does get Dream Coil, but Moon does need to be a bit careful. Vengeful Spirit, no spells available for four more seconds. Needs to disengage, running right towards the Brewmaster. 
And he also connecting though. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be the catch. Penge will be finished off. Will they spot out Chidori in the jungle? Nah. And of course Chidori also sees if they're coming because he's got them trapped. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. The Q potential that SMG has on targets with the IO healing, uh, Storm being this elusive hero. Skyref is always gonna play on the back line. Brewmaster, if you don't burst the hero, he's just gonna press R and kite you. Or turn into a team fight. Feels like they lack burst when you're playing against a Luna Brew Storm lineup. The burst could come later from Chidori. He is top net worth, but he of course needs a couple of items. Dragon Lance is now done afterwards. Get stuff like the Deso, the Blink, Chrysalis, and then you kind of one-shot most enemy heroes. Stop. Yeah, They're going to Vengeful. He's dropping low. They have a split available. Throws out the Sun to PIW. And is slowly but surely going to get taken down. And is ready to pop a brew split if uh, <laughs> the TA comes close. TA shows up, yeah. He has the dust. He's ready. Dory trying to get some of these creeps. But it's a very scary affair. TP coming in from the puck, though. They're going to go for the brew mass, it seems. Ice silence. No primal split coming out. Dream goal thrown out as well. Even least, you can get Here's the split the off. Okay. You can do it. The more you know. And now Chidori, he is of course dusted up, needs to get uh, the kills on the Brulings. They're actually pretty squishy, but it comes Jurgon, dust with the three. Eclipse. Twin Gates are remains. a deadly tool, charging for more Chidori. Can he get himself out of there? The invis has, uh, the dust has disengaged, so he can actually invis up, but has already used his melt, so it's on cooldown currently. Healing up, trying to stay alive. Chidori is gonna meld in the trees, but eventually does get taken down. Will they find QIQX? Illuminate Blast will connect. Are there any more no, there are none to be made, but what a move coming out from Dust right there. Out of the gates, instant eclipse and terrifies the rest of SMG. Yeah, luckily Dust joined it because it was a bit messy from the Brewmaster. Underestimated the damage that uh, SMG could put into him. I feel like this plate on 10 minutes he should be using actually on the mid lane rune when he has a Storm IO on his team. Sky barely survives, has a TP. Storm Actually, wants to jump, but there are two heroes covering this puck. And even then, it, Puck, if he's quick on his fingers, could dodge it with the uh, phase shift and get the counter silence immediately. Going. Yeah, there's a. Uh, I actually watched a couple of pub matches with the Brew Master uh, Brew Split, and in nearly all of them, it felt like the Brew Split was. So, like, one of his weakest tools. It's weird, considering he got an extra uh, Void Brewling this patch, but it just dies so quickly to any AoE damage. Yeah, and I believe it should be used as a tool to fight for objectives. So, the part of Prune would be the biggest objective there. Avenge. Trying to choose sneaking. Oh, Polosol, he yeah, really wants auto. that kill, but the TP comes through. Moon's here with the silence onto Emo. Can they get him out of that? Dream call onto two, so there's no relocate. Shenanigans coming through, and a nice double kill. They even keep Polosol in the life. A great bait coming out there, and Moon Grab even slow. charging for more. PRW gonna get spotted out. There are two bounties that both get denied by PIW. Moon tried to. Wait and possibly pick them up slightly later with the body blocks, but uh, a bit of a mistake there. Lost a lot of cash for his team, even though they got that kill and are currently 3k ahead. Yeah. They denied, he denied 108 times 5, 540 gold from the enemy team with the bounties. But at IG, they're forcing moves. And what I was gonna say about the Brew can also mean something for the Storm that is the Brew. Use aggressively his ultimate. I feel like you should just be so annoying. Okay. He's doing it again with a bench kill. But look at these Brulings. He's just to dropping to a bit yeah. of AoE magic damage. And even the Earth Band that these days doesn't have magic immunity anymore. So he just he still takes damage to even deny a couple of the Brulings just for a good yeah. measure. But yeah, Bruce Split is honestly probably one of his weakest tools until he gets his level 20 talent. And even then. You need to stack auras on the hero. There's no other way to stay alive. So, I said SMG, they need to snowball during this game. 
when I watch the draft, they are gonna snowball. Uh, I'm really confident on SMG just snowballing. By the way that Invictus game is playing the map, the Brewmaster, you should be this annoying hero that you take the enemy farm and they cannot jump you. Because if they jump you, they use all their resources, you use your ultimate and you go back at them. But he's just mid. using his ultimate. Oil catch. Now he doesn't have it. They try to actually get the kill here. It's a bit problematic, but of course, no split means the easy finisher. The heal blast comes out. The Venge heals just a bit more. Emo needs to be careful because he's out of mana. Nice Mystic Flare. But it gets soaked up by Polis, and then Emo gets chopped up. Chidori, he's got the Deso done? 14 minutes in, he's got Dragonlance Deso on the TA, and they're hunting for everything. Catch on to PIW. Mid one's got the pipe finished on the Beastmaster, so they're ready to go. Like, there's nothing else but magic damage on IG. Pipe does so much at this stage in the game. Yeah, and now it's IG, the teams that cannot kill any target. Imagine this team fight if Brew had the ultimate. They use a lot of resources, he would just come back with four Brewlings. But no, he doesn't have the ultimate because he's using aggressively. And then they just kill his ultimate. Uh, not the best level of execution on the Brill. I was really excited to see the Brill because usually the Chinese teams, they play really well this hero. And it's looking very underwhelming on execution level. I'm still waiting for the safe flame brew. Uh, Ramses used to go for it, and now that it so, is a, uh, a universal a cool hero, move. could be fun. SMG, they take a tower and they instantly use the gate to defend their tower. Yeah, but Roche is doing the exact same. <laughs> so it's annoying a little bit on the TP, but PIW topside, are they going to get any catches here? It's pretty rough without the roar available. Mid one actually needs to be careful. They pop his pipe in time. The damage is non-existent right now with the mech heal from the coddle. The and Emo is just, just dropping low. The Brew has been dead. destroyed by that Chidori TA. Brew is no hero at the moment. It's just yeah, nothing. He, he popped the split when he's full HP. Instead of like just soaking 1.7k damage, then popping the ulti. Yeah. He just get melted by the TA. Melted. Melted. You got it. Why not both? <laughs> yeah, it's just... Destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Net worth wise, they're so far behind. Look at Polos on, on that Kado. In that fight, Mystic Flare, bunch of magic gets thrown out. They pop Pipe, they pop Mech. No one's lost HP on SMG. They're all full HP. And IG have nothing left. <laughs> they have no spells. They have no items. Luna doesn't do any physical damage yet, so the pipe is just the perfect answer at this point in the game. Yeah, they cannot kill a single target. That's the basically the summary of the game. Io has Mechans, a bit more of sustain on IG side. Maybe the fight can go longer. But again, not if they do it this way, that they just jump and use everything on a target. They should take this whole fight. Oh, They're that the team stack. with the IO. Mm, that's a nice juicy ancient stack right there. For Chidori yeah. to clean up. Like they should start poking the SMG team here. There's uh, no split for 45 seconds. So taking they the have fight the vision on IG. This well, it's now removed. Should be. Don't have the vision anymore. Split. They have a swap available if they want to get a decent catch. And they do, going in they for the Skyrat. It. That's the silence removed from the you fight. Vents dropping pretty low, but the creeps are tanking the Eclipse. They will lose the Venge in the process, but on the side, Brewmaster, can they keep him going? They have a relocate available. The leash comes in, they're charging on towards the high ground. Ooh, they're actually in a lot of trouble here. Moon gets blown up thanks to the buyback coming out from the Skyrat, but Chidori still has the Aegis available, and a lot of nasty right clicks on this TA. Will lose his first life. Comes back for, with a Vengeance for the second. They have to zip out, relocate out of that area. A pretty good fight is what it started to look like, but with Chidori but getting that Aegis. kill... Yeah, Aegis makes everything a lot more problematic. A dieback coming out on... They actually oh. relocate both? Storm? Emo came back in. Emo? I... Why? There's Dagger on TA? Does he want to go? No, there's a lot of mana still. Yeah. I... I... But this fight, you can see, like, the Brew he soaked more damage than the Venge. So he was still alive while the Venge was dead. That's the approach they need. Brew needs to soak up all the damage and then he ultimates. 
But I believe it's too late to realize how to play your hero after your 9 came behind. Probably he got the feeling after this team fight. Yeah, Guarding Greaves now being delivered on to Polisson as well. Uh, so you got a really big coddle. Jidori is honestly insane. How UG is 12k net worth, 18 minutes in. Farming absolutely fantastically. You now also have the Crimson Guard on top of the pipe for Team SMG. Go for Storm. Going back in. Chidori tanks everything with the refraction charges that Storm throws at him. And he's got refraction charges in three seconds again. There's the Roar. Roar. This time there is a split available though. This could be huge if they find the Chidori kill. No aids available this time and they finally get the kill onto the TA. Looking for more. Brew split has been used and this is a great way to catch multiple stragglers. They're looking to go back in return. Moon jump forward. They get a swap going. Polson is going to get taken down. They're actually not dealing any damage. And the lift up on the Beastmaster is problematic. Silence onto the Moon Puck. Can he get out of there? Emo doesn't have any mana. But Moon doesn't jump oh. over the cliff. Oh no. The disaster has come through. And IG have a good chance to recuperate. And this also gives them an opening to get their own Tormentor in 30 seconds. Because that was the one thing that was really scary. With the control that SMG had in that left side of the map. You could really see that they were waiting for the Tormentor. Yeah, it's a really good team fight. SMG, they kind of went one by one. Brewmaster, uh, Beastmaster just roared the Brewmaster. There was no follow-up damage. And they just die one by one. It's a really good team fight by EG. And by the way, meanwhile, Dust is just farming. So they didn't even need the five heroes to... I'll not even say win this team fight because it didn't look like a team fight because the enemy team was not hitting back. They were just dying one by one. TA probably overestimating how strong she is. She definitely needs the BKB, uh, not with Aegis anymore. So they did really well with the first Aegis, but now without Aegis, they kind of dropped the ball. They just felt so strong and gave away basically, I can say all the lead, to be honest. Because now you're dead, enemy gets the Tormentor, Luna will farm three, four more camps till you are back to farming. And suddenly, your 9k is gonna be 3k by 20 minutes, 2k, and that's nothing against this type of lineup. Yeah, they really lack the damage when the TA is dead. They tried to go for it, but with the IO... Speaking of which, the deleted IO right there, uh, it becomes a bit more problematic unless you get the catch immediately. PIW is going to be the, another one in trouble. And actually, this all of a sudden gives them a chance on SMG to still take the Tormentor with that double kill on yeah. the supports. That's weird again. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a 20-minute room. It's a DD. I believe it's uh, like EG should be focusing on getting their Tormentor and the part of Prune. They were hitting a tower. Yeah, that Tormentor dies in three seconds. And yeah. no one took any damage. Okay, so now, it's physical everything damage. Everything I said is gone, because they just yeah. fed two kills. Crimson Guard just blocked all of the Tormentor's damage. Neat. Yeah. If it's physical, because it returns the type of damage yeah. that you and done they to it. just used TA to hit it three times and it was gone. They also have drums on the fence. They've got guardian greaves on the coddle. Not going for the. Like they're building so many defensive and sustain Whoa. items so that the TA can just hit people. QIQX needs to be careful. Swap comes out. The IO tries to relocate. Uh, uh, not relocate. To tether away. But will be found and killed. Oh, Emo. Emo out of mana. He's spotted. Pops the. Double damage. It needs to drink up some bottle charges to get the zip going. Snaps the coil, but there is Chidori. Double kill for the TA. BKB is now done. And they can go back for the Tormentor to get their second shard. Also, I did not read... Okay, Coddle got the shard. So now you have Global Recall. Yeah. Which is really good on a map like this. And Puck got... Wait, Puck? Oh, yeah. Puck is... Below Polis in terms of net worth. <laughs> yeah, but I believe if like the other heroes have shard, it's like the two heroes net worth that doesn't have a shard. Bench is pretty sad though. That he didn't yeah. get a shard. Because his shard's kinda of baller and the puck shard's kinda of, eh. I mean it's really good to kill off the panda split again. Which means Brewmaster has even less chances to survive. 
Yeah, but I, I would just ignore the Brill. That's the thing, like, just go for the IO. Killing the IO, then you can burst any target afterwards. Chidori. You don't burst the IO, then you're baited. Chidori almost has the max stacks on his Desso as well. Easy, uh, easy fighting TA this game. What are they wait? What does IG need for a fight? Is it a start off pick off? What, what's their goal here? Worst TA Moon being spotted out. They zip forward, but he dodges it. Has the blink out to the side. Oh no, they couldn't get the silence in time. There's gonna be a fight brewing. Chidori jumps in forward aggressively. Eclipse comes through, it's a bunch of magic damage, but they soak up so much. Afu dropping low, the Vengeance is going to get taken down. No, actually, he stays alive. Ayo buys back. Same does Emo. They know that this is the fight pretty much for the game. Chidori being chased down. No way to keep Chidori alive, and the rest of SMG need to dip out, but they will not be able to get out because Emo is on the hunt, and it's a nasty storm. Even with that buyback use, this looks like a pretty decent fight here for the side of IG. They did not actually kill off the Coddle, which is surprising that Paulson got himself out of there. Glimmer plus TP is win. Because uh, Invis is uh, invulnerability, but nonetheless, a very decent fight, even though it cost him two buybacks. It's a really good use of the buybacks. Game is uh, kind of depends if, the, if it's a super early Roche and IG can snipe it. Because otherwise, I just think SMG still has a lot of control of the game. They're gonna respawn TA, go for Roche, and I don't think IG can take the fight. They could take this fight oh, with moon. two extra heroes. He walks out, and this is the problem playing against the Sky. You need a defensive item, and he currently has none. One silence, you're dead. Yeah, and you gave that extra 45 seconds uh, for EG. Farm more items, get ready for the Roche. Get their cooldowns back. So Brewmaster is going to have this split again. Because you're not on cooldowns here on SMG. Roar is still up on the Beastmaster. TA has no cooldowns. You should just run at the Roche. Of course, it's not up, but they need to be checking this Roche. Because it's from one to zero to three minutes. This is like a two minute one. So they should be already placing around the Roche area for this fight on SMG. They do have a Cyanic Trap on either side of the Twin Gates, which is, I mean... Yeah, it's kind of nutty. <laughs> like, that sort of stuff, that you have vision on the Twin Gates, which are honestly one of the most important areas on the map in this patch, because they're so heavily visited, especially now, because Roche is, you know, he's swapping. When he respawns, tends to swap sides, you see where the enemy's headed, you see if they're trying to fight you while you're Roaching. Big value. Yep. The team that's grouping up for this area is IG, they're smoking there. I'd say they should have a gem by this time of the game to spot all those traps. Uh, I see a butterfly on Luna. Hmm. TA building uh, up the uh, IG. MKB, but still a long way to go. IG starting to hit their timings. Yeah, Roche is going to respawn on the dire side, so it's going to respawn top side in the dark. Smoke gets broken. They're trying to bail out, jump forward, roof split. Coming through, going for the fight here. Catch on to the Vengeful Spear, but they're looking for Moon. That's the bigger target. Mystic Flare, Moon is dead again. Has a buyback available, but Afu is another one gone. Looking for more. Chidori has no backup, but still has a BKB at the ready, so he can pop it to try and disengage. There will not be Afu for 25 seconds. Their Roche is not the best on the side of IG, but Brew Split has ended. No Eclipse, no Brew Split. This could be a possibility to try and catch out the IG side, but uh, I would still be very careful right now, because it's not like Mystic Flare has a long cooldown. It's up in 10. Roche is up. They have the TP spot for the Vange. Probably, I don't know if they're going to smoke and Vange just TPs in. Okay, it's tipping on the safer outpost. Go? But IG going for a fast Roche. Is it fast enough, though? Mm, they're not the best because luna is not really that farm just yet they're actually going the long route around they... smg will spot with the hulk in time it's looking bad for ig 
Going in, zip forward for Polo Zone. That's the catch, but the signs in response. Emo needs to be careful. Dream Call comes out the roar as well. They're throwing everything to try and kill off the storm. They know he does not have a buyback, and he gets chopped in two by Chidori. The Io is the next target. No saving grace coming forward into this fight. Dust is trying to man fight, but honestly, they're out of gas, out of juice. The Brumas is soaking up all the damage he can. Even going to try and TP in the middle of everything. Gets the TP to safety. But it is going to be Roshan in the loving embrace of SMG. Yeah, I don't know which team needs to have the burst in this case. I, Mystic Flare is the only real tool that they have to take down one of these SMG heroes quickly. Yeah, but if Vayne's not silenced, she'll just trade her life, right? And soon, she's gonna have the agonies. And she'll be doing this even happier. Oh, this I feel like if huge. Luna had the shard, they maybe could have won that fight. Because Luna is lacking damage. And the shard just gives so much damage. Every time an enemy hero is hit by a Lucent Beam, attack damage is increased by 17 for 15 seconds. Oh yeah, that's a... Uh... You have 12 beams. And you're gonna hit BKB targets. Oh my god, that works that way. <laughs> Oh, that's kind of nuts, actually. I didn't even realize uh, that the shard was different. That could be... That could be pretty huge. Uh, this patch just keeps on giving. Oh, IG still hasn't gotten themselves a, a free shard. And the way this patch works, you kind of don't even want to buy shard because you can get one for free. So even yeah. heroes that are really reliant on shard don't want to buy a shard. Like, Bruce Blitz always... shard is pretty good, because he can just cancel it to, uh, to try and stay alive on the side of the fight, for instance. Yep. They see the Brew, swap, he does have they a burst. Split. No. He is very tanky. Roar used as well. Swap used, Roar used. Io is going to be the main target, and that's probably the better one, because, again, still doesn't have a buyback, and the Brew just used his split, so there's not too much to fear. The That's a future. weird split. Again, I I don't know. Do we have a different feeling because we're looking from the outside? But for me, it feels like SMG, they they roar, brew, they use all the right clicks and they realize, oh, I cannot kill this guy. I need to go for the next target. And then they go for the IO. And then brew just uses his ultimate out of the blue. Yeah, it, no, it I, like brew... I, I, I can agree with... It, it's kind of weak because the brew was really stupidly tanky. They barely touched him with his uh, defensive yeah. tools that he used. He could probably have just run away. This hero is so tanky. He should tank more damage. I guess, uh, you know, it's maybe not too used to the new brew. Yeah. I don't know. Feels like it, they can take a fight now because he doesn't have the ult. And the ult's just like making bad. The ult is like a troll ultimate that he used the ultimate and they're like, holy shit, why did I press R here? I bad. made a massive mistake. Just yeah, like, I made know, a mistake. When, when someone, you have a Winter Wyvern and a Faces Void in your team, and you're like, yeah. Chrono! Curse! Oh no! What have I done? And it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not, and it's not this mistake of like, oh, I used a cooldown. It's the mistake of, I'm weaker now. Oh my lord. Yeah, just three shots, the Tormentor. A free shard for the Venge. That is such a good shard. Especially Which, now that his way, Ag's almost done, so that Fenge is just gonna skyrocket in how much value it brings in a fight. I was looking at net worth because of the shard, so Poto has more net worth than Brew. Let's say, same net worth as Puck. And Puck also got a free shard, so... Just yeah. shows you how, how good Polson is in farming. Yeah, not only farming, and surviving, he has only one death. Moon has five. I mean, in this batch, honestly... It feels, again, like invisibility means invincibility, because limited on your sentry wards. Yeah, dust is pretty nice in this patch, but you're pretty much forced to buy a gem at a quick time in Dota these days. Especially if you're playing against TA with all the traps and TA. Bro has the gem. But Emo is the guy that's jumping. Maybe leave it with Emo. Bruce also starting fights with his ultimate, so it's fine. Oh, there. Region where Moon is. Smoke something. Up. Moon. They know he's in the trees. 
but both teams just they know exactly what their opponents are trying to do. Tormentor bottom uh, on the dire side still hasn't been taken out. Yeah. Only 28 seconds for the Aegis. Looks like SMG didn't do much with this Aegis. I mean, five minutes that we just talking nonsense, waiting for something to happen. And now that it's about to be over, he's gonna touch the high ground. He actually bought his own shard. The Sonic Trap has silence is really, really good. And it also adds in uh, extra bonus traps. Plus extra vision. Honestly, that shard is so much value. And he didn't want to wait for like it to be gained. IG is also sleeping on the shards. Shard on Luna is great. Shard on Storm Spirit is great. On Sky is decent. And IO is pretty decent as well if you tether to the uh, Storm. Actually, it's pretty good if you tether to Storm. A lamp on here that primarily Your does master. much damage. Does he get himself out of there? Split available. They're trying to get the heal in. He gets the primal split. They used almost everything. Chidori here with the BKB needs to be careful. Once it ends, he could be in a lot of trouble. But the Bruce is taking a heavy amount of damage, but not as much as Chidori. Nice lift onto mid one as well. That's going to be the second target here. Do they have a way to kill off Emo? Nice glimmer. Emo going to be able to dodge all the damage flying through. Jason, nice catch, Moon. He really needs to find the two main targets here, and it's not gonna be Emo because he zips out to safety. Polosom undid the stun oh, onto two kill, by the Emo. bench. And a buyback comes out from the IO to try and keep Emo alive. And this is great by QIQX. Buyback relocates into the fray, keeps Emo going. My god, the sustain is enough. The turnaround is coming through. Buybacks as well by the Coddle. He's now in the middle of the fray, needs to be careful. Mid one's gonna be overwhelmed. So much damage being absorbed. And they're this Brumos just is not being the touched. The cheese used. Brumos is so freaking tanky. Chasing for Emo. Roar comes out, but they have no TA. Can they die. kill off the storm is the question. He doesn't have any mana to zip out of there. Will eventually get taken down, but Dust is another right click target. Dream Call. This fight lasted so long. A second Dream Call has come through. Mid one surrounded by enemies. He's trying to man fight them, but the re respawns are just there the entire time finally Wallace the Stone. huge beast monster is taken back. down Olosome would be indeed a dieback and the last one jumping around is moon but dust he does not die through that entire endeavor he did 15k damage on the luna that fight 15 thousand damage yeah wow I, I've like, rarely seen any hero do 15k damage in one fight. Yeah, it was so long the fight. It's like two minutes fight. Uh, SMG, they didn't use the Aegis timing. Aegis was gone. IG, they go for the Hound. They find TA. They use the buyback on IO properly. And feels like SMG, they went to the wrong target. They did the thing where you try to burst the Brew Master, use literally everything on the Brew. He doesn't die. And then he pops the ultimate. Look at the net so, worth. This is the net worth, by the way, where SMG has gotten three free shards. Yeah. And feels like they're behind, because the game is on that point that I, I mentioned on the draft analysis, that I feel if the game goes late enough, they're going to lack damage to kill IG. They're going to lack the burst. This physical burst with a TA is not enough. After you get your auras online, so Real Monster has pipe, has Queen Zone, Albert. He's gonna go for a South Caress. Honestly, Brew Monster is so much better when he doesn't pop his ulti. It's insane. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm <laughs> trying to say from the six minute mark in the game. And I'm being repetitive and repetitive, but it's so much about this. And it feels like SMG, they didn't notice this. Because SMG, like IG was fighting on the wrong way where they popped the ultimate first. But then SMG, instead of waiting for his ultimate, they press everything on the Brewmaster on the start. They do the mistake that IG is not even baiting them into it. He's a big boy. A very, very, yeah. very big boy. Currently, they do have all shards now on the side of SMG. So you have the Hawks with the dive bomb. They're waiting for Roche to respawn. Top side, there's a Hawk inside the Roche pit, so... Yeah, they, they're immediately going to dip out knowing that the enemies probably know where they are. Emo's Luna, got Ags. 
This is big. Emo's got ags at the ready. Yeah. The jump's coming. Get ready. Mini black hole. Four but man. Emo could be jumped himself. Four or they find the IO. They know he doesn't have a buyback available on the IO. Tries to stay alive. Nice use of that. Ghost up there. He's going to stay. Uh, continue for a nice Mystic Flare. But they only do manage to find one bolt. So actually in a little bit of trouble. They drop Emo. Chidori still does tons of damage. If he does not get control, they will find the Vengeful Illusion. Chidori on the run. Roche is up in 10. And SMG needs to be careful because without a PKB, the TA is a rather weak. He can very quickly die. Yeah, they did the right thing. They went for the IO for the storm. But it's a DD Luna. They're gonna go for the ring gauge. Oh. Luna. They have no split, but honestly, this is where the Brew Master excels. Charging forward. No BKBs available. Dust even hasn't bought a BKB so far. Mystic Flare on the Skywrath. So they have to be careful. We saw how much damage it just pumped out in a couple of seconds in that fight. He's almost done with Ags on the Skywrath for the double Mystic Flare drop, double silence. Tidori, he, he tickles the Brewmaster. And Dust does a little bit more damage than just tickle onto Chidori. The TA gets disarmed by the Brewmaster. The TA's in trouble. The Refraction gets dropped. Swap save coming out from Afu. Great save Buy comes through. Buyback from the Skywrath trying to get back into the fray. They're trying to man fight, but Dust, he's healing so much with the Satanic, he's not taking any damage. This is the same as the previous fight, it just excels. Two and another five. disarm onto Chidari. He doesn't have a BKB, he cannot fight the TA, just needs to dip, but Dust chases him down. Godlike streak for Dust, looking for two. Double kill beyond Godlike they are right now. Illusion's gonna drop, Roche's respawn topside. That's a free shard to be picked up. <laughs> And all of a sudden, IG, even with the buyback use, whatever, it doesn't matter. This Luna is indestructible. Who needs a BKB? Yeah, they cannot kill Luna even without the IO. There's just a Luna Brew running to five heroes and they don't have the damage. He's got 3.7k HP and 38 armor. And that's without yeah. all the auras thrown on him by the Brewmaster. They didn't finish the game when they shoot on SMG with the second Aegis, they were just farming the map, doing the boring, and they lost their timings. They did understand that their draft wouldn't have enough damage by the end of the game. Luna, even without the um, Hype Aura, has 46% magic resistance. And like, who cares net worth? You are 7k ahead because you have a Kotto. And you but got yourselves four How can you shards? kill the Luna that's 6k ahead of your other core? You can't. Yeah. And he's also a base destroyer right there. Zip comes in, trying to get a two-man catch, only finds Afu. Not necessarily the best target to blow up. Probably the worst target to blow up because of the uh, illusion that spawns with the Ags. But Dust is just such a beast right now. They have the shard on the Buma, so he can go for the double splits. I'm not too sure if you want to go for the double use... splits. Yeah. Brew Just master. keep there, bro. Just keep, keep there. Heaven's Hope is disarming slip. Chidori every time. And you're yeah. Gucci. You stay there. Don't ulti. Don't ulti, bro. They actually have the Aegis on the Storm. On Emo, who's staying in the back. Snap the coil. Dust is in trouble. Can they kill him? Yes, they do. That's why he has he no should Aegis. Have... He... Yeah, they gave the Aegis, Aegis to the Storm. Hero. Charging for more Bruce, but needs to disengage. The stun gets thrown out. It actually connects to the IO there. But the Brew will be able to split into two opposite directions and they should be able to disengage. But this, this is a curious one. If you're going high ground, shouldn't you give the Aegis to the high ground pusher? I strongly believe yes. You give Aegis to the hero that does the siege damage. That's gonna be frontlining. If you have Aegis on Storm, you expect him to jump heroes and then you kill the heroes and then you do the high ground. So they go with a Aegis decision and they don't play around this Aegis decision. Just not the best decisions being made by both teams. Maybe the pressure into the new patch. Oh, Dream Coil plus uh, Swap is still pretty good. Uh, it was very effective in that case. They're actually going to steal another Tormentor away from IG. I think this only gives gold now because everyone's got a shard. I actually don't think I've seen the effect of it. I'd love to see shards on Storm, on the Luna, 
on Sky on every year. Are they going to farm at least one Tormentor on the IG side? Yeah. XP rune for SMG, they stole it. Probably they're gonna take theirs also. Everyone gets 280 golden experience if the entire team has a shard. I quickly had to look up exactly how much it was because it was a real weird number. But 280 gold and experience if you kill off the Tormentor without having the... Uh, with everyone in your team having a shard. So the more you know. And now SMG is 15k ahead and it really does not feel like that. It was like an even game. Honestly, it was a really weird high ground push where you have Luna under the tier 4 soaking all the damage and Io is not saving her because uh, he got swapped. So I still feel IG is way stronger here. They just need to be careful with the swap. Because I, I strongly feel Io is behind the hero, the hero does not die. And if you're not under a tier 4 tower. Now they got a lot of auras and saves for the Luna, but if the Luna gets swapped out of position and in me, like, Chidori still hurts. He's got the, the MKB, so Butterfly doesn't do as much, bring as much value as you'd like, and TA still has nasty burst. Always got to be a bit careful. Moon's also got Aeon Disc, so good way to survive. He's building up the Dagon on Moon. He's got 8k gold just lying about to get that max level Dagon. That's good. That's, That's what they burst. need. They need this burst, right? So Dagon's the best item to do so. It's a way better choice, let's say, than Vise. Vise, you're going to control the hero, and you're going to be lacking damage. They have enough control, they just lack the damage. Dagon is that item. Okay, let's see. 25 talents coming in soon enough. Buck already has his. Moon level 25 talent. Obviously, Dream Co pierces. Uh, uh, debuff immunity. But debuff immunity is still something that... The word I'm going to have to get used to, but that's the first one. Any other big ones, obviously, it's going to take a while for the Storm. He's only level 20. Close to 21, but the uh, overload attack bounce could significantly help uh, in their damage output on the Radiant side. Dory refraction instances is neat. Yeah, I haven't seen the Brill Master Fear to be honest, because this hero not that picked, but having fear sounds really good. The Cinder Brill. Last There's a five uh, seconds. Yeah, last a second and a half. The cooldowns are pretty low. That's pretty that's actually really good. Because it's a very big AoE that's in the brew. Luna with the mini stun, that can be great. This is also big. Sky's got his Ag and his level 18, so he's got max level Mystic Flare. That's a ton of damage to be thrown out. Still needs to get a shard, though. <laughs> Still waiting for that one. Anyone else? Oh, the have shard, a shard that I really want to see is the Luna one. Uh, it's so weird that I have 8k. You're going for that Lincolns on the swap? They only have the Brewmaster shard to break the primal split. Well, he has the refresher shard, so it makes a lot of sense. But you want to be able to break it and pop it back up. They're going again for the push. Like this time, just don't get swapped. Play a bit closer to the team, use Manta. Have Brewmaster hitting. It's a hero that maybe if they swap you, you can survive. I mean, if they swap him, he will definitely survive. It's also a building demolisher because, well, his Earth Band has the demolish ability, which does a lot. If he's alive, <laughs> they're taking a significant amount of damage from uh, the spam through. Mid one also has the Heaven's Halberd now, so they have a tool to disarm the Luna. Considering, yeah, oh, Luna does have a nine-second PKB though. Yeah, he was going for the Lincolns. Yeah, still. <laughs> the Aegis timing. Typing in all chat. <laughs> Moon's gone full damage, by the way. Daedalus, Kaya Sanj, Aeon Disc, Bots, Blink, Ags. <laughs> all enemies yeah. affected by Dream Call are attacked every 0 0.6 seconds. Indeed, you got a puck with an Ags, Daedalus, 
the new Aghanim Scepter effect. This is kind of neat. This is cool. This is... Now he has pretty much last batches both level 25 talents. Yeah, now they have their damage. Green Coil rapid fire, baby. It's just weird that the teams, they, they kind of don't use their timings. And so IG... SMG doesn't use the second Aegis properly, then IG doesn't use the third Aegis properly. Then the game is turning this 60-minute uh, game where everything's 50-50. Soon we're gonna have the one-hour items if the game goes to this path. Oh yeah, any of the new tier 4 items we have in the game? Uh, let's see... Uh, no, we do have... Both sides have two spell prisms, oh, by the way. Oh, jump in, nice jump. A re-electing Vortex catch, but damage is not there just yet. In comes the Eclipse, can they get any damage going? No one has even been hit so far with all those spells used. Dust is actually taking some heavy duty damage, but QIQX still has the cheese, the Gouda right behind him, Chidori pop the BKB. He's being overwhelmed by the Bruce Blitz. Once his BKB ends, this TA is in a lot of trouble. Gets swapped to save him. Double Baba comes out from IG, but QIQX keeps himself alive right there. Continuing to go for more than... Great AoE Electric Vortex coming out from Emo, holds them in place, but where's the damage coming through? They need Luna to bump out as much as he can, but Dust charged that by Chidori, taking down the Disarm King to a second too late. Another buyback from the Radiant side, Chidori gets Mystic Flare, another swap save by Apu. Can they keep Chidori going? He has a buyback on the TA. He's still not dead, the heal keeps going, the Refraction Charges keep on stacking. TA is not dead just yet, Chidori is indestructible. The Brewmaster finally out of spells, out of mana, out of life, and it's gonna be a huge win for SMG. So many buybacks came into play. Three from the Radiant side, two for the Dire, but the most important one is a dieback on Emo, and that Luna of Dust also forced to pop the buyback. That yeah, the Puck in that team fight advantage. as well. But look at Chidori's damage. He did 14k. Not as much as, of course, the Luna previously, but still 14k damage dealt by the TA. Yeah, so the buybacks on SMG are way more effective because you get to TP to the outpost. What IG was doing, they TP to the bottom outpost, then they use the portal, then they connect to the team fight. So they had the buybacks, but not that useful. And just feels like, yeah, as mentioned, IG, they didn't use their timings. They let Puck get to level 25, TA get to level 25. I think that TA 25, like Chidori got it during that fight. The 7 yeah. re refraction insist. He just didn't take any damage at one point. It took too long to hit him multiple times. It was also so close gonna to gonna finish the game without shard. Bro, just buy the shard. <laughs> you don't need to save money for buyback. Shards for suckers. Like you have 4 or 7k gold, you have treads on the backpack. Just get extra damage. Oh, they're gonna go for the full megas, it seems. Not gonna try and finish the game just yet. They're a lineup that handles megas pretty well, though. But they need to be very careful considering there's no buybacks available on the Luna and the Storm. The Storm is still so very far away from getting his. Uh, Level 25, which is honestly such his a XP huge power rune. spike. His XP rune is going to help him a lot. How much does it give at this stage? Does it show? You cannot click on it. But it's... Oh, we'll see you in like... a sec. UIQX, are you going to steal it? Don't you dare. Emo. Yeah, uh, okay. one line. Yeah. Oh, uh, this game. These fights are so long. These heroes just... The addition of the Brewmaster's auras, Beastmaster's auras, the Io with the healing, the defensive items he has as well, Ghost Scepter, Glimmer Capes on everyone. It's yeah, uh, I, remarkable. I, I really think the... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, 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 you go I ahead. The Brew should go Vlad. So have the life steal. Unfortunately, Wraith Pack's out of the game. But having life steal... Would help a lot this fight. Has like satanic, yes, but on top of that, the team fights are just so long that one more aura would fit really well. Yeah, and uh, on the other side, they of course have the Vlad's aura on the Vengeful Spirit, considering he stays alive for very long. I have to say that fight as well, Afu was on point. He saved Chidori multiple times with his swaps in that team fight. 
Because Chidori was at like 100 HP for a solid, what, 15 seconds during that fight? Book has Refresh Orb, Divine, Buyback. That's a big puck. He's got double Dream Coil that I, I'm gonna need to keep my eye on if uh, Moon's gonna pump out damage. Come on. Moon? Aegis on the hero that does the siege. Well played, SMG. On the side, can he get a good catch? Luna still doesn't have shard. The puck he is won't ready. Buy it. Come on. They know exactly what puck is, but they can't catch him. Zip and big catch coming through, but the puck with the green call. Look at the damage onto Emo. Moon going for more. Has the refresh available still as well. But they're gonna go for Afu here. There's the refresh use, but a great silence onto Moon. Can he get his spells off? Is the question. Know. QIQX, they're gonna get blown to smithereens. There's so much damage coming in on both sides. The Bruce Blitz over the GG is called, and that is gonna be SMG taking the W. I actually really wanted to be delayed slightly more to see how much damage the puck did in that fight. The double Dream Coil did so much, but we don't get to see how much. And I just see the Luna Divine when he was about to die. I don't know if we're missing the interface of the item on the Z-Cash, but I didn't see the, the catch. Because Puck had his own Divine, and he didn't drop. Luna, yeah, Luna just bought it in the last second. Oh, it might not have been delivered in time, but uh, this game had so many clutch close fights that, well, close. They lasted for a very long time. This fight, they chop up Emo, and uh, honestly, Emo's had a pretty rough game uh, on the Storm. He was trying to initiate every single time, but he just got instantly blown up. Dream Coil into Roar was most of the time used on him. Just taken down this fight just last forever. All right, Chidori pops the BKB right about now. Uh, actually, he's trying to get the right clicks in. Now he pops the BKB. Once his BKB ends, you'd think, oh, Chidori is an easy target. Dust is going to easily clean up that TA, but gets swapped to the side. Very far out of range of the Luna and the Brewmaster, so he can turn his attention to his uh, next opponents. And Brewmaster is one of them, lifts him up. Big zip catch coming out from Emo, but. The da this absorption coming out from the dire side, it takes too long, back is the puck, and if Chidori gets disarmed multiple times in the fight, which was really well done by the Brewmaster, there's the swap save, Hurricane pikes himself back, fourth into the team fight, in come the refraction charges, just in the nick of time, gets the blink to the side, and that TA, he got shot from top, bottom, left, right, all over the place, and in the end gets himself a triple kill. This was, this was remarkable. This was a pretty impressive game. Uh, still, SMG managed to win it out in the end. They eventually did have enough burst once the puck went for a ton of extra damage items. Yeah, I'd say the C region brings the entertainment. That's what I'm realizing now. Watching more their gameplays is, is not the region that I usually watch. Is that there's so much entertainment. You see heroes buying Divine, everyone reaching the 25 level. I'd say this actually comes for a because of a flaw on execution on the early game. Because they had the second Aegis, they should have closed the game there. And then they countered with the mistake of IG of not properly using then the third Aegis that they left with the Storm and just uh, got Luna swapped into the tier fours. But yeah, they were the better team given these circumstances. They made one mistake. IG didn't punish them for that. IG did one mistake and they did punish IG for that. So yeah, SMG takes the win. And I think we're going to see an even game two from what I've seen from both games here. Yeah, they look very competitive. Of course, uh, he talked about game two. We'll be going towards a short little break. Ladies and gents, we'll be back for game two after. See you then. You love it. You wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.esogaming.com
not wasting time Cause I'm already gone So alone Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity Welcome back, ladies and gents. That was game one. And Astini, that was uh, a lot to be delivered right there between South uh, East Asia and China. Game one, I, I mean, did you expect the result? I mean, it was late game SMG still won, but did you expect it to go this way? No. I expect SMG just to 
stomp, uh, like get second Aegis and close the game. And then when they don't close the game, I expect IG to win. And then they don't win. And then I would expect SMG to win. And then they won. So it was like the third expected thing somehow. Uh, First I wasn't and expecting third. That, yeah, that many mistakes. I feel like the teams, they should, they, they must step up a bit the game if they want to go through the group stage. It's fun to watch. It's a lot of entertainment, long team fights, one hour game. But I don't feel like it's one hour game because the teams, like, they played well the map, they show waves, they keep you uh, away from your base, they use their timings properly. I feel like they misused a lot their timings. That's why it turned into a long game. So, yeah, hopefully they step up a bit the game because uh, I like SMG playstyle. It's super entertaining to watch, and if they fix uh, some small mistakes, they have a lot to grow. Yeah, uh, currently IG is 0 and 5 in terms of their game, so that's not really uh, too wonderful for them. SMG, though, they're starting to liven up a little bit. They're uh, 2 and 3, so that's actually not too bad for them. Uh, all things considered, uh, they started out with an 0-2, of course, yesterday against OG. But here we have the draft for Game 2 starting on the way. Are there any picks from last game that you would immediately say they need to ban that hero? IG should ban Brewmaster, so they don't pick it. <laughs> well, hey, Maybe. that Brew did so much once he stopped using a split. Yeah, but if you're not familiar with the hero, just let it go. There's always a uh, best choice uh, under your comfort zone. I just play comfort. I think IO Storm is a comfort from them. But besides that, they need to find more comforts. Well, there were a couple of uh, interesting choices. The uh, first pick, Coddle. Uh, they, like, they stomped the early game pretty nicely because Holosome played so well on the Coddle. But... It's not really a hero that you immediately expect to be first phase picked. Uh, was there just because it's a, a choice for SMG or is the hero in a very comfortable spot at the moment? I think it's just a comfort for SMG. If you look at their DPC run, they were running the hero as first pick. And yeah, just their comfort. I don't think the hero is so strong in the meta, but definitely the hero is decent, right? Because you... You can buy less mangoes, less clarities, and having a hero that gives you that extra amount of mana is definitely useful. Well, SMG, I think currently uh, having the most wins of the Southeast Asian teams. Don't know how Talon is doing currently in their match, though. So uh, that is uh, an interesting one. Execration needs to step it up, but now it's going to be IG yoinking, stealing away the Kato first, first pick, even, which is... Uh, a ballsy thing to do. They ban out the storm themselves to make sure that there's no IO storm or something along those lines coming out from their opponent. But they, they also prefer to pick up that Coddle instantly. Yeah, they're playing somehow their... Hmm. I'll not say their own meta, because the meta of the tournament is shifting towards this Coddle empowering a hero. We've seen uh, OG playing Coddle Storm. Also, Thundra played from yeah, played Kotto, Underlord. It's a good steal. You take SMG out of their comfort zone. It's a hero that uh, it's not the same as IO, but it's the same idea that they are empowering usually our mid laner. They don't have the Storm as a pair now. I wonder which hero they go. I haven't seen Embers being picked, and usually it was the most common uh, pick with Kotto. Uh, yeah, Ember with the sleight of fist searing chains, of course, that you can pretty much use it twice in a row, almost, uh, is a neat one. SMG, they're going to go for a moon hero. We saw it yesterday. Kunkka, obviously, they can still flex the hero, but M Mirana plus Kunkka is what they ran yesterday. It's also what they won uh, with against um, Beast Coast in the first game. And Moon looked, honestly, really comfortable on that. Granted, his puck in the previous matchup was... Um, I mean, he played a really good puck and changed up the entire item build because you saw him queued up like level uh, 5 Jagon that he wanted to build, but then decided, I got a free shard from the Tormentor anyway. Might as well go for physical. And it looked uh, it looked pretty deadly in that last team fight. 
Yeah, in the beginning of the game, he did some overextends, died a bit more than he should on the puck. He was even behind the Kotto network, but then he got his items and he played really well. The uh, Kanka also looked good, but now you can't really kill Ember as a Kanka, not even with the arrow setup. Kotto pairing up with Ember looks a bit scary. It's definitely more scary to be a Kanka against an Ember than it is to be a Puck against a Storm. I like that uh, he, they go for the Ember. I was wondering why teams were not picking this Ember pairing with the Kotto, and I'm happy to see. I'm curious to see if we're gonna get uh, Dust or Emo in mid, because they both play Amber, so it's a toss-up on who's gonna pick it. Uh, of course, it uh, depends on pretty much what the next heroes are gonna be. They ban out the Morphling themselves. I was thinking maybe we get to see a bit of Emo morph, but that is out of the question currently. Visage banned by Team SMG, okay. They're a bit afraid of the zoo, and currently in this meta, I would also be very afraid of the zoo, especially considering Two anti-zoo heroes are on the opponent's side, even though Kunka doesn't really care too much, I would say, about it. And there we have the Brewmaster oh, ban. Oh, the Brewmaster ban. <laughs> yeah, IG is kind of protecting the Ember matchup so mid. Both Morphling and Monkey are really good against it. Uh, probably they assume Kunka can be flexed. The Venom is still on the pool. Not a huge issue for those two heroes they have. But it's definitely what SMG already won with, and sometimes you just want to take the enemy team out of their comfort zone. We see Muerta, a hero that SMG lost three times with the hero, but they just go for the Muerta bans. Basically, they are doing the three same bans that Beast Coast did against SMG when they did the Mirana Kanka opening. They did this, those three bans, and then SMG went for the Venom. This time, Phoenix is still on the pool, because it was a first phase ban. I wonder if they go the Phoenix, Venom, or they look for a third hero combo with this uh, Mirana. If they go Phoenix, currently they will need to build some egg clearing. Obviously, the, the most obvious one would be the uh, Snapfire that would be still available on the side of IG. Just curious what SMG is going to go for. I do like... You IG's lineup has that global presence, which is nice. But Marana, of course, gets that invis, which is a big, a very big, useful tool in this patch. So they both have a very annoying team fight combinations. Crystal Maiden coming in. It, there are some nice heroes that you can use to snag a creep in the jungle as well. Crystal Maiden with the freeze, Marana with the arrow. I'm surprised we don't get to see more liches now that he can uh, farm creeps as well. Yeah. They will have probably five heroes that can hit creeps and go for this uh, extreme late game. So it's their comfort zone in that sense. It's their strategy. SMG is severely lacking damage right now. Yeah, especially against an Underlord. Gonna build lots of RS. Got that DP all across the map as well gonna be hard. honestly for a hero like crystal maiden it's gonna be pretty rough Five seconds remaining. yeah and ig they're just iterating drafts trying to find out their comfort zone because when you're losing you just keep changing heroes to find something you win with disruptor underlord oh uh, underlord coddle is nasty because they have that uh, constant spamming of the waves and uh, Disruptor is going to be able to make it a man advantage in team fights where you, for instance, Slark comes in, you glimpse him, he gets sent all the way to Narnia, and then you have with the Underlord uh, Uber TP service, uh, you'll have a man advantage in nearly all fights. Yeah, Slark's not the best answer against Underlord, although you imagine Underlord this tanky frontline, you're gonna build stacks uh, on him. It takes so long to actually kill him or take him out of the team fight that you waste so much time and Underlord has two AoE spells to get you. I'm not saying it's a bad matchup for Zark, it's still decent, but not the best counter to Underlord. On the other hand, Zark's really great against Amber Spirit. So that might be the reasoning on the Zark here. With 101 against Amber, decent against Underlord. 
Last pick is for SMG. They can always put the Kunkka in the offlane if they still want to, but probably going to be mid because it's a very good matchup for Kunkka most of the time anyway against Ember. Five seconds remaining. Wofu farm. Would be fine. Seeker ban. Yeah, you go Zlarek, you want to ban Seeker. You probably want to ban Faceless Void. Especially against IG's lineup. Faceless Void added with all their AoE magic damages. It's just going to be the end of Slark and everyone else. I could else. see some Lash Carry weird strat, but I'd say usually Bloodseeker and Faceless Void are the two common two goal heroes against Slark. SMG, of course, last pick, probably going to be for mid one. He likes playing the more game winning heroes in his lineup. What are you thinking? What's he going to go for? Thing is, they kind of miss this aura builder in the team to sustain that long team fight. I like the bands of IG. They ban Tide Hunter. That's this aura builder. Legion also some sort of sustain. But you want to see the the carry that IG picks. You want to have a good lane. So if you're SMG now, you have like three, four good ideas of heroes, and you're gonna see which carry they pick, and then you answer this matchup. So let's say they go. Faces Void, for example, you would want Doom, but Doom is banned. Ooh. They go PL, you want Timber. And Timber is open. So probably they go Timber. And it's a mid one. We saw mid one destroy on Timber yeah. yesterday. What are the other AoE damage against this PL? If you don't go for Timber, I, told, I, I think mid. it's like... It should definitely be Timber. You can make yeah, a Kunga off lane. Lash, lash in the mid lane. Centaur is not... Ah, Centaur is bad because there's a Disruptor. You can go a Sand King. Haven't seen the hero though. I'd say Timber is... Way better than the other options that I'm not seeing. Maybe Darks here, but against Disruptor you Tinker? also don't want a Darks here. Ah, Timber. It's Timber. It yeah. makes the most there's... sense. It's. I could overthink this for the two minutes they had of extra time, but for sure they would go the Timber. That's just like, even then, they don't waste this extra minute they had. And, uh, of course, uh, you mentioned it yesterday. Timber, with the new uh, changes to some of the items, is a lot more annoying to deal with, considering he constantly gets himself mana uh, instead of just having to use an item for it. So, it's... Uh, not like the PL's Diffusal Blade is the end for Timber. If he takes any magic or pure damage during a fight, he will just be able to constantly use his spells. Gets Bloodstone at one point as well, and then you don't even care. Like, PL is going to be a source of easy uh, mana and HP at that point. Yeah, I feel like Timber is a good one-on-one -on -one counter to Illusion Heroes now. Because previously, Naga, PL, they would... Build Diffusal and you're kind of useless as a Timber without mana because you don't do right-click damage. But with the Eternal Shroud changes that you have the 25% uh, passive uh, mana income, I really feel like Timber should counter the PL. That's my feeling. Let's see if it's proved inside the game. Against Beast Coast, kind of proved it against Naga. Curious to see if it's the same case against PL, but I strongly believe so. I think mid one will carry this game on Timber. It's going to be the true carry. Okay, so are you going to throw out a, a Steamy Toaster prediction? You're forcing the Toaster prediction. I will never I, I, throw I, a Toaster on SMG because their execution level didn't bring me enough trust yet. Never? Oh my god. No, they never should. I mean, if they will so build toxic. that trust on me, they will build the trust. Let's just like carry a lot on this Timber now and maybe I build the trust. Okay, okay. I mean, to be fair, that timber right there did make you a toaster yesterday, so... Yeah. I'd be terrified but too But honestly, well. it's because you kind of force the toaster. Oh, they are gonna meet each other? Nah, just break the smoke. Kotto's still there though, but has a lot of moves. Speed? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no early harassment so far. Oh, already shenanigans between the two sides. So you're just waiting for, you know, like a, a liquid, to, even though they're not in the same group, a liquid to face up against SMG and have an overwhelming draft. So you're safe. Nah, 
I feel like Liquid, they execute their deal drafts, uh, Gaming Gladiators, EG, Shopify. Peace Coast yesterday. OG. No, I, I'd say every team besides the Southeast Asian teams, they kind of bring an idea and play around timings. But Southeast Asia, they just like no cares about timings. Let's play this one hour game and get everything so random. So it's, it gets hard. But it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And can be a good strategy because you force the 50 50 in the one hour game. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, Eternal MV anymore for the, the actual 50 50s back in the day. But uh, let's yeah. see. Any interesting lane setups? Which side do you think? Yeah, okay. Bottom, of course, it's they're going to do the exact three, same thing of with the disruptor. Yeah. Getting first blood attempt. Top also. Yeah. Uh, CM is hiding, but it's so hard to kill an Underlord. Will they manage to do so? Uh, Here they go for the Underlord. Freeze into arrow, into stat stealing. That body yeah, blocks. Yeah, that should that. be first blood. Even a courier kill. Oh, Maybe, what? Oh, he's... oh. <laughs> the... <laughs> BM grenade. Blood grenade. Yeah, looked easier than I thought, to be honest. That Fiara does soak up a bit of damage, but the problem is... They just it fall for the same trick away. twice. Is it? And they were doing the same thing bottom, and this guy was not expecting it. Okay. Even though bottom's kill threat's a lot weaker. Auto? Like, for ID. That. What is that top? Try lane time. Okay, yeah, I mean, to be fair, mid one can pretty much solo lane that anyway. It's a disruptor and PL. They have no damage. Yeah. And it's already two agility stacks Arrow for the Zark. Onto Underlord. They have the slow. Underlord dropping low. That's perma stacks for Chidori. Three you can kills stop already. Stop this hero. He's already tilted. Like you can, as a coach, I tell when a player is tilted, you just leave the hero and like, yeah, just kill me here. Uh, he has to run to lane as well. Doesn't even pop it a smoke. It is a rough start for IG. And Timbersaw is... I mean, he's getting pushed back slightly, but he's still getting experience at the very least. He's not dying. And we've seen how much work mid one can put in. And now that Chidori is just getting a full free lane. <laughs> yeah, look at the Crystal well, Maiden on one like... side, Paulson on the other. They're, they're waiting. Mid one is experienced enough to know my team is screwing up their offlaner. I'm fine just getting XP. I don't want to do any crazy moves to guarantee farm. I just need to survive. Don't need to do anything crazy here. Yeah, he's got reactive armor level 2 now, so he, he's already walking around with plus 12 extra armor. Underlord is jungling. Region. It hurts to see. Top lane's over. Yeah. There is no top lane. It's like Kotto trying to get some farm. Disruptor can't Look even help. The, That's the problem. Where the wave equilibrium is. It Man, it looks like a disaster. How could they rectify it? Because Disruptor can't go towards the top lane and help because then Timbersaw would just dominate the PL. I'd say it's a lot on Dust. Like going to TP through I the two supports. I feel like Kotto should go mid, get the four minute uh, run from Moon's not going for the bottom, but still should go mid, support his Ember on the 4 minute rune, and hope the Ember just outplays Kanka, get an early 6, and save your silence. Yeah, Underlord still jungling. Now he's jungling the safest camp in the map. <gasps> uh, I'm like feeling he's bad. He's queuing up Midas away from being a griefer. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. Nah, you cannot tell like he's griefing the game, right? He's just not feeding more essences to Slark. Doesn't see a way back. I can understand him, but man, he's definitely, definitely tilted. Yeah. I think oh, you have they go on the timber. And Probably not enough damage. The glimpse there. Uh, Maybe damage with the glimpse. Nah. He sells timber chain. Diving underneath yeah. the tower is probably a little bit too much to ask for. 14 denies on Zark. 
CM is looking for the Underlord. Net worth. Like, if you look at net worth, it has 2.9. The second one is PL with 2.1. He's already 1k ahead of the enemy carry. And 1k ahead of uh, Amber, Kunkka. Well, I guess POW needs to do a lot on that Coddle. To try and at least get the experience topside. Yeah, and he's getting solo XP oh, right no. now, so... <gasps> Underlord's Courier died with the Ring of Health in it. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Oh my god! That hurts. <laughs> That hurts. Oh man, that hurts. And like, he's walking base now with half HP, one third of the mana pool. Probably he will TP top now that it, he sees this Arcs alone. Uh, yeah, he's tipping top. Well, no, he's tipping top to farm jungle. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's sad. Yeah, it's not a fun game for the Underlord. Just don't get to see Underlord struggle this much Bolt normally. Mid. Moon's already 6. Uh, yeah, does slow resources. He's gonna be low resources for the 6 minute room. That's what Moon wanted. He didn't want to force the kill. He just want to force Ember to stay away off the lane. So Ember's not 6 for the rune trade. That was the only hope on IG side that the Ember get online. Mirana on the top rune. CM on the bottom rune. Just probably gonna be dead here. He's forced to go for the rune. And uh, here's the combo. Yep. Nice catch. Moves. And it's a disaster, man. Yeah. Uh, All three lanes. Are, I mean, bottom, PL is having a good time, but mid one, once he hits level six, he kind of forces PL out of the lane. Yeah, I'll give the job to oh, find no. a copion for mid. you. I'm, oh, Moon. Mm. Might, might be important kill. Glimpse. The glimpse. Nice catch in yeah. response. Does die Half probably. damage done to the Possibly, tower. Actually, QIQX. Last it's gonna nice. be enough, but they find some recovery kills here. Yeah. Dust will get his six with this catapult, six minute forty. Half damage done to the tower. I'm struggling to find the copion for the IG team here. Underlord is uh, stacking the ancients. And he's gonna get the XP rune. Yeah, here he goes, level 4. He'll get level 6 by 10 minutes, I believe. And with a couple of nice stacks being added for him. Disruptor tipping mid, uh, refilling the bottle. I would expect a smoke, but no smoke. Maybe a kill on CM. Well, there's a little bit of a body blocking coming out from this CM. That gives away exactly what's coming in his direction. Limp's use QIQX will be able to get out of there. But yeah, once the Crystal Maiden starts body blocking, you got a dip. Eight minute room. I would expect uh, CM and Mirana to go there. Uh, that's the only way IG can recover. And if SMG is playing for... Yeah, CM realizes she's late. She TP's in, because that's the only way that IG can recover, is with a part of rune on Dust. And... Unlucky. Double damage top. If it was bottom, maybe Ice Frog could have helped a bit the IG team here. Mid one, three points on the passive. I will assume he will not get the fourth one, because he doesn't need, so he can go for the extra greedy on damage. Yeah, he's the... Dominator of that bottom lane now. No one can touch him. Yeah, he no goes for a second anything. point on Timber Chain. He's gonna start uh, chasing the Disruptor away from the XP zone. And the tier Clark one should also be reach, taken soon. He's gonna reach 5k gold before 9 minutes. That might be some sort of record. Moon farming some jungle camps that belong to the Underlord. Underlord hit 6. Good recovery. Maybe they could... Uh, they still have a pretty nice lineup in terms of trying to overwhelm their opponents. He cleared up that Ancient stack, by the way, with Firestorm. That's why he got so many levels quickly. And honestly, his net worth spiked up because of it. So, still a decent recovery. But currently, all three cores of IG are struggling really heavily. Yeah. They need uh, level 6 on the supports. Disruptor is getting an early 6. That's good. They definitely want to smoke uh, when Disruptor hits 6 and Just get a big mid. kill. 
Can he get himself out of there? Gets arrowed up. Yep, ghost ship connects. No way to dodge that one. Big kill comes through. Another kill secured onto dust, and they're looking for more. Yeah. Disruptor 6. You see enemy heroes on the mid lane. If you can get a kill on Kanka, Ooh, this level 6. Could be a kill. Uh, uh, do they not It's not the kill other? you want. Oh, no, there's the Uber. Coming in, Underlord. They're gonna go for the cre CM kill. A kill's a kill at this stage of the game. Any bit helps. Yeah. Otto's going for the Spirit Vessel. One nice change about Spirit Vessel is if you also die yourself, you get an added charge onto Spirit Vessel. It's a pretty nice uh, addition to the item. I mean, uh, yeah. that's if you have zero charges. Same with the urn. So you always yeah, so it's not like will be able to get something. Useless when you are behind. It, it feels good. Slark has Echo Saber going Diffuso. So he went, he could have gone Diffuso and chased the Underlord, but he goes Echo Saber, so he farms faster and then he gets the Diffuso. It feels like the other lanes are also winning, so he doesn't need to rush and be that active, even though he has the perfect game. It's the right read, and Disruptor is still walking the map without using his ultimate. I, mean, I really feel this, they need to use this to get kills. They are not in the position of trading farm. Because if you are 6k behind, the enemy team has more items, so they farm faster. And this patch as well, those items are a lot more value, because you can upgrade them to uh, Harpoon and the Disperser on a hero like Slar. Which, he innately likes building these items, and being able to upgrade them is just a huge plus. Definitely. And it... What the item does is really good. Having this haste, the 100% move speed is basically haste, right? And even the dispel. So you have an active haste with the spell. And then you got Harpoon, so eventually you get Ags plus Harpoon, there's no support. Like, these supports, Coddle's pretty fast, Disruptor's got the glimpse, but they're still going to be able to latch onto you. 12 minute room, CM connecting, Mirana connecting. Kanka a bit far, far away because of the... <laughs> oh, because of the ancient farming, but Mirana denies it, so it's fine. Every little bit helps. Stop lane. They're looking for Chidori here with a smoke gank. Glimpse back. Chidori pops his ulti in time. And will he be able to get himself out of there? Gets pushed back. And they have vision of him. This is no defusal blade just yet. Chidori's actually going to be just fine. And in response, they have to be careful. Emo can dodge with the doppelganger. But there's no continuation of that fight coming in. And he... Oh, yeah. If he got his Diffusal Blade a little bit sooner, they might have had the damage there to kill off the Slark. Going in for the fight here. Yeah. Moon still has the Ghost Ship. They're all grouped up. Ghost Ship flying out. The Slark needs to pounce back. They're actually going for the chase onto Chidori, but Mana is dropping a little bit low here on the IG Ember. And Moon is still really tanky, but Diffusal Blade is pretty nasty. In comes mid one with the Timber Saw. He's just gonna chop Emo in half. And Dust has no Fire Remnants left. So they're trying to hunt him down, but the uh, Underlord trying to block any chases for more. But during all of this, like the scary one will be mid one. And he shows it time and time again on that Timber Saw. You can focus down the Slark, you can focus down the Kunka, but the Timber Saw is the one that's being uncontested. Yeah, it was supposed to be a nice move from. IG, but Ember wasn't there, so the biggest damage output, the hero that's the strongest hero that should be connecting with this Disruptor ultimate, was not there to burst this arc. If they burst this arc, it's an amazing team fight. But they don't burst this arc, they use all the spells, and then they keep trying to go for more. The idea was good. They used the timing on the Diffuso from Emo. Emo with some okay ish farm, considering he's behind Mirana, but at least he has Diffuso and he could fight, so. He was playing active, doing the right thing, but Ember not being ready to join. It's very unfortunate, because yeah, IG is just getting behind and behind. Yeah. And all the smoke, haste rune on Moon. Yeah, just Ghost ship the comes bottle. in, does connect on to two. Nice sword as well onto Dust. Do they have the damage behind it? The Crystal Maiden is going to be interrupted in his ult. 
does actually not even take that much damage just yet. I see him running forward, will eventually get controlled and finish off Moon. That's a big kill if they can secure it. In comes mid one. They need to be very careful because mid one does chop people in half. As we've seen, Dust tries to slide the fist, keep them at bay so that Emo can run to safety. Misses the timber chain there, but Emo's going to get the fusel blade slow. Doesn't have the doppelganger either. And it's Chidori with a double kill. The fight looks so good for IG until mid one joins. And then it's like... Because it's a run. bait, right? You you kill Kanka and you feel like, oh, I killed the position two. But SMG, mid one, is always the position one. That's why he's called mid one, if you don't know why. It's the position one. And then have... what, what position he stands on the map, he's always going to be mid one. Exactly. He's the one. Position one. His name is mid, his position is one. And they go for him. <laughs> they, are they crazy? Do they think they are, can kill this gonna, guy? I was, yeah, if you glimpse him, you're probably just gonna oh, lose everyone. Oh, there are three everyone. bounties. Get, get those bounties. Oh, I, oh my god. Easy money. That's 180 times five. It's like 1k gold. Huh. Chidori actually well. bought the shard now as well to survive inside the uh, static storm. Even more. And let's see, any other Kanka interesting with BKB. items? Yeah, he doesn't die when he pops his BKB. And SMG, same thing as last game. It's about the 16 minute mark. They get, try to get rid of the tier 2 tower top so that they can go for the Tormentors once they spawn. Chidori gets Glimpse back, pops his ulti. This time they have a bit more damage. Can he get himself out of there? It's still being held in place, but there's the death the shard. shard. The shard comes into play. Crystal made an ulti on the high ground as well. They soak up a lot of damage here still. But they did lose the PL again on the Radiant side. This is the gold ship. Yep. And uh, that fight. Other Lord is healing and he's gonna be back on the portal. They don't have PL, which is scary on the high ground. Nice blast comes out, the Crystal Maiden. There's still enough magic damage. They don't have Aura Builders on the side of SNG and that could be problematic because Jidori with a five kill streak about to be ticked down, tries to suicide to the Ancient. And if they get the chance, they do have Magic Burst with the, especially the Coddle and the Spirit Vessel at this point in the game. But, and also, of course, the Ember with the Milstrom. But yeah, PL is just no hero at the moment. Even it's fine for SMG. Uh, I'm trying to reason why they would do that. That mid one is just hitting bottom and you're engaging under a tier two. Like already got the kill, you can get away. Mid one is still getting away with the farm. You get away with the kill. But they keep there. Underlord uses the portal, get full HP, comes back, and he's still there without. Let's say you're a carry. And even if we don't consider him the carry, if it's your position three or whatever, why? Why give this sort of openings for IG to come back? I feel like with this start they had on the game, if IG has more than five kills, it's basically because SMG is allowing them to get those free kills. Interesting Why not play choice. a bit safer the map? Mid one actually went for a Lotus Orb instead of uh, rushing the Bloodstone. So uh, the added armor is nice and of course to get rid of the Spirit Vessel charges which I think is pretty much the only real reason because <laughs> Spirit Vessel is still pretty nasty for him. There's a lot of things to be dispelled, right? There's the Searing Chains, there's the Auto Spell that's not a spell. Yeah, the, uh, God, what's it called? Solar Bind. Solar Bind, thank you very much. Solar Bind is pretty nice, even though Timbersaw doesn't really care that much about Solar Bind, because at one point he's just going to Timber Chain across the entire map. Towards mid, Underlord, they're going to try and blow him up. Timbersaw is still pretty good against Strength Heroes. And they get a quick kill on the big, bulky... Hero of the IG defense. Yeah. That's the right move, right? You bring the five heroes, you burst a target, you don't do the crazy thing. Well, dodges the uh, X mark torrent combo on Ember. Does only have one more fire remnant down uh, available, so has to be a little bit careful if they go for an engagement. But does Emo. Okay, Emo is still building up his Manta style. Even with the Manta style, you're gonna need more. 
you're just so squishy at that stage. Yeah, he needs the Tarask. Thing is, he's having the space to farm. I don't think SMG should allow this oh, to happen. Just top side. Just. Yeah, hot. And they kill him off. He does have five run and down, jumps back towards it and will was just be baiting. able to. I mean, that was a scary bait. <laughs> A little bit more and he would have dropped, but the Tormentors are about to spawn and that's exactly where mid one's heading. Mole, lanes back. Huh, with axe. With one. And they're gonna steal the Tormentor. They go for the enemy Tormentor. Can Siam tank it? I think Siam's gonna be really low. The problem yeah, is, they realize. it's a lot of pure damage being thrown out on them because that's what Imbersaw does. Yeah. It's fun that teams are still figuring out but uh, probably like we are watching way too many games and you, we look at it from outside and we have the feeling like this hero is gonna die. So what, what happened with the Venom Monster yesterday? Okay, they go for the Underlord, the Arrow. Nice stun, good glimpse for Staff. Underlord still alive, Ghost Ship got missed as well. They used a lot of cooldowns here, but the Underlord will eventually get taken down. Yes, indeed, Moon whips him into shape and they will manage to get the kill onto the Underlord, which is a pretty big one. Now yeah, in for they the have Tormentor. A they, they gotta be very careful here still. Ooh, that damage. But it's still gonna be Mirana with a free shard, which is probably one of the worst ch shards you can get on your team. Yeah, they, they really wanted to take this tower before, and now they had the Catapult wave, and they all went for the Tormentor instead of using the Catapult. Now they're low-ish on the heroes. They will probably have the no. They're not having. There's a glyph. Dust is cutting the creep wave mid. Yeah, like the enemy team is doing damage on the two towers oh, emo. of them. No. Emo. Also picks bait. up the wisdom right in front of him. Emo tries to use the illusions as a bait, but they find the real one. And you cannot get out of the slark's uh, pounce once he gets the catch on you. So. Uh, yeah, an untimely death there for the PL, and they're gonna get themselves another shard. Yeah, but when you look at the map, IG definitely seems to be the team that actually plays the map. While SMG, they're running non-stop around, chasing kills. Because the top tower is still alive, half HP. And meanwhile, they took the mid tower on IG, because Ember just showed the wave there. So they got a kill on a core, good. They got a Tormentor, also good. Mid one gets a free shard, superb. But they are losing the objectives. They're losing structures. I'm not saying the game is good for IG, no way. IG has like the 2% win rate here. But if SMG has more uh, discipline on the objectives, it should be zero. Gaben says 19%. Yeah, Gaben knows SMG. I, I, BKB on Slark. Tim, Timbersaw is getting pretty scary. He's now gotten the free shard as well. Emo going for a fight here. Sack Storm, nice catch. On to two. But the BKB for Chidori means he can just charge for more. Emo to the low ground. He tries to get, but he doesn't jump over the cliff. BIW, another one down. And QIQX is going to get surrounded. They didn't even kill the Crystal Maiden. Their damage yeah, output so is just too lacking. I, I, it helps yeah. a lot that, of course, the Mirana has a mech plus a pipe. Because Poloson, just like his Kado game, is so farmed, he's about to overtake Emo's PL. Yeah, it's the four core strategy on SMG, and it's working well against the IG. And all the tier 2 towers should be next. Roshan, they don't have a great Rosh lineup on the side of SNG. That's the only downside they really have. And their push is not yeah. too great. I mean, with the Timbersaw shard, it does make it better, I guess. High ground push is always hard against Underlord, and it's always hard against Kotto. PL, Amber, Disruptor, also decent in defending high ground. There are a lot of openings for SMG to do crazy things here. Radiance on Kanka is invis, but you can feel the Radiance, or you cannot. EIW, Kato caught, four staff's not going to keep him going. QIQX is another target. Uh, he's trying to juke his way through, but 
They're coming from all directions. <laughs> Mid one. On a killing yeah, I was actually watching the chase on, on the disruptor while Koro was dying on the other side. The two supports were being targeted by different cores. Now Polison has actually overtaken Emo now in terms of net worth. But you did point out a very important fact. High ground push is rough for SMG. Yeah, and net worth can be a bit deceptive, right? If Emo gets to his Tarask, let's say he gets to 13, 14k gold. And Photo also gets to 14k gold. Biao can do so much more with his items than Koro can do with his. Just like one example, I'm using like both sides, uh, both uh, team side, like Koro's on the same side, but let's say Mirana. Mirana can do a bit more with 14k because the hero that is, let's say, more of a carry than a Koro for sure, which is a better choice in that sense from SMG compared to the last game. But still, Biao does way more than a Mirana. I do like the way that IG are like spreading across the map. Ember went for bots this game because he knows that he needs to be everywhere. Oh, he's dying. Is dropping pretty low. Has a BKB, but TP's on cooldown and no more fire remnants available. So he's going to try and hide oh. in the trees. Chidori doesn't get tagged by the dot. And uh, that is pretty lucky. If he got hit by flame guard there, they would have known. But he gets out. Juke him all the way through. Keep the game extended. Emo, That's your chance to get back. Mid one's running at him. God, arrow, the arrow. The X. BKB usage comes through. Emo will not be able to get four staff to safety. And there will not be APL for more of a fight. No, <laughs> mid one is just hunting for blood. Knowing that, especially if PL is dead, there is no way they kill him. Up the high ground he goes. Give me free mana not even with, with the eternal Go ship comes through. Unless he wanted to do the there. fountain dive. Just so, like, uh, I'm wrong. You know, I say, oh, he's unkillable. And then the guy is under the enemy tiers 4. I mean, Kaduna obviously, did. weird things can still happen. But... Yeah, and the tier 2 is still there. Yeah. No, they're going to take the tier 2. Ember mid. Kunkka use BOT there. Horses Ember back. Kunkka has bots, Timbersaw has bot is building bots, they're making sure they can chase the Kunkka where the Ember wherever he goes. I do find this an interesting build from Moon. The BKB into Radiance into bots. Kunkka. Yeah. Of course the Radiance makes the, a lot of the sense. The bots make sense. Because yeah, the Radiance makes sense against PL. The bots is because Ember is just splitting the map and delaying the game. They lack siege damage, they lack roche damage, so it's hard for them to just run in one lane and protect the wave, especially against the Kotto. So they need to deal with all the lanes that are being pushed, and the BOT is a good choice. And Emo is not getting any farm, so they're doing the right thing right now. They're controlling well the map. Dust actually went for a Deso for some extra physical damage on the side of uh, IG. I'm just afraid because now they're doing the Oh, Dust is gonna get caught and pop the BKB. Gets himself back. Just in the nick of time. Did force out his first BKB charge. I was gonna say they were doing the thing where Slark's forcing a fight while Timber and Kanka are on the other side of the map. But it's also why BOTs are so good. So they are finally on the same page with the three cores, which is seems to be the biggest flaw on SMG. There's always one core on the other side of the map when you're forcing an important fight. If all your cores go BOT, it's solved. They're gonna go for Roche. Their Roche taking is very slow. But should be able to get it done before Roche runs to the other side of the map. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, oh, I was thinking maybe QIQX is gonna go and say hi. Twin gate. They're waiting. Oh, they're... Oh, Wallace on. Yeah. Yeah, this is scary for Emo. <laughs> Roche. Still a minute to go. Yeah, still far away from his, his Tarask. And 
And again, Dust splitting the map, going for Chrysalis. Just physical damage, Ember. Let's see. Will uh, they be able to kill him off? Mm -hmm. Dodges a bunch, does have his BKB available. Fire Remnant is still down, is going to be able to jump back towards the Fire Remnant. And he did, Dust is honestly keeping this game alive. Single handedly yeah. keeping this game going. He might die on a very weird way, and be judged as like, oh, look, he did this weird thing. But he's just playing on the very limit to create space. He's not using the BKB, he's soaking all the spells before he goes back to the remnant. Mid one's going to get your best. hammer because they need tower damage. <laughs> he steals XP rune. That's cool. They TP him to catch him. And oh no, QIQX. And he glimpses back. No. Really good usage of the shard and the ultimate. So he couldn't glimpse back. Well, they lose one. Emo's being hunted by mid one. Who's diving in the Radiance base. Doesn't really care. Back to full HP, back to full mana. Yeah. He goes. He's this gonna is... go on the fountain just to die and be like, oh, the casters are wrong again. They said this guy cannot be bursted. He cannot die. Yeah, fountain diving is always a nice plus. <laughs> Good. But actually, I throw. think he survives the fountain for a eh, few seconds. Go. Oh, bounce in the. Doing a little bit of pushing damage. Meteor Hammer is still not there on mid one. Chidori gets glimpsed back in the stack. So Kinetic Field does have a BKB and of course his Aegis. But okay, he's gonna lose his first life. Mid one actually took a lot more damage. Gets pushed yeah. back, mid one. Bloodstone popped. Is it gonna be enough to keep him healed? They're actually gonna go in onto the Radiant side. Dust pops his BKB. Sorry, he's gonna die. But they're actually getting themselves out of there. Emo needs to be careful. He aggressively doppelganger. Ghost ship come flying out. They found the right Emo target. The real PL. Please stand up or drop down dead because they will go for the enemy's base. And losing the PL there is a big problem, but I think losing the Underlord is the biggest issue. Yeah, they almost killed Zark. They forced his BKB back. I feel like they could have used this opening to just heal and restart it. But they felt like, oh, Zark is uh, healing, so I just go all in. Dust does do a lot of damage if you stay in the area long enough. Like, he almost two shots to Crystal Maiden. Yeah. The physical build on Ember. Bottle always giving Chakra to him. Igan's gone. PL's gonna be back in five seconds. I think they're late to retreat against the Disruptor. Someone is gonna get glimpsed. And it is going Old to X. be Moon, but he has the X marks. The spot. Yeah. And immediately, Dust goes back top, knowing the enemies are out of the base. So, uh, if he's gonna get some farm, push the tier 2 tower a bit. Extend the game. They're gonna go for the Tormentor. This is a nice one for the side of IG. At the very least, they will finally get a Tormentor in this series. Probably will go to Disrupt. Oh, Please not Coddle. Disruptor. Coddle? Eh, that's okay. It's always going to the second net worth, not the one of the second. I, I don't. F I think their RNG is broken. I've seen like eight times. Eight times go to the. S Okay, they jump. Underlord, Underlord jump. Can he get away? Four staff forward, but the Slark keeps on chasing. Underlord in a lot of trouble. Dies without a buyback available. And looking for more QIQX, throws out the glimpse, but it's gonna be Dust that needs to pump out any damage they have. Buyback by QIQX. Mid one's just gonna jump through the little portal gateway. And a double buyback by IG. Can they get any damage here? PL with the heart is a bit more survivable. But the Timber Saw does not really give a hoot about what you throw out. Dust is the only one doing actual damage here. Emo's oh, illusions emo. get chopped up. And again, the PL no dead without a buyback. It's everything on Dust with this long range poke. He almost had both supports, but then the Moonlight pops. Mid one is literally all their tower push. He's got flamethrower, which he's not using on buildings, surprisingly enough. And he's got the meteor hammer. 
That's their entire push on the side of SMG. It's taking so long. Going for an oh, extended arrow. fight. Worst that. Dust does not have a BKB. Yell is up in 15. Even with the PL, can they kill off the, the cores? Well, they're gonna try for it. Once PL returns, Glimpse sends the Slark out of there. Two sets of racks picked up. Yeah, that's the right move. Just retreat. Don't let the enemy farm anything. You don't need to force the high ground. They feel like the supports, they just survived because of the moonlight. So Ember went for them without dust. It was a side uh, team fight. And that's why they survived. With more vision, they would have lost the supports and then the team fight gets weird. Thus, queuing up a divine. Not so sure we are gonna see it. There is a vice on PIW. I don't know if they lack control, they kind of lack damage, but yeah. Well, the four, See, double four staff to get that on the Vice out reveal. There. They gotta Can catch up to the Slark. He can't pop the BKB just yet. And finally, he does use it into the nick of time, turn it around onto Dust. And the PL, Dust, can he get himself out there? He's so close to dropping. Slide of Fist, dodge the damage, will die. No buyback on either of the two cores. And IG, this might just be it. They again, very closely, almost kill off Chidori. But honestly, even if you kill off Chidori, there's still a mid one timber saw that's just not giving a hoot about your entire team. It's SMG taking the series 2 0 and dropping IG down to a 0 6 scoreline in the bracket. That's, uh, that's a big problem for the Chinese teams now. They definitely need to step up they, their laning stage on IG. They want to survive the group stage. The way they lost the lanes, the game was actually over in three minutes. It felt like when you see an Underlord jungling level one, you almost want to call GG there. I'd say it's a plus on their mental fortitude to last uh, 36 minutes. Level Props one without dust. Firestorm, by the way. Yeah, plus <laughs> this, that did a lot. SMG, again, not as clean as it's, it could be, but way cleaner than the other games. When I said like they shouldn't allow IG to get any kill, they IG had nine kills and then the game ended with IG with nine kills. So they got the discipline after one throw. Let's try to avoid this one throw. Like just more discipline and they are on a good path. This yeah, win definitely heroes. helps them get some momentum. These are heroes that they definitely do like. Um, the Timbersaw, you know, it's a it's a mid one hero that he really loves to play. And uh, honestly, it would be surprising to me if not more teams ban it out. Uh, obviously, the rest of the team as well, because the laning stage was superb for Chitori. He started becoming uh, massive. Uh, you had the uh, uh, the Kunka of Moon that played a phenomenal game as well. He won his mid lane. They won all three lanes even with mid one in a 2v1 because mainly well, what is a PL plus disruptor ever going to do to a timber saw? Yeah, they had no way to kill the timber from <laughs> the draft. Like you look at the draft, this timber is kind of unkillable. Unless you get a lot of items on the PL, on the Ember and SMG didn't allow this. And props to SMG. Um, quite happy with what i've seen on this game too are you starting to they become a believer punished uh yeah they punished ig for their mistakes uh they're gonna face extreme gaming now feels like if they play like the game two they should get the w they play like game one they might lose to extreme gaming bit of a better team than ig but if they keep this path of improving they can make it through the group stage i don't think we're looking at a team that's gonna have the upper bracket in a group that have OG winning everything. You have Shopify, you have Tundra, you have Team Spirit, and then you have Beast Coast that's gonna draw every single match because Beast Coast quite hard to get the upper bracket, but considering you have your other C brother Talon, they might win against Talon because they know well their opponent already won against IG, might get a win against Extreme Gaming, so yeah, definitely I see some hope 
in this group stage for SMG. For IG, it's hard. It's very hard if they want to continue on. Speaking of hard, currently there's also Extreme versus Talon playing on the main stream, the ESL Dota 2 stream. So uh, don't forget to check them out because the opponent there, Extreme, is going to be up against SMG. And that is going to be a doozy of a match. Extreme won their first game against Talon. If they win their second, they'd be 2-2, two and two, which is actually not that bad. But will they be able to do it twice in a row against another Southeast Asian team? We'll have to wait and see. And we'll see that after the break. See you then. love it you wear it what's your style get your merch at shop.eslgaming.com
asking time Cause I'm already gone So long Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's
wasting time Cause I'm already gone So alone Can you stay the night? Cause you're the thing I want I want I know you're feeling different when you're stressed out But even with no makeup you still stand out Cause no one makes me feel the way you do now Like you do now The way that you move your body You make it look like a hobby Every time that you touch me It's electricity Things we discover Underneath last night's covers Everything came so easy It's electricity on my mind it's finally sinking in your way i know you're feeling different when you're stressed out but even with no makeup you still stand out cause no one makes me feel the way you do now like you do your body you make it look like a hobby every time that you touch me it's electricity things we discover underneath last night's covers everything came so easy it's electricity electricity it's electricity you move your body electricity you move your body it's
Welcome back, ladies and gents. We just had ourselves a 2-0 victory from the Southeast Asian team, taking down a Chinese team. But also, at the same time, the upcoming team just won 2-0 against the number one in the Southeast Asian region. So, we're going to have a very interesting match, Astini, don't we? Yeah, I expect Extreme to bring a lot of trouble to SMG. Definitely a better level than what uh, IG brought uh, it. Hopefully so. But um, stream, yeah, stream gaming now they have two wins. They're not like 0 4 as IG was before the match. The lobby is there. Yeah, and uh, the rest of the teams all looking pretty uh, decent at the moment as well as we can attest. Currently, SMG 3 and 3. It's actually not that bad from the position that they're standing yeah the the biggest surprise is still og on top with the standings but smg yeah they are upper bracket if the the group stage were to finish now but let's be honest this coast has one game less also does extreme gaming right so this extreme gaming is really important this match against uh, xg if they beat XG, they definitely looking uh, to go through the group stage. If they lose here, and it's really dangerous. Of course, the extreme lineup, uh, a pretty scary one uh, to deal with. Kaka and JT, of course, both came from the previous IG roster. Paparazzi been renowned and known for many years. Ghost is a sublime player as well. And de like these are probably I mean, LGD obviously is also a scary team, but you're getting close to like the ultimate powerhouse team in China with this lineup. It's uh, pretty nice to see, even though two of them are technically uh, Malaysian. But yeah, it's a scary one nonetheless. And there we have SMG, of course, were pretty prolific with the SMG roster. We've seen them now uh, for their fourth series. Did we cast any series of them? I think mid one did some stuff. <laughs> uh, that, that's all I remember. But yeah, it's uh, going to be a pretty uh, important match for both these teams. Trying to get out of that bottom region. The uh, two and two. Uh, well, they're currently in the middle of the pack, which is already uh, nice. But considering how the other Chinese and Southeast Asian teams are doing, you know, it's, uh, some teams need to step up in the region to try and get to the next stage because. There are three teams dropping out in either groups, and that could be that could be very problematic for uh, those two regions specifically. Yeah, it still seems like a competitive region because Aster they had a decent showing on the last major, and they placed fourth place in the regional DPC. Also, yeah, they were tied with IG, but IG won the tiebreakers, so it feels like. They can still be competitive, but they struggle to find the meta when it comes to international gameplay. And the teams that were getting the international experience, most had changes with players retiring. So that really hurt uh, the level of Chinese Dota. Also the wave of uh, players that were banned. So China is still struggling to get back. Uh, to the good shape. I still feel like they have good players. Always that I want to see a good mid laner on matchup. I always look for Paparazzi. Always look for that guy. Of course, there's Queen. Absolute god on mid right now. But Paparazzi, he looks so impressive. I feel there are plenty number of games where he solo carries from the mid lane. And the feeling on this meta is that you can have a carry on your off lane. You can have a carry on your mid lane. There's so much resources on the map that you get away with this greedy. 
and I believe XG they can excel with that with Paparazzi being a sort of carry he of course played uh, a lot of uh, as position one right he's back to the mid lane where he uh, he began but I have a lot of hopes on him what he can bring uh, to this match I mean, Let's he is one of the last I'm... ones of China, right? He's one of the last mid lane, Chinese mid lanes. So of course, nothing to say is still really freaking good. Uh, don't get me wrong. But considering Ori's gone, Somnus is gone, like they're they're all disappearing for the scene. And China was always renowned for their mid laners. And now they're kind of in a position where even like Dust and Emo swapping occasionally, they're, the, the mid laners are starting to dwindle in the region. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see a new influx in that regard. Uh, soon enough because um, they're definitely going to need it but extreme yeah you mentioned of course paparazzi very solid ghost i think uh his lone druid has always been one of the scariest heroes to deal with i don't know how good lone druid is in this patch i haven't really seen much of it to be fair but uh it's one of those pocket picks that could always surprise a team yeah uh, i don't think it's that good because i look at gunner he's not playing lone druid is also really good with the hero, so I would assume the hero is not. Gunner not also that plays Enchantress mid, so. <laughs> yeah, but Laundry is like his uh, best pick, I'd say. But yeah, there's some space for the hero, maybe on a 24 slot. The thing is, those fatty aura builders are usually the counters to Laundry. So you don't like to be a Laundry against Tide Hunter. You don't like to be a Laundry against Underlord. And they're already on a good spot on the meta, so you, Underlord's already having an amazing game, and to pick a hero that's countered by him feels a bit bad. By the way, Underlord is banned. First phase First banned. hero, yeah. Ayo is still on the pool. Muerta is still on the pool. Koro still on the pool. We've seen a lot of Koro with Underlord. Uh, maybe we see... Hmm. So, biggest pairings for Koro have been Underlord and Beastmaster. Both are gone. Yeah, there's uh, there's also a couple of uh, interest. Like percentage wise, a lot of heroes are not looking too good uh, currently at the major. There's also Marana's at 30 percent uh, win rate. Uh, the Nyx Assassin twenty five. That one surprises me a lot. Nyx Assassin, uh, you know, it, it feels more like a, a crit hero that he loves to play, and it's uh, very, it can do a lot of work in this patch. They like Pugna on Extreme Gaming, and the Nyx can definitely be a good answer to Pugna, even if they pick Pugna, right? But that Nyx, especially with Darkseer, also really good. Uh, the hero becoming universal did well for Nyx. Nyx was that old hero, uh, like weird hero that is an agility hero that you build and play like a. Uh, okay, here's the Pugna. Good argument for a Nyx. Uh, if they don't go Kanka Mirana. They, they, it, it's <laughs> mid know? one. There's also a Muerta possibility that they could go for. Not too I bad against I would be Porters. more inclined to say they would go the Kanka Mirana here. Well, uh, it wouldn't be too surprising considering they've had pretty moderate success on it and they haven't uh, won as... Uh, all three losses for Team SMG was when mid one played off lane Muerta. Granted, we both agree wasn't really his fault that, <laughs> that they lost those games. But, uh, you know, st statistics are just that. They're just stats that you can possibly use. They're not always telling you the entire story. But yeah, Pugna is a uh, good saving hero in most situations. And uh, can counter a lot of other heroes, but you expected it. And they do deliver. Kunkka Marana on SMG. Yeah, I'd say that three picks are pretty expected. So that's why we were on point with it. I'd say Ember fits a bit better against Kunkka, but I definitely understand going Storm, because you have this hero that is basically your walking fountain. We mentioned the same thing when we see Io. So Pugna Storm, pretty standard combo. We've seen a lot of this. Remember, remember when New Talisman was quite broken? It was when Wave Pack also came in, <laughs> into the game. And then Storm would go like the six nose. Uh, like this Pugna Storm was really common uh, duo. I mean, that was so... that was a patch we don't we don't talk about because that was like buy six <laughs> null talismans, then buy an Ags, 
eat the axe and then go back to six null talismans so yeah that was that was not a patch that uh, i want to relive <laughs> hopefully that one's yeah. in the past i think ig they played this opening and they picked visage on the second phase so when smg played against ig they respect the visage here i wonder if they will assume that the extreme gaming would do the same given they're on the same region same ideas uh the Extreme Gaming previously went for DK Rubik, that explains the Rubik ban. DK, not so sure if they want to ban because they already have the mid laner, so it should be fine here. I would be um, inclined to possibly be a bit careful of JT uh, um, Legion Commander. He's very good on it. Legion Commander. Uh, is pretty scary as well, and it's a good save against the Marana arrow. It's a save, exactly. When you mention it, it already comes to my mind. It's a save, and it's one more hero to empower this storm that uh, has the walking fountain, has one dispel. It's a hero that scales really well, winning the duels, especially on a game that you see more action going on. You have more duels to be won there, and yeah, that's pretty good. Is SMG going to go the same route that we, of course, uh, have seen them previously play the Phoenix? This time, Timbersaw gets banned, but, I mean, honestly, Timbersaw could be a bit scary as well against the Pugna. There can be nastiness coming from the, uh, that shenanigan, but, um, yeah, the Phoenix is still a solid possibility here for SMG. If they get some more control, because that was something that they did lack uh, yesterday against Beast Ghost, where they had like that entire AOE team fight combo, but they had no Mars or really any solid catch behind them. I think they're fine with the CM. I think it's better because Phoenix Storm jumping at you looks a bit scary the way the the fight can go. Extreme. Oh, they banned the Nix like themselves. Like CM, you yeah. The CM you can set up for the arrow. You see, I'm starting to understand this SMG team. The three picks on point. Only takes you a fourth series. <laughs> yeah, like if I actually follow the region, yeah, cool. What can you do against a CM here? There is Disruptor as a four. Five seconds remaining. What else do I see as good force here? There's Dark Willow. Maybe. Gets a bit squishy if you go to Dark Willow. Maybe Disruptor fits better. Uh, Kaka, I mean, it, it might be a little bit greedy, but I always like to see the Dark Willow with this entire team fight combination. It also depends on really what they want to run as an offlane. They like Lion, right? Yeah, Lion is actually the. They added a change now that uh, it, he's actually very strong. Alchemist probably offlane i've seen a couple of offlane elks coming in the problem this time around though is extreme hopefully they read up a little bit on what smg did last game and you're not gonna get alchemist ganked <laughs> twice in the first minute of the game and even if he gets ganked he farms better than the underlord at the very least and it's also a flex hero should pick here so they should pick just the four uh, together with Alk. Uh, this lyle dark willow Sort of hero, disruptor. Three good options. Say. Uh, Phoenix. Hmm. Go for that, it themselves. This one is a bit more surprising because Mirana is pretty decent against Phoenix. You get the extra attack speed on leap. You usually do well against the egg. Yeah, Kunkka, not the best egg here. When you look at Phoenix Alchemist, you definitely think some life stealer jug hero. But then Pugna is really great against them. The other option is going some troll that eventually you're gonna have agonies. Hmm. Yeah, but that's that's a decent approach. You need those high attack speed heroes against Phoenix, and usually Pugna counters them with the Creepify. So it's a, a cool approach. A bit of lack here. of control with the supports might be a problem. I mean, Alchemist has still one of the longest stuns in the game. And Storm is pretty decent as well, but... Uh, I wonder if yeah. they go back to the Muerta. Now that like you need this mixed type of damage. 
I'm a little Which... bit worried that extreme gay like SMG supports can make plays all day long. There's freeze morphling. arrow, freeze arrow, easily done. Of course you call, there's morphling, and they pick up morphling because you know everything that's going on in this patch. Because I'm trying to get on their minds. Like first I'll say what I would do, and then I look at them and how they are drafting. Like against OG, they went the morphling against Phoenix. So yeah. You see, I'm I'm getting side SMG now. Feeling good. Hmm. Yeah, if only Nouns played SMG. Yeah, now you're extreme gaming because you need to pick here. So let's get a bit back from the SMG train. You are banning offlaners. Probably against an alchemist carry. If this, it, mm, the problem is if this Phoenix is also an alchemist carry because it can always still be flexed to uh, off lane. The fight, the aura builder that we see being banned a lot. Yeah, it gets banned a lot. I haven't seen it being picked just yet. How many? What's its pick rate? I've... It I has been they... not picked a single game. It's been s banned six times. Can they play the Kunkka offlane? It sounds... Yeah, mid one can play. Like I, it's mid one. Volker sort of hero. I think mid one can easily play it offlane. I'm trying to think like how to be effective against Pugna, Storm, Phoenix. Those are the heroes you know the roles. Hmm. What else can be effective here? Legion, some dispel and attack speed against Phoenix, but terrible against the Pugna. Well, but the overwhelming Shadow odds is Demon, pretty nice because you weird. can use it during duel. So even if they try to save someone uh, with the Decrapify, you can at least blast them. Yeah. And it's a save against Alchemist, uh, very oh. lengthy stuns. Soulbreaker. There's a Bloodseeker offlane if they want to try. Bloodseeker is amazing against Phoenix and great against Pugna. Not that good against Storm. But okay. They banned the Dollbreaker. Full ban. Now, should they pick a carry or should they pick an offlane? Same. Uh, the carry? I also want to see a Bloodseeker for Dan. <laughs> uh. Can they go... You just always want to see Bloodseeker. <laughs> I always want to see a Bloodseeker. I always want to see OD. Yeah. You always want to see Bloodseeker. It's really good against Morphling. Yeah. I just go... Send like space a Magnus. Is always nice. no, Magnus is... Real, okay. JT Brewing loved his Brewmaster uh, from ages ago. One more isn't your Bloodseeker. What? Silence. One more isn't your Bloodseeker. Yeah, nah, okay. no. Which offlane can think you actually go here? You want to go Bloodseeker. I mean, you could, but it. Mm. Ten seconds remaining. You've got two tanky heroes to deal with. Uh, you could go Life Stealer. And then uh, put the more Night Stalker. To be honest. Night Stalker. Like, to Phoenix is a bit weird, but the Silence. I'm thinking on Silence against Pugna and Brew and Storm. I mean, you can still put the Kunkka off lane with the Marana and then get a different mid laner. Uh, yeah. Voker is still a possibility, so, like, as you mentioned. Bloodseeker is my favorite. I'm fine with Night Stalker, but those are two very weird. It's this one I won't be able to get. I mean, do you really care about his Bruce Blitz? again? Centaur, okay, so a hero that we haven't seen too often uh, in this patch, but still a very strong one regardless. Mid one's going to be playing it, so you're probably going to expect it to be a massive core with Polison going for all the auras. Um, yeah, it's it's a good tool, especially against this extreme lineup. Phoenix Egg gets dropped, you run away with Stampede. Pugna tries to siphon someone empty, you run away with Stampede. Uh, they have very little control except for probably the brewmaster split that they can handle to really hold this morphling down i i like smg's draft here mm. i don't know if they can handle the storm like i see the storm with a pugna buffing him 
and I don't see any direct counter to the storm. I mean, I'm worried for SMG. Like, there's no direct answer to the win condition on the enemy team. True. Which I think is the storm. Like, you can argue that's the alchemist, and they're gonna like nerd the alchemist. It's gonna have a slow game. I see how they counter this Phoenix Brew team fight. Yes. But I don't see how they keep this like storm under control. I don't also I also don't really see how the storm does the damage. No. That's the one like Centaur, Punka, Morphling, Tricor, super tanky. Storm doesn't really do much damage until he gets like you know, level 25, full, nah. full items. Which blade is enough to kill some targets? Yeah, to kill the Crystal Maiden, or maybe the Marana. Even the Marana is tough with the triple leaps. And if you make a mistake against Crystal Maiden, you get frozen in place, arrow lands, you're dead. Kind of underestimating the Storm, but I get her point, yes. I still, I'm, I'm on the Storm train. They need, like, to win the silent so you can leave the Centaur cutting a bit behind the tower, the Morphling alone, and have the Mirana CM playing for every single rune. Because if this storm get access to the power up runes, he should just snowball and snowball and be the 23-0 hero in the game. Maybe I'm overestimating Paparazzi, but let's see. I mean, Storm has a 61% win rate, a 62% win rate, and is the second most big hero in this patch. And he's gonna get first blood, because they're gonna... Uh, yes, he is yeah. gonna get that last hit. Okay, that Here definitely he does help. 22 more kills to go. Zero deaths more to go. You, you know, I'm already right on the number of deaths. Okay, okay. Well, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. I'm curious to see how JT is gonna handle the Brewmaster, because, uh, of course, we saw previously... Uh, His gold. Thanks, God. Brewmaster struggling. It was a bronze. Yeah, but even like oh yeah it's a different this is a completely different play way you play brewmaster than last patch like brewmaster right now is stronger when he's not in his brew split yeah but also like beforehand the early game you should play the same way that is like being annoying because they cannot kill you if they try to kill you, you pop the ult it's really weird that you just like pop the ult and dive enemies just like out farm the, the enemy team with the threaten well, they're currently still in the bottom lane with a lot of magic damage to throw out. Cinder Brew. So with the we don't get blood. any more the interface damage. Uh, damage. The interface message when you deny a ward. We're gonna just deny the ward. Nothing shows. Not sure if he them. I wonder if that's uh, a bug or not. Why TP in with a stun on Ghost? That's some damage. Yeah, they go for different targets. Yeah, mid one, he's got himself two ring of protections as well. Uh, does have a problem against uh, the Pugna's magic damage, but of course Alchemist is just pure physical, so... Having as much armor as possible in the lane should uh, keep him going, most certainly. Yeah, that's the def somehow default build, even if you're not against the Alk, because the hero just lacks armor. You start with zero, zero armor is uh, too bad, so you need to go the two rings. So, which of these three lanes do you think is going to have the most action? I mean, besides the solo kill that Paparazzi is going to get mid, and you're going to be surprised because Kunka should not die. Mm. Let's say top. Oh. Wait, he's still level 2 on Paparazzi. Give the guy a bit more time. This one takes a lot of damage there. EY's got another nether blast, mid one, gonna get taken down, Ghost needs one more right click. It's the same move speed, he should not be able to get it. Uh, doesn't have the mana for a simple concoction either, so he's uh, not in the worst problem, because the creeps were walking underneath the tower anyway. And bottom lane, unless Jidori makes a huge mistake on the Morphling, he should not die. Yeah. But he's not getting that much farm, so JT on a good spot, and also the wave will shove into the Brewmaster Tower, he'll manage to get a few more denies. The pool is blocked, so not much CM can do. The bot lane is really good for the Brew right now. Three lanes going extreme gaming way, which 
kind of expected, but they are doing a bit better than expected. Yeah, the question is, uh, how will they be able to recover here? Even though it's not really that problematic just yet, because no lane kills have come through, and Chidori is getting experience, making him pretty tanky. Mid moon versus Papa needs to be very careful. Actually, he has a salve moon. He won't die. Yeah, Paparazzi might need one of his supports to die to get a uh, bottle refill, though. Paparazzi's having a really good time in terms of last yeah. hits. Falcon Blade about to be delivered. I think I'm worried about the more. Only six last hits. It's really underwhelming. Brewmaster has Bro, a usually... very good attack animation. Speaking yeah. of Brewmaster, JT taking some heavy damage in that bottom lane as well. He has 14 stick charges. Should be fine. There's a grenade on Kaka. Ring of Health as well on the Brewmaster, so we'll just be able to sustain most of it. And how is top going? Mid one's actually looking a lot better against Ghost right now, and now the Alchemist is not getting any farm. What? They go for the CM? To get the kill. Dive. JT pops his wand. Kaka versus Chidori. Last hit should be coming in, and... Well, they're pretty happy with that one on the side of SMG. A bit more farm for Chidori. Yeah. Paparazzi in mid That's... as well. Is he gonna get whipped? They're trying to hit it. Moon misses the whip. Oh. Ooh, that's a painful miss. That could have been uh, a game changer you in the mid lane. Also, they're doing the right thing. They should be mid one top. Guarding down Paparazzi. Is gonna get taken down by DY. Ghost is gonna get stunned though. Crystal Maiden rushing forward. He's got the freeze into another freeze, and Ghost is gonna get yeah. finished off because yeah, yeah. Afu's on point with the rotation. Great job. And I guess a bit of a mistake from DY to kill off mid one before the Alchemist could get his son off. Yeah. And bottom, the Morphling is back to having a game. Lots of trips showing to him. Razi goes for Moon in the mid lane. Follison oh. also connecting. They do have an arrow connected onto Paparazzi. The storm not oh. level up just yet. The attack speed slow. Almost cost them uh, the potential kill there, but it's still going to be a kill secured for Moon. And they're looking pretty comfortable. Top side. They're even going underneath the tower now that the Vanguard is finished on mid one. The lanes are starting to yeah, recover. The right thing. So Morphling can stay alone. So they bring the Mirana mid almost all the time. Because you don't want to allow the storm to oh, ghost. grow in the game. Gets arrow top, center stomp comes in, the alchemist is in struggle city. The second death that already. CM Mirana combo seems uh, pretty reliable. Alchemist will not have TP for 15 seconds when he respawns. Yeah. Six minute rune, unlucky, oh lucky for paparazzi region. Oh, and he's heading up towards top. Could go for a possible zip on pulse, but he still has the leap available. Yeah, I'm a little bit... The only thing that I really am worried about on the uh, extreme draft is the fact that their supports are not really playmakers. He Luckily enough, Storm is going in for mid one. The arrow lands onto Paparazzi. Oh, actually, Centaur stomp. Paparazzi, this could be a painful death, but he still has a regen rune, and he's going to just ever so slightly oh. survive. On the very limit. But still, it's fine. Oh, Moon. Oh, it's the oh, torrent. He cancelled the region. But that's the important Papa thing. Papa should be able to zip out, or will he? Oh, the arrow. Yes, he will. Yeah, but that's really good. Cancelling the region. Centaur does not die. Even getting Leon a kill. Phoenix. A bottle. Morphling gets level six before the brew uses the spells on him. Will he go for the dive? Yeah, he doesn't no. have a way for him. So. Now that you get uh, stats from Adaptive Strike, they tend to just skip waveform. Yeah, like SMG, this Mirana CM, they're doing so much in the map. All lanes look like a disaster till they start rotating the Mirana, getting kills everywhere. Ghost. Now, both side lanes are fine. Okay, the Mirana wasn't ready to throw out an arrow, luckily enough. Otherwise, uh, Ghost could have died again.
Elk is struggling, and he should not be struggling. Especially not with how the laning stage started for him. But there's the freeze. Olson trying to hit an arrow. It does connect. Ghost is going to get blasted. And again, Ghost is down. Three deaths on the safe lane alchemist. And mid one is top of the net worth because mid one is the real carry. The real carry. With four assists. CM tipping mid. The eight minute rune. Probably. No, will not den will deny. Nope. Papa picks it up. Just in time, Paparazzi. Afu drops, top lane, they know there's no Crystal Maiden, so they can get a bit more aggressive. There is a brew split, but there's nothing to be used, because with the Stampede, they have no control. Yeah, and Morphling's just free farming, bottom, farming the wave, farming the jungle creeps. Brew is back, bottom. But Chidori already is level 7, he can head into the jungle easily, and uh, not really care about the lane at this stage. Something that Alchemist can also easily do. Does need his level 6 actually to survive the jungle a little bit more, but there's a USAC coming through towards mid. Ghost mid. ship connects onto Kaka. Phoenix found out. And Moon is looking comfortable right now. He's close to. He's a full level ahead of the paparazzi storm. Yeah. He's almost 9. 9 minutes in. Bounty runes. 2k advantage for SMG. Things looking really great for SMG. Alchemist though, he can actually farm from level 5 now, because you can just max all the Pugna. Trying to, to get the stun, stun in. Comes. Ghost Goes. did just get a very big uh, neutral creep camp stack though, so he just caught up a lot of money. Yeah, because since you have your passive, here comes Paparazzi oh. into mid one. mid one. I don't think mid one survives now. No stampede. Takes a lot of damage like a champ, but eventually will get taken yeah. down because magic damage is still his worst enemy. JT connects from the portal, but here he goes back. <laughs> There's not much happening here. Yeah, so the alchemist, since you have innate passive, you can farm faster now. Because you're going to be definitely with acid spray maxed out. You can always go back to the lane and throw a stun. The hero is just... Better. Shield for Kanka. 900? What? It's half okay. its uh, max HP. Yeah. Whoa, it's nine. <laughs> this guy is unkillable. Yeah. The the new shield is kind of cool. Uh, though I, I do think that the shields in general in Dota are in this patch are a bit overtuned, as we've seen some of those team fights previously in uh, I, I the series. I don't think he should be hitting jungle creeps with it. I think he's just soak up all the damage from the tower and do a lot of damage with his catapult. This shield is so broken on Kanka. Like Kanka DK, those heroes with so much HP. Well, they are pushing in the tier to one tower top currently. Tidori is still not really being harassed. Got himself a morbid mask, so he'll be able to constantly heal up and not worry at all about his opponents. But yeah. the big plus is that Ghost has farm. It's not top net worth, and not really a position he wants to be in, but he hasn't died uh, anymore, and he, once he gets his Radiance, considering how much farm there is on the map, it should still be a pretty okay spot for, ex uh, yeah. for uh, Extreme. I'm still fine for Extreme. Pretty even game, I'd say. Uh, Real Master, he's going for the three Lotuses, so makes even harder to burst him. Hopefully he just want to be this uh, threaten with uh, the ultimate up. That feels like uh, what JT is doing. So the Lotuses do make a lot of sense for this hero. It's already hard to burst the regen of the Great Lotus. It'll be really hard to take this guy down. Mid one has his Crimson Guard finished. So he's uh, got that big damage block. That is going to make it very hard to get any kills for now, because they have a lot of magic damage. Ulti. I guess once the pipe comes in, it's way scarier. But uh, they're going to try and creep kind of towards revealed. mid. Kaka Ulti. has egg, though. Yeah. Arrow. Stun. They want to force that. They're going to kill him. Yeah, if he got the egg off, they might have gone for the aggressive move. The jump from they're still going Misses for the more, room. though. Centaur stomp. Maybe Brill will ulti now. Nah. For the chase. Nah. Just one kill, he's fine. He's doing the thing. He's doing the thing. The not spam my ulti every single time I can. Thank yeah. You. It's not because it's up that I should be pressing. What a cool button.
Let me press it. Mid one being annoying against Ghost. Sacred Relic on the way. Micro in the core here. Make sure it's not gonna die on the way. Yeah, Ghost top net worth. Alchemist farming. Always scary. Don't know, necessarily know how well it would stack up in this fight uh, against his opponents. Because they, he does a lot of AoE damage, but single target's kind of a, a struggle. I guess with his new passive, the corrosive weaponry, it does make it a lot better. So mid one is going to get jumped topside, pops himself the Crimson Guard, but it doesn't help against all that magic damage, which they have tons of. Mid one's going to get blasted. DY is on a killing spree, and it really Bottom. does show that pipe is a necessity. Hey, Bruce Blit. But using to hide the ghost ship combo. So, he's alive. Maybe I was overthinking the Lotus thing because Lotus is available and Brew just ignore it. I feel the teams still don't value enough this Lotus. They are pinging the XP rune on SMG. It's cool that they are playing around this objective. They see JT, they might go for him. They go for him. Here's the combo. Uh, Crystal made an ulti, JT no, uh, no split available, DY is trying to heal him up, but they're just gonna go for the deep dive, Kaka, no egg, no brew split, but Crystal Maiden gets taken out, Chidori with the TP out of there, the stun is gonna chase Ooh, him all over the map, stun. but Moon is the next one, they went a bit deep, tier 1 tower, lots of TPs, and Moon doesn't have a BKB available, this is a big turnaround, extreme, get themselves a double kill, and that's gonna open up the tier 1 tower towards bottom as well. With Ghost now finished with his Radiance, this Alchemist, he's already close to 2k net worth ahead of anyone else. After that yeah, terrible uh, laning stage. And I like, uh, probably we have some SMG fans uh, watching the entire cast. You get the full storyline on the Brewmaster. That we've been repeating over and over, you're this hero that you protect areas. They don't want to go for you, because if they go for you, you turn the team fight. Hero just thanks so much damage. And that's what happened. They want to go for the XP rune. They see the Brewmaster. They're baited to go on him. And everything just turns on extreme gaming way. Yeah, Brewmaster is a pretty tanky hero. That's all he needs to be. A pretty tanky hero. If you almost get the kill on him, he just pops a split. And then he'll tankily run out of there. I guess his ulti is more of a, you know, get out of jail <laughs> free card. Yeah, it's your second life. That's the thing, you have always this A on this with you that you can pop anytime. They're going really deep here. Eat. Kaka going for Moon. The zip comes forward from the storm. Ghost ship gets thrown out. They're so very deep in that bottom area of the map. Yeah, and meet Alchemist cancel the TP from Mirana. So almost another team fight popped up. Or CM gone. Not As you rest. said, maybe Paparazzi just have damage to kill CM. But he can be annoying killing CM over and over. Already six deaths on this hero. That's how he's farming his items, right? So he's a second in net worth. Just uh, getting this easy kill. Yeah, CM, six deaths so far. Not really the sturdiest hero against anything, for that matter. And uh, one also very important thing against uh, essentially almost three strength heroes. I mean, Morph is technically agi but builds like a strength hero is the sunray of the phoenix it's just percentage based damage against super tanky heroes is big value here goes the cm oh, again not again the hand of midas of paparazzi for this time dy arrow lands they onto the dy wait for a minute chidori joins a fight does get hit by the spirit vessel does need to be a little bit careful. Stun comes through from Ghost. Do they have the damage to take him Ghost down? Ultimate. He has a wave for him in a sec, but he's going to get finished off. And Moon now needs to be careful. Has a Ghost Ship to try and get the run buff, but it seems Moon's going to be another one down. Actually, the stun lands onto the Alchemist. Very heavily stunned up. Mid-1 comes walking forward. Can he Mid get the comes. control? Here's the carry. Mid-1 is a bit too late to the fight. You gotta run. And Ghost is healing up in the meantime. Going for it again. Oh, he goes the back. Crystal Maiden. Afu. In trouble, stun onto JT. Paparazzi. Brewmaster, no split this time around, and of course, the carry gets the kill. But in return, mid one is looking to melt at these constant dot damages from extreme. And Ghost is on a killing spree. 
Blink Dagger yeah, done, feels like... Radiance, clo getting close to BKB. XG, they fight like a team. They fight really well, Kai the team fight. A Brill Master used the ultimate to keep alive. Did a lot with his ultimate also. Pays with his life eventually, but they got a lot in exchange here. They didn't pop that, so they gonna be able to keep fighting. Storm's gonna get the 18 minute rune, while Pugna is just sucking him up with <laughs> all the resources. Now he's full. Perfect. Happy Storm. Ace rune. They're ready to fight again. Yeah, Paparazzi, once he gets his BKB, it's gonna be really hard to control him, especially for this Crystal Maiden who's just constantly I pretty much being one shot. Yeah, and he's going drun, so he won't have this glimmer to force anything else. They have vision. Here comes Moon. And Moon Here does have a Moon. BKB and a ghost ship. DY Pug now will get blasted. So they'll find a kill actually in favor of SMG, but will they continue for more? There is a Phoenix Egg still available, splits up in 20 seconds. No BKB. Actually, bottom lane, mid one. Gets caught. They don't dust? have is it dust true? currently, There's but. A sentry. Yeah, they can place one if need be. Mid one's gonna get taken down. He's really struggling on the center of this game. Five deaths on the center. Crystal Maiden's gonna be another target. The arrow flies through, doesn't <laughs> connect. Gold and... gets the Mirana. I don't think he will die. He will die, okay. Uh, yeah, not that much. Yeah, they've lost full control over this game. Chidori's still top net worth of their team, but so far behind Ghost. Yeah, that's the thing with the strategy on SMG. That they, all the three greedy cores, this time they don't really have the three greedy cores, but always one is not on the same page. And the Morphling is just farming, farming. And, and it's a hero that has no timings. It's not like, hey guys, I just got Manta, I can fight. Like, he got Manta and he's still farming. He'll get BKB, and when he gets BKB, he'll feel like, hmm, now I need a butterfly to do damage. Let me farm more. And he gets butterfly, and it's like, oh, I'm oh Moon has jumped. Eh, it still has a BKB in two seconds. <laughs> They're uh, really looking for fights here on the uh, extreme side. You feel how strong they currently are. And there is the uh, the battery, as you said. DY constantly giving the mana to Paparazzi. Zip onto mid one. His shield already gets removed. He's trying to keep Kakate. Center Stampede. Can they get out of there? It's going to be mid one controlled. Don't really think he has a way out. Ghost Ship does not even do that much. The run buff is a nice addition, but they're just being hunted. Chased down. The tier one tower mid is going to be the main target. And yeah, there's they no damage probably to get a tower out. and go back. There's a smoke from SMG. They're gonna have the axe. Probably Brew's dying Dory here. actually turning into the Alchemist. Throwing out the stun. Going for JT. Can they get the kill onto the Brew Mass? He's dropping low way from forward. They finally get the Brew's kill killed off. Paparazzi with a little bit mana left is gonna try and disengage. DY can heal him up if need be to keep him going for as long as possible. But with the freeze, he's knocking not even attempted. Double kill comes out for Moon. And they actually turned that one around pretty nicely, especially I lo love the fact that Morphling decided to go for Alchemist to just get that extra stun. Yeah, Extreme Gaming, they should just bail. They got objective, they got mid. Uh, Brewmaster popped out to be alive. He got X marked, he would die there. Maybe they got cocky because Phoenix still had the egg and thought uh, could maybe save this uh, Brewmaster. But Phoenix just died without using the egg. Then that's where the disaster begins. Maybe just going for the... Oh, the two wisdom runes are there. Wait. Do they keep giving XP if you keep them there? Like a bounty? Uh, uh, no. it... Yes. I guess so. Okay, works the same way as a bounty. So you just need to guard it for the entire game. Yeah, like just protect for 28 minutes. Easy and then you get like five levels. Ooh, protect XP rune. That seems See like the, the stupidest strategy in the game. <laughs> and then the, the enemy steals and you lost Yeah, Miranda the pops in, Viz just walks across the map. Hey, cool. Easy four uh, levels.
added in. Mid one needs that blink dagger. Ghost, what's he going for next? AC. Then afterwards, obviously Scotty's playing against the Morphling. So it's a very big item to be able to get a, pick up. Marana actually Polison is done with his low disorb. That is such a big pickup this game. It's actually insane how good it is against the extreme lineup. Confirmed so much. But now the biggest thing is it's BKB timing on extreme gaming, which means it's Roche timing for them. Storm is gonna get the BKB delivered. They can definitely play for this Roche area. And that's what they're doing. CM already tip is out. I would assume it's a Roche for extreme gaming. Super hard for SMG to contest. Even though Polison and the Morphling are nearby the gate, it's super dangerous to just, oh, they're doing it. Smoking up, but Roche doing it. is not Into the, ward. the fastest death. Will they get there in time? They TP through, arrow comes flying out. It lands on to Ghost, actually. So Roche is taking quite a bit longer than they would like. This could be a very Mid dangerous one. fight. Mid one walking for forward. Is trying to get towards the pit, but the BKBs have been popped because Papa just got Hopefully his BKB Roche. Phoenix Egg behind the Roach pit. The Aegis gets picked up by Ghost, and the stun lands onto the Morphling, but the Egg has been used. Paparazzi on the side, no BKB available on the Storm. He needs to get himself out of there. Got dragged back with the X mark. Ghost in the pit might just take him down. They lose the Storm. Ghost is going to lose his first life. Egg is gone. Chidori doesn't really care about being life drained because he's still a morphling and when all comes through it is looking like smg might take this one in their favor chidori gets life drained again by dy who's keeping the fight the going up. but ghost is going to be targeted by mid one they don't really care about chidori because the morph is not going to die to a pugna the rest of uh, extreme gaming is going to be their targets right now and dy finally dies but a turnaround play and then some coming through from smg it all starts with that arrow that lands Onto Ghost, who was honestly not paying that much attention, and the Phoenix Egg stun didn't even do anything. Because Chidori had his BKB. Yeah, feels like Aura's win team fights. So Centaur has the Crimson Pipe. Real does have the pipe, but no Crimson, no protection against this physical damage. Everything would be uh, relying on the Decrypify from Pugna. Because SMG they win the team fight and all the heroes, they still have resources. That's the cool part of it. Of this long fight going on the SMG way. Extreme gaming, they need to kite a team fight, get a pick off uh, with a storm, and then uh, start a fight when SMG is low on numbers. Because even with Aegis, they lost the fight. Also, that fight was uh, Moon just showed his Orchid during that fight. So that was the, the first reveal. And once the storm had his BKB, used x mark plus orchid equates the storms in trouble papa pops his bkb dodges the center stomp that means bkb is going to be on cooldown and that's a big timing for smg to make a play they still go for it waiting someone to show on the mid wave it's like ghost need more items he needs that assault won't be enough it's like Decent for the team fight, as we were mentioning about Auras, but not enough. And then with the Scotty, they'll be able to fight. Because then you have this region reduction, that's what they need. Yeah, but Scotty is a long way to go. It's an alchemist. I True. Though Morphling is uh, building his own Scotty. And even with the Scotty, like Morphling... You saw how long it took them to even do anything to him. Kaka's gonna get Old jumped. Phoenix. Quick catch comes through. Ghost jumping in onto mid one, the very tanky centaur pops his shields and the centaur can just stampede out of there. In return, Ghost can pop his BKB if he tries to get himself out of range. Is he gonna jump back in, stunned up onto the high ground? But the Brewmaster will just back off. Brew Split's been used, they got nothing out of it. I mean, they jump the centaur, yeah. he pops pipe, Crimson Guard. He's got a ungodly big shield on him. It seems like this Brill Master OT is just a bait. When you use it, expecting to do damage to control heroes is just underwhelming. Every time it's used aggressively, it feels useless. You should just use this as your second life, that you just get away off the map for a while. Uh, they might find a Pugna. They do find a Pugna. Oh, nice Glimmer. 
Oh, nice Razi. two man oh. torrent though. Stun thrown out, but Moon Pops' BKB Papa still had his own BKB. Chidori is going for the map fight against JT. No Brew Master, Bruce Blip, but the healing from the Sunray. JT heals up. A ton in that engagement. Ghost Ship comes flying out. Chidori waveform back. It's going to get stunned up by Ghost, but can, of course, swap towards strength still. Phoenix Ship gets dropped. Can they get rid of the egg in time? And yes, they can. They walk through into the fight. Crystal Maiden with the shard tries to bump out damage. Chidori is full strength, so can't swap any further. Papa needs to be very careful. Being healed yeah, up by Morph BY. Yeah, cannot fight anymore. Staying alive. Another vessel. Can they get the TP out of TP. there? Chidori gets taken down. Moon is going to be another possible target. No, the rest of the team does get out, but... They finally win a good engagement. Mirana dying. Even the Mirana. Paulson was on a seven kill streak. That's a lot of gold for Papa. It is. It was 400 between three heroes. That's a 1.9k gold kill. Look at that. That net worth swap as well. Big fight yeah. there for Extreme. I guess they realized so. The idea on the fight on SMG is that they can survive a lot. While Morphling does damage. But if you focus the Morphling, he needs to go full strength and then he doesn't do the damage. So it's a good approach. Ignore completely the centaur, ignore Kanka, just go on this Morphling. Although Kanka is actually building towards damage with the Blood Torn, maybe if he went Crystallis instead of Assault. Oh, actually, Centaur is gonna be the hero with the damage. He's going Tarask and, and later shard. Tarask the shard's with amazing. the shard. Yeah. Let me see if it's still the same shard. Yeah, it's, this, it's still the same. So you still get like uh, a 7k HP center running in the team fight. Granted, yeah. Phoenix Sunray is always good against it. As we saw in that fight, like he kept that alchemist, the Brewmaster alive completely. That Sunray was huge from Kaka. So in mid, JT, JT the he's gonna get jumped, can he get the split off? Yes indeed, the rest of the team, Center Stampede, they use their spells, but a two-man stun on the side. Moon pops his BKB, and they get themselves out of there. Kaka has another egg that he can drop, he does also has the disarm, but can they kill him? The arrow gets tanked by the void, Panda split. So Kaka is still alive and kicking, Moon's in a world of hurt, Ghost ship flying out to try and give them a run buff. But Chidori even being sent back with the new Void Brew Ling. Chidori BKB usage, waveform back, can he get out of there going for the TP? Mid one tries to make sure the damage Ooh. is not there, but it is. It is there indeed. No Bibex available on either of the SMG cores. Luckily enough, the mid lane is not immediately pushed in. And there is no high ground to be taken just yet, but a very big fight. And now it's actually SMG that's lacking the damage. Are we getting deja vus? Where you try to burst the Brill Master, he barely survives, pop ulti, and they turn the team fight? SMG, they got baited by exactly the same thing they were baited on the last match. But Stop I jumping feel... the offlaners. They're big, they're yeah. tanky, they're scary. XG will not leave them unpunished for that, as IG did. Scotty is gonna be ready on the Alchemist. They are connecting to check maybe a Tormentor there. There's no Tormentor. We need uh, a, some extra marker on the screen just to show when the Tormentors are respawning. Would be a nice addition. SMG, they have vision, they want to fight, but they're the ones being jumped. Here goes There's the CM. Maiden in trouble. Doesn't get instantly blasted with those auras, but it, you know, he's still uh, punching yeah, back at Papa. It was the BKB from Storm, they definitely used a lot. But the thing is like, Bugna just sucks him and he's back to full mana. That's the beauty with the Storm Pugna combo. Also, could grab a, a Wisdom Rune, but with the TP from Storm coming towards yeah. the bottom lane. Paulison. Clever, they protect the, the XP. Yeah. He doesn't even get the chance to pop his Lotus Orb. They quickly get the kill and pop up with another Wisdom Rune, getting himself that experience level 18. Closing in on the uh, scary part of the Storm. He's actually going for a Scythe of Vice on the Storm Spirit instead of uh, like an Axe Rush. Yeah. Do they lack this control? Maybe yes. Yeah. They're low on stuns on both supports. There's only the Ag. Makes some sense. 
It's it's Look. sad to see a hero TPing in your face and there's nothing you can Dormitor do. Dormitor being That's... taken. Yeah. And it's gonna go to the Mirana. Yeah. Yay, you get an extra leap and also other stuff, but yay. Yeah, the center one would have been way better. And in theory, CM already has, so the lowest net worth has would have gone to center. No, well, Roche has respawned, and it is in I the bottom lane. I think this center shard, if it hasn't been reworked on numbers, which I think it... Okay, it's actually rescaled from 20, 26. It's actually better. No, no, no. no. no it's the same thing. The shard is the same thing, sorry. Yeah, I thought it's so. too strong to big Nart. Yeah, but Actually, now that when you have Taras. Yeah, he has his heart now to be delivered. Bottom, it's gonna be the Tormentor taken down. Storm Spirit gets a free shard. That's not too bad. That's a cool one. Bugna has its own, Phoenix has its own, Real Master has it. So it was either Alchemist or oh. Storm. Yeah. And. Okay, no, he went for Ags on Paparazzi instead of the Scythe of Ice. I guess that's better control. Especially if you've got Phoenix Egg on your side and uh, Unstable Concoction, which is an AoE stun. Yeah. And another Roche, uh, Roche you... attempt, possibly, soon it's by a... Extreme. It's a tool to guarantee the Ags popped. Let's see, Alchemist Roche. is going for the Abyssal yeah. Blade next, some more control. The Pugna is also the Glimmer plus Holy Locket, so it's a very nasty hero to deal with. They kind of have to dive these supports every time, but even Kaka, he's pretty tanky. He's got the Yules, he's got the Heaven's Halberd. This Phoenix just survives long enough to be able to get his egg off. Yeah, looking super scary for SMG. All items online on Extreme Gaming. Smoke against Smoke. This time, not in the Roche pit, but with Aegis for Extreme Gaming. You need to find a good target, which is not Ghost, because he's got mm. that Aegis. And the rest yeah. of the team. I mean, the supports if they walk out of position, but uh, Extreme Gaming have keep kept those two uh, very far back, nearly all these fights. Run for a storm, almost 20. Jidori, he's got his Scotty. That's actually a very big pickup against the, the insane amounts of healing that Extreme have. Oh, it was after the Konka. Moon on the run. There is no Basher just yet. So Moon will get the TP away. JT Pump faking his very useless alt. <laughs> Refresher on Brill Master. To get it twice? Okay. Basically, it's your old agonies, right? <laughs> oh, Moon. I know he does not have the uh, BKB available. Uh, Alchemist, gonna stun himself. He doesn't care. Yeah, they're just gonna go for the push. Brew split is pretty good at pushing as well. Mid one. Doesn't go for the shot, actually. He wants to get the Shivas, which is also a nice tool. An extra healing reduction. The Bruling he needs to be shards, a bit careful. So no, nah, he can cancel it. I know, but you can still also get bursted in half a second. Nice two-man catch by Paparazzi on the side. They didn't expect that one to come through. They lose the Crystal Maiden. Does have a buyback available. They dive deep. Phoenix Egg gets dropped. Can they get out of there? They still have the Stampede. If they want to use it, they finally decide to back off. Moon is not going to be so lucky, though. Doesn't have the BKB yet. Nice two a drag coming in. And the Yules to control up Chidori, but Ghost first life. Is it going to be taken down? Shidori is going to wait for him back. He's kind of out of mana at the moment. And with the moon buyback, Malirax gained. Brood split the second time has been used. Phoenix had on cooldown. They're just going to back off. Mana. They're actually going to go back in. Moon gets dragged. Ghost actually gets stunned in the process. A pretty lengthy stun. But DY heals. Goes back to full. Has BKB moon BKB usage. Ghost can he get taken down by Chidori. Finally, the Morphling starts to pump out damage. And Extreme are running out of cooldowns, but Paparazzi, the three-man catch. Ghost is still not dead just yet, and he has an Aegis regardless. Ghost Ship comes flying out, is just keeping them at bay. But this 
Elk does not die. The Pugna save Goes is back. real. Chidori gets jumped. Now Chidori, waveform is available, but he's controlled. No buy become the morph. And that looks like it might just be it. The sustain on extreme is... Well, it's extreme. It's extreme. Yeah, I knew you were going for that one. Extreme doesn't have the cooldowns, but it's so fine without the morphling. X is gonna be back in 40 seconds. Split also in 50. So they definitely can claim this lane of Rex and also bottom. And if SMG oh, wants to fight, again, they're just gonna lose. Again, the two man by Paparazzi, two man stun from Ghost, and that's the control needed. And there is a message that I'm kind of expecting. <laughs> Nah, the, the G's? Yeah, sort of, kind of. I guess they want to hold out for one more attempt, but it's definitely going to be Megas. Yeah, I don't see the hope here. Maybe the Fountain dive. That uh, Morphling, even with the healing reduction, just doesn't have the damage to get rid of the nasty Pug. Honestly, DY on that Pugna single-handedly saved them so many fights. Kaka yeah. as well on the we Phoenix. Can... Like, the supports are doing so much. We can understand why it's a first pick hero for Extreme Gaming. Didn't expect it to be this powerful. Not gonna lie. I was a little bit afraid of their playmaking potential, but Paparazzi has been stepping up in that regard massively on the Storm. Arrow lands onto Ghost. But about well, 25 seconds until his ages expires. Yeah, Paparazzi is waiting for the big jump. His smoke. They can do the objective gaming, but I feel like they want to do the jump, so... Ah, here they go. Back. There's smoke for a fake back or no? Just discipline. Magas are coming. You want to wait for this extra wave that they need to deal with. That's the discipline move to do. Yeah, and of course, don't want to lose the ages there for nothing. Abyssal Blade to be delivered onto Ghost. So he's uh, now all of a sudden way scarier to deal with for Chidori. Speed rune stolen. Now the mega creeps arriving. They were hoping that Extreme go for the uh, Tormentor. <laughs> yeah, Kaka is microing his career. Not so sure it's going for the vise still far away oh kaka polison sorry yeah kaka's uh, just chilling shivas is now done on the phoenix as well he's fairly farmed moon has fallen off it's a kunka it kind of does that in the later stages anyway JT not the best target to go for especially because he's got himself an A on disc yeah has the double Sip prime in onto Chidori and they get him back towards the fountain he's actually gonna be able to get himself back but the ancient is under siege and able to get taken down they're gonna charge for it Brumas is just still chilling behind and this is Open actually a dive on Takako who still has Phoenix Egg available. Okay. Crystal Maiden is dead. Phoenix Egg gets dropped with the Sunray coming through. Can they even kill off the Phoenix Egg in time? He's trying to go for a Chidori, but he's gonna get stunned instead. Ghost ship thrown out. They're not getting a single kill. They're barely doing any damage. And the G to the G has been called. It is going to be extreme gaming. The number one of China to take game number one against SMG. And it was a little bit of a roller coaster because it could go either way at a certain point. Yeah, I really like the way Stream Gaming played. They brought the Brewmaster to a better level, always baiting the team fights around him. Paparazzi with the storm, you had a few doubts on the hero. Feels like the hero is super strong, especially when paired up with the Pugna. Pugna, I'd say, is the biggest surprise on how effective the hero is. I would assume. That SMG wants to ban the hero for the next match. That would be the hero that they build the draft around. But yeah, everyone from Extreme Gaming on point. SMG, they didn't play that bad, to be honest. It's just IG, they had a good idea on the draft and they executed the way it should be executed. I couldn't see many hopes for this SMG draft where 
Your Morphling is just farming, 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 and it's never enough to take a team fight. It's just not enough good heroes on our draft. Centaur looks very underwhelming, to be honest. Uh, also, yeah. yeah. Centaur Kanka against Phoenix. We got all this good. HP against percentile damage HP. It was bad. It was a it was a pretty good Phoenix. Honestly, uh, Extreme supports both Kaka and Ghost look really good. There. Uh, sorry, uh, Dy and Kaka look really good. The Pugna was actually kind of insane, and I would say if you play against them, I would ban it most definitely in the next game. Um, but yeah, Mid One wasn't playing his. You know, I'm a third core. I'm a get in your face, uh, dominate the game kind of hero. Maybe in the second draft of this this series, we'll see you there. After the break, see you then. You love it, you wear it. What's your style? Get your merch at shop.esogaming.com.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. We're getting ourselves ready for game number two. But Astini, what went wrong in game number one for SMG? Draft. Street That's Gaming it. had an idea. They come with uh, this first pick where you just uh, show your idea, you bring it to the table. And SMG feels like, oh, we're a second pick. We need to counter the idea they're bringing in. And they counter really poorly with a less big centaur. It's so underwhelming. Oh, I have Stumpy to run out of the egg. What's your strategy? You're running from an egg? Whoa, nice last pick. They need a better draft because they are improving as a team during this competition. But draft wise, they need to be more on point to have a playable game. I feel like they would lose the game every time. Even when they win that Roche fight, there's not much they can get in the map from it. Oh, the Brill Master Ban. Oh, okay. We're still on the. We'll, we'll see, we'll see that sorry soon to enough. Spoil. But he, I'm he sorry to spoil. The Brill Too excited. Master Ban. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. It, yeah. That, I mean, it makes sense. JT played it really well. Um, honestly, barely did anything wrong. Uses ulti pretty much as distractions most of the time, uh, as well. I forced the them to jump on him. That's the most important. Look at the the Coro also. But look and at Star what's not also. been banned right now. Ench not been banned. Shen not been banned. So extreme. Are they going to go for the uh, Chen against the Ench? I don't know. Io Storm sounds so strong from their playstyle. They can be baited in going Chen. Maybe they can go Chen and Storm. Ten seconds remaining. But yeah, I don't think they should get baited into this. Oh, I'm second pick and I want to answer to what I see. Just do the strategy. Hmm. Maybe if they don't value the IO so much, they can go some CM to deal with Encounter Script and go the Storm. But I, I wouldn't change the Storm, to be honest. Uh, the IO Storm can work, CM Storm, Chen yeah. Storm. Paparazzi looked really comfortable on it. It is also uh, still second most picked hero in the major, and it's 59% win rate, which is very high uh, comparatively. Muerta still on 18%. No one has actually picked up Muerta anymore um, the last couple of games, which is uh, rather surprising. They're just letting it go, but Extreme, they're going to go Crystal Maiden, which obviously is good against Hench, and uber lord the big bad bully that was left in the pool and also a jt hero yeah while you're, you're making the point maybe you hear me whispering there's an under because <laughs> i see they go the cm paths like i want to counter this encantress and then there's still under lord and there's the full counter you can uh, do against uh, the encantress so uh, just answering to what they see that SMG is bringing to the table. Mm. Okay ish approach. I wonder if they lost the Fade on Kanka. Oh. Stark looked really good against the Underlord. It did help uh, that he got like the taking. freest lane ever <laughs> with the Underlord dying twice in the first minute. Yeah. Don't think that's going to happen Probably. this time. I, I hope for them at least not on the extreme side. Yeah, they lack the setup for a Mirana arrow, so they cannot go the Mirana here. They can abuse the slow from Encantress and maybe go a Rubik hero if it's not banned. Like, if Extreme Gaming doesn't ban Rubik, I'm the toaster. And then I might as well send my CV. Okay, yeah, definitely. I'm not the toaster because you pick Underlord, you must ban Rubik. <laughs> you don't want to give Firestorm to the enemy team. Rubik with Firestorm is just a... Uh, Sort of a free win to the enemy team, so it's a decent approach. I wonder what else can they ban? Your boy Bloodseeker's gone. Yeah, you have Zark, you ban Seeker. Sometimes you ban Faceless Void. Yeah, on SMG, probably they need to. Ban it's weird, this Naga ban. To be honest, you need to ban Lash. That Ghost plays a lot of Naga, and I think that's the main reason why. Hmm, I see. 
And Lesh, has Lesh actually been that successful? Well, the games that we've seen, Lesh hasn't been that successful, but that has other factors. Um, yeah, it's been okay, I guess. So far, currently, statistically speaking, PL actually has uh, still a 71% win rate, which is high considering. Didn't we see it lose twice? Wait, which hero? PL? We definitely saw yeah, it. we've seen, but. Here is still really good. I think we've seen it are like the only ones that have seen the two losses of PL. Yeah, we've seen <laughs> the weak teams trying the good strats. Talking about good strats, monkey banned. Hmm. It's, it's weird. Because they already have a Slark. Are they worried about monkey mid? Depends on what or mid lane they want to support. No, that, that's it's, not going to happen. Is Ark support not gonna happen? No. I've seen Saudi's age already pull that off. Uh, we all banned, so... Yeah, but Chidori's not gonna let go of that era. He likes it too much. Yeah. Probably you won their position 4 here as Extreme Gaming. I feel it's really great for Dark Willow. Dark Willow, because we have the AoE against Lark. I also see an argument for Lion, which is their comfort. And you don't show much, right? You go your position four here. Okay. Haven't seen that one. Here, and you show a lot. Because, oh, Puck's banned. That's really clever. I'd say because Puck is in the pool. And, but no, Puck is banned. Bloodseeker's banned. So the two biggest counters of Pangolier are out of the game. There is still a Queen of Pain sort of hero, Sky. You definitely want to counter this hero. Oh, and the OD you love is so good against Pangolier. If SMG plays OD, that's the OD game you're going to see. I, I oh. really hope so, but I don't think it's going to happen. Is she going to check? Oh, World Devourer has not been picked a single time during the Major. Yeah. Meepo well, neither, Husker not... neither, Arc Warden hasn't been picked. CK also hasn't been picked. Tide hasn't been picked. Axe hasn't been picked. There's some surprising heroes that haven't been picked or banned. Maybe Phoenix was working well for them. Their uh, Pangolier doesn't hit Ag. Underlord doesn't hit Ag. Spectre's not even been contested. Huh. Which is what else? interesting. Some Kotto combos. Yeah, so open here for SMG. I think the Phoenix is always a nice pick, especially from what we saw last game. SMG, they kind of also have to make a choice because they could go aggressive, but Underlord's going to counter that pretty heavily. So maybe not go for like the early game kind of Another overwhelm. Another silence hero, Void Spirit, that I just like uh, reminded of. It's actually a hero now. Oh, Disruptor. That's good. And DP. Here comes the silences. Like the two... Uh, so there's a support of silence, a disruptor with the OT. DP has a silence. That's the approach you want uh, against Pangolier because if he press his spells into you, you cannot take the team fight. You want to see him and burst him. And without the silence, he's just going to kite you. And eventually have the shard, which is his own BKB somehow. The cheaper BKB, of course, not a real BKB. Also, because BKB now is not BKB anymore, it's just this half. <laughs> half damage uh, block I mean at uh, least make sure that you don't get stunned slash silence yeah. but so the silence is the way to do with a pangolier he does not want to buy BKB you kind of force him into this greaves or lotus orb build pretty good approach uh, from SMG they also set a, a really good tempo in the game Coddle Underlord is, is a nice uh, mat grouping though yeah DP is not that good against Underlord anymore because you don't have the percentile HP more on the Siphon. Still decent. They go to Kotto, so is the hero to actually empower this Pangolier uh, as they did on the first game where they had a Pugna empowering. Maybe empower is the bad word because you have Magnus that's the actual empower, but like bringing steroids to your mid lane hero. It was Pugna with a Storm, now it's Kotto with a Pangolier. So Extreme Gaming, they keep somehow the same approach. Uh, they just lack the last big carry. Maybe Faceless Void is not a, a good spot on the meta because the hero is being ignored, even though they do have this Lark. It's, and SMG, it's a pretty good 
it's a really good faces void game though for them considering they have underlord crystal maiden with like tons of damage coddle as well yeah smg lacks hmm. they need a position three or a melee laner hey spectre right. bad they... that was actually they... uh, spectre was one of the heroes that There's was still on rider still in the pool which would be really strong here it's really strong against the Underlord. Like, you're gonna win the lane against Pangolier, and you can gank the Underlord with a bat. There's they do no have last pick on, on Extreme, so they can... I mean, obviously the Pangolier will possibly struggle, but you can always get a yeah, but... safe laner that doesn't really care about the bat. Which ones are still yeah, left? Yeah, Void again. Yeah. Because they have this arc. Mm. What else can they do with this DP? I really like the OD still. It's just too crazy. I, I wouldn't expect like the first OD pick in the tournament to come from SMG. But come if on, there's an it. OD game, if there's an OD game, it's here. If you're not getting your OD here, you're not getting OD overall. Ten seconds remaining. They're not going to give it to us. I know <laughs> it, but I hope so that it's going to happen. Honestly, you know what I want to see on extreme, depending on what SMG, of course, pick as their mid laner. Meepo is always a fun, fun hero that springs to mind. Can yes, you dodge? I think you can dodge Glimpse with Dig. Muerta oh, the Muerta from Hal. Through, so DP mid, or are they going to make this uh, Muerta uh, for Moon instead? Oh, yeah, of course, Alchemist. He's uh, the Alchemist. That Ooh. one was still left. We saw him last game. It's a Muerta 3. So Moon mid, DP versus the Pangolier. Okay, uh, interesting draft. A Ghost had a pretty struggling early game last time. Question is, will Paparazzi be able to... His ghost did, of course, get better. And after the laning stage, he got stupidly fat. But it felt like a lot of uh, the gameplay came down to Paparazzi on the storm. Is he going to be able to do the same amount of work on the Pangolier? They addressed the Pangolier. That's what I like now. Because I mentioned on the other draft, there was storm. They ignored there was a storm and didn't answer the storm. Here they see a Pangolier. You think I need silence, and they pick a double silence against uh, the Pangolier. So it's sure. definitely address the Paparazzi hero. Marta. I don't feel like uh, Alchemist is that strong in this game. I don't feel it's, uh, it's the best matchup against Lark. I can definitely see SMG going toe to toe against XG on this game. They will have a game. The question is, will they throw the game? Which is, they still have some trouble closing games using Aegis and so on. But this looks way more playable for SMG than the game one was. It, it looks like a decent draft. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what they can uh, bring this time around. Uh, curious on the Slark as well uh, of Chidori. Because uh, it, when we saw him previously, he had the freest of games. So then it's easy to play the Slark. And honestly, in that game, they also just had uh, mid one on the Timbersaw going ham. This time, they have some backup, some extra damage. Muerta is really good in this patch if he can get the damage out. And I do think, like, Paparazzi, there's a lot on his shoulders. He needs to control mid one's Muerta nearly the entire time. Because otherwise, you're going to have the Pierce to fail. Smackdown on all the other heroes and like Kado gets three shot, Crystal Maiden gets three shot. The Alchemist and Underlord not so much, but they can definitely die to a late game Muerta. Yeah. This again seems like a decent Muerta game. I'm just afraid that maybe the team doesn't get on the same page when they have mid one not joining the early fights. Well, and when he plays Timber, he's he able doesn't to even join. join the mid-game fight, so... Yeah, but, yeah. Let's see, if they are on the same page, SMG, they definitely have a shot here. If, if those are two equal teams, I'll definitely give a 80-20 for the SMG draft here. Doesn't seem like the best Alchemist game. Seems like a bad Pangolier game. Not the best Underlord game, although this hero is always strong in this meta. Underlords, uh, what is the beast? SMG, hero. like they have some sort of snowball when you have Encantress, uh, you want to win your lane, you have DP, you want to take early objectives, and they feel to struggle in setting pace on the game. 
they usually dive, they do some crazy thing, like, let's say they will force a fight while DP doesn't have EXO and give away the lead, some weird things that still happen. Maybe that's the game that they <laughs> get the discipline. Bottom lane, stream, looking for a possible first blood. They have the blinding light to push him back. And there's gonna be a pushback into the freeze, into the stun, and into a possibly first blood. He's trying to heal up with the wisps. It's not gonna be enough, and DY gets first blood. And it's already icing over. So, you have Encantress. This hero supposed to snowball. Already gives away first blood. Also, I don't think you want to have the healing because now all your Harass power in the lane is gone. Yeah. She took to survive. The a plus bad. is, of course, that you do have sustain to be able to constantly right-click harass. Like mid one's getting damage, you just heal him up and he can continue right-clicking the uh, CM. It's not the worst. Honestly, none Top. of the spells of Ench are bad. Pop Slark's level 2, he might go for aggression. I would keep an oh, eye there. Yeah. They have a glimpse in 3 seconds, so JT looking to get taken down. Glimpse back, taken down, kill to the Disruptor. Close to killing off the Coddle, but should just barely die. survive with the last tick coming through. Honestly, it's that the creeps are there and Bottom. he might get some experience, otherwise might need to go yes. back. Bottom lane, Polison dies again on the Enchantress. And CM wants to die. Yeah, definitely wants to die. Use it all the resources. You wanna die and bring a salve to your alchemist. Even though, yeah, salves are kind of nerfed, he'll drop his own. That's what I expect. Okay, he drops tangles. Mm. That's it. There are some no salve. Yeah. I would bring a salve to myself. I think this boots tangle is a bit greedy. But that's ghost. He knows what he's doing. I would assume. Well, he did die three times during the laning stage in the last game, so... Not yeah, I'm just trying not to be toxic and not <laughs> pretend that I know more than him. But not honestly, it. it's a bad decision. Just get a f, f solved and be <laughs> full and go back on aggression because your CM is also full. Don't uh, feed away kills. Uh, the Enchantress still had to walk to lane, so honestly, mid one couldn't solo kill him anyway. I, I understand the mentality, I guess. Wallaceon now level 2, has en enchant with the slow, might be able to get a kill on DY. Ghost. Missing the mark there with the uh, calling, but he does have a dead shot, needs to help so right now. Paulson trying to heal him up with the wisps, and it is going to still be the kill on to mid one. DY and Ghost looking a lot better in game number 2 than game number 1, at least laning stage wise. DY is still alive, there's the Lotus, but Paulson is having it. Yeah, this Muerta hero not looking so great for SMG. It's still early game days. The hero does pop off in the mid game, uh, late game yeah. most of the time. Top side, push back onto the drop, taking a lot of damage, but they don't have enough control. Chidori misses, misses the, the bounce. bounce, and that will mean no uh, continuation attempt onto Kaka, but at least he'll get himself the Lotus. Yeah, and JT, he doesn't have to jungle at level 1. That's a win for Underlord against Stark. <laughs> <laughs> if that is, like, the, the oh, green you need to achieve, I that would be him. terrible. Oh, no, JT. Oh, but the push Zark's gonna from die. Kaka. Will him? Oh. Yep, yeah. blast from Kaka coming through. Blinding light, uh, laning stage, pretty strong. Pretty strong. Especially against a hero like Slark, who likes to be on top of you. DUI, bottom lane, takes some damage. Mid one, getting controlled up by Ghost. And Pullison has to use those Wisps every single time to heal up his ally. Doesn't really keep his allies alive most of the time. That bottom lane is so scary. So, the Alchemist, he does have a bunch of hero kills. But not the mo oh, assists, at least. But he doesn't have the many most... Creep kills right now because he's being distracted with all this constant fighting. Yeah, bottom they go for a ghost. Early survives. Needs more regen. But he's getting his face boost delivered. Oh, There's top a side. JT gets pounced underneath the tower. Chidori gets the kill. Oh, that's bad. You feel like buying back here. Definitely you won't. 
See the waves creeps. under your tower. Naka, yeah. Ooh, almost killed off Chidori there. Ghost gets stunned up, actually. Oh, dodges the silence from the calling. This is the silence also gives a slow and then you could get feared back in. Oh, just uh, managing to stay alive. Now he buys the salve. That's good. The hill troll priest as well picked up by Polison. So if the uh, Nature's attendants aren't going to heal his allies, he'll just get extra creeps to do the job. Yeah, but he should be moving mid. It's going to be the six minute room. We should definitely see action by the mid lane. Disruptor is there. Paparazzi probably just gonna play safe. He's almost level 6. Exorcism oh, being used. There. Glimpse. Gets thrown out. Moon, do they have the damage to kill him off? Yes, they do. He doesn't actually have any mana for a swashbuckle out of there. Haste room topside as well to refill. Actually, Moon doesn't have a bottle. Never mind to refill. Nothing. Uh, catapult dies. He goes to the Underlord. Oh, and could be a big kill. Uh, JT wouldn't like to die in this situation. Kaka's going to be the first target. Chidori going to focus his attention to JT because with that haste, Moon is right on JT's keister in a second. But JT with the brown boots is pretty fast for an underlord. Yeah. First exo used. Two kills. Haste rune. Look at Moon's network. Oh my lord. Yeah, Bangalore, uh was without a TP. Disruptor TPing bottom. Moon's gonna steal the go XP rune. Mid one. Go for mid one. Yeah, it should still be fine. Actually, Gaga is the one in trouble. Gets blasted on the side. Ghost as well. Does have an unstable concoction. Glimpse is available. And they can use it if they want on Ghost. But in comes, oh, Papa. comes Paparazzi. And with the Rolling Thunder, he's going to try and go for mid one to bounce. It's going to connect. And that is a Muerta in a world of hurts. Ghost. Actually, Papa's gonna get the second kill. Looking for oh, the third. Oh, he goes for Disruptor. But the Glimpse will keep him at bay. Nonetheless, the other mid laner goes for rotation. Also gets a double kill. Yeah, Paparazzi is really good on Pangolier. He was being really nerded down when he doesn't get to reach the level 6. He dies without a TP, doesn't get the rune. But still, he makes a very powerful rotation. And Ghost is already starting to farm up some uh, creep camps. Uh, his team is in the meantime stacking Ancients, which is very huge for uh, an Alchemist. Uh, well, the, the double camp there. Yeah, I wonder if Underlord's getting some of those. Because Underlord has trouble farming against Slark. And He's the same deck with us, Shidori, so... Uh, I'd sacrifice him. You get some items uh, on Underlord that are gonna create this space oh, so he's gonna do farms. it right Yeah, now. that's what they're doing. Yeah, you see? Same page with this extreme guys. I like their style. Oh, let's Bottom, see. They the go UI. for the CM. And they got the kill. Mid one tries to push him back into the silence. He honestly doesn't hit any of these, uh, the callings. He just tries to use it like a Mars Arena. But uh, it's going to be enough to get the Crystal Maiden kill. Moon's going max, so it's going to be more of a supportive Death Prophet build. While Ghost is trying to farm, stack and farm. But oh, he spotted so out. He does. And they have the glimpse as well in case he tries to disengage. They cannot use early or he will TP. Well, they should be able to get the glimpse going right now. However, they're not ready for that one. The fear comes out. Uh, Uber TP as well. Ghost is healing thanks to the chemical rage. He's actually not going to die. A bit of a miscommunication there on the side of SMG because they weren't ready for the glimpse Bro. to come through. Moon might Moon's kill off JT it. here. Good dodge there from Moon, but he needs some extra healing and doesn't have any spirit. So Exo. Exo is about to Three get seconds. him back. He gets the mech in time. Ghost is going to get stunned though. And they want to go back in. Moon and mid one onto Ghost inside the Roche pit. Oh, and there's no Roche to deny you. <laughs> He's on the other side of the map, my friend. And they'll find finally the Alk. Honestly, it's surprising that Ghost has just had his first death, considering how many close brushes to death he's had this game. A bit greedy, right? Because he could be alive. He gets alive and it's like, I'm going to turn this team fight into this DP that popped the EXO. They could have kind of the, the EXO, but I understand they got confident with him surviving. How can this feel so strong with this ultimate? There's not enough damage in the game to kill him. Under Actually, ultimate. bottom. 
So he wants to stay at least in the area. Get some farm going. Well, uh, top side, Chidori is building up the Echo Saber. Let's see, Pango. Diffusal Blade's almost done. Pangolier with Diffusal is still one of the most insane items. It's so freaking good. Like, it's cater made for him. Yeah. They luckily removed the broken items for Pangolier on the neutral ones, at least that. <laughs> yeah, no, that one would be if you can choose between the five choices and you get the item you want every single time. Yeah, no. That's, uh, that's not fun. Moon's going uh, for the pipe next. So, so, yeah, they're going to have a lot of sustain on the side. Honestly, they don't have that much damage on the side of uh, Extreme this game. Mm. Oh. Underestimate what Underlord can do. Yeah, no, Underlord, I would say, but yeah. I'm a little bit worried for the Alchemist. Alchemist. Yeah, he needs time. We got all night. He needs this long team fight, but I feel like the team can offer the long team fight, so he deals damage with the Radiance by just being alive. Underlord can be so tanky with the Aras. And Pangolier is gonna burn everyone's mana. They want the long fight. On the Auto's other hand, still level five. I would assume SMG also want the long fight with the Slark. Because eventually he's gonna be able to munch up on all those stats. So, Ghost is going to get charged at in the bottom lane again. There's again the glimpse. This time they should not make that mistake. He's going to get stunned up by his own unsafe concoction thanks to the silence. Surrounded, not even using the static storm there. But the rest of the team was heading towards bottom. Nonetheless, uh, Ghost, that's his second death this game. Yeah, what feels bad for Extreme Gaming is that both supports are still level 5. Auto got 6 now. TM still 5. So Paparazzi, he can get kills, but he needs a partner to go with him. And having your supports level 5 at 12 minutes, just bad. Hmm. Yeah, the Paparazzi Pango should be able to get a good fight going, but they're not giving him an angle. Polison is just farming up the jungle. Because he, he kind of does what he like. He's really good at farming as a Pulse 4. We've seen it on his Coddle, we've seen it on his Mirana. He always tends to find farm across the map. JT's going five. I think it's how much damage is actually magical from SMG side. Murta, yes, but the hero not really online. Oh, he move beat. bottom. Can he get out of there? He could try and go for the TP. Other Lord joins. But. Moon's just gonna get blasted. Doesn't even attempt to the use hit. the Twin Gate. You know what's the best thing about Extreme? Even though the Alchemist has had quite a disastrous time, they have made him so many stacks the entire time. They they always find places to stack. The Ancients are pretty heavily stacked that he can clear up and catch up pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that's the reason why the supports are on their level, right? They were always going to the jungle to make that stack. Papa, Razi, on for Paula. All of a sudden, only level one wisps. Trying to get himself out of there, but there's no running away from the Papa. Papa Razi, Pangolier is really scary. This guy and Queen on Pangolier, no matter the matchup, they always shine. Interesting thing is the tier 1 tower mid is still up with 14 minutes against a DP and Encantress, heroes that can easily take this tower. I wonder if SMG doesn't value that much the tower on this new patch, or just like uh, being distracted by this alchemist farming everywhere. Alchemist just got the Radiance, it's on the way. It's not the fastest timing, but it's still plenty. Disruptor was smoked, placed a ward. I thought he would go for the XP rune. Still. No, the stack yeah. failed, unfortunately for them, but uh, they're helping out in uh, making sure Ghost does not take too much damage from the ancient stack. And 
It's a pretty decently farmed alchemist, but Chidori's not that far behind. This Slark's got his Echo Saber and Diffusal Blade done. This Slark is ready to go for a fight they as well. They wanna get a kill on this Underlord. Is that the right target though? Yeah, backup See. is pretty far away. He's already out of mana. But he's got that big juicy shield pipe. There's a glimpse available. The rest of the team is finally rushing through. And Chidori, oh my lord. He's out of mana. Chidori Slark, and he gets himself out of there. They push back into the root. The disruptor needs to just try and disengage. Bolson already went for the TP. And will at least get himself towards the bottom lane. But that is uh that's a nice turnaround. This Underlord. Ah, ju stop jumping off laners this batch. It yeah. just doesn't work. I Except hope when they learn their lesson by now. Yeah, if that's the tanky aura builder offlaner, don't go on him. I've seen the play, like they're going for it. I'm like, hmm, I doubt this guy's gonna die here. Maybe with Exo, you could kill him. But, yeah. yeah. The moon's on the other side of the map. And he's building into Aura, so all the damage is pretty much going to come down from the Slark and the Muerta, which is not too surprising, because that's kind of how you want to play this. Mid one, he's done with the Dragonlands, Mask of Madness, going for the Hurricane. But he still you know, needs that one extra item. Hopefully it's not going to be the same as yesterday, where it always feels like he's going to need that one extra item. That's the thing about SMG, they had a decent draft, but they don't really play around the draft. So the hero that can kill the Underlord is DP, but they are ganking Underlord without DP. And DP is just sitting there with Exo up with two Aura items and not using Exo anywhere, just farming. It's, it's hard to blame the player, it's just the play style. You don't have a strategy, you just... See heroes, you randomly run at heroes and you hope everything works. Because you're definitely like mechanically skilled. All the players there are great players. But you cannot rely on talent uh, to, to just win things. Yeah, currently net worth wise they're still pretty close. Which is nice considering you're playing against Alchemist. Though uh, Ghost almost has his BKB. Against BKB they don't really... Do I mean Exorcism still does a lot of damage regardless. But the Underlord yeah. is building up into uh, Heaven's Halberd, so they're they're buffing up and getting themselves some nice auras on the Radiant side as well. Huddle's even going Ags rush after his mech. Yeah, that's interesting. We talk about a possible Phoenix in the draft because there's no attack speed. Having also your own Ag, which is the will, is that makes sense. Well, Muerta is still pretty decent for it, though. Towards mid, Pop is gonna get caught by the Saxon Kinetic Field. Can he get away and pop the roll? The damage isn't gonna be enough to take him down. Glimpse back, he's finally gonna get to finish off. Ghost Pops his BKB, but Exorcism is still pretty nasty here from Moon. And JT is gonna quickly try and TP himself out of there. There's gets none. back no. to safety with that TP towards his base. But they got a pretty big kill there. It cost him a lot in terms of resources, but at least the Pangolier falls. Yeah, they did the right move. They jumped the mid laner, the hero that has all the control and a lot of damage during the team fight. Taking Pangolier out, there's no way Extreme Gaming can take the fight. And they brought the five heroes. That's the right thing to do. They just need to be a bit worried now because Pangolier has everything and you don't have Exo now so Extreme Gaming I would suppose they want to shove one wave and just smoke and try to get a fight for their side now they shove the bot wave do they have a smoke though they don't have a smoke with their heroes oh Kaka has one I would assume he wants to pop the smoke does he no, he doesn't. Chidori actually has an interesting wave. build on Slark. Because he did this the exact same um, in the match previously against IG. Echo Saber into Diffusal, into Shard. Oh, that's a Break great build. But that's worth it. Yeah, but they're going to take the mid tower. That's one objective. Although, yeah, mid tower, not that important now because it doesn't open up uh, the Roche possibility, right? <laughs> it doesn't change anything. Towards uh, Roche, which Roche was is going to be running thing. towards the bottom lane. <laughs> TP through yep. the Twin Gates. Let's go for a little spin. I would assume they 
would love to buy a gem or something. Oh, oh, they're trying to steal it. Bolason spots them all out next to the Tormentor. This is actually very interesting. Using the gate to the other side of the map, a lot of AoE damage coming through. Moon does not have the Exorcism, but has a lot of Spirit Siphons to bump out and try and sustain. And like, right now, Papa's Rolling Thunder has ended. Papa is in a world of hurt. Sexstorm comes out. Ghost does not have his BKB available. They find a second kill. And mid one is just pumping out damage with that Pierce the Veil. The Muerta finally gets some targets to blast. And the finger guns come a wild. They take the Tormentor. This was such a nice idea. Wait, do they extreme? take the Tormentor? Will they survive? Yes. They yeah, will. they should be able to will. barely scrape it by. Polson needs to be slightly careful, but it will be a free shard for the Enchantress. Yeah. But yeah, this was... I like the idea from Extreme. However, you kind of need to have a little bit more visual on what SMG are doing. Yeah, the idea was good. It's just that they lacked damage. They couldn't kill this... Okay, DP's dead, but they couldn't kill the DP. Took them... 30 seconds took them enough for Disruptor to respawn, TP in, take part of the fight, and it all started with a pick off on the Disruptor, so kind of slow on the damage input from Extreme Gaming side. They'll at least get their own. Yeah, Paparazzi is going for an Agonies now. I believe he has the feeling we lack damage. I need to scale in damage, and that's when you go the Agonies. They have one big plus, of course, against the Slark as well, is that Pangolier, Coddle, Crystal May, all of the heroes on the side of Extreme have damage that pierces through, like, AoE effect damage, which is great against Depth Shroud and uh, Shadow Dance. Because in that fight, even though all the cooldowns were pretty much used on the side of Extreme, it still looked very scary for SMG just because of the AoE control and damage that they were constantly pumping out. Yep. Luckily, Slark's not a carry. Nope. There's this Muerta dealing damage. Mid one's pretty good. Muerta, once yeah. he finally gets a, a chance to shoot, that's the most important yeah, thing. It's a hard game for this guy. Exo into the Exo used. Stream gaming. Not sure they want to contest this. I'm sure he has his BKB done. And that is Roche in their hands. Nice. Uh, Aegis pickup going to Chidori instead of mid one. Which I find slightly interesting considering mid one doesn't have a BKB yet and Chidori does. Yeah. I guess Chidori is going to farm a bit more aggressively than mid one will. Yeah. I think it would make more sense to have it on Muerta. The way they play, like the Starks. The hidden, like, where does the hidden carry? Darks the space crater on the fight. Okay, it's looking a bit weird because Muerta is far away, DP is far away, and Sarks. He's like, I got an Aegis, who cares? Nobody yeah. can touch me! He's actually not going for the harpoon. Uh, build, he's gonna instead build up the yeah. Mage Slayer, which makes a lot of sense. You're up against. I would say like what eighty five percent magic damage this game. It's probably the better best choice you can go for. But they are doing the SMG, which is they're pushing a tower, going for objective, and Muerta is farming the safest <laughs> camp on the map. Mid one. I don't like when sure SMG does die. the SMG. There's a DD rune top. Hmm. Polos look at Polison's item build on Enchantress. They're building four cores, my friend. Getting close yeah. to his Aghanim Scepter. You get that good old Sprink? Yeah. This could be fun. This could be really fun. I think a Moon Shard is better than the Aghanims. Might be wrong, though. I'm not so sure on that. Uh, does... Because you actually it's a four get second right click cool a lot down. on the Yeah, but it's a four second cooldown and you hit three enemy targets while you do extra attack range. It's actually really good. Okay. You have a point. And it dodges incoming projectiles. Does that count? Elk stun? 
not so sure. Haven't seen this spell being used for a while. Hmm. Should. Reading it, it should, but... Yeah. We'll have to wait and see if that's also exactly the case. But yeah, Polison, uh, you know, we talked about him during the early portions where he was just slightly ahead of the other supports. But uh, he's ju he just plays this game, this patch, like a f fourth core on the team. You have mid one playing a third core, and then Polison chiming in. He's the same net with his JT. Yeah. I'm always watching from the fog of extreme gaming to see when does they have the information. Like, they have the information, mid one is top, just appeared there, so they should Polison? start mid lane. He's getting jumped here. Shidori as well. DY with the Crystal Maiden ulti running through the team fight. DY is actually doing a lot of work here. Chidori is dropping low. Aegis is about to get popped. The Will of Wisp is on top as well. But eventually, mid one finally joins his team. And a double kill comes through because Moon goes deep for the catch on the Pangolier. Will probably lose his life for that attempt, but at least forced out the buyback on the Pango. All things considered, definitely a worthwhile. Engagement. Yeah, Stark keeps the Aegis. Pangolier has to buy back. Really tough game for Paparazzi. SMG is way stronger now. But okay. Three go for JT. Cash, but don't go for the offlaner, guys. <laughs> it's a scary this, hero to kill. It it ended up well, but those old Kaka slowed by the Encantress. Rolling Thunder, here. no heal available on Polison. The Will-O-Wisp will scare the rest of the team away and Polison is just gonna stand there and get smacked down. Still needs about 600 gold for the Aghanim Scepter to be done. Mid one's yeah. close is BKB. That's the SMG thing that they always give this opening to the enemy team where they show a core in the map and they are with the four other heroes somewhere so I was just looking at the fog. What vision does Extreme Gaming have? As soon as they get the vision on where Murta is, they will just jump. Oh, Sorry. Get catch on to the Ten slark. seconds on Aegis. The fuse they will coming wait, in. I would assume. Yeah, they're waiting it out. He does pop Five, his ulti, but he has no four. mana to get away. Will he die? And oh. the Aegis pops in time. Ghost actually gets stunned up. In comes the Disruptor, has his ulti available, Chidori pops the BKB, has the Depth Shroud, does pop it, but he's taking a significant amount of AoE damage, will be able to skew, uh, slither to the other side, but rooted up, finished off, and this time Chidori was playing a little bit too aggressively. The rest of the team trying to disengage, Polestone gets slowed down by the d Pottle, onto the low ground, but that's another death onto Polestone. Actually, going deep here, onto mid one, Ghost is hunting. The Marta has a BKB at the ready, and he's gonna just BKB TP oh, out. They have no control because Pango doesn't even have the Bashu just yet. Actually, pa Paparazzi decided not to go for Ags. Instead, he's going for Heaven's yeah. Homeward. Because he used the buyback, and then he was so far away from the Agonies. They're pinging the XP room, might be able to get this steal. And yeah, that's SMG doing the SMG. Making my job as an analyst way harder because they're unpredictable. Anytime they have the advantage, they might do it. That they, I don't know, the carry or fake carry is just showing in front of the enemy base while the team is so far away. It's so weird how they play the map. I, I can't believe it's worth like, oh, we're getting more resources because we are farming everywhere. Maybe sometimes in the game it might be worth, but you need to have this sense of I'm strong enough as five, I just play as five and win the game. SMG do need to be a bit careful that they don't go for another uh, Underlord Gateway to steal the uh, Tormentor soon. Last time, of course, it almost cost them uh, yeah, a lot on the I guess they gaming. won't do it. Uh, you never know. JT with a tier 3 token. Wondering, what do I want? Not so sure. Unfortunately, we can't see what they ha what their choices are. Would be yeah, nice if there's we could, still though. some work to be done on the interface. Oh, Encantress. He finally has his Ags done, but Polison getting gone on. Level 3, uh, 4 Nature's attendance, though. He's healing up nicely. And he doesn't have his courier flying in, but in comes Bounce. Chidori. They're trying to get the TP through the gateway. Oh. DY gets glimpsed back. 
unfortunately, uh, Afu wasn't there to get the glimpse onto the Underlord instead. But they find a kill, and this Enchantress is actually pretty hard to kill once he gets his. Uh, it's Dolph Laner, because Dolph Laner is the carry. And they jumped off laner. That's the hero that it's hard to kill, right? Yeah. He's got himself... Uh, <laughs> like, does actually have auras. The auras are all a moon, but... He's a pretty big beast. And they're looking to steal the Radiance uh, Tormentor, possibly. So that is very scary with the amount of AoE damage that Extreme can throw out. If you get low HP and in comes the... Uh, the firestorm inside the will o wisp and all the the shenanigans <laughs> it's pretty painful uh, i feel like the shard on underlord can be really strong they definitely want the shard when you're playing against lark he's gonna jump away from you and if you have this he will not be able to hit you during the tire fight you can just keep chasing it one's close to silver edge so, uh, yeah, mid one is getting to uh, maximum effort. He's level 20 now, so he's got the extra gunslinger chance, 70% chance to get the gunslinger going. Yeah, basically he the soloed the Tormentor with yep. his Axe and uh, Hurricane Pike. Huh. And Disruptor got the shard. <laughs> Not a good of a shard. Extreme gaming, smoking, mm. no one's showing the map. I wonder if they will give up on the smoke. Oh, it's Roche timing. That's why the smoke. Yeah, smoke can versus be smoke. Both of them heading towards bottom lane. Do they have buybacks on extreme gaming? They need to use buybacks on this fight. JT gets spotted. They all get spotted under ward vision right there. And Dory comes to counter it immediately. <laughs> well, that gives away where they are. They're gonna smoke up. That gets spotted definitely by SMG. Yeah. They know where Moon is. Think... They're pinging him out. Moon is gonna take a heap of damage. And forces him. himself back, but does still have his heals available. Spear Cypher, can he get it going? They use the PKB on the Ghost Alchemist. They find themselves a kill on the Disruptor buyback. Does come through. Chidori is looking for a fight, but his own BKB has ended. And in comes the Impetus Smacks from the Enchantress, if you're not careful. They want a Kydex, so now... <laughs> Polison Solo heading forward. Fight me! Fight me! <laughs> I got sprung. You ain't got nothing. Well, there's a Static Storm that does... not Nothing actually. It doesn't catch anyone in the process. On the side, Kaka is going to be the target here. They're a bit too far spread. The supports are left behind by the side of Execration, and even the Underlord gets smacked. Mid one starts chunking out damage there in just a couple of seconds. The uh, very nasty Muerta finally shows what he can do. Yeah. Look at that damage and... 5k in just seconds. They don't want to buy back on the Underlord, so they're giving away Roche. Paparazzi instantly goes to show wave. Ghost keeps farming. And yeah, this feels like they cannot burst this DP. Which is gonna have the cheese plus the lotuses. Do, does he wanna go for that uh, shield? I mean, Can he? DP this game actually is their offlaner on SMG. So they again jumped yeah. the offlaner. Stop yeah. it! <laughs> He's got the auras! If he dies, it's great, but if he doesn't die, you're in trouble. Because the BKB was used in Elk, Rolling Thunder was used on Pango, and then... What you got left? Ghost going for that Tormentor kill. Who's gonna get the shard? While they go for Pango here, he's silenced. He's dead. Uh, okay, Pango, no way out of there. And that's a dieback still, because he doesn't have the cash, so dead for 90 minutes. seconds. They have Aegis on Muerta this time, so that's a very important yeah. detail. So, SMG has the game on their hands. They just cannot do the SMG. Just don't I, I, have a core on the other side of the map that Moon. you were pushing. Uh, Moon is cutting the creep wave, okay. Yeah, it's fine. So far, it's, it's not fine. too far away. And mid one can, of course, push pretty quickly because he's got Gunslinger and he's got extra attack range. Marta doesn't have to get close to the buildings. They just need to get vision of it and 
It's a good pushing hero. With the extra two hits coming through, jump, jump. on Takaka. Glimpse back on Takaka. Do they have another way That's for no him to get out of the <laughs> impetus? One impetus oh. hits its keister for a second, gonna... but he is going to be able to survive. Creep tree spawn. Tier 3 tower still hasn't fallen yet. Yeah, glyph fuse for the multi shot. And there's another glyph available. But still looks like it's going to be a set of racks at the very least. Moon. Exo is ending. We'll be able to heal up still as a cheese. Nice multi hero stun, but there's still no Pangolier. And they're going to go in on JT with the Muerta Alti. Need to focus down the melee racks though to at least oh, gain something. Oh. Is this done? Well, a wisp comes out. Moon, no exo. They gotta go in back. On Moon, he has the shivas available. Ghost has a BKB still at the ready. Who has a cheese. Polison on the run. Rolling Thunder comes through. Polison is gonna be left behind by the side of SMG. He does still Maybe have strength to get over the cliff, and he's gonna go for the straight TP next to his opponents. Does get rooted up in the process. They're looking for more. Jidori is very elusive here. They finally kill off the Enchantress, but the rest of the SMG squad needs to back off. Almost blows up Kaka on the side. Mid one, a couple of seconds is all he needs. One more proc would have gotten the kill onto Kaka there. And they're still they just still trying have to run away. Where to... Oh, go. they turn, but if they can turn. Suns himself in the process. Chidori does get his Dark Ray backed off. BKB usage. This time there is no Alchemist with a BKB available. But Ghost gets glimmered. They have no detection. That's big. They do lose themselves to Crystal Maiden, but that's just one buyback. That's a Crystal Maiden. Who cares? Moon's gonna get Ox jumped. Actually, himself Ghost again. suns himself twice in one fight. Moon eats the Gouda, the cheese, the everything. Chidori comes in, but there is still mid one with the Ages at the ready. They're all grouped up. Still alive. Can he get the pumps in? Mm, this is gonna be rough. Ghost is gonna Ox stun himself gonna a stun third himself time again. in one fight. And now mid one does not have a BKB, does have a Hurricane Pike, tries to get himself close towards his uh, Disruptor. But it's a big team fight win for Extreme. And again, like this patch just gives you the longest of freaking engagements ever. Yeah. Feels a bit bad for SMG. They took the Rex, but they stayed till the Pangolier was back. Just this small window of discipline of take the Rex. They are a full team. Just buy, just go back a bit. A bit of patience. Exo is over. Run. Just run. Yeah. Wait for a cooldown. Hmm. Ghost stuns himself three yeah. times in one Alchemist fight. Alchemist does Just something <laughs> really well that's taking objectives. I, I wonder if they want to force Tron just to see if there's a buyback. There's still tier 2s. They uh, Just do the save. Did they pull an SMG? They did SMG. I'd say that the SMG would be uglier. Yeah, they Just would have... What the they did with Muerta would farming be farming. Mid. Yeah, but this overextend is somehow the SMG. It's like part of the SMG. Well, they're still only it's 4k like behind. not knowing how to finish the game. It's the full the SMG combo. <laughs> uh, they do have oh, Slark now getting uh, with the Scotty done. Gem being delivered, so they'll at least cut on the uh, vision on the map. Well, no buyback on CM. I'd say that's the target they should go. You might say, oh, it's just a support, but you do a lot with a four staff, a gleamer, also the ultimate, because there are not so many ways to stop it. You always should target this hero without buyback, and then a team fight is so easier. So SMG, they still can take fights uh, with EXO. Uh, Zark's finally strong. Muerta is super strong, has a moon shard. If he gets to hit, ninja gear, they smoke. But extreme gaming, they're just holding the ground patiently. They know what's coming. Oh, they Kaka spot up has Kaka. the buyback. They need kind of a nullifier to get control of the sports they quickly. They blow up the disruptor. Doesn't have a buyback because that's another one that bought back in the previous fight. Control onto Polison. Make sure the enchantress can't get his impetus blast off. 
And Chidori needs some help. In comes mid one, pops his ulti with the BKB. He's trying to pump out damage. JT is actually melting. Look at that mid one going ham once he finally has a little bit of time. Hit he is one? now rooted and can he get himself out of there? He's actually in this stuff. Mid one staying alive. And Hit one's Ghost kill everyone. is being popped up. Mid one is the real carry, ladies and gentlemen. He him. is very low right oh, now. He's low. Not the moon shard. Papa Paparazzi is... definitely wants to jump again. But Moon's uh, EXO is ending, so they have to oh, dip. Oh, the DPTP out. They left the carry. Uh, not again, Ghost. Ghost this. Ghost stuns himself another time. He does the Ghost. And mid one's like, ooh, Ghost is nearby. <laughs> I've got Silver Edge. Ooh, there's a shield Two as well. Shoot rate. Oof. Extreme Gaming did the thing that I was telling SMG should do. Go for the hero that doesn't have the buyback. Disruptor was the hero without buyback by that time. They kill him first. That's the way to assure a good team fight. SMG eventually finds the CM, finds the Underlord. It's a fair trade. It's uh, 70 seconds without Exo. Roche is not up. Game's still in the same state, I would say. Difference is Paparazzi still alive on the team fight, so he's scaling a lot on items. Has agonies. When he gets this basher, it's gonna be so hard for the Muerta to hit targets. Getting disarmed, getting bashed. Walking around with a 1300 HP shield. Yeah, here's the bash. Stuff. He's like trading the buyback for the bash, which makes a lot of sense. There's no reason to have two lives if you cannot bash the targets. Better to have one. Uh, mid one is really reliant on that BKB. The moment his BKB ends, they hit him with the uh, halberds, and like he's half a hero. Even Coddle right now is building ha uh, halberd. Hmm. They're gonna have three halberds available. Three halberds. That's 15 seconds so of disarm. Roche is a really fast Roche. From the zero to three minutes was four seconds. So Roche already up on the radiant side. Oh. They're gonna go for the Tormentor, but this could be a free Roche. And that's uh, the Radiant Roche, so it's a nice little Aghanim Scepter they can pick up. I don't think they would just enter Roche without finding targets. That's well, they, not what They know that they just killed off the Tormentor, so they know where they are. Nah, they, they're the type of thing that they hold a ground and they take a fight under vision. They don't do the crazy thing. That would be the SMG. Stream gaming, they're patient. Look at this. Just waiting. Marta's got a free shard. That's a big one. Marta gains 30% spell life seal during Pierce the Veil. Underlord, the hero with buybacks, the hero that's gonna break this smoke. And they're posturing around the Roche pit. And then they're gonna break this smoke, and Alchemist's gonna miss a stun. Oh, there's, there's control no Pulsons dropping. Low Pulsons blown up. Doesn't have a buyback available on the Enchantress. In comes mid one on the side. He's trying to get any catches here. DY on Bash. the Crystal Maiden will finally get taken down, but they had the good control onto Ghost mid one. Stunts. He's gonna get disarmed. They're gonna keep him out of the fight. The jump is onto oh, they the go for Muerta. Mid one. And mid one, has another disarm coming through. He just cannot right click at all in this fight. He needs that refresh orb. The control comes out onto Moon. Can he stay alive long enough with any possible healing? Still has two more Spirit Siphons that he can use. But he's out of mana currently, and they find him, they finish him. The only one left is Afu on the Disruptor, but what can he realistically do? Extreme Gaming, they are going to get themselves Roshan, and with that, they're in a very comfortable spot for the rest of the game. Yeah, mid one cannot do a single thing once his BKB ends. They just had the perma disarm on him. The disarm, the bash, you have... One carry in your team, that's the mid one. Slark is kind of useless in this game. It's intended to have a good lane against uh, the Underlord and that's all. The hero is just bad in this game. There's a cheese dropped because Pangolier has everything. Has the agonies with him. He probably want to sell it. Maybe buy a Mjolnir to do more damage. Or, ah, he will up upgrade to Abyssal for sure. And yeah, they just nerfing this one carry. And Extreme Gaming, they are the better team. I guess, like, at least for, like, from the storytelling that I'm all the time repeating the same things over and over, I hope you, you get an idea, like, Extreme Gaming is the best, better team here. They don't just enter Roche and hope for the best and pray for the best. No, they keep the ground, they keep the vision, they bait the fight, 
to the offlaner, into the hero with buyback. They chase the hero that doesn't have buyback they on the enemy team. They just did something very interesting. They ate the Ags, I think, on Paparazzi. Oh, the Rolling Thunder comes through. I'll talk about it in a second. This might be the last fight of the game. Burn. Chidori, let's get his uh, spells off. But it's taking so much damage inside all of this AoE Need control. Pops controlled. the BKB. And they're going to go in for more nice swashbuckle. Honestly, Paparazzi is making these fights so incredibly tough. Another disarm coming out onto mid one. Can he find any targets to right click? Moon on the side, dropping slowly, but surely. They will get rid of at least the Aegis, but it means Muerta's Pierce Deville is going to be on cooldown. Polosan. Can the Impetus do anywhere close to enough damage? Ghost, going to go for the aggressive ghost. jump. He's going to stun himself <laughs> He's going to go for the Ghost. He needs to do the Ghost. Yeah, he needs time. to This is all a bait. Try to lure them in. You got the catch right there. <laughs> the Impetus actually doesn't do that much against these big boys. Chidori is just not healing anywhere close to enough. He needs to be careful because otherwise he could die right on the spot. Glimpse back. Gaming. There goes the glimpse. Onto the, the off laner because that's cannot... always super handy. Here's the villains available right now though with the disarm on mid one. In the BKB and his ulti he gets disarmed. His BKB is ended. Another disarm comes through and this Muerta's entire buyback. ulti is wasted again. Ancient is uh, available to be taken. They can try and finish it off right now with the buyback and Chidori keep them at bay long enough. Mid one rushing forward, but the Rolling Thunder will hold him in place. He does not have a buyback available on the Muerta. And that is pretty much it for the side of SMG. And indeed, Extreme Gaming will be able to take the W2 0 against SMG. Really well played. I love the fact that they just. New Chidori is not a threat this game at all. It's all about getting rid of mid one. Heavens Halbert, Heavens Halbert, and Heavens Halbert. Yep. Extreme, Extreme Gaming, the best team won. Really felt like this. They outplayed SMG. SMG had everything to win the game, and they didn't close the game. So. Yeah, I'm getting used to the SMG matches on the analysis, so I don't get the bait to say they have the best draft, they're gonna win. I say they have the best draft, they will be able to go high ground, but and they might <laughs> do the SMG when going high ground, which is dangerous. So yeah, getting to understand this team, they do have a lot of potential again. Uh, those small fixes can make them a really good yeah, team. It is, this, it is uh, fun, actually, that... You hit it right on the nose. Most games, they don't get like knocked out of the game at, at all. They have a moment, they come back in the game, then they take a good fight. It's, they almost every game have one good fight that looks like they can turn the game in their favor. And then they try to go high ground and it goes horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> and the game yeah. is just a run for the enemy team. Yeah. Game is... Uh, Aegis decision was, uh, on Stark was this weird. This one almost and went. Then... Good Start for dying it. with Aegis, also weird. This was the TP. Yeah. Stream Gaming did this one mistake, I'd say, yeah. in the game. And SMG could capitalize on this. They got the Aegis afterward. They were able to go Roche. Not enough. Yeah, this death was large. Look at the minimap. Look at the two other cores. Why? I've got Why? Aegis! I'll never be Why? caught! <laughs> Why? What's wrong? Like, I I don't know. Like I was doing like why? Why? I can't understand. Don't do those crazy moves. You don't need to do it. You're not getting anything extra. They're not like getting any extra farm. Like, the cores could be farming nearby Zark. They're still farm on the map nearby Zark. Zark, you don't need to be knocking the enemy door away from their team. It's just so random that they're not on the same page on the three cores. And it's happening happening over and over and over again. And communication issue, maybe internal issue in the team because it's just weird that this keeps happening over and over. But hopefully they find the pattern, they fix the pattern, and they come back stronger tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Tomorrow. Uh, yeah, of course. Obviously, there's going to be more SMG covered by us uh, tomorrow, where the uh, official SMG stream is right here. Uh, we'll quickly check out the groups. 
Uh, IG 0 and 8, ouch. Uh, I mean, to be fair, the tie with Execration, <laughs> uh, which I guess is something. Uh, nonetheless, TSM on Group A 1 and 5, not really what you'd expect from the number one team from uh, NA. Uh, Talon on the opposing side also struggling. SMG is actually do as third from the Southeast Asian region, doing the best of all the Southeast Asian teams, which unfortunately is not saying too much. Uh, currently, yeah, like they're doing best, better than Talon, which is also Southeast Asia, better than Invictus Gaming, and Beast Calls just have less matches. That's the, yeah. It, I guess it's not updated. I guess Beast Calls is too far now. They lost to Shopify, but still, Southeast Asia, not looking good. I heard a little bit of sadness there when you said lost to Shopify. South America, no. <laughs> I don't like. I'm, I'm South American, but I coach a team and hey, I, I'm not. Bi I'm biased towards Americas, so it's like uh, this cause losing to Shopify is no cares. Uh, but of course, uh, very importantly, there are going to be more matches tomorrow. Um, hopefully, we have whatever. Oh, actually, whatever shows up there to show the matches tomorrow, if we have that available. Uh, it will start off again, just the break of noon, where it will be uh, purged. To... Okay, there, oh, I need to move. Uh, other side. I always have it inverted. There we have it. It's going to be EG versus Bet Boom, LGD versus Asa. Oh my god, that's some good games. And then we get ourselves Shopify versus SMG and the Clash of Southeast Asia. Talon versus SMG on this stream. And uh, yeah, those are some uh, pretty amazing matches to be uh, covered here tomorrow. I'm looking very pretty much important. forward to watching them. What? Pretty important because the Talon SMG match, probably the team that loses is getting out of the major. I mean, so it's going to if... be a super important match between two teams of the same region. SMG loses, they might actually both be out of the major. <laughs> so uh, it's going to be a very important one. Yeah, indeed. but I'd say early on like this, like there's still more two days, like there's tomorrow and two days. So like three days yeah. of uh, matches, but one team probably going to get eliminated that early if they lose. If they draw, both of them still, yeah, some hopes. Okay, uh, so yeah, don't forget tomorrow on this stream, Trent and Purge will be covering uh, EG versus. I'm drawing a blank for a second. Bed boom, that's it. Thank you very much, production. You are a saving grace there. Uh, my name was DK Truman. I was joined by Estini. Any last words for the viewers at home? Oh, there's something I forgot to tell. You should always, like, everyone should tell their friends to start playing Dota because they just, like, Turn the game upside down so everyone's learning. So that's the best time for someone to learn Dota. If we keep repeating this, we might bring new players to the game. I'm repeating this over and over for the Brazilian community. I already get five new players to the game. If everyone gets one new player to the game, we double the player pool. And the game keeps going because I love the game. Keep the game alive, guys. Tell someone to play the game. Game is new. They can learn the game. The game is yeah. new. Dota 3 is right here. So don't forget to bring in your friends as well. Have a wonderful day. And in case we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.